थी मुख्यमंत्री जो है मतदान का प्रयोग करते अभी ये जो देख रहे हैं इससे पहले शिवराज सिंह चौहान ने घर के ठीक सामने हनुमान जी का जो मंदिर है वहां पूजा की उससे पहले उन्होंने कुलदेवी की पूजा की है और अब यहाँ से माँ नर्मदा का आशीर्वाद लेने के साथ ही तुरंत यहाँ से सीधे शिवराज सिंह चौहान पहुंचेंगे अपने पूरे परिवार के साथ जैत गांव में जो मतदान केंद्र है आदर्श मतदान केंद्र और वहां पर शिवराज सिंह चौहान अपने मताधिकार का प्रयोग करेंगे और ये तस्वीरें आप देख सकते हैं कि किस तरीके से मध्य प्रदेश के सबसे लंबे समय तक के मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान साढ़े सालों के मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान छठवीं बार विधानसभा के प्रत्याशी हैं इस बुधनी विधानसभा सीट से और शिवराज सिंह चौहान जब से यहां से चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं लगातार चुनाव जीतते आए हैं पांच बार के सांसद और पांच बार के विधायक शिवराज सिंह चौहान छठवीं बार इस तरीके से विधानसभा चुनाव के लिए प्रत्याशी हैं और हर बार इसी तरीके से शिवराज सिंह चौहान पूजा पाठ पहले करते हैं और उसके बाद ही वो मतदान के लिए निकलते हैं ये देखिए माँ नर्मदा की आरती कर रहे हैं शिवराज सिंह चौहान उन्हें भेंट चढ़ा रहे हैं और अब जो है ये पूजन यहाँ पे संपन्न हो गया है शिवराज सिंह चौहान ने माँ नर्मदा का पूजन जो है वो कर लिया है और शिवराज सिंह चौहान अपने पूरे परिवार के साथ ये तस्वीरों में आप देखिए कि किस तरीके से शिवराज सिंह चौहान जो जाने भी जाते हैं कि काफी धार्मिक शख्सियत है उसी तरीके से अपनी परंपराओं का पालन करते हुए मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान और उनका पूरा परिवार यहाँ पे मौजूद है उनके बेटे कार्तिकेय और कुणाल साथ ही में धर्म पत्नी साधना सिंह और मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान ये सभी अब यहाँ से सीधे मतदान केंद्र के लिए रवाना होंगे और यहाँ पे जाकर के मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान और उनका पूरा परिवार मतदान करेगा ये वो जैत गांव है अंजना मैं आपको बता दूं जहां से मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान पांव पांव वाले भैया के नाम से मशहूर हुए थे और उसके बाद यहीं पर इसी नर्मदा में तैरने के बाद ही वो लगातार यहां से चुनाव जीतते आए हैं पांव पांव वाले भैया अब लाडली बहनों के भाई बन चुके हैं मध्य प्रदेश में और अब यहाँ से देखिए पूजा संपन्न होने के बाद शिवराज सिंह चौहान जा रहे हैं मतदान करने के लिए लेकिन उससे पहले अगर आप देखें तो यहाँ पे बातचीत कर रहे हैं शिवराज सिंह चौहान जो पत्रकार यहाँ समाम पहुंचे हुए हैं भोपाल से उनसे बात करके अब आगे रवाना हो रहे हैं मुख्यमंत्री मतदान केंद्र के लिए और ये एक बेहद महत्वपूर्ण पल हो जाएगा मुख्यमंत्री के लिए उनके पूरे परिवार के लिए क्योंकि लगातार छठवीं बार शिवराज सिंह चौहान जो हैं वो मुख्यमंत्री विधानसभा चुनाव के लिए यहाँ से अपना प्रत्याशी हैं और अब यहाँ से वो आगे जा रहे हैं मतदान के लिए हम कोशिश करेंगे मुख्यमंत्री से बात करने की कि यहाँ पे किस तरीके से वो मानते हैं इस बार का चुनाव कितना ज़्यादा महत्वपूर्ण कितना ज़्यादा संवेदनशील हो जाता है उनके लिए क्योंकि इस विधानसभा सीट से जी बिल्कुल हम बात भी कर रहे हैं बिल्कुल पांव पांव वाले भैया आप जो हैं लाडली बहनों को यही वो जगह है मैं आपको बताऊं इसी इसी घाट से शिवराज सिंह चौहान जो है लगातार आशीर्वाद लेते हुए मां नर्मदा का और उसके बाद फिर यहां से वो रवाना होते हैं आगे चलते हैं और देखिए ये ये शिवराज सिंह चौहान यहाँ पे हम बात भी करने की कोशिश करते हैं पाव पाव वाले भैया आप लाडली बहनों के भाई बन गए मुख्यमंत्री जी ये भाई पाव पाव वाले भैया लाडली बहनों के भाई बन गए मंदिर पे भी ए भाऊ देख सकते हैं शिवराज जी आपकी पूजा पाठ जी जी शिवराज जी तो पापा वाले भैया लाडली बहनों के भाई अब क्या आशीर्वाद दिया बहनों ने अभी आपने और लाडली बहनों का भाई हूँ इस समय पूरे प्रदेश में मैं जहाँ जाता हूँ सबसे पहले बहनें दौड़ के आती हैं गले लगती हैं भावुक हो जाती है ये मेरे लिए अद्भुत और अभूतपूर्व है ये ये नियम है लगातार इसी तरीके से जब सब मुख्यमंत्री यहाँ पे लगातार विधानसभा का चुनाव लड़ते आए हैं कोई भी चुनाव या महत्वपूर्ण कार्य होता है इन नियमों का पूरा पालन करते हैं घर से बाहर निकलते हैं और 1990 से लेके अब तक छठवीं बार के प्रत्याशी हैं घाट घाट भी बदला है और लोगों की जिंदगी भी बदली है और सर ये जिंदगी बदलने का अभियान जारी रहेगा निरंतर जारी रहेगा अब तो मेरे मन में एक संकल्प है लाडली बहना के बाद लखपति बहना अभियान अपने सेल्फ डिपेंड हो अपने पैरों पर खड़ी हो लखपति बने तो पांचवी बार मुख्यमंत्री <laughs> भारतीय जनता पार्टी तय करेगी आप क्या मान के चलते हैं लेकिन आखिरकार में तो एमपी के मन में मोदी एमपी के मन में मामा मैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी का कार्यकर्ता और मध्य प्रदेश की जनता का विनम्र सेवक तो शिवराज सिंह चौहान है जो निकल गए हैं मतदान के लिए आपको बताए ये ये वो घाट है अंजना जहाँ से मुख्यमंत्री इसी घाट से इनका पूरा बचपन बीता इसी गांव में यहीं पे वो नदी में तैर करके अब एक तरीके से मध्य प्रदेश में लगातार छह बार से उन्होंने एक तरीके से देखा जाए तो भाजपा की जो सियासी नाम है उसे भी पार लगाया है लेकिन देखना अब यह है कि इस बार 
जब एम के मन में मोदी नारे के साथ भारतीय जनता पार्टी चुनावी मैदान में उतरी है तो फिर आखिरकार मध्य प्रदेश के मामा मध्य प्रदेश के भाई शिवराज सिंह चौहान इस बार किस नए रूप में किस नए रोल में एक तरीके से मध्य प्रदेश की राजनीति में दिखेंगे ये तीन दिसंबर को पता चल जाएगा लेकिन जिस तरीके से अंतिम समय में पूरी ताकत झोंकी है शिवराज सिंह चौहान ने 36 दिनों में एक सभाएं रैलियां रोड शो किए हैं जो मध्य प्रदेश में सबसे ज़्यादा है किसी भी स्टार कैंपेनर के कांग्रेस के हों या भाजपा के हों तो देखना अब ये है कि शिवराज सिंह चौहान किस नए रोल में दिखने वाले हैं तीन दिसंबर के बाद Right, so that's uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, and if you heard closely, he said, "From Ladli Behna, which has been a popular scheme of the Madhya Pradesh government, to Lakhpati Behna next." So basically, hinting, if I return from Ladli Behna to Lakhpati Behna, will be our uh, focus uh, for the BJP government. So already slipping in possible what the next scheme is, but uh, offering prayers right now. So if that is what the BJP senior leaders are up to, offering prayers before. and uh, while the polling has started what is the congress big wing the senior most leader kamal nath former chief minister hanuman bhagt who wants to counter bjp's hindutva up to this morning go across me aap rajya bishesh disturb mat karo sir ek aaj ka sanjeev yaar ye baat mat mat karo ye dikhal baat ke ha bichh mat kariye pehle bishesh mat disturb kar diya aap rajya bishesh sir rol rol sir ji kamal nath ji is waqt hamare sath maujood hai kamal nath ji किस ढंग से ये चुनाव को आप देख रहे हैं क्योंकि अलग अलग मुद्दे इस चुनाव में दिखाई दिए नेशनल मुद्दे भी थे और रीजनल मुद्दे भी थे ये मुद्दे साफ है भ्रष्टाचार मध्य प्रदेश का हर व्यक्ति जिसमें आप भी हैं या तो भ्रष्टाचार का गवाह है या भ्रष्टाचार का शिकार है हर व्यक्ति भ्रष्टाचार बहुत बड़ा मुद्दा है ऊपर से लेकर नीचे तक बेरोजगारी एक करोड़ नौजवान बेरोजगार है और उनकी भविष्य की कोई उम्मीद नहीं है और यही नौजवान मध्य प्रदेश का निर्माण करेंगे भविष्य में आ, किसानों की समस्या आज किसान भटक रहा है किसान भटक रहा है खाद के लिए किसानों के साथ अन्याय ये सब बातें जनता के सामने क्या जनता की आंखें बंद है इस बार के चुनाव में हिंदू मंदिर तमाम मुद्दे भी छाए रहे कमलनाथ जी जब बीजेपी को कुछ कहने लायक नहीं बचता ये हिंदू ले आते हैं मंदिर ले आते हैं ये अपनी बात करें अपने उपलब्धियों की बात करें बिल्कुल एक सवाल हो आप भी मंदिर में गए भगवान से आशीर्वाद मांगा क्या आशीर्वाद मांगा मैंने मध्य प्रदेश के भविष्य भविष्य हो वो आशीर्वाद ये थे कमलनाथ जी जिन्होंने साफ रूप से कहा कि उन्होंने मध्य प्रदेश की जनता के लिए आशीर्वाद मांगा कि उनका भविष्य उज्जवल हो और विकास हो कैमरा मैन संजीव के साथ अशोक सिंगल छिंदवाड़ा आज तक you heard uh, kamal nath said and who has been a hanuman bhagt he's built a big statue of hanuman in chindwara uh, has cast his vote offered prayers and he said why does the bjp always bring in religion what about their achievements but the fact is as you heard the reason these netas are making these comments is because it is a high stakes election for the congress to win again and to retain the government for the bharatiya janata party biggest test for shivraj singh chauhan who's been a chief minister for about 18 years and so Polumi Saha is joining me on the latest on that. Let's go across to her. Polumi, seven members of parliament, three union ministers have been propped up as multiple faces from the Bharatiya Janata Party. Meanwhile, union minister Narottam uh, Tomar also uh, Narottam Mishra. I uh, correct myself. Narottam Mishra, who's been a minister in Madhya Pradesh, is speaking. Let's go across. <laughs> एक सामूहिक हो जाए लगाओ लगाओ सब लगाओ जी लोकतंत्र के इस महापर्व पर आप जनता से क्या कहें क्या समर्पित है राष्ट्र राष्ट्रित के लिए लोकतंत्र का देखिए कमल का बटन दबाइए इसकी खुशियां हिंदुस्तान में बनती हैं दूसरा कोई दल जीतेगा तो खुशियां पाकिस्तान में बनेंगी इसके लिए आवश्यक है कि राष्ट्र हित को सर्वोपरि मानते हुए कमल का बटन दबाए कमल का बटन मध्य प्रदेश में जब व्यक्ति दबाएगा तो सेना सीमा पे सैनिक की बाजुएं मजबूत होंगी पाकिस्तान में दहशत होगी कि मोदी जी जीत रहे हैं कमल का बटन दबाने से आतंकवादियों में दहशत होती है और इसलिए कमल का बटन दबाना चाहिए जो भी सीमा पे नहीं जा पाते हैं देश की सेवा के लिए ये एक सेवा का अवसर है सबको कमल का बटन दबाए और राष्ट्र हित में अपना योगदान करें अपना योगदान 
वो विकास के लिए करें माननीय मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में माननीय मोदी जी ने ये कमल का बटन कहा है कमल का बटन यहां दबता है आवास आता है गरीब के लिए कमल का बटन दबाते हैं आप तो शौचालय आता है गरीब के लिए कमल का बटन दबाते हैं तो निःशुल्क खाद्यान्न आता है मोदी जी के द्वारा कमल का बटन दबाते हो तो कोरोना जैसे आपातकाल में भी मोदी जी ने वैक्सीन का निर्माण करके देते हैं ये एक कमल के बटन की विशेषता है कि वंदे भारत ट्रेन आती है इस कमल के बटन दबाने से ये कमल के बटन दबाने से देश में शांति आती है कमल का बटन दबाने से देश में सुरक्षा आती है कमल का बटन दबाने से देश में संपन्नता आती है सनातन की मजबूती के लिए भी कमल का बटन आवश्यक है बिल्कुल निश्चित रूप से सनातन की मजबूती वो जो लोग सिर्फ समान सनातन पर ही सवाल उठाते हैं इसके लिए भी कमल का बटन दबाना जरूरी है तो इस चुनाव में पाकिस्तान भी आ गया पाकिस्तान आ नहीं गया है कि वहाँ जो आतंकवादी है उनमें दहशत आती है अच्छा मतलब मध्य प्रदेश में भाजपा जीतेगी और पाकिस्तान में दहशत आएगी क्यों आतंकवादी में दहशत आएगी भाई की मोदी जी की पार्टी जीत रही है अच्छा मोदी जी का यानी जो इम्पैक्ट होगा आप ये कहना चाहते हैं कि अगर भाजपा हारती है तो पाकिस्तान और इस्लामाबाद में फुलझड़िया छोड़ी जाएंगी छोड़ी जाती है जब हारती है कर्नाटक का परिणाम देखा था ना अपन उदाहरण है बड़ा मशहूर है इंडिया टुडे नरोत्तम मिश्रा इज जॉइनिंग इंडिया टूडे का इरादा क्या है विकास का वादा विकास और विकास सिर्फ विकास ठीक है नरोत्तम जी इंडिया टुडे इज जॉइनिंग विद नरोत्तम मिश्रा राइट नाउ आप दिस इज आप अभी वोट डालने के लिए गए आप वोट डालने के लिए गए बड़ा बयान इस वक्त दे रहे हैं कि जब बीजेपी जीतती है तो पाकिस्तान में मातम फैलता है इस तरह का बयान आतंकवाद के आतंकवादियों में दहशत आती है मातम नहीं दहशत जी दहशत आती है लेकिन अब एम के वोट का पाकिस्तान से क्या कनेक्शन है मोदी जी का है भाई मोदी जी जब भी जीतते हैं इस देश में आतंकवाद का खात्मा किया है मोदी लेकिन एक और सवाल सर पोलिंग स्टेशन के अंदर कैमराज अलाउ किए गए इसको लेके अब कांग्रेस कहीं कहीं हंगामा खड़ा करेगी करे पर मुझे नहीं मालूम किसने किए वो जाने उनका काम जाने कांग्रेस की तरफ से कहा जा रहा है कि आप लोग मनी मसल का और शराब का जब हारते हैं तो ऐसे ही कहते हैं वो अभी तो थोड़ा रुको आप ईवीएम का कहेंगे थोड़े तीन तारीख को ईवीएम का कहेंगे मुख्यमंत्री का चेहरा क्यूँ नहीं दिया आप लोगों ने हमारे पास इतना बड़ा चेहरा माननीय मोदी जी का है कहाँ छोटी बातें कर रहे हैं पूछो ठीक है सो राइट देयर नरोत्तम मिश्रा स्पीकिंग टू इंडिया टुडे एंड बिग स्टेटमेंट बाय नरोत्तम मिश्रा यू नो दी नंबर टू इन मध्य प्रदेश हैज बीन नोन फॉर मेकिंग कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल स्टेटमेंट्स एंड ऑन द डे ऑफ पोलिंग नरोत्तम मिश्रा मेकिंग अ बिग क्लेम दैट वेन एवर अ बीजेपी विंस इन एनी स्टेट ऑफ इंडिया यू नो इट इज अ टेररिस्ट एंड पाकिस्तान who get terrified and this big statement is coming on the day when narottam mishra went inside the polling station he casted his vote and came back and made this big statement so clearly a uh, number 2 in uh, bjp government in madhya pradesh uh, uh, who is known for making controversial comments has again yet again uh, struck a controversy by saying that if bjp wins it is pakistan would get terrified it is the pakistani terrorist who get uh, you know uh, Uh, terrorized uh, if bjp wins and uh, he has also said that uh, we have seen in karnataka as to when bjp lost the elections how celebrations were made in pakistan so a uh, big controversial statement uh, uh, from narottam mishra uh, narottam mishra is contesting from the seat uh, you know uh, uh, since 2008 and uh, yet again rajendra bharti of the congress party is challenging narottam mishra from this particular seat in datia this is the polling station where uh, uh, home minister of madhya pradesh and bjp candidate has just came out of the polling station after casting his vote now uh, you know a uh, uh, while uh, uh, mr mishra will be expected to get a huge support for the party across the state and specifically in datia all three vidhan sabha seats of datia but uh, uh, the fact on the ground remains that uh, the contest for uh, narottam mishra in datia continues to be a uh, a tough contest because uh, rajendra bharti of the congress party is someone who is actually uh, who has uh, covered the ground to a large extent and has in even in the last election uh, narottam mishra had won the election only by a margin of uh, less than 2700 votes and people on the ground are saying that uh, this time uh, this time around as well uh, this contest is pretty close uh, and you know uh, the talks about whether there'll be anti incumbency factor which will yes. affect the elections 
which will affect impact the very polling. interesting uh, you know what amit you have got us that it's a state assembly election that, yes. and we thought while it's very crucial just for 2024 lok sabha polls it's also as important with regard to pakistan narottam mishra known for his uh, very controversial polarizing comments as well uh, has now said that uh, there is uh, a sort of fear in Pakistan if the BJP wins, whether in state or at the centre, and basically saying it's the Modi factor that's working. It's not as much about the local leadership. It is about as much about Modi factor, the biggest neta the party has. Very interesting. Remember from Kamal Nath, the Hanuman Bhakt taking on BJP's Hindutva. It is the Bharatiya Janata Party saying that it is our Modi factor, the biggest leader who even Pakistan fears. They don't want us to win. So all sorts of comments and reactions coming in from the Netas. Polling has started. Let me take you through some of the details coming in from Madhya Pradesh, for example. Madhya Pradesh is the big state with 230 constituencies. And this is going to be important both for the Congress Party as much as for the Bharatiya Janata Party. Here's why. Let me take you through first. Uh, let's go through the seats just for a quick background for you to understand. 230. Congress had 114 in 2018. BJP had got 109. They didn't get the tribal votes as much. While the Congress had won, it was, remember, the rebellion of Jyotiraditya Sindhya that the government collapsed and the BJP returned to government. Shivrat Singh Chauhan managing now over 18 years, almost about, of the government. And that's why can he beat the anti-incumbency factor this time. A number of Important, interesting candidates. Of course, the highlight will be BJP's General Secretary Kailash Vijayvargiya, under whose leadership uh, at a senior level, at a central level, that the campaign has been run. There is, of course, Kamal Nath of the Congress Party, uh, who has been nine times a member of parliament from former Chief Minister, will want the Congress Party to win again, and possibly he becomes the Chief Minister. There are, of course, for example, Jitu Patwari, a young face, former minister, sports, education, youth. They will also be forming, and there are other candidates too, Narottam Mishra, who we just heard. But of course, who will be the highlight? Who faces the biggest challenge in Madhya Pradesh? And that is Shivrat Singh Chauhan. Whether, as he says, Ladli Behena to Lakpati Behena he wants to do next, will he get that opportunity or will it be the Congress party becoming a game changer? Our colleagues continue to be on the ground from Madhya Pradesh, different constituencies and we'll be going across to them. But also Chhattisgarh, 70 seats for Chhattisgarh's second phase. That and more after a very short break. Stay tuned. You're watching India Today. It's the big election day for Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. And as we head out into a commercial break, that's BJP General Secretary Kailash Vijayvargya, who's uh, now casting his vote. And with the polling that has started, we'll try and get you an assessment of uh, what it looks like with about 5.6 crore voters to seal the fate of 2,500 candidates. Is there a rush? And with a smile there, Kailash Vijayvargya wearing a surf and scarf, showing his vote, the finger, that's of course the symbol of our democracy. Ensuring that uh, he gives enough photo opportunity and then, of course, one by one, Kamal Nath has already cast his vote, show, so has Shivrat Singh Chauhan. And we'll be getting you the latest visuals of all of them. So will it be the Hanuman Bhakt, Kamal Nath, or will it be the Bharatiya Janata Party's Hindutva in Madhya Pradesh? Leaving you with these visuals, and we'll continue to track the latest on that. In Madhya Pradesh, remember, it is 109 that the BJP got last time. 114 went to the Congress Party. They wouldn't want that this time. They wouldn't want uh, to collapse the government like the rebellion happened. They will want a public mandate in 2023. A family picture there by Kailash Vijayvargya. They'll want to repeat the 2013 victory when they got a thumping majority of 165. Congress had barely got 58 in 2013. They want that majority where they had got 44% of votes. And with that smile, with that confidence, BJP has done all that it takes for Madhya Pradesh, bringing in not just senior leaders, but seven members of parliament, three union ministers, and told them to fight the assembly elections in Madhya Pradesh and win it. Will Kailash Vijayvargya speak to the media persons waiting outside the polling booth? Let's listen. <laughs> A bit of uh, restraint from Kailash Vijayvargya. 
uh, this morning as he's cast his vote, not really made a comment. Possibly he'll, uh, they're moving to a location right outside the polling booth to set the cameras up. Remember, as much as comments can be made today by these netas who cast vote, they'll have to be very cautious too, slightly careful in what they say. There is a strong model code of conduct. Kailash Vijayvargya speaking now after his cast is vote. Let's listen in. you know for him and he's a senior bjp leader one can call him a veteran and he he was he had said he was slightly surprised when his name came on the list to contest elections, he didn't have a desire at that point. But when he was given the responsibility, then he went all out. I've launched all sorts of campaigns, a recent high-tech campaign as well that he had launched and took the responsibility. But uh, the 67-year-old leader, the BJP's general secretary, has been told to contest the assembly elections from Madhya Pradesh. He's been fielded from Indore, one assembly seat. Has earlier served as the mayor as well, a cabinet minister in Madhya Pradesh, senior positions within the BJP. His son also, remember, has been an MLA. So that's also interesting. Likely he wanted more opportunities for the son. But as a senior leader himself, BJP did not want to take chances and have pushed him into the fray to fight the elections for Madhya Pradesh and on one of the 230 seats. Before he speaks, uh, knowing fairly well, and this is where political experience comes in, he realizes this could be a controversy. There's a conduct, model, model code of conduct that uh, you cannot speak very close to the polling booth, cannot campaign, cannot put out any political statements. So uh, he ensured that before he starts to speak, he said we should be at least 100 meters away. Let's again get up and move. So before we go across to that later statement, he had spoken to Saeed Ansari after offering prayers and before he cast his vote. Here's what he had said. Look, Boha, Save, Nimbu, and Jiravan, our... पोहा है वो इंदौरियों का पूरा नहीं होता ये ये जो जीरावन कैलाश जी राजनीति का आपका जीरावन क्या है राजनीति का जीरावन तो बहुत बढ़िया है क्योंकि राजनीति के जीरावन में मोदी जी के विकास कार्य और गरीब कल्याण की योजनाओं का टेस्ट है और इसलिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी बाहरी बहुमत से सरकार बना रही है कौन सा ऐसा मुद्दा है जो आपको लगता है कि भारी बहुमत से आप सरकार बना रहे हैं एक दो तीन गरीब कल्याण सबसे पहला मुद्दा है जिसमें हमने गरीबों के लिए प्रधानमंत्री आवास महिला सशक्तिकरण के लिए हमने काम किया है दूसरा पॉइंट ये है तीसरा ये डेवलपमेंट डेवलपमेंट मध्य प्रदेश में बहुत हुआ है जब 2003 में हम सरकार में आए थे सात लाख हेक्टर में ही खेती होती थी आज 45 लाख हेक्टर में खेती होती है ये सड़कों की बात करें जब मैं पीडब्ल्यू मिनिस्टर था दो में तो साठ किलोमीटर सड़कें थी आज पांच लाख किलोमीटर सड़कें हैं और साठ हजार किलोमीटर में सिर्फ चार किलोमीटर सड़क ऐसी थी जिसमें एक भी गड्ढा नहीं था देवास बाईपास की पूरे प्रदेश में गड्ढे ही गड्ढे वाली सड़कें थी आज पांच लाख किलोमीटर सड़कें हैं जिसमें गड्ढे नहीं हैं राइट सो कॉमन बींग मेड बाय नेता वोट बींग कास्ट इट्स एन इम्पोर्टेंट डे uh, for the parties and we'll continue to track the latest on that. 230 seats for Madhya Pradesh, 70 for the second phase of Chhattisgarh, big wig specifically in Madhya Pradesh. I'm leaving you with these visuals but also to ensure that you're always updated with election news. Do not miss with five assembly states that are heading for polls, two big ones today. You can scan the key or QR code as well on your screen and with that you can always stay updated with election updates. I'll be bringing you more news right after this break. Election, of course, our top story of the day. Thank you for watching.
for watching India Today. Powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP Group company. सपने ले लिए, सिस्कियां दे दी, हौसला न दिया, हिचकियां दे दी, और तेरे यहाँ भी लफ्जों के माने अजीब हैं। ये तूने किस तरह की खुशियां दे दी? मिलिए शैलेश लोडा से साहित्य आज तक दिल्ली में लाइव। फ्री एंट्री के लिए रजिस्टर करें www.ajtak.in/sahitya पर या मिस्ड कॉल दीजिए 9310330033watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company the world of skincare is rapidly changing with new power ingredients making way for instance, retinol can soon be passe probably thanks to Bakuchio, which does the same job as retinol with minimal side effects. Even Deepika Padukone stands it. Retinol is not well tolerated by many, causing intense sensitivity to some. Bakuchiol, on the other hand, can be called retinol's gentler cousin, which is natural, less irritating, and a vegan alternative. Deep exfoliating scrubs are now replaced with peeling pads with glycolic and salicylic acid, which is Dermat approved. I tried them and found them even better than the in-clinic peels. FCL, for instance, is specially formulated for the Indian skin. You know, uh, acid pads don't suit every skin. Mm. You have to take advice, professional advice, before you start using them, because some skins just react to them. Mm. And if it suits you, I think once in two weeks is good enough, not more, more frequently than that. Natural is overrated. Everything natural is not good for your skin. Even poison ivy is natural. Does that mean you start applying or having it? 
no right if you are trying to look at natural options look for products that are of medical grade that contain only pure high quality ingredients that are natural but pharma concentrated to help treat and heal with myriad skin concerns my personal favorite is vitamin c serum and an active serum that treats the skin well को प्रेजेंटेड बाय आपका जॉय भारत का जॉय जॉय ई बाइक को पावर्ड बाय पारुल यूनिवर्सिटी वडोदरा गुजरात Polling has started in the state of Madhya Pradesh. 230 constituencies very crucial for the Bharatiya Janata Party to win this election, and even more important for the Congress Party to win it like they did in 2018 and retain the government. For now, it is the biggest challenge for Shivraj Singh Chauhan. Over 18 years of first government that he has been, this is the biggest challenge. Will it be an anti-incumbency that will work against him, or will it be the Ladli Behna scheme that will work? Madhya Pradesh is a single phase assembly election it will set a stage however not just between the ruling BJP and the Congress party but also for 2024 Chief Minister Kamal Nath was cast his vote in Chindwara ahead of the big day Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan also offered prayers at a temple in Sehore other BJP senior leaders uh, for example Kailash Vijayawardena who is the Bharatiya Janata Party general secretary also offered prayers has cast his vote BJP's minister Narottam Mishra also even said Pakistan will celebrate if bhartiya janata party loses the elections in madhya pradesh it's a litmus test for the bjp whether about 18 years of government or for the congress party to regain control after the 2020 debacle both are dominating the electoral narrative visuals on your screen as polling has started and people of course showing the finger of democracy this is with regard to the votes that have been cast and it's good to see a lot of uh, youngsters as well there are remember first time voters that will play a very crucial role for them shivraj singh chauhan has always been the chief minister so that is going to be very important whether they want change or whether they want to stay with shivraj singh chauhan as the cm wale bhaiya ladli behno ke bhai ab kya aashirwad diya behno ne abhi aapka dil aur ladli behno ka bhai hu is samay pure pradesh mein main jahan jata hu सबसे पहले बहनें दौड़ के आती हैं गले लगती हैं भावुक हो जाती हैं ये मेरे लिए अद्भुत और अभूतपूर्व है ये ये नियम है लगातार इसी तरीके से जब सब मुख्यमंत्री यहाँ पे लगातार विधानसभा का चुनाव लड़ते आए हैं कोई भी चुनाव या महत्वपूर्ण कार्य होता है इन नियमों का पूरा पालन करते हैं घर से बाहर निकलते हैं और उन्नीस से लेके अब तक छठवीं बार के प्रत्याशी हैं घाट भी बदला है और लोगों की जिंदगी भी बदली है अब तो मेरे मन में एक संकल्प है लाडली बहना के बाद लखपति बहना अभियान अपने सेल्फ डिपेंड हो अपने पैरों पर खड़ी हो लखपति बने आप क्या मान के चलते हैं? लेकिन आखिरकार में तो एमपी के मन में मोदी एमपी के मन में मामा मैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी का कार्यकर्ता और मध्य प्रदेश की जनता का विनम्र सेवक so let's go on the ground himendra sharma is now joining me himendra you were telling us about uh, kamal nath earlier let's also talk how interesting this election is with regard to rebels for example or who turned the tide and shifted sides from 2018 contesting on congress they are now with the bharatiya janata party one how has the polling been like and tell us about how interesting this election is for madhya pradesh well polling is slowly but steadily picking up people are coming out of their houses and uh, queuing outside polling booths as you can see behind me this is in chindwara so sir uh, and as far as the issues of this elections are concerned as you very rightly said earlier that tribal vote bank is very significant for both parties and both parties are trying to woo this particular chunk <coughs> which party is successful that remains to be seen but other than the tribal vote uh, the bharatiya janata party and the congress both parties are also trying to woo the uh, women voters the uh, congress party 
initially announced 1500 rupees for women voters. Kamal Nath claims that he was the one who first announced 1500 rupees for underprivileged women, and that was taken over by the Bharati Janata Party. Shivraj Singh Chauhan came up with his own Ladli Behna Yojana, uh, through which uh, 1250 rupees are now being transferred to the accounts of uh, around 1.25 crore women every month. The BJP claims that this would be increased to 3000 rupees. That's the announcement that Shivraj Singh Chauhan has made. But uh, uh, Shivra Singh Chauhan is certainly not the chief ministerial face of the Bharti Janata Party. They have this time around decided not to project him as the chief minister, understandably so, because 18 and a half years of anti-incumbency and the, uh, to deflect this anti-incumbency, the Bharti Janata Party has fielded... Deminder, uh, stay on with me. Shivra Singh Chauhan, the incumbent chief minister speaking. Pradesh ke vikas ke abhut purva kaam kiye hain bimaru Pradesh ko विकसित राज्य बनाया है और अब हम मध्य प्रदेश को सर्वश्रेष्ठ राज्य बनाना चाहते हैं देश का और इसलिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी जो प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के मार्गदर्शन में प्रदेश में हमारी सरकार काम कर रही है भारतीय जनता पार्टी को जनता अपना आशीर्वाद दे दूसरी बात हमने जो कल्याणकारी योजनाएं चलाई है उन्होंने लोगों की जिंदगी बदली है समाज के हर वर्ग का कल्याण किया है पहले लाडली लक्ष्मी जैसी योजना जिसने सेक्स रेशियो मध्य प्रदेश में बदल दिया बेटियां भी बेटों के बराबर पैदा हो रही हैं और अब लाडली बहना जैसी योजना जिसने बहनों को सेल्फ डिपेंड किया है उनका आत्मविश्वास और आत्मसम्मान दोनों बढ़ाया है ऐसी अनेकों योजनाएं हैं जन कल्याणकारी सिंचाई के रकबे में जो अभूतपूर्व वृद्धि हुई है उसने मध्य प्रदेश की अर्थव्यवस्था पूरी तरह से बदली है अब इन कामों को लगातार जारी रखने के लिए मेरी जनता जनार्दन से प्रार्थना है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी को वो अपना आशीर्वाद दें केवल तीन चीज़ें मैं आपको बताना चाहता हूँ अब तक जो किया है जनता वो जानती है आगे जो हमारी प्राथमिकताएं हैं क्योंकि जो हमने संकल्प पत्र घोषित किया है वो गारंटी है मोदी जी की भी भारतीय जनता पार्टी की गारंटी है मोदी जी का नेतृत्व और मार्गदर्शन हमको प्राप्त है लेकिन जो काम हम करने वाले हैं उनमें पहला लाडली लक्ष्मी से लाडली बहना और लाडली बहना से बहना योजना मैं अंतरात्मा से ये कह रहा हूं कि बहनों की आमदनी कम से कम एक लाख रुपया सालाना हो उसको हम लखपति बहना मानेंगे और यह संभव नहीं है पंद्रह लाख बहनें सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप के माध्यम से लखपति दीदी बन चुकी हैं तो हर बहन को लखपति बनाना यानी उसकी आमदनी बढ़ाकर उसके जीवन को सुख और समृद्धि से और खुशियों से भरना है दूसरी जो सबसे बड़ी प्राथमिकता और हमारा काम है वो है शिक्षा और स्वास्थ्य शिक्षा में क्रांति सरकारी स्कूलों में गुणवत्तापूर्ण शिक्षा उसके लिए सीएम राइज स्कूल हमने प्रारंभ किए हैं हर 25 तीस लाइब्रेरी प्ले ग्राउंड स्मार्ट क्लास बस ले जाएगी बस छोड़ने जाएगी शिक्षा दे सके स्वास्थ्य मेडिकल कॉलेज की संख्या पूर्व वृद्धि की है और बाकी लगातार प्रयत्न जारी है लेकिन आयुष्मान भारत योजना के साथ हमारा संकल्प है कि केवल पाँच लाख रुपए नहीं अगर गंभीर बीमारियों में ज़्यादा खर्च होगा तो राज्य सरकार अपनी तरफ से वो व्यय वहन करेगी ताकि गरीब और मध्यम वर्गीय भाई बहन अपने इलाज के लिए आश्वस्त हों किसान की जिंदगी में और खुशहाली लाना इसलिए सिंचाई के रकबे के साथ साथ प्रधानमंत्री किसान सम्मान निधि मुख्यमंत्री किसान कल्याण योजना और उसके साथ हम ये भी विचार कर रहे हैं कि बाकी सब्सिडियां समाप्त करके सीधे किसान के खाते में हम ज़्यादा पैसा डालें और गेहूं हम न्यूनतम समर्थन मूल्य से ऊपर बोनस दे के सत्ताईस क्विंटल खरीदेंगे धान हम इकतीस क्विंटल खरीदेंगे जीरो परसेंट ब्याज पे कर्जा देंगे 
किसान की जिंदगी में समृद्धि लाना यह हमारा उद्देश्य है गरीब कल्याण भारतीय जनता पार्टी का संकल्प है इसलिए प्रधानमंत्री जी द्वारा दिए जा रहे निशुल्क राशन के अलावा हर परिवार को मध्य प्रदेश के पक्की छत देना है इसलिए हमने सीएम लाडली बहना आवास योजना भी बनाई है और कोई बिना जमीन के ना रहे इसलिए गांव में भी मुख्यमंत्री भू आवासीय अधिकार योजना के अंतर्गत हम पट्टे दे रहे हैं आगे किसी को हम वंचित नहीं रखेंगे संकल्प पत्र में जो बात कही गई है उस एक एक बात को हम पूरा मोदी जी के मार्गदर्शन में करेंगे इसलिए हमने तय किया है प्रत्येक परिवार प्रत्येक परिवार एक रोजगार यह हमारा मूल मंत्र है हर परिवार में एक रोजगार का अवसर हम उपलब्ध कराएंगे थोड़ा नाश्ता भी कर लें आप Right, uh, so you heard uh, the incumbent Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan. He won the elections in 2005, 2008 to 2013, and then again in 2020 uh, after the Sindhya Rebellion. But will he be able to again win the elections and retain government? He says, "Largely, Behna to Lakpati Behn will be his next scheme. Will he get that opportunity?" Meanwhile, you see Kamal Nath, who's cast his vote. and uh, kailash vijaywargya bjp's general secretary who is offering prayers as well and this is going to be as kamal nath said who is who calls himself a hanuman bhakt taking on bjp's hindutva apolomi saha is joining me from madhya pradesh presently apolomi it's it, like we were trying to discuss earlier as well uh, what caught madhya pradesh is and for the viewers caught our eye was how there are about seven members of parliament three union ministers who've been now pulled in to fight the assembly elections for madhya pradesh so it clearly shows how high stakes this state is for as much for the congress party to win again like 2018 but also for the bjp ahead of 2024 Absolutely, this is definitely high stakes uh, for the Bharatiya Janata Party, as we've been discussing earlier as well, Pooja. This has been a citadel of uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party for a long time. The Saffron organization has been entrenched as far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned, except for that 15-month period when the Congress, of course, came to power in 2018, before, of course, uh, uh, the government fell owing to Jyotiraditya Sindhya uh, and uh, the defection of the 22 legislators of the Congress Party to the Bharatiya Janata Party. The BJP has been in power throughout so the bjp of course hopes to retain uh, that ground again this time round they do understand that there is of course a very strong anti incumbency wave it does come in very naturally of course after a government has been in power a party has been in power for close to over 18 years now uh, the chief minister of course a four time chief minister as well sensing that of course uh, the bjp has experimented with this election in terms of of course having those members of parliament those seven mps uh, including three union ministers uh, who are considered to be heavyweights in their areas uh, contest these elections and also of course not naming any uh, chief ministerial face for these elections so uh, shivraj singh chauhan also hasn't been projected by the bhartiya janata party as its uh, chief ministerial candidate so clearly the bjp has tried to keep a tight uh, sort of control over the party and mm. going into this election they've decided that they will do so on the face of uh, the prime minister and the work of the bjp in in madhya pradesh how much of that of course uh, you know pays dividends for the bhartiya janata party come december 3rd we'll find out and paul me of course likely depending mainly on the modi factor who also as the sar campaign of the bjp uh, was campaigning heavily in the state of madhya pradesh paulmi saha is in the state and she'll be tracking all the latest on how the polling has been what the netas are saying all our colleagues on the ground in madhya pradesh and also chatisgarh too i'm leaving you with these visuals it's the big assembly election day single phase for madhya pradesh the second phase for chatisgarh for one side congress party wants to retain government like in chatisgarh for another bjp will want to return in madhya pradesh that and more after a very short break stay tuned special telecast on the election day continues after short break. you are watching india today powered by finest be sustainable change a bnp group company alia bhat katrina kaif tamanna bhatia and many more
everyone swears by this dunking their faces into big bowls of icy cold water and doing what is known as an ice water facial the idea get rid of puffiness and get a glowing skin the the reduction in the puffiness of eyes puffiness of face pores become smaller redness gets left lesser the burning sensation on the face can be reduced and also that flushed feeling gets a little lesser from reducing inflammation to dealing with open pores this is the latest beauty hack and celebrities swear it has helped them achieve a glowing skin so how does this work When you apply ice to your skin it narrows blood vessels toning up the face There's a little bit of vasoconstriction that is reduction in the blood flow which makes a face flush less flush so it looks less red that burning sensation gets calmer because the nerve endings get affected pores look smaller again because of the constriction of the blood vessels It promotes blood circulation and brightens up the face You can also use ice cubes wrapping them in a piece of clean cloth but do this only for a few minutes it can cause itching and redness It could give you something like superficial burns a little bit of an irritation some people who have underlying conditions like SLE and all should definitely not do it without consulting because of Raynaud's phenomena too much constriction less blood flow then can flare up their rashes If you do decide to dunk your face in an ice bowl, you can also freeze ingredients such as tomato pulp, aloe vera juice and cucumber juice in an ice tray to give the skin an extra dose of nutrients. Be careful not to overdo anything and to do this only for a few minutes. In New Delhi, Sneha Mordani for India Today TV. watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company well you know we're on the road yet again and we're here in the heart of Paris but with a very special guest in a very special place tech today has exclusive access to the snapchat AR studio the home of AR for snapchat in Paris and the man who's made all this happen is with me today. Antoine, what a pleasure to have you on Tech Today. Nice to meet you. Antoine, this is fascinating. We're here in this sort of um, a facility with so many tech brands, and here Snapchat's doing something special with AR. You want to walk me through what it is you're doing here, because clearly there's a lot happening right here yes. as, as we speak. I'll, I'll pan the camera there. If this is what they like watching more than, is this how we should have the conversation, Antoine? Yeah, we are the dad back. So but, welcome, yeah, welcome to the Thank you so much, thank you so much. Tell me what you guys are doing here because clearly there's so much happening. But why Paris and why have you guys decided that Paris should be the heart of AR for Snapchat? Yeah, we built this uh, AR studio for two main reasons. The right. first reason is like in Paris, there is a big, uh, large cultural scene, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And it was a good match to start in Paris to work with a cultural institution, artists and uh, musicians in entertainment and uh, in mm -hmm. a larger scale. We also have a great community of developers and creators in Paris right. and also the best animation school, 3D school, design school. So that's why we are also uh, uh, wanted to, to start in Paris for right. those two reasons. And, and tell me Antoine, uh, so these are some fun lenses, but when people are watching, they'll say using technology, you could actually have a bunch of use cases. It's yeah. not just the fun stuff. Gaming as well, education, yeah. arts and culture, are those focus areas for you? Yeah, we focus on the cultural institution. Uh, we have many uh, very important cultural institutions in Paris. Right. You know the Louvre, you know uh, maybe uh, some museum like Source, the Centre Georges Pompidou. Mm -hmm. And for us, it was a great opportunity to uh, help them to discover the potential of AR. How can AR can work with artists, augment a visit, for mm -hmm. example, uh, propose a new type of artistic uh, experiences?
Fit and I Plus, Expert Who Cares. Co presented by Aapka Joy, Bharatka Joy, Joy E Bike. Co powered by Parul University, Vadodara, Gujarat. Good morning and welcome to our special telecast this morning. It's of course the election season. Madhya Pradesh single phase 230 constituencies. Shivraj Singh Chauhan, the chief minister of BJP, will want to ensure they are in the government again. But for Chhattisgarh, it's the second phase. 70 seats. Bhupesh Baghel, Congress eyeing to continue to be in power in Chhattisgarh. What's been happening on the ground? How's the polling that has started already? Are there long queues or a slow start? Meanwhile, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, incumbent chief minister there. He's offering prayers and he's been to different locations. Uh, remember earlier it was the Narmada Arti. He had uh, been to another temple as well. And before he heads out to finally cast the vote, offering prayers here at one of the temples. Remember for Shivrat Singh Chauhan, this is the biggest challenge. He has been winning elections for the past 18 years. Barring in 2018 when the Congress party won. Till 2020, 15 uh, months, Kamal Nath was uh, the CM, but when the government collapsed after Sindhya rebellion, again, uh, Shivrat Singh Chauhan became the chief minister. He has about 18 years of that political experience as the chief minister. Can he retain it? Can he ensure that uh, the government continues or will it be the Congress party again winning like they did in 2018? It's going to be very interesting. We'll be tracking all the latest on that. And he has said from Ladli Behna, which has been a popular scheme of the Bharatiya Janata Party in Madhya Pradesh, to Lakpati Behna if he gets another term as the Chief Minister. The man you see on your screens right now is facing the biggest challenge because against him is Kamal Nath, who's leading a Congress party, who's been a nine times member of parliament, who's been a Hanuman Bhakt who wants to counter BJP's Hindutva. But Shivrat Singh Chauhan, Lovingly called as Mama, lovingly as he has been managing to be in the government from 2005, then 2008, 2013, then 2020. This will be as much for his political survival too. And for this special telecast, I also go on the ground and bring in my co-anchor for this telecast, Paulumi Saha from Madhya Pradesh. Paulumi, we are looking at these visuals of Shivrat Singh Chauhan this morning going to different locations offering prayers and perhaps even though a chief minister face hasn't been announced by the BJP he of course still remains that big face for the state over to you Paul. Good morning, Pooja. Thank you so much. Of course, we're bringing those pictures live of Shivrat Singh Johan, who's cast his vote. Uh, he, of course, is seeking re-election from a Budhni Assembly seat in Madhya Pradesh, a four-time chief minister. He became an MLA at a very young age, chief minister at the age of 46. And since then, it has been a very good run for Shivrat Singh Johan, barring, of course, the 2018 elections, where the BJP lost to the Congress by a wafer-thin margin. The Congress was able able to form government as the single largest party but 15 months later it was the BJP that was back in power and Shivrat Singh Chauhan was back in the chief minister's uh, chair. So Shivrat Singh Chauhan there of course seeking re-election again this time round but interestingly the Bharatiya Janata Party of course sensing the internal factionalism the challenges that it faces on the ground as well in terms of the anti-incumbency has decided not to project a chief ministerial face going into these elections because there are many heavyweights as far as the party is concerned, including, of course, uh, a couple of those union ministers who've been fielded by the BJP as candidates in this election, which includes, of course, uh, um, the Agriculture Minister, Union Agriculture Minister, as well as, of course, uh, Pralat Singh Patel, who is seeking, uh, you know, election from Narsingpur, and Fakan Singh Kulaste as well. Three union ministers who, in fact, uh, are seeking to be elected into the Madhya Pradesh Legislative Assembly. Seven MPs have been fielded by the Bharatiya Janata Party. So there are many heavyweights. V.D. Sharma, who is the state president of the Bharatiya Janata Party as well. Of course, uh, on the other side, the Congress this time, 
seems to be a bit more united than in previous times because the Congress has declared that Kamal Nath is their chief ministerial face. The entire party has uh, come into one sort of unit as far as Kamal Nath's leadership is concerned. And the Congress is hoping that what uh, was in fact witnessed in 2018 will be witnessed in 2023 as well. Though, of course, remember that as far as the BJP was concerned, the BJP's vote share was more than the Congress's vote share, though by a small margin, but the vote share was more than the Congress's vote share. But as far as seat share was concerned, the BJP fell short by five seats in 2018. They're hoping that they're able to close that gap and more in 2023. Shibrat Singh Chauhan, of course, now, uh, you know, going from temple uh, to temple. Earlier, of course, at the Narmada as well, doing the Surya Namaskar, doing his morning rituals as well, as he's always known to do in order to, of course, seek the blessings of the Almighty before he, of course, uh, goes in and hopes to become the chief minister of Madhya Pradesh for a fifth time round. Of course, like he said himself, the decision if the BJP wins this election come December 3rd will be with the Bharatiya Janata Party because, like I said, the BJP has not announced a chief ministerial face as far as these elections are concerned. So a very tough contest over here as far as the BJP and the Congress are concerned. And remember, they're not the only players in the fray. The BSP, the Samajwadi Party, the Ahmadmi Party, they fielded candidates in this election as well. For the better part of it, of course, this has been a contest between the BJP and and the Congress, but the people, of course, over here, if you speak to them, are not exactly admitting as to who has the edge over the other in this election. So it's expected to be a very, very close contest uh, this time round in 2023, which, of course, will have its impact on the 29 seats from Madhya Pradesh that go to polls uh, in Lok Sabha 2024. So those images, of course, that we're seeing on your screens right now of incumbent Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan there offering... Uh, blessings and uh, hoping that indeed uh, you know there will be a turn and a twist of fate where indeed the BJP will in fact come up with a resounding majority in the legislative assembly this time round that the BJP will have a handsome lead as far as uh, uh, you know the elections are concerned come December 3rd and Shivraj Singh Johan is yet again picked by the party to lead the state so we're looking at those pictures right now of uh, Shivraj Singh uh, Johan the incumbent a chief minister who's heavily banking, of course, on his Ladli Behna scheme to see him through. That is the trump card that Shivrat Singh Johan is hoping works for the Bharatiya Janata Party. He, of course, uh, uh, like my colleague Puja was pointing out, is fondly known as Mama in Madhya Pradesh and he's hoping that he becomes uh, that brother to the sisters and the daughters of uh, Madhya Pradesh who, in fact, uh, cast their vote in big numbers as far as... And that is Maya Singh. We're just getting images right now of uh, Jyotra Ditya Sindhya's aunt, Maya Singh, uh, right behind me. She's a candidate for the Bharatiya Janata Party in these uh, elections. She's contesting from the Gwalior East seat. She, in fact, uh, did not contest the 2018 polls. She was an MLA. Earlier, of course, a member of parliament. She belongs to the uh, royal family of the Sindhya's. Uh, she is uh, known as the Mami because uh, uh, that is uh, uh, her role as far as the family is uh, concerned. She's contesting. She was a member of parliament. In 2013, she contested the Legislative Assembly elections. And uh, in 2018, she did not contest the elections. But the BJP has brought her back as far as uh, these elections are concerned. So Maya Singh is the BJP's candidate in these uh, elections. And I have to give them to इन लोगों का इस तरह से प्यार मिलना क्या कहेंगे इसी माटी के हम सब बेटा बेटी हैं और अपनी जन्मभूमि और मातृभूमि पर माताओं बहनों भाइयों और भांजे भाइयों सबका स्नेह मिल रहा है यही मेरी असली ताकत है तो यही असली ताकत है मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान की उन्होंने कहा है कि इसी माटी में जन्मे हैं और यहां से अब ज्यादा हो जाएगा बहुत ज्यादा हो जाएगा लेकिन वो मीठा करने के लिए लाडली बहना वो आपको निकलने ही नहीं दे रही मैं देख रहा हूं लाडली बहना वो आपको निकलने ही नहीं दे रही वो भारतीय जनता पार्टी को निकालेंगी आगे अच्छा वो आगे निकालेंगी भारतीय जनता पार्टी का लाडली योजना एक गेम चेंजर साबित होने वाली है देखिए लाडली बहना योजना कोई वोट के लिए नहीं थी ये बहनों की जिंदगी बदलने के लिए है लेकिन बहनों का जो असीम लाल प्यार और स्नेह मिल रहा है वो अद्भुत है अभूतपूर्व है सर वोटर्स के लिए आपको कोई मैसेज अभी मैं पूजा करके आऊंगा वोट डालने के बाद फिर करेंगे हम
So that is, of course, uh, Shivrat Singh Chauhan, the incumbent chief minister of Madhya Pradesh, hoping that, in fact, uh, the love and affection of uh, the sisters and daughters of Madhya Pradesh, the lardly banners of Madhya Pradesh, see him and the Bharatiya Janata Party through in these elections. The BJP, of course, embarrassed by that small defeat that they suffered at the hands of the Congress Party. Remember, it was a very small margin by which the BJP lost to the Congress in 2018. The Congress hoping that this gap is much more more this time round in 2023 so they have a decisive victory and nothing like the defection of uh, 2020 in fact uh, trumps them come uh, December 3rd. Let's listen in to Shivrat Singh Chauhan. <laughs> है मध्य प्रदेश के मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान साढ़े सोलह सालों के मुख्यमंत्री एक बार फिर से अपने मताधिकार का प्रयोग करके निकले हैं वोटिंग सेंटर से साथ में मौजूद हैं उनके धर्मपत्नी साधना सिंह सर एक बार मैं चाहूंगा कि वो एक जो वोट के बाद ये देखिए ये वोट दिया भी है वोट देने की अपील भी की है मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान ने किन मुद्दों पर आज जनता वोट करे विकास और जनता का कल्याण मध्य प्रदेश का अभूतपूर्व विकास हुआ है बीमारू राज्य से भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने विकसित और समृद्ध राज्य बनाया है और जनता के कल्याण की जो योजना है वो अद्भुत और अभूतपूर्व है सर बार बार लेकिन छिंदवाड़ा मॉडल बुधनी मॉडल की बात आती है कमलनाथ कहते हैं छिंदवाड़ा आके देखिए बुधनी मॉडल छोड़िए आज भी वो वहाँ पे उन्होंने कहा है कि पैसे धनबल का प्रयोग जो है सत्तारूढ़ दल हमेशा करता रहा है वो अपने हार की भूमिका बना रहे हैं बौखला कांग्रेस के लोगों ने ही शराब और पैसा बांटने का काम किया है कई जगह भारतीय जनता पार्टी के उम्मीदवारों तक पे उन्होंने हमला किया है ये बौखलाहट का प्रतीक है जनता बीजेपी के साथ है सतना में भी सीधी री, 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 सीधी पार, री, जो पाठक हैं आपकी प्रत्याशी हैं भाजपा की उनके घर पे वो हुआ है राव में भी बवाल हुआ है इसे कैसे देखते हैं सुहागपुर में भी उनने बीजेपी कार्यालय पर हमला किया ये बौखलाहट है कांग्रेस की एमपी के मन में मोदी ये नारे के साथ आप लोग चुनाव में उतरे थे लेकिन हम देखते हैं कि सभाएं सबसे ज्यादा मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान की मांग जो थी सब थी एक सभाएं आपने 36 दिनों में कर दी तो एमपी के मन में मोदी एमपी के मन में मामा मोदी जी दुनिया के सबसे लोकप्रिय नेता हैं दुनिया के मन में भी है देश के मन में भी है और मध्य प्रदेश के मन में भी है इतना मैं जरूर कहता हूँ कि हमने जो जनता की सेवा की है उससे मध्य प्रदेश मेरा परिवार है मैंने सरकार नहीं चलाई परिवार चलाया है और परिवार की तरह मैं जनता से प्यार करता हूं, जनता मुझसे प्यार करता हूं। लाडली बहनों की बात करें कल आप उनके घर भोजन करने गए आज आप मत डालने जा रहे थे तो उनसे पहले लाडली बहना आपका तिलक करने आ गई ये लाडली बहना का फैक्टर इस बार के चुनाव में कितना काम कर लाडली बहना मेरे लिए राजनीति से ऊपर उठकर है लेकिन इतना मैं जरूर कहूँगा कई बार मैं भावुक हो जाता हूँ उनका अभूतपूर्व प्यार और आशीर्वाद मिल रहा है शिवराज सिंह चौहान अपने आपको किस रोल में देखते हैं पाँव पाँव वाले भैया मामा या फिर भाई मैं मामा भी हूँ भाई भी हूँ लेकिन उससे ऊपर मैं अपनी जनता का सेवक हूँ साढ़े सोलह सालों के मुख्यमंत्री से मैं बात कर रहा हूं शिवराज सिंह चौहान से एक आखिरी सवाल तीन दिसंबर के बाद क्या मैं ये कहूं कि अगले मुख्यमंत्री भावी मुख्यमंत्री भी शिवराज सिंह चौहान ही भाजपा की तरफ से होंगे जनता पार्टी तय करेगी जनता और पार्टी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद बात करने लगी थे मध्य प्रदेश के मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान जिन्होंने अपनी धर्मपत्नी अपने पूरे परिवार के साथ अपने गृह गांव जैत में वोट डाला और आज तक एक्सक्लूसिव बातचीत की है वोट डालने के बाद क्या मैम अमरीश के साथ अवीश पाल सिंह भोपाल So that, of course, was my colleague Ravish Pal speaking exclusively with the incumbent Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan, who was hopeful, in fact, that the Ladli Behna Yojana of uh, the Madhya Pradesh State Government turns out to be, in fact, the trump card for the BJP in these elections. Now, over to my colleague Pooja Shali, who will take you through the vote share and the seat share of uh, the BJP and the Congress, the main players in the fray in the past. All right, thank you so much, Pallavi. For now, remember the BJP senior most leaders have uh, campaigned as from Bimaru to Bemisal. That's what they have done to Madhya Pradesh, and that is how they are seeking more votes. But how has the voting been previously in the past few elections? Let me take you through that specifically in 2018. 2018 was very crucial and interesting for Madhya Pradesh. It was 114 seats out of 231 by the Congress Party. BJP had managed about 109, others went to seven. This was in 2018. This was the break that Congress got with a continuous BJP government. But it was in 2020 when Jyotiraditya Sindhya uh, indulged in that rebellion, the government collapsed, and Shivrat Singh Chauhan again returned after 15 months 
to become the chief minister. So 20 uh, from 2005, 2008, 2013, and then again 2020, he's been the chief minister. Barring that break, can he again ensure to return to the government in 2023? That's the big test. So if that was the seats that were won by respective parties, how was the vote share like in percentage? Let me take you through those numbers. 41%, 41% both. So it was a very close margin in the manner in which people had voted. And that is why the BJP knows it's a very crucial state. BJP will want to tap in to the tribal vote, specifically in Madhya Pradesh. And I'm talking about 47 scheduled tribes that are seats out of 230 and scheduled caste seats are about 35. So this is an important belt with regard to that as well. And both parties, the Congress, will want to ensure they win again, like 2018. BJP will want to ensure they continue with the streak of, if not Shivrat Singh Chauhan, at least for the Bharatiya Janata Party. Follow me back to you on the ground. Right, Pooja, thank you so much for bringing us that break up as far as the seat share and the vote share is concerned. We're cutting across live now to Narsingpur in Madhya Pradesh, where in fact Union Minister Pralad Singh Patel is uh, casting his vote. He, of course, is contesting from that seat for these assembly elections. He is one of the three union ministers who've been fielded by the Bharatiya Janata Party in these elections, including, of course, uh, Narendra Singh Tomar and Faggan Singh Kulaste as well. Pralad Singh Patel, a minister in in the Jal Shakti division as well. Aishwarya Paliwal is now joining me live. Aishwarya, in fact, spoke earlier with Prahlad Singh Patel as well. Aishwarya, how confident does Prahlad Singh Patel sound as far as his election is concerned? And is he also a claimant to the chief minister's chair if the BJP were to emerge victorious come December 3rd? Well, de definitely, Paulami, you know, in fact, he's just casted his vote and we will speak with, uh, you know, Pralat Singh Patel now and ask him, uh, you know, what message is on this? Madhya Pradesh ka bhala ho. Maa Narvada ji se mene yehi karma maangi hai. कि वो मध्य प्रदेश की जी अबन मर गया तो बूथ के बाहर हो जाए ज्यादा अच्छा नहीं आप क्या आपको लगता है कि और उसके बाद सौ प्रतिशत मतदान का लक्ष्य प्राप्त करें मध्य प्रदेश के मतदाता नरसिंहपुर जिले के मतदाताओं को मैं बधाई देता हूं मैं लगभग आठवें बूथ पर हूं चौदह प्रतिशत से ज्यादा मतदान हो गया है इसलिए मैं फिर यही अपील करूंगा कि हम सौ प्रतिशत मतदान के प्रति अपना कदम आगे बढ़ाएं। अपन बाकी अपन एक बार बाहर बात कर लेते हैं। एक निवेदन अपन इसके सौ प्रतिशत उसके बाद जाने। बलाजी क्या आपको लगता है कि क्या क्या आपको लगता है कि इस बार भारतीय जनता एक 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 निवेदन अपन इसके बाहर हो जाएं। नहीं तो वो Sorry. This is, uh, you know, the minister who's just casted his vote now stepping out of the booth and also, you know, answering questions about the questions that the Congress party and specifically Kamal Nath has been asking over the past many times. We have seen how, you know, over the past 48 hours, Paul me, there have been a lot of allegations which have been made with regards to the distribution of cash and also liquor. So we have seen how those allegations have been made by the Congress party and also we have seen, you know, the barb and the, the war of words that took place between Priyanka Gandhi on one side and Jyotir Aitis and they are on the other side. So this definitely is a tough battle for both the parties, both of them now trying to make sure that they are the ones who actually win. And now, Pralad Patel, the minister, after casting his vote, speaking. Right, Aishwarya, thank you so much for bringing us that live report. Aishwarya, they're tracking Pralad Singh Patel as he casts his vote in Narsingpur. He is a union minister who's been fielded by the BJP in these assembly elections. We're getting some breaking news that's coming in right now. This after Shivrat Singh Chauhan has spoken with the media. He's been temple hopping, remember, seeking blessings of uh, the Almighty for a re-election. And he's hopeful, of course, that he will become the next chief minister of Madhya Pradesh. But remember, the BJP has not declared a chief 
ministry will face going into these assembly elections. He, of course, uh, told the media that it will be the BJP and the voters' uh, decision as to who exactly will be the next chief minister. But speaking about his flagship Ladli Behna Yojana, he said that Ladli Behna is bigger for me than politics. So Shivrat Singh Chauhan banking heavily uh -huh. on this uh, policy program of uh, the state governments, hoping that it pays the dividends as far as the BJP is concerned going into these assembly elections. Remember that this, in fact, was uh, something that the BJP announced immediately after the Congress announced its Nari Samman Nidhi. Let's listen in to incumbent Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Johan. <laughs> सिंचाई के रकबे में जो अभूतपूर्व वृद्धि हुई है उसे मध्य प्रदेश की अर्थव्यवस्था पूरी तरह से बदली है अब इन कामों को लगातार जारी रखने के लिए मेरी जनता जनार्दन से प्रार्थना है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी को वो अपना आशीर्वाद दें केवल तीन चीजें मैं आपको बताना चाहता हूं अब तक जो किया है जनता वो जानती है आगे जो हमारी प्राथमिकताएं हैं क्योंकि जो हमने संकल्प पत्र घोषित किया है वो गारंटी है मोदी जी की भी भारतीय जनता पार्टी की गारंटी है मोदी जी का नेतृत्व और मार्गदर्शन हमको प्राप्त है लेकिन जो काम हम करने वाले हैं उनमें पहला लाडली लक्ष्मी से लाडली बहना और लाडली बहना से अब लखपति बहना योजना मैं अंतरात्मा से ये कह रहा हूँ कि बहनों की आमदनी कम से कम एक लाख रुपया सालाना हो उसको हम लखपति बहना मानेंगे और यह संभव नहीं है पंद्रह लाख बहने सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप के माध्यम से लखपति दीदी बन चुकी हैं तो हर बहन को लखपति बनाना यानी उसकी आमदनी बढ़ाकर उसके जीवन को सुख और समृद्धि से और खुशियों से भरना है दूसरी जो सबसे बड़ी प्राथमिकता और हमारा काम है वो है शिक्षा और स्वास्थ्य शिक्षा में क्रांति सरकारी स्कूलों में गुण सो इनफैक्ट दैट इज वॉट शिवराज सिंह चौहान हैज टू से इन टर्म्स ऑफ who will be the next chief minister of madhya pradesh whether he in fact still is a claimant to that chair he says that the bjp and the voters of the state will decide handing it over again to my colleague pooja shali who will take you through the key candidates who are in the fray in this assembly election from madhya pradesh over to you pooja so madhya pradesh is one state which has uh, seen a lot of wild card entries a lot of union ministers in fact seven members of parliament three union ministers from the bhartiya janata party and even the congress party has a lot of interesting faces amid all the assembly states that are heading for elections this time let me take you through now how madhya pradesh looks like this is our election intelligence dashboard that has all the details and i'll be taking you through the vip the key candidates of this election take a look at that this is uh, more than any other states who've had some very significant candidates let me take you through for example narottam mishra who's been a minister in madhya pradesh government uh, has given a lot of controversial polarizing figures but is seen as a senior leader within the bjp who's who's now contesting and whether he can retain that seat let's take a look at kailash vijaywargiya bjp's general secretary who said initially he was surprised that he's contesting for madhya pradesh but then went all out has been campaigning very heavily for the state and a lot rests on his shoulders as a senior leader Kamal Nath of course former chief minister nine times member of parliament from Chindwara he is leading the congress united camp this time got the victory in 2018 can they do that again in 2023 let's go across uh, to for example D jitu patwari of the congress party been a former minister a young face as well can he ensure that this time they will be able to bring the youth together for the congress party narendra singh tomar was the wild card entry he's been a union minister for him to be told to fight state assembly elections and he's ensured that he's done his bit at least with regard to calculations campaigning that is going to be very important uh, vikram mastal very interesting from the congress party has been an actor he in fact played the character of lord hanuman in a film ramayana 2 he's contesting against shivraj singh chauhan so that's a big face also that's coming in and these are of course eventually it is the incumbent chief minister shivraj singh chauhan one in 2003 2008 uh, then again in uh, 
and 2020 when the government returned to Madhya Pradesh. So he's of course facing the biggest challenge of almost about 18 years of his government. Can he become the CM again or will Kamal Nath sweep with the United Congress cadre this time under his belt? And that remains to be seen. Of course, these are the key candidates of Madhya Pradesh 230 constituencies. Back on the ground to Polomi Saha. Right, so 230 assembly segments that are going to pose uh, today between 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. A lot is at stake for the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Congress uh, over here as far as these elections are concerned because it's going to have a direct impact on the results of uh, the Lok Sabha 2024 as far as the state is concerned. Remember, in 2018, while the Congress did come out in, and emerge victorious uh, in the assembly elections, in 2019, just a few months later, as far as the general elections, elections were concerned, the BJP was able to reverse its losses in those elections. Handing it over now to my colleague Himindra Sharma, who's also now joining us live from Bhopal. Himindra, uh, as far as this contest is concerned, uh, there has been internal factionalism in both parties, be it the BJP or the Congress, claimants to the Chief Minister's chair in both parties. But as far as the Congress is concerned, it is seeming more united this time round under the leadership of Kamal Nath. And the BJP, on the other hand, has chosen not to project a face as far as these uh, elections are concerned. So. How do you, of course, uh, see this, uh, you know, the, the way that both parties have decided one to project a chief ministerial face, the other not to project any face? Well, first about the BJP, the uh, Bharati Janta Party has chosen not to project uh, its chief minister uh, face this time around. In fact, a lot has changed since 2018. In 2018, the Bharati Janta Party slogan was Maaf Karo Maharaj, Ab Ki Bar Shivraj Sarkar, Hamare Neta Shivraj. Maaf Karo Maharaj, Hamare Neta Shivraj. Maharaj was Jyotir Aditya Sindhya at that time. And from 2018 to 2023, now the slogan is Madhya Pradesh Ke Man Mein Modi, Modi ke man mein Madhya Pradesh. So Shivra Singh Chauhan is nowhere in the picture and Jyotir Aditya Sindhya has also moved on from being a Maharaj to a Bharatiya Janata Party's leader. So uh, the Congress Party uh, minus Jyotir Aditya Sindhya is facing, uh, it's relatively a united organization this time around. There's no factionalism as such. The only two leaders who are there at the top are Digvijay Singh and Kamal Nath. Occasionally, they have been fighting with each other. They have been issuing statements. For example, there was an incident when a man from Kolaris, who was a former BJP MLA, he had resigned from the BJP and shifted to the Congress Party. He was assured a ticket by Kamal Nath, but he didn't get the ticket. And when they approached Kamal Nath, Kamal Nath was heard on camera saying that you tear the clothes off Digvijay Singh and his son. And thereafter, there was a friendly banter between Kamal Nath and Digvijay Singh on stage. So these two leaders have been fighting uh, with each other occasionally. There has been some factionism, but then they have been projected as Jay and Viru of the Shole film by the Congress Party. They have a long relationship of about four decades. So they are relatively, if we see between the Congress and the BJP, the Congress Party is fighting this election unitedly, more so because there are very little less factions within the Congress. The Bharatiya Janata Party, on the other hand, they have fielded seven members of parliament. These include three ministers and also they have fielded one national general secretary that is Kalash Vijayawargi. Out of these seven members of parliament, Prahlad Patel is a front runner for the chief minister's post if the Bharati Janta Party wins. Naren Singh Tomer, a union minister who's contesting from Dimni, fighting a tough battle in Dimni, whose son's videos have recently come out. Allegations of money laundering, allegations of buying Benami property outside India have been leveled against him. He's in a tough contest in Dimni. He too is one of the aspirants for the chief minister's post. Before he was announced as a candidate for Dimni, he was in fact the head of the uh, election committee of the Bharati Janata Party. He too was taken by surprise. Then there is Kalash Vijayawargi. Kalash Vijayawargi, national general secretary of the party, former minister of the state. He was the one who contested or got Bharati Janata Party to contest elections in West Bengal. The party did come to power but became the opposition party in West Bengal. A tall leader from Madhya Pradesh, but then he again was thrown into Indore number one. Indore number number one constituency, Kalash Vijayawagi pitted against uh, Sanjay Shukla, 
Sanjay Shukla, son of Vishnu Bade, who is the guru of Kalash Vijayavargi. So it's sort of a family affair there. In fact, Sanjay Shukla said that Kalash Vijayavargi, by accepting to contest elections, has killed two people, one his own son's political future and another my political future. And he also claimed that he's sort of son to Kalash Vijayavargi. Kalash Vijayavargi said that he never wanted to contest elections, but since the party has asked him, he's now contesting elections. So there are a lot of aspirants for the chief minister's post in the Bharatiya Janata Party, but who will make it remains to be seen. And then, then there is Narottam Mishra, who was always the number two. He was the one who, who sort of toppled the uh, uh, Kamal Nath government in March 2020. He was the man behind that. He wanted to be the chief minister, but the numbers didn't favor him that time, and Shivra Singh Chauhan was made. So the Bharatiya Janata Party has not announced anyone as its chief ministerial candidate, but has pushed so many chief ministerial candidates into the fray. Shivra Singh Chauhan is no longer the face of the party as he used to be in 2018. Modi is the face of the party. Whether right. they will be able to fight this anti-incumbency remains to be seen. But the Congress, on the other hand, is fighting this election unitedly and they have uh, tried to raise issues like corruption, rampant corruption. Yeah. Absolutely. It remains to be seen, of course, that whether that holds the Congress in good stead come December 3rd or the BJP strategy works for the Saffron Party. Himindra, thank you so much for joining us. Himindra, of course, live from Chindwara. Kamal Nath has already cast his vote from the Assembly segment there. We're slipping into a very short break. Stay tuned. Pooja and I will be joining you on the other side of this very short break with all the live updates from the election battlefield. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. I am probably a man, I am 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 a man, फ्री एंट्री के लिए अभी रजिस्टर करें www.aztec.in/sahit पर या मिस्ट कॉल दीजिए 9310330033 पर Eating right Take a deep dive into the ultimate guide based on new research by nutritionists On what's healthy for you and what's not. Read the full story in this week's issue of India Today magazine. Subscribe now. Kerala public health. All political parties traveling from different parts. Armed with facts. Looking at political facts. She takes the news by its horn. Fierce, bold, and direct, setting the tone for the bigger stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me, Nabila Jamal, on India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at 
सेल्स एट आज तक डॉट कॉम watching india today powered by finest be sustainable change a bnp group company from dc to delhi from la to bombay this sort of misuse of technology doesn't go unnoticed and a lot of the people that the tech today team spoke to seem irate with how the series of unfortunate events have played out have a look The recent video of Rashmika Mandana and Katrina Kaif made using deep fake technology has rocked the entire entertainment industry in India. Sadly, this is not the extent of the misuse of this technology. It can be used to make fake videos of anyone at all and blur the lines between what's real and what's not. does this incident make you you know concerned about you posting your own pictures and all on social media platforms definitely yes the ai technology is letting anyone uh, use your social media image and they can crop it if i can say in a layman language and they can put another person's picture so i think the same thing has happened with katrina kaif also right now like since most of celebrities pictures are there on social media everybody has access to everything so and ai has become like so much powerful like it's very powerful that anybody can do anything since i am a woman and i am there on the social media and i also post my pictures and videos i think it's very concerning that something like this is happening i think it's very dangerous there should be very strict actions that should be taken against it so that it does not happen with somebody else what do you think how can people be safe from such scenario the government has to put it put it in its foot there has to be laws the authorities have to be aware there should be a law in the country i really respect whoever is in charge of the you know the social media whatever it is to please make some strict rules presented by aapka joy bharat ka joy joy e bike co powered by parul university vadodara gujarat Welcome back I and Pallavi Saha continue to bring you this special telecast on the assembly election season for Chhattisgarh now it is the second phase on 70 seats very crucial specifically for the congress party where bhupesh baghel is the incumbent chief minister and they will want to keep this state one of the few states that congress is presently governing across other states as well across the country Pallavi Saha continues to be with us Pallavi uh, unlike Madhya Pradesh this is where the congress is currently has a stronger edge but this is where Uh, the bjp has ensured specifically with regard to the tribal vote to go all out and try to attract the voters as much as possible you tell me how important do you think chatisgarh will be the second phase where bhupesh baghel is also contesting from 
Well, this is extremely crucial as far as the BJP is uh, concerned. The Congress, when it came to power in the last assembly elections of 2018, off the back of a huge majority, it was ending the rule of the Bharatiya Janata Party of the past 15 years. It is a high-stakes battle as far as both the Congress and the BJP are concerned. Like you said, the Congress definitely going into this election with an edge, but as far as the BJP is concerned, the BJP hasn't given up the fight either as well. A very crucial second phase of uh, elections that are taking place right now. Election, in fact, voting started at 8 a.m. this morning. 1.63 crore voters will be deciding the fate of political heavyweights like Chief Minister Bupesh Bagel, his deputy T.S. Singh Deo. And Bagel is, in fact, among 958 candidates contesting for 70 seats that are spread across 22 districts. So a 90-member legislative assembly, 20 seats. Uh, voting has already taken place on November 7th and now 70 seats that in fact are seen polling as we speak across 22 districts in the second phase of uh, these elections. So the Naxal hotbed uh, has already cast its ballot. Now it is for the rest of uh, the state of Chhattisgarh, again, where the tribal population, as you rightly pointed out, Pooja, is a significant lot as well. In fact, as far as the BJP is concerned, that tribal push has been key to as uh, you know its campaign strategies in both states of Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, as also Rajasthan as well. Remember, just a couple of days ago, the Prime Minister was in Ranchi in Jharkhand, where he, in fact, visited uh, the memorial of Bhagwan Birsa Munda. He paid tribute uh, to, of course, uh, the tribal icon. He visited the birthplace of Birsa Munda in Ulihatu village as well, becoming the first Prime Minister to visit Ulihatu. Several schemes, in fact, were launched uh, by the Prime Minister as far as, uh, you know, his visit to Jharkhand was concerned, which included, of course, uh, the Vixit Bharat Sankalp Yatra as well well as uh you know, uh, a program where he gave out close to about 24,000 crore rupees as part of, uh, as part of uh, the particularly vulnerable tribal groups uh, mission as well. So the tribal push has been well and truly on as far as the BJP is concerned. And Chhattisgarh has a significant population as far as uh, uh, the tribal component is concerned. And that has been a huge focus of uh, the BJP in its uh, campaign as well. Several of those uh, seats that will be casting their ballot in this second phase of the election as well. So as far as STs are concerned, specifically to speak about the tribal vote, there are 29 reserve seats in the 90-member Legislative Assembly of the Chhattisgarh Assembly. Let's listen in to various reactions that have been coming in, including that of Chief Minister Bupesh Bagel. Aap maddan karenge to is आपके एक वोट किसानों के मजदूरों के महिलाओं के युवाओं के भविष्य तय करेगा छत्तीसगढ़ किस रूप में आगे बढ़ेगा यह भी आप इस मतदान से तय होगा तो साथियों मतदान करने अपने घर से अवश्य निकलिए मतदान केंद्र पहुंचिए और मताधिकार का प्रयोग करें और छत्तीसगढ़ को सजाने सवारने के लिए आप मतदान करें सर किस तरीके से आप देख रहे हो बीजेपी की स्थिति कितनी मजबूत है पूरे छत्तीसगढ़ में दूसरे चरण का मतदान आज हो रहा है निश्चित रूप से जिस प्रकार से जनता का आशीर्वाद भारतीय जनता पार्टी को मिल रहा है जनता उत्साह पूर्वक परिवर्तन के लिए तैयार है जिस प्रकार से पांच सालों में भूपेश बघेल की सरकार ने छत्तीसगढ़ की दुर्दशा की है हर वर्ग को ठगने का काम धोखा देने का काम किया है और इसलिए जनता पूरी तरह से परिवर्तन के लिए तैयार है और भारतीय जनता पार्टी को भरपूर आशीर्वाद जनता का मिल रहा है तो निश्चित रूप से तीन दिसंबर को जब मतगणना होगी प्रदेश में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार बनेगी और छत्तीसगढ़ खुशहाली और तरक्की की ओर आगे बढ़ेगा किन मुद्दों के आधार पर आपने देखा कि जो पहले चरण की वोटिंग हुई है उसका परसेंटेज काफी हाई रहा है इस बार जो मुद्दे होंगे जो आज मतदान हो रहे हैं कौन से खास मुद्दे बीजेपी लेकर के आगे जा रहे हैं वास्तविकता ये है कि पांच साल में भूपेश बघेल की सरकार ने दुर्दशा की है छत्तीसगढ़ को अपराध का गढ़ बना दिया है नशे का गढ़ बना दिया है धर्मांतरण का गढ़ बना दिया है 
भ्रष्टाचार का गढ़ बना दिया है माफियाओं का गढ़ बना दिया है विकास के सारे काम ठप हैं और ऐसे में छत्तीसगढ़ की जनता परेशान है और छत्तीसगढ़ की जनता परिवर्तन चाहती है भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने अपना संकल्प पत्र प्रस्तुत किया है छत्तीसगढ़ के खुशहाली और तरक्की का पूरा रोड मैप हमने अपने घोषणा पत्र में प्रस्तुत किया है जनता का भरपूर आशीर्वाद और समर्थन हमें प्राप्त हो रहा है परिवर्तन के लिए Okay, so that is of course uh, how the BJP is feeling going into these uh, elections. The second phase of uh, the Chhattisgarh elections uh, are underway at the moment. Polling is uh, underway across 70 assembly segments. Over to my colleague Pooja Shali now, who will take you through the seat share and the vote share as they stood in the past election. All right, so Chhattisgarh Assembly has 90 seats, but today is on 70. 20 had happened on the 7th of November, 70 seats. In total in 2018, how did people vote for the Congress and the BJP? Take a look at this illustration graphic that we have prepared for you. 13 went to the Bharatiya Janata Party, but a whopping 51 went to the Congress Party. It was a good thumping uh, victory, specifically after the 15-year run of Raman Singh from the BJP as the Chief Minister, that uh, when Bupesh Baghel became the CM, it was, of course, a huge moment for the Congress Party. They will want to, of course, continue with that streak, but within the Congress also, remember, there had been factionalism. T.S. Singh Dio was seen as, uh, who's now the deputy CM, that he was uh, given the credit to the victory of 2018. He's now speaking to us. He's also, remember, a likely chief minister candidate, is, is what he's saying. It is delivered on direct benefits to the people, whether it is through schemes for farmers, whether it is uh, whatever has been done for self-help groups in the forest department, forest produce, whether it is for the employed or the unemployed, whether it is in the health sector, whether it is in the education sector, these are things which have benefited the people directly. Uh, what do you think, you know, uh, about the BJP strategy? Because they are attacking you very fiercely, uh, listing many scams. You know, even Prime Minister said that you have committed a scam in the name of Mahadev. So there's liquor scam, alleged these scams. So. Uh, how are you going to counter the narrative which BJP is propagating that this, this Bhupesh Bagel government is a corrupt regime? I hope you haven't included me. <laughs> <laughs> so these are uh, baseless allegations and uh, at most allegations, which is the cheapest and the worst form of politics that could be played. You asked me questions as to what people expected of you and what have you been able to deliver. So the BJP should have been fighting this election on planks of what they would want to do for the people. What is it that they would want to do from the people? We would like to know about uh, Operation Lotus before they talk about anything concerning uh, alleged corruption anywhere else. What is the source of Operation Lotus in this country? First, the Prime Minister, the Home Minister, the leaders in the BJP should come forward and explain that, have that inquired into, seriously, for the people of the country. You were recently elevated as Deputy Chief Minister. Uh, you come from Surguja. There are 14 seats, but there are a number of rebels, you know, for example, from Mahindragarh, Balrampur. Uh, you think you'll be able to deliver as you've been delivering Surguja for the party? Because you said that for the past three terms, you've been clean sweeping this area. So are you confident that you're going to deliver this time also Surguja, all 14 seats to Congress party? We've already tried or tried our best. Uh, and uh, whatever the results come, we accept them and go forward. It's never been 14 out of 14 all the time. Uh, there has been 110 in 77 in favor of the BJP. One, one nine, I think, there were 10 constituencies then. The nine BJP won nine at a point in time. There have been times where the Congress has won seven, eight, nine. There have been times when both have shared seven, seven seats. So it's never the same. And it will never be the same. But, but your critics always say that, you know, you're banking and relying heavily on social welfare schemes, on these direct bank, you know, transfers. Uh, but state has been devoid of any real development. And you're only uh, relying on these freebies, as they call it. You came to Ambikapur from Raipur yesterday. How did you find the road? It was excellent, really. So, uh, you've seen the new medical college here. What is that? You've seen the new administrative building here. What is that? They are part of development of infrastructure from time to time. I could uh, 
count out many things on those lines. Water from a medium scale irrigation project built in the 60s was not reaching the tail. We have been able to get it right to the end. It's 30 odd kilometers of uh, canal uh, where we have been able to get water for the people there. So, uh, Hammer clinics, mm -hmm. uh, 10 are being built up in just this uh, town. Ambikapur town is getting 10. Chhattisgarh is get, getting 364. 364 such uh, clinics. We have gone from six medical colleges to planning for 14. No, so you, you can count any number of things, uh, right from uh, uh, better electricity supply to uh, better... One last question, sir. One last question. One last question. Uh, with the last time when we had a conversation in Delhi, you said that Bhupesh Baghel is my captain and Congress is a united team. Do you still hold that belief or you think that it's a joint leadership that, you know, a collective leadership that is fighting for Congress party and you also are, are you know, a phase or, uh, as far as CM race is concerned? Even in Delhi, I mentioned about the team. It was never one individual. So even if Kohli scores 100, he would not, uh, the Indian team will not reach 397 without Shreya Sayer's century 2 and uh, near half century by Rohit Sharma and Shami's 5 plus wicket haul. So it's a, a misconception. We find it convenient to project T.S. Singhdev. You know, in this region, T.S. Singhdev. T.S. Singhdev is just one person. You know, Sarguja is not what T.S. Singhdev will say and uh, what T.S. Singhdev says will happen. That is not how the world runs. We play a part. Our part may be important. It could be certainly important. So similarly in governance, you have people from time to time leading a team. Okay. So they play their part, and so do the members of the team. We cannot win a match without uh, Shreya Sayer and uh, Shami contributing. Thank you. Thank you for explaining this in, in, in cricket language. And uh, uh, Shami was the man of the match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you gave me the clue. Uh, uh, so that was Mr. T.S. Singh Dev. Singh uh, Dev is also, you. yes, the Deputy Chief Minister. Remember, there was this factionalism contest between him and Bhupesh Baghel, he's the, so to say, uh, former Maharaja also of the Suroja state, has a very strong hold in the Ambikapur constituency and he's against uh, Rajesh Agarwal of the BJP, who's, now, who's also, who's earlier with the Congress party. It's going to be an important battle there in Ambikapur as much for T.S. Singh Dio. Let me now tell you about the vote percentage, the vote share that happened in 2018. It's important for you to know how the voting was earlier can it change in 2023 or how will it influence take a look at this 33 percent went to the bharatiya janata party but the vote share was about 42 percent for the congress party they had a pretty good uh, smooth run uh, after raman singh who was facing anti-incumbency they've managed to come to the power in the government in chattis but can they continue that streak and can they ensure whether it's bhupesh Bagel or t.s singh Dio, that they can come together this time or will there be a third Chief Minister aspirational candidate like we have seen for the Congress in the Karnataka state. But that, of course, will happen if in Congress wins or the BJP manages a clean sweep and back to the guff. Right, so of course uh, that is going to be extremely crucial. Uh, we're looking, of course, at the past vote share and the seed share. But as far as these two states are concerned, while it may have been very easy, it may seem to have called these elections just a few months ago. Since, of course, uh, the elections were announced and the model code of conduct was put in place, the campaigning in itself has yes. turned the elections, turning both of these contests into very close a contest uh, puja we're slipping into a very short break stay tuned because news and updates uh, will continue we'll try and bring you all the latest breakings first here on india today me and my colleagues will be joining you on the other side of this break thank you so much watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company
BJP's T Raja Singh is eyeing a hat trick in Telangana this time. He is a two-time winner from Gosha Mahal constituency. As state of war Telangana hots up, T Raja Singh has trained his guns on Asaduddin OAC, accusing the AIMIM chief of selling minority votes. आज एमआईएम ने 2018 का चुनाव जब आया था वो समय पर भी असदुद्दीन ओवैसी ने दारू सलाम में बैठकर मुसलमानों के वोट को टीआरएस के हाथों बेच दिया जो आज की बीआरएस है 2014 हो या 2014 से पहले के चुनाव हो हर बार गोशा महल माइनॉरिटी के जितने भी वोट है कांग्रेस को वो बेचते थे OAC has hit back, branding T Raja frustrated. Frustration में है, बुजुर्ग है, मायूसी छा गई उन लोगों में और उनको नजर आ रही है अपनी शिकस्त। 2014 में हम नहीं खड़ा किए, मुकेश जी सपोर्ट करे, लेट मुकेश गौर साहब क्यों हार गए? 2018 में कांग्रेस वोट काटी वहाँ पर, आप देखिए कितने परसेंट वोट कांग्रेस ली? A twist in the Gosha Mahal tale has been added by a former neta of OAC's party. Khaja Bilal claims that AIMIM chief is working against minorities. हम पार्टी में रहते हुए सरोदी नवेसी साहब से हमने बार-बार ये पूछा कि गोशा महल से MIM को एक अच्छी सी स्ट्रेटजी बनाना चाहिए और वहाँ पर हम कांटेस्ट करना चाहिए। लेकिन सरोदी नवेसी साहब को पता नहीं ये टी राजा सिंह से ऐसी क्या मोहब्बत है जो उस मोहब्बत के मध्य नजर उन्होंने वहाँ पर कैंडिड Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. The big launches from Google to the festive sales here in India and all your tech queries answered and a lot more on your favorite technology show. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi and this is Tech Today. Well, if Tech Timber was dominated by the iPhone 15 announcement, Tech Toba is all about stock Android from the house of Google. The new pixels are here on Tech Today. It's time to unbox them and let you know how AI is going to be a key feature in the new pixel lineup. The flagship phone which is all set to give some tough competition to the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Samsung S23 Ultra, the Pixel 8 Pro. If you're a fan of stock Android and you've joined the AI revolution, this might be a worthy companion and its younger brother, the Pixel 8. Now both of these come with Google's new Tensor which is a G3 chip but with that G3 processor come a bunch of pros and cons. The pros of course are that you have not seen better AI tech loaded devices in the market. This device is genuinely going to make a lot of people stand up and take notice. The cons are that you know how they say two siblings are the well two eyes of the parent 
That's not necessarily the case. A lot of the features that are available here won't be available here. They're calling it some sort of a paywall, although both devices will come with an unprecedented seven years of software updates. Let's start off with the big boy, which happens to be the Google Pixel 8 Pro. Good morning and welcome. I'm Pooja Shali. It's a special telecast today. It's the election morning. Chhattisgarh second phase. Madhya Pradesh first phase of 230 constituencies and Chhattisgarh 70. We'll be bringing you the special telecast and it's not just me but on the ground. Joining me as co-anchors this morning, Preeti Chaudhary and also Paulami Saha who will continue to bring you the updates. It's the number one election team that India Today is bringing to you. Ladies, stay on with me because first, the headlines. All right, it's the state of war. Madhya Pradesh kicking off. Big, big politicians offer prayers, cast their votes. Shivrat Singh Chauhan makes a big statement, says Bharatiya Janata Party and voters will decide the chief minister's face in the state. In December, I will say that the next Mukhya Mukhya Mantri, Bhavi Mukhya Mantri, Shivrat Singh Chauhan will be on the side of the party. Janata Party will do it. Janata and Party. Pradesh's minister making a big statement after voting says Pakistan will celebrate if the Bharatiya Janata Party does not win. Meanwhile, it is the second phase of Chhattisgarh elections underway amid corruption allegation. TSing they are rubbishing the charges. Stays state government must always work as a team. It's a big moment and crucial for the Congress Party for Chhattisgarh. In other news, in Uttarkashi, 40 workers continue to be trapped for nearly 150 hours. New drilling machines get going, rescue teams execute a plan B. Rescuers are now, we are being told, 60 to 70 meters away. And it's official, Australia has set up a date with India this Sunday at the Narendra Modi Stadium for the ultimate prize in the ODI cricket. Aussies brushed aside South Africa in the second semi-final and it's now over to the finals on Sunday. What a game of cricket. Two terrific semi-finals, but it's Australia that have stood tall under extreme pressure. Co-presented by Aapka Joy, Bharat Ka Joy, Joy E-Bike. Co-powered by Parul University, Vadodra, Gujarat. These are high-stakes elections for Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh, but it's also not just about assembly elections. It's the countdown to 2024 polls. Big key candidates in Chhattisgarh from the Congress, from the BJP, and so in Madhya Pradesh as well. Over now to Preeti Chaudhary and Paulumi Saha for this special telecast on the ground. Preeti, over to you first. Well, thank you and a very good morning, Pooja. But you're right, uh, it is a high-stake election. Five states go into election in this winter and uh, there will be ramifications when it comes down to the big gig in 2024. Uh, I'm in Jaipur. My colleague, Polumi, though, uh, joins us uh, from the Gwalia Chambal Belt, Madhya Pradesh, with its 230 seats going into elections uh, uh, this morning. Uh, two polling, on the other hand, the second phase of Chhattisgarh elections has kicked in with 70 seats in Chhattisgarh going into elections. However, uh, with word just coming in, the second phase of polling in Chhattisgarh as well as the single phase of polling in Madhya Pradesh has been marred by violence. Uh, reports filtering in right now, which we can tell our viewers, uh, in Jabua, 
a Congress candidate, Jabu has Madhya Pradesh viewers, it's a tribal belt uh, and a tribal seat as well. Congress candidate Dr. Vikrant Bhuria has accused the BJP worker of attacking him, injuring his assistant and vandalizing his car. What we have been given to understand in FIR against unidentified miscreants has been registered. In another attempt, word coming in to disrupt peaceful voting an exchange of gunfire has been reported between two groups in Morena's Mirghan village. Two people have been allegedly injured due to the stampede caused after the gunshot. Earlier, the situation turned tense yesterday, late night, when BJP and Congress workers came face to face in Morena. Police had to resort to tear gas shelling to disperse the crowds. This, uh, you know, uh, reports of violence that have been coming in from Morena viewers is the Gwalior Chambal Belt. This was the region of uh, guns, bandits. Right now, the guns and the, might have fallen uh, silent. The bandits might have uh, surrendered. But legacy still holds. Uh, it is precarious, especially where the caste dynamics are concerned. And every polling season, there are reports of skirmishes, gunfire, uh, face-offs, which have turned bloody coming in from this particular belt. What's also interesting uh, is that uh, Morena is where uh, the sitting Agriculture Minister Narendra Tomar is standing from, and I remember I was there just about two weeks ago. It's not an easy battle uh, for Narendra Singh Tomar. This is a belt which is dominated uh, uh, by the Thakur vote, by uh, the OBC vote, and uh, you know even Gujars. But will all right? Uh, but uh, what comes down on the 230 seats in Madhya Pradesh, we'll only know uh, when that last vote is counted. I want to immediately cut across uh, to Narsingpur, where cabinet, uh, sitting cabinet minister uh, Aishwarya Pali, uh, uh, Prahlad Patel is contesting from my colleague Aishwarya Paliwal joining us from there, as well as from the Gwalior Chambal Belt, my co-anchor Polami Saha getting us the latest. But uh, let's cut across to Polami Saha, then we go to Aishwarya Polami. 34 seats in the Gwalior Chambal Belt, where you are right now standing, in the Gwalior East seat, I reckon. That is where Jyotir Aditya Sindhya aunt comes from, and she's contesting on a BJP ticket. Um, interesting dynamics, not very far from you. In the Gwalior Chambal Belt, uh, Morena constituency seen episodes of violence this morning. Uh, you know, Morena quite familiar uh, with, uh, unfortunately, with violence, especially on polling day. What's the scenario? 34 seats, it's crucial. Uh, uh, Polomi, keeping in mind this is the belt, even though uh, Jyoti Raditya Sindhya is not contesting on a ticket, but this election rides on whether he can pull it off uh, with his, uh, you know, the MLAs, the 22 of them, 16 of them come from very this belt. All right, uh, you know, Polami, just coming back to you. More news break coming in right now. Unfortunate news coming in from Chhattisgarh. A Naxalite uh, attack is being reported. IED blasts one after the other on the CRPF and DRG team that were out on patrol. Two CRPF Jawans riding the bike have survived. The team has gone out to provide security to the polling party. Confirmation of two IED blasts have been reported. Naxalites carried out the blast to harm the security forces. Yesterday itself, uh, the Naxalites had put up banners and posters of boycotting voting. This is the second phase in Chhattisgarh. Violence being reported from Chhattisgarh as well. Even during the first phase, uh, there was an IED blast where one CRPF constable had gotten injured once again with what is being reported from Chhattisgarh. Uh, two CRPF uh, jawans have been reportedly been injured in an IED blast. Cutting across immediately, my colleague Rahul Gautam joining us uh, with the latest. Rahul, will you get us up to speed with the latest news break coming in of IED blast? What is the nature of injuries? What are you getting in right now? Well, as far as sources are concerned, they are indicating to us that uh, uh, this blast took, uh, you know, took place this morning. And in fact, uh, as we speak, uh, uh, combing operation is on. Two uh, CRP uh, Jawans, uh, they escaped unhurt and uh, uh, they were riding uh, on a bike. They were going to a polling booth uh, to provide security uh, to, uh, to that particular polling booth. Now, remember, 
uh, Naxalites had given a call to boycott the elections in Chhattisgarh and this has happened in Dhamtari, uh, which you can say one of the uh, Naxalite affected area uh, uh, of Chhattisgarh and as we speak, uh, security forces are on ground, they are, the, the combing operation is on and uh, yesterday also in an un similar unfortunate incident happened, two more IDs have been located, this is what we are learning from our sources, two more IDs have been located in the same vicinity and as we speak, uh, bomb uh, disposal squad, they are already uh, you know, disposing uh, these bombs, uh, these IEDs safely, but obviously this has raised concern as far as security agencies concerned and obviously they are now heightening the security given the fact that 70 assembly seats are undergoing polling uh, today and uh, uh, in fact uh, 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 Mr. T.S. Singh Dev is also here who is the Deputy Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh. Sir, a blast has been reported uh, from Dhamtari. A blast has been reported. Uh, I'll just get a quick word from uh, Mr. T.S. Singh Dev and uh, uh, as far as government is concerned uh, uh, Mr. T.S. Singh Dev uh, in fact, he also said that he has already, uh, since the administration is now in the hand of Election Commission, so uh, the security uh, uh, aspect is now taken care by Election Commission, but uh, uh, adequate uh, security forces are already on ground and uh, a combing operation is on. Two more uh, IEDs have been located and uh, the bomb disposable squad, they are disposing it off. But obviously, uh, this has raised concern and this has uh, led to tightening more security in and across polling booths across the state. Well, you know, Rahul, you're right, but it also flies in the face of the incumbent government because uh, Bupesh Baghel has gone to town in most political rallies where he said he's ended nationalism where Chhattisgarh is concerned. The sheer fact that just for 90 seats, the election still has to be split, where 20 seats of Sukma Bastar went into election in the first phase and the second phase, 70 seats, uh, not uh, without violence. And that's the unfortunate part. Uh, Rahul, I'm going to come right back to you in terms of nature of injuries, where these two CRPF Jawans are concerned. Can you collate it for us and get us the latest? Follow me, I want to get you into this conversation because violence in both states, uh, you know, filtering in in terms of reports. Uh, Jabua, Madhya Pradesh, uh, where there has been a clash between BJP and Congress workers. Morena firing tear gas shelling late last night. Uh, the area mostly prone to violence, especially on polling day. And now in Chhattisgarh, where, you know, the last rally, I remember listening in, Bupesh Baghel said that we've ended nationalism, clearly not on ground. as far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned. The report of uh, the IED blast uh, by Naxalites in Chhattisgarh definitely very, very worrying because uh, these were security personnel who were going in to provide security to the polling uh, parties. It's a huge uh, responsibility and a challenge uh, that they face. Of course, uh, the bulk of the tribal belt, uh, the Adivasi belt, uh, the Naxal infected uh, belt has already cast its vote in the first phase of uh, the assembly elections in Chhattisgarh on November 7th. But of course, uh, you know, there are of course, uh, pockets that are casting their ballot in this phase as well. And that remains a security challenge as well. As far as those incidents from Jabua and Morena are concerned in Madhya Pradesh, again, very disturbing reports over here. As you pointed out, the contest here, as far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned, is to a large degree concentrated to the Gwalior Chambal region in itself because this is where maximum of those defectors who in fact uh, you know went away with Jyotiraditya Sindhya in March 2020 from the Congress to join the Bharatiya Janta Party came from 16 of those legislators 22 who defected to the BJP were from this region it's a grudge fight as far as uh, the Congress and the BJP are concerned obviously the BJP was able uh, to regain some of that lost ground in this region because the Congress swept this region in the last election. But the BJP was able to reclaim some of that lost ground in the November 2020 bipole. But since then, of course, uh, you know, it's been a challenge to keep the House uh, together, especially with, uh, you know, many of uh, 
BJP workers uh, and party office bearers not being very happy with congressmen coming into the party and being given pride of uh, position as well. And so they've switched sides uh, to the Congress party. So it's a huge challenge in this uh, region. And as you pointed out, the caste equations also as well, which make it a very, very interesting election as far as this uh, region is concerned. As far as Murena, I can tell you that the incident of uh, exchange of gunfire, uh, which we're bringing to our viewers, has been reported from Dimni, the constituency from where Narendra Singh Tomar, Union Agriculture Minister, is seeking to be elected. So it has, of course, uh, you know, its own share of challenges. Uh, the minister is facing a very tough uh, battle over there in that uh, seat itself. Uh, but of course, uh, this is adding, uh, you know, security challenges as well. And speaking of security challenges, I believe my colleague Sumi Rajapan is now joining us uh, live as well from Chhattisgarh. Sumi, what can you tell us about reports of a Naxalite attack on a CRPF and DRG team? Yes, absolutely. It's unfortunate. And in fact, uh, the CRPF uh, Javans, the CRPF personnel and the DRG were on a bike when they triggered a low in intensity IED in, uh, uh, in fact, it, it happened in Gallari, uh, Ghatapur Road, which is in Sihava constituency. And this is really unfortunate because this was not anticipated in the first phase of polling when the entire Basta division went into polling. Uh, this was anticipated as it's, it was a Naxal affected area. In fact, this morning as well, Bhindra Navagad, nine polling booths, which are uh, which fall in the extremely sensitive uh, departments or extremely sensitive area. Th these polling booths have already uh, b began voting since 7 a.m. However, in Sihava, where this incident has taken place, the... CRPF and uh, the DRG personnel had gone uh, to the uh, had gone on area domination to make sure that security personnel ha have been uh, combing the entire area to make sure that uh, the polling happened smoothly the way it happened uh, in the first phase. In fact, in the first phase, speaking of the first phase, there were three ID blasts that had uh, been done in Sukhma, Dantewada, and also in Kanke throughout the day. And this was not anticipated in the second phase. And this is really surprising. And in fact, we had also seen how the Naxals had prompted all the villagers in Sukma Dantewada, Bijapur Belt, and in fact, on, in all the adjoining districts to not vote. They had put up a wooden uh, placards in, in and across the villages and asking the villages to completely boycott the voting. However, still the voter turnout uh, was a great barring a few constituencies. In fact, barring Bijapur, where the Naxals have been present at the most amount, in the most amount. And in fact, the uh, voter turnout in Bijapur, which is the most Naxal affected area in Chhattisgarh, it was barely 40%, uh, whereas the entire 20 constituencies voted in huge numbers. So that is that is the impact that Naxals have uh, in the region in uh, Chhattisgarh. And in fact, back in 2018 as well, we had witnessed uh, similar scenes where last minute displacement of polling stations had also happened. However, this time around, it has been peaceful. They have been concentrated to certain pockets. But so far, we've been witnessing high deployment of the CRPF personnel. In fact, this particular polling booth, speaking about this in part in, in Kurudi, where CM Pupesh Baghel is likely to come is likely to come uh, shortly, is in fact well protected and there's a long queue that we are witnessing here, a long queue of male and female voters and in fact remember Chhattisgarh is a state where the uh, female voters have outnumbered male voters. So it is an interesting fight, Naxal's intervention of lot, a lot of uh, Naxal attacks and uh, it, this is an attempt to bring down the voter turnout in Chhattisgarh and it has always been uh, this way. Right. Okay. All right, Sumi, we're going to continue to come back to you. My colleague Sumi Rajapun reporting on the unfortunate incident of IED blast that has taken place. We're going to cut across to Sumi, but let's now shift the focus back to neighboring Madhya Pradesh. Uh, the spotlight on the 230 seats viewers. MP is going to the hustings. Uh, it is uh, a blood feud or a grudge match that you might want to call it between the Congress and the Bharatiya Janata Party, especially of wet, wet, what went down in 2020, where Jyoti Raditya Sindhya scripted that rebellion, walking out with 22 MLAs and into the Bharatiya Janata Party camp. We're going to get you the details, but let's quickly cut across to a number that is coming in right now of the voting percentage, which will give us an idea, and if traditional sophology goes, a possible idea into voting patterns as well. But uh, impressive numbers that are being recorded this morning till 9 a.m., viewers, Madhya Pradesh has already clocked in 12% of voting percentage. And this is only till 9 a.m. It does seem that Madhya Pradesh is ready and uh, heartening to note 
coming out and casting their ballot because till 9 a.m. it's already recorded about a 12 percent which is 11.55 percent voting percentage the last time around we have been given to believe it was way less uh, you know about three percent less than what it is is it an insight into voting patterns we are going to let that be uh, to sophologists but uh, what we can say it's heartening it's impressive the people of madhya pradesh are going out to vote and we urge them to do so what we're also given to understand early this morning uh, you had the chief uh, uh, minister candidate for the Bhar for the Congress party, the former CF who came into power for just about 15 months, Kamal Nath, who cast his vote in his constituency of Chindwara. Not just that, uh, the incumbent sitting chief minister, Shivrat Singh Chauhan, offered uh, prayers at a temple in Sehor, after which he cast his vote uh, while Kamal Nath viewers is standing uh, from his uh, constituency or, uh, you know, um, his stronghold of Chindwara. The incumbent chief minister is contesting from the Budni seat. The chief minister said that voters and the party will choose the next chief minister. Uh, moreover, on the other hand, the likes of Home Minister Narottam Mishra, who's standing from Datiya, not very far from where Polumi is in Gwalia, just on the periphery of the Gwalia Chambal Belt, uh, made a comparison or an analogy, whichever way you might uh, look at it, but polarizing in nature, where he said that Pakistan will celebrate if BJP does not win this election. Remember, uh, it's a litmus test for the BJP's endurance after 18 years in power and the Congress's ability to regain control after what they felt was a stolen mandate in 2020. With the BJP and Congress dominating the election narrative, today's polls, like uh, we said, a classic uh, clash where this bipolar contest is concerned. विकास और जनता का कल्याण मध्य प्रदेश का अभूतपूर्व विकास हुआ है बीमारू राज्य से भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने विकसित और समृद्ध राज्य बनाया है और जनता के कल्याण की जो योजना है वो अद्भुत और अभूतपूर्व है सर बार बार लेकिन छिंदवाड़ा मॉडल बुधनी मॉडल की बात आती है कमलनाथ कहते हैं छिंदवाड़ा आके देखिए बुधनी मॉडल छोड़िए आज भी वो वहाँ पे उन्होंने कहा है कि पैसे धनबल का प्रयोग जो है सत्तारूढ़ दल हमेशा करता रहा है वो अपने हार की भूमिका बना रहे हैं बौखला कांग्रेस के लोगों ने ही शराब और पैसा बांटने का काम किया है कई जगह भारतीय जनता पार्टी के उम्मीदवारों तक पे उन्हें हमला किया है ये बौखलाहट का प्रतीक है जनता बीजेपी के साथ है सतना में भी सीधी रीत रीत सीधी पार, रीत जो पाठक हैं आपकी प्रत्याशी हैं भाजपा की उनके घर पे वो हुआ है राव में भी बवाल हुआ है इसे कैसे देखते हैं सुहागपुर में भी उनने बीजेपी कार्यालय पर हमला किया ये बौखलाहट है कांग्रेस की एम के मन में मोदी ये नारे के साथ आप लोग चुनाव में उतरे थे लेकिन हम देखते हैं कि सभाएं सबसे ज्यादा मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान की मांग जो थी सब थी एक सभाएं आपने 36 दिनों में कर दी तो एमपी के मन में मोदी एमपी के मन में मामा मोदी जी दुनिया के सबसे लोकप्रिय नेता हैं दुनिया के मन में भी है देश के मन में भी है और मध्य प्रदेश के मन में भी है इतना मैं जरूर कहता हूँ कि हमने जो जनता की सेवा की है उससे मध्य प्रदेश मेरा परिवार है मैंने सरकार नहीं चलाई परिवार चलाया है और परिवार की तरह मैं जनता से प्यार करता हूं, जनता मुझसे प्यार करता हूं। लाडली बहनों की बात करें कल आप उनके घर भोजन करने गए आज आप मत डालने जा रहे थे तो उनसे पहले लाडली बहना आपका तिलक करने आ गई ये लाडली बहना का फैक्टर इस बार के चुनाव में कितना काम कर लाडली बहना मेरे लिए राजनीति से ऊपर उठकर है लेकिन इतना मैं जरूर कहूँगा कई बार मैं भावुक हो जाता हूँ उनका अभूतपूर्व प्यार और आशीर्वाद मिल रहा है शिवराज सिंह चौहान अपने आपको किस रोल में देखते हैं पाँव पाँव वाले भैया मामा या फिर भाई मैं मामा भी हूँ भाई भी हूँ लेकिन उससे ऊपर मैं अपनी जनता का सेवक हूँ साढ़े सोलह सालों के मुख्यमंत्री से मैं बात कर रहा हूं शिवराज सिंह चौहान से एक आखिरी सवाल तीन दिसंबर के बाद क्या मैं ये कहूं कि अगले मुख्यमंत्री भावी मुख्यमंत्री भी शिवराज सिंह चौहान ही भाजपा की तरफ से होंगे जनता पार्टी तय करेगी जनता और पार्टी मैंने अपने गांव में वोट डाला है जैसे मैं हमेशा डालता हूँ चौलीस साल से वोट डाल रहा हूँ किन मुद्दों को लेकर के आपने आज वोट किया आज मुद्दा केवल अपने गाँव का अपने खेत का नहीं है मुद्दा मध्य प्रदेश के भविष्य का है और मध्य प्रदेश का भविष्य सुरक्षित रहे ये मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि मध्य प्रदेश के मतदाता ऐसा फैसला करेंगे किस इस बार का चुनाव पिछले बार से चुनाव से कितना फर्क है जो पिछले बार चुनाव था और बहुत फर्क है इस दफे जनता दुखी है भ्रष्टाचार से बेरोजगारी से किसानों की समस्याओं से छोटे व्यापारियों की समस्या से पूरी तस्वीर प्रदेश की जनता के सामने है दूसरा कोई दल जीतेगा तो खुशियाँ पाकिस्तान में मनेंगी इसके लिए आवश्यक है राष्ट्र हित को सर्वोपरि मानते हुए कमल का बटन दबाएं 
कमल का बटन मध्य प्रदेश में जब व्यक्ति दबाएगा तो सेना सीमा पे सैनिक की बाजुएं मजबूत होंगी पाकिस्तान में दहशत होगी कि मोदी जी जीत रहे हैं कमल का बटन दबाने से आतंकवादियों में दहशत होती है और इसलिए कमल का बटन दबाना चाहिए जो भी सीमा पे नहीं जा पाते हैं देश की सेवा के लिए ये एक सेवा का अवसर है सबको कमल का बटन दबाएं और राष्ट्र हित में अपना योगदान करें प्रहलाद तो जी ये एक्सपेरिमेंट है कई लोगों ने कहा कि फेल भी हो सकता है कई कई लोगों ने कहा कि बहुत अच्छा भी चल सकता है इस समय मध्य प्रदेश की स्थिति आपको क्या लगती है क्योंकि नेक टू नेक फाइट लोग कह रहे हैं कांग्रेस और भारतीय जनता पार्टी के बीच पहले से तो ये प्रयोग नहीं है गुजरात में हम ये प्रयोग नहीं और अन्य राज्यों में हम कर चुके हैं हमारे यहाँ पर सांसद या मंत्री चुनाव नहीं लड़ सकता ऐसा नहीं पार्टी तय करती है मैं ही चार लोकसभा क्षेत्रों से अलग अलग जगह से लड़ा हूँ पहली बार विधानसभा का चुनाव लड़ रहा हूँ मैं 2003 में मैंने विधानसभा के चुनाव को बहुत निकट से देखा था दूसरा मौका अब है जब मैं देख रहा हूँ मैं उसकी पुनरावृत्ति देख रहा हूँ और लोगों को जो अतिशयुक्ति लगेगी दूसरी बात मैंने कही कि 2003 में हमने छिंदवाड़ा की आठों सीटें जीती थी आज परिसीमन के बाद सात है मैं आज कह रहा हूँ आपसे कमलनाथ जी भी हारेंगे और सातों सीटें भारतीय जनता पार्टी जीतेगी अब ये लोगों को बड़ बोलापन लग सकता है हम तीन तारीख का इंतजार करेंगे So, of course, you heard from uh, the Madhya Pradesh uh, Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan there, of course, uh, saying that the BJP and the voters of Madhya Pradesh will decide who will be the next uh, Chief Minister of uh, Madhya Pradesh. Hopeful, of course, that he breaks that record of four times and becomes a fifth term Chief Minister of uh, the state of uh, Madhya Pradesh. Handing it over now to my colleague Sneha Mordani, who will take you through how the seat share and the vote share stood in the last election of 2018. Over to you, Sneha. Right. Thank you so much for that, Polymy. And this is India today's election dashboard. All that you need to know about the previous election and what is expected this time around. Who are the star candidates? Who are the VIP candidates that we're going to be talking about? What was the seat share like the last time around? Let's begin by talking about the state of Madhya Pradesh. This is, remember, the heartland of the country. First of all, the seat share the last time around, the last elections. Let's go straight to that first. In the state of Madhya Pradesh, the last time around, BJP got 109 seats, uh, and of course, Congress had 114. Others were at seven. In terms of the vote share, well, BJP and the Congress came absolutely neck and neck. 41 percent each for the BJP and the Congress, as far as the vote share is concerned. Others stood at 18 percent. Let's now talk about the star candidates this time around, as far as various parties, particularly the main contenders. The BJP and the Congress is concerned. Former Chief Minister Kamal Nath from the Congress, political heavyweight from the state of Madhya Pradesh. Apart from that, the BJP has a Kailash, Vijay Vargya here, Pagan Singh, Kulaste again, heavyweight candidates in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Jai Vardhan Singh, the son of Dig Vijay Singh, also contesting, of course, uh, Jitu Patwari, another a senior leader and uh, and and. Uh, Uh, and a ground, uh, in fact, a worker really of the Congress Party, associated with the party for years together. We also have BJP's Pralad Singh Patel, another a star candidate, another VVIP candidate, and Shivraj Singh uh, Chauhan, of course, is uh, uh, the sitting Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh right now. Back to you, Paul Me. All right. Okay, Sneha. Appreciate you joining us, getting us the very latest breaking down the numbers in the studio. But on ground viewers, what it does look like is possibly uh, what it was the last time around. Dead heat. Who will pull through? That's the big question. What we have been Only able to Chittisgarh understand right now. Pradesh voting percentage has already crossed 12 percent. Voting percentage has already crossed 10 percent, uh, 12 percent, where the state of Madhya Pradesh. Uh, Is concerned in terms of fielding the big players. The Bharatiya Janata Party has pulled out all the stops. Viewers, we are witnessing a contest like never before. Seven sitting MPs right now in the fray for an MLA election. Three sitting cabinet ministers representing different castes. If you have Pralad Patel uh, in Narsinghpur representing the Lodi OBC caste, up where Polomi Saha is joining us, Morena. You have Narendra Tomar representing the Thakur Rajput caste. and then you have the tribal vote uh, where uh, from nevas you have uh, faggan singh kullaste so the bjp doing what it can to swing this election but what could be the x factor 
But what could be the X factor in all of this, sir? Many would suggest on ground that it would be the schemes like Ladli Behna Yojana, uh, which the Congress says that uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan copied the narrative set forth by the by the Congress party. However, on ground, uh, will it make a dent enough to pull this election back to the Bharatiya Janata Party? Because just about a month and a half ago, most poll analysts were giving an edge to the Congress, not anymore. Most will bite their tongue before they give an edge to either the BJP or the Congress. Dead heat. And if there are X factors in this election, one of them definitely will be schemes aimed at women like the Ladi Behna Yojana. The other big factor will be the tribal vote viewers. Where will the tribal vote go? Um, history, political history stands testimony in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Whoever pulls in the tribal vote forms the government uh, in Bhopal where the state is concerned. I want to bring in my colleague Polami. If we also have Aishwarya who is tracking the election from Narsingpur seat where Pralad Patel is standing. Uh, Polami, getting you into the conversation, interesting. The Bharatiya Janata Party has not declared a chief ministerial face. They were very clear they were going to put Modi on the ticket, the sitting prime minister. But in the final leg of, uh, you know, the dying hours of the campaign, we did see uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan once again come up and been given prominence. The posters changed a bit where you had, you know, Shivraj Singh Chauhan prominently standing right next to the prime minister in rallies where earlier on the prime minister hadn't mentioned Mr. Chauhan in his speeches. Suddenly, Mr. Shivraj did find favor in election speeches as well. Was there a bit of a rethink from the BJP? BJP is concerned. The BJP has been, of course, you know, uh, you know, strategizing as they went along in terms of this campaign uh, is concerned. If there was any election that was to be going to be decided as far as uh, simply the election campaign was concerned after the elections were announced, then this is going to be one of those uh, elections because the BJP may have gone into this election thinking that the anti-incumbency factor is going to weigh in heavily as far as the party and its prospects are concerned and the anti-incumbency factor against Shivrat Singh Chauhan as well. Uh, you know, the long shadow of uh, corruption scandals like Vyapam, uh, you know, uh, the Patwari recruitment scam. These are, of course, uh, factors that were being spoken about. Remember that Kamal Nath has been alleging, like uh, in Karnataka, that this is a 50% commission government as well. So the corruption uh, shadow, of course, uh, looming large as well. The BJP, of course, uh, recognized all of that and hence has gambled with, of course, uh, fielding of uh, those seven members of parliament, including three union ministers, uh, as far as this election is concerned, not naming a chief ministerial candidate uh, as far as these elections are concerned. Uh, but Shivrat Singh Johan, of course, uh, continues to be the biggest face as far as the BJP is concerned. Maximum rallies uh, that uh, Shivrat Singh Johan, in fact, uh, addressed across uh, the state of Madhya Pradesh. Over 100 of uh, those uh, that the chief minister incumbent did address. So uh, clearly, he continues to be one of their prominent faces. But is it the face that the BJP wanted to bank on going into these elections? That was very unclear. So the BJP has virtually winged it as it uh, strategized for these uh, elections and put Modi on the ticket. But yes, uh, they did recognize that if uh, there was one policy game changer that Shivrat Singh Chauhan had introduced at the end hour as far as this election campaign was concerned, that was the Ladli Behna Yojana and that was having its impact on the ground. You spoke to women on the ground and they f were already receiving the money in their bank accounts so they were already all praises for Shivrat Singh Chauhan. That might have of course prompted a little bit of a rethink. Shivrat Singh Johan hoping, of course, uh, that that rethink is something which uh, fructifies and solidifies itself in terms of the results uh, uh, come December 3rd. All right, uh, Polomi, stay with me. Let's cut across to Himendra Sharma and Aishwarya who are joining us. Aishwarya joining us uh, from Narsingpur, the seat of Pralad Patel, sitting cabinet minister. He might have it easy because he's been fielded on a seat which was held by his own brother who'd set the poll arena for him. However, Himendra, uh, things not so good. Uh, you know, where Narendra Tomar is concerned, where the seat of Marena, at least till the time I was there, most said get fussy hui hai. Himendra first, then uh, Polomi will cut across to Aishwarya. 
Well, Narendra Singh Tomar is fighting a tough battle in Dimni. He, <coughs> the, he's a union cabinet minister and he himself didn't have any idea that he's going to be fielded. Before that, he was searching candidates for Dimni, but one fine day he was told that he had to contest. And after that, one controversy after another came out in uh, Morena and that impacted not just Dimni, but the entire Madhya Pradesh politics because there was a video that came out of his son and there was a man from Canada who came out uh, on record on video saying that his son had invested in land for marijuana cultivation in Canada. Also, money was being ground tripped. He gave that sequence, how it was being done. All these allegations came in the public domain, but the BJP did not defend itself the way it should have. And the only defense for the Bharti Janata Party from Devinder Singh's side was that they lodged a police complaint and there was no action after that. So. We are talking about these scams that have happened in Madhya Pradesh and also uh, the, the, the Ladri Behna Yojana that Shivraj Singh Chauhan has launched. But that is the only thing that the BJP has to showcase. Whereas the Congress, on the other hand, there are several things that are happening in their favor. One is the old pension scheme that we are not talking about. There are a large number of employees who are banking upon this promise of the Congress government to bring back the old pension scheme. That is one. The scams that have happened, that is there. Plus, there is uh, like 22 lakh fresh voters. Unemployment is a major issue in Madhya Pradesh. Unemployment, I mean, the, the, on record, the government in the Vidhan Sabha had said that there are just 21 uh, people who have been provided government jobs out of a registered 39 lakh unemployed youth in uh, employment exchanges across the state. So, unemployment is also a major issue. Uh, that, the corruption scams that we have been talking about. The latest scam that hit Madhya Pradesh was the Patwari recruitment scam that happened just about a couple of months back. Nine lakh people had appeared in that scam and ultimately when the result came out and when the way people were appointed, I mean, given those recruitment letters and when the way they were questioned by the media, the chief minister was forced to put that uh, exam uh, on hold. He said that within a month, a uh, sitting judge would look into it and then the inquiry committee would give it finding. But more than uh, two, three months have passed ever since that scam was put on hold and nothing has happened. So nine lakh families have got impacted by the latest scam. There have been scams like the nursing college scam, various recruitment scams. So Madhya Pradesh, in fact, when Priyanka Gandhi was campaigning in Madhya Pradesh, she was uh, saying that she has a list of over 250 scams. So these scams too is to our uh, major issue in Madhya Pradesh. So what we need to look at is that while the BJP is heavily banking on the Ladli Behna Yojana, Shivra Singh Chauhan is saying that he aims to make Lakhpati Behna Yojana next. The fact is that if you claim that Madhya Pradesh has become a developed state from a Bimaru state, how come we have so many women who need uh, this money for sustenance? How come we have so many families who need free ration for sustenance? These are the questions that the Congress party is raising. And uh, along with it, they are promising that they would also help out women. They will also give uh, gas cylinder for 500 rupees and so on. So uh, an evenly contested election in Madhya Pradesh, but the Bharatiya Janata Party appears to be in some sort of confusion. Right, so it might also seem the Congress might also argue, Hemendra, that as far as uh, the Ladli Behna Yojana is concerned, it's possibly taken a leaf out of the Congress's own book because the Congress promised uh, the Nari Samman Nidhi as well. Going across to my colleague Aishwarya Paribar, who's joining us live from Narsingpur right now, Pralak Patel has cast his uh, vote. How confident did he sound as far as his election is uh, concerned? What is your assessment of the segment from where he's contesting Nars Singapore, Aishwarya. Uh. Well, let me tell you, Paulie, you know, one of the things uh, which he told uh, us in an exclusive interview with India today was that, uh, you know, he believes that 173, now that was, uh, those were the number of seats that the Bharti Janata Party got way back in 2003. And according to Prahlad Singh Patel, this is the number that they will surpass this time. So he believes that close to 180 is something that the BJP will get at this time. He obviously, you know, is uh, saying that all the things that the government has done, the kind of development that has happened, and one thing, the Trump card, which the BJP believes that that they have in their kitty is the Ladli Bhena scheme. And, uh, you know, Paulmi, since morning we have been to a lot of polling booths and I can assure you that, uh, you know, the number of women, uh, you know, voters who have been voting, women are turning up in large numbers. And there's a very famous saying, uh, Paulmi, that, you know, behind every successful man, there is a woman. So there is, uh, you know, a chance that whoever wins, the you know, the woman voter might actually become the swing voter this time in the state of Mad Madhya Pradesh. And this is something that both Shivraj Singh Chauhan as well as the Bharati Janata Party are now hoping on and also banking on. They believe that the kind of work that they have done and the kind of money that has gone into the accounts of women is something that will be in their favor. On the other side is the Congress party which is now saying that it was they who actually won uh, way back in 2018 but uh, you know 
We all saw what happened. So Congress obviously banking on the fact that it's been 18 years of Bharti Janata Party government here. They are believing that now is the time for change. But yes, we are seeing, uh, you know, the water turnout also pretty high at the moment. We are expecting the water turnout to go up and a tussle, a tough, tough tussle, Paul, me at the moment uh, here in the state of Madhya Pradesh. All right, Aishwarya, interesting. Aishwarya, my sorry. colleague reporting uh, from Narsingpur. That is the Mahakaushal region, 47 seats there, viewers. The tribal vote holds sway. This is also the area of influence of Kamal Nath. He comes from Chindwara, not very far from Narsingpur. So to field a cabinet minister right in the neighboring district of Chindwara, the BJP would write to cut the influence of uh, Kamal Nath in Mahakaushal. But interesting dynamics, Polumi and I back with you in a short break. Do stay with us. watching India Today, powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. Wo nagme, wo sheer, wo kisse, latife, wo kisse goi, wo mazahiya baate, filmi gafshap, kitabu ki dunya, aur upar se Delhi ki gulabi sham. Yahi to hai jiska ham sab intezar karte hain. Jaane kaise guzar di maine, zinda hota to mar gaya hota. To ab sabhi se hogi mulaqat. साहित्य आज तक 24 से 26 नवंबर मेजर ध्यानचंद नेशनल स्टेडियम नई दिल्ली फ्री एंट्री के लिए अभी रजिस्टर करें www.aajtak.in/sahitya पर या मिस्ड कॉल दें 9310330333 Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics and insights that matter. Join India today now. On WhatsApp, scan the QR code. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at Sales at ArjTag.com Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. watching India Today, powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. The world of skincare is rapidly changing with new power ingredients making way. For instance, retinol can soon be passe probably thanks to Bakuchio, which does the same job as retinol with minimal side effects. Even Deepika Parukone stands it. Retinol is not well tolerated by many, causing intense sensitivity to some. 
Bakuchi oil, on the other hand, can be called retinol's gentler cousin, which is natural, less irritating, and a vegan alternative. Deep exfoliating scrubs are now replaced with peeling pads with glycolic and salicylic acid, which is Dermat approved. I tried them and found them even better than the in-clinic peels. FCL, for instance, is specially formulated for the Indian skin. You know, uh, acid pads don't suit every skin. You have to take advice, professional advice, before you start using them, because some skins just react to them. And if it suits you, I think once in two weeks is good enough, not more, more frequently than that. Natural is overrated. Everything natural is not good for your skin. Even poison ivy is natural. Does that mean you start applying or having it? No, right? If you are trying to look at natural options, look for products that are of medical grade that contain only pure, high quality ingredients that are natural but far more concentrated to help treat and heal with myriad skin concerns. My personal favorite is vitamin C serum and an active serum that treats the skin well. watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company and we have some news just coming in the Prime Minister has spoken on the Israel Hamas war Prime Minister Modi has condemned the killing of civilians in the conflict he says India has sent aid to Gaza after India remember voted against Israel occupation in the UN the Prime Minister's Big statement on the war. भारत ने 7 अक्टूबर को इजराइल में हुए जदन्य आतंक की हमले की निंदा की है। हमने रिस्ट्रेंट के साथ ही डायलॉग और डिप्लोमेसी पर भी जोर दिया है। इजराइल और हमास के कॉन्फ्लिक्ट में सिविलियंस की मौत की हम कठोर निंदा करते हैं राष्ट्रपति महबूद अब्बास जी से बात कर हमने फिलिस्तीन के लोगों के लिए मानवीय सहायता भी भेजी है भारत ने गौरव सावंत इज नाउ जॉइनिंग अस विद द वेरी लेटेस्ट ऑन दैट गौरव इंपॉर्टेंट स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी दिस मॉर्निंग ही इज क्लियरली एम्फसाइज दैट दे स्टैंड फॉर ट्रूथ एंड ऑफ कोर्स दे सपोर्ट to the victims, particularly the civilians in this war, uh, and referring to uh, those who are suffering in Gaza, essentially. Uh, the Prime Minister has mm. uh, is the voice of the Global South, uh, and yes. he was speaking about, uh, you know, uh, what Global South is seeking. Uh, he's talked about seeking restraint, but it's restraint on both sides. It's not just Gaza or not just Israel. Uh, India has a very balanced approach here, uh, 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 Sneha. India's approach is India has condemned the terror attack that took place on Israel on the 7th of October. India also stands with people of Gaza in sense of uh, humanitarian aid being provided uh, to uh, the West Bank, uh, humanitarian aid being sent to the Palestinian Authority um, uh, and uh, aid which is meant for the people of Gaza. So, yes, restraint, dialogue and diplomacy is the way forward but india very clearly not taking any sides in this conflict seeking a resolution through dialogue and diplomacy and asking all to exercise restraint sneha i'm going to thank you gaurav for getting us those details gaurav savant with his perspective on that so india of course has called for de-escalation and the need to progress in fact dialogue is the only way forward is what has been said time and again by India that has also in fact sent aid to Gaza. We're shifting our focus back to the elections. Let's take a look. Co-presented by Aapka Joy, Bharat Ka Joy, Joy E-Bike. Co-powered by Parul University, Vadodra, Gujarat.
Two states today, viewers, are casting their vote. That includes Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh, of course, casting its vote in the second phase of uh, elections. It's a two-phase election. The first phase is already done and dusted. 20 assembly segments that cast their vote on November 7. Today, of course, out of the 90-member Legislative Assembly of Chhattisgarh, 70 assembly segments are seeing voting, which in fact commenced at 8 a.m. this morning in Chhattisgarh. It's a big political battle between the Congress, the ruling Congress, and the Bharatiya Janata Party, especially because a lot is at stake for the incumbent Chief Minister Bhupesh Bhagel. Remember, last time round, in 2018, the Congress ended the 15-year rule of the Bharatiya Janata Party with an absolute majority and they formed a government. They hope, of course, uh, to be re-elected into power. Bhupesh Bhagel has a lot at stake, of course. He is contesting from Patan and then, of course, is his deputy, T.S. Singh Deo, who is contesting from Ambikapur. So, Many big, heavy political, uh, you know, participants as far as these elections are concerned. The former chief minister of uh, the state, Dr. Raman Singh, of the Bharatiya Janata Party, he, of course, uh, saw his assembly segment go to pose in the first phase of the elections. And today, of course, like I said, 70 out of the 90 assembly segments of uh, Chhattisgarh are polling at the moment across 22 districts. Over a crore voters are casting their ballot in the second phase of uh, these elections. Extremely, extremely crucial as far as Congress is concerned. And while many may have called the election in the Congress's favor earlier on, the contest has become much, much closer in the past month or so. Sumi Rajapan, my colleague, is now joining us live from Durg in Chhattisgarh. Sumi, there have been some reports of violence, uh, unexpected, as you were telling us, in the second phase of the election, especially, of course, uh, that Naxal impact uh, that we felt as far as the election was concerned on the CRPF and the DRG team as well. But as far as the election is concerned, give us a sense of the polling percentage at the moment and how smoothly is it going on across the 70 assembly segments. Yes, absolutely. The polar, the uh, voter turnout is 5.71 across Chhattisgarh, and the maximum voting has happened in the Garyaban district and Shakti, where more than 10% of voter turnout has appeared at 9 a.m. And this is a part of where we are at. And in fact, in part, uh, the polling percentage is 5.78%. And this is certainly very uh, discouraging as uh, there, there, uh, there. There is no excitement that we can spot here. As you can see in our visuals, the uh, polling station is quite deserted. The women are standing in less numbers. The male voters here have outnumbered the female voters. However, that's not the case uh, if we talk about Chhattisgarh. And in fact, this particular polling station is important, keeping in mind that uh, Bhupesh Bhagil, the chief minister, will come here with his entire family at 12 a.m. But as you were speaking about the Naxal incidents, in fact, these Naxal incidents have been uh, raking up time and again. And in fact, in the first phase of polling as well, there were three IED blasts that had taken place across several districts in Bastar and it was anticipated in the Bastar division as there were heavy security deployment uh, that had put in place. In fact, 60,000 CRPF and DRG personnel and Chhattisgarh police personnel were deployed despite that three IED blasts had taken place. In fact, this in this particular uh, polling as well. We had seen how in the night uh, twin IED blasts took place and they triggered low intensity uh, blasts. However, the CRPF and the DRG personnel have received no scratches. Uh, but what we are also picking up that they were in the demining exercise. They were also trying to make sure that the elections will run smoothly. And as you were saying that this phase is going to be extremely crucial for the uh, Congress, especially because all the 70 assembly constituencies where they had outperformed themselves uh, back in 2018 is going to be extremely crucial for the party. BJP is also uh, uh, going all guns blazing at the Congress and in fact we heard uh, uh, T.S. Singh Dave uh, taking a jibe at the CM and said that Congress is uh, in fact uh, fighting this election under collective leadership and same goes uh, with the BJP as well. But they have given everything uh, that the farmers, uh, the youth and the women voters wanted. Every scheme, every lollipop has been offered by both the parties. The desperation is certainly quite evident in uh, Chhattisgarh and in fact uh, Chhattisgarh uh, was extremely, uh, you know, eventful on Diwali, as on Diwali, most of the women voters were happy on receiving an announcement by the Chief Minister Bhupesh Bagel, who said that Griha Lakshmi Yojana will come in place once the uh, Congress comes back in power. And that happened the last minute. It was, uh, in fact, uh, before Diwali, a week back, 
the Congress had released its manifesto with 20 promises. That was a last-minute announcement that had come to counter the BJP's Mahatari Yojana. So that that certainly indicate how the women voters, uh, the, the, who have outnumbered the male voters in the so state, obviously it's been a be race. It's been a race to offer to freebies to the electorate, both by the Congress and the Bharatiya Janata Party in these elections. Be it in Chhattisgarh, be it in Madhya Pradesh, be it in Rajasthan as well, which goes to polls in November 25th. So me, thank you so much for joining us with that update from Chhattisgarh. Not very brisk polling that's taking place. It's very so slow paced right now across these 70 assembly constituencies. Listen in to this exclusive interaction that my colleague Rahul Gautam had with Deputy Chief Minister of the State, T.S. Singh Deo. What do you think, you know, uh, about the BJP strategy? Because they are attacking you very fiercely, uh, listing many scams. You know, even Prime Minister said that you have committed a scam in the name of Mahadev. So there's liquor scam, alleged these scams. So uh, how are you going to counter the narrative which BJP is propagating that this, this Bhupesh Bagal government is a corrupt regime? I hope you haven't included me. <laughs> you said. <laughs> so these are uh, baseless allegations. And uh, at most allegations, okay. which is the cheapest and the worst form of politics that could be played. You asked me questions as to what people expected of you mm. and what have you been able to deliver. So the BJP should have been fighting this election on planks of what they would want to do for the people. <coughs> What is it that they would want to do from the people? We would like to know about uh, Operation Lotus before they talk about anything concerning uh, alleged corruption anywhere else. What is the source of Operation Lotus in this country? First, the Prime Minister, the Home Minister, the leaders in the BJP should come forward and explain that, have that inquired into seriously for the So that was a very interesting interaction that my colleague Rahul had with T.S. Singh Deo, where he seemingly distanced himself from, of course, the controversy surrounding Bhupesh Bagel and the Mahadev app scam. We're slipping into a very short break. Stay tuned because our election updates on the other side of this break will continue and we'll bring you all of those updates first in live here on India Today. watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Indians are celebrating this festive season with Apple this year. According to reports, for the first time ever, iPhone sales have crossed the 15 lakh unit mark in just the first week of this festive season. And though iPhone 15 is really the latest model, it's actually the previous 13 and 14 models which are flying off the shelves. It's not just the iPhone, other top-end handsets are also in huge demand. In fact, analysts here say the festive sales are being driven by premium phones this year. On Flipkart, premium segment sales grew almost 50% this year, driven by the iPhone 14 and Samsung Galaxy S21. On Amazon, the segment zoomed 200% on higher sales of iPhone 13 and Galaxy S23. The online retailer's Aspera report has clocked gross merchandise sales of 47,000 crore rupees in just the first week, growing at least 19% over the first week of 2022 festive season. And of this, 67% or nearly 32,000 crore rupees is due to mobiles, electronics and large appliances. Interestingly, it's the top-end smartphone segment which is really thriving. The mid segment is also growing, though the sub-15,000 rupees segment is shrinking this festive season. Analysts say that this could be, in part, indicative of the fact that rural and small-town India have not yet really emerged from their economic uncertainties of the last couple of years. In fact, a study has, however, noted a boom in sales of 5G-enabled handsets, especially in the 10 to 15,000 rupee price band, this is because companies like Samsung, Realme, Vivo have all launched phones in this very segment. According to Flipkart, 
Its big billion sales saw premium smartphone segments grow a whopping 1.7 times over last year. There was a 50% rise in customers opting for exchange schemes and a 160% rise in customers going for no-cost EMIs. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. While the Hollywood loves some of the ice clinical medical grade skincare, it is a luxury buy for your skin due to the high price points. Fire and Ice Facial is trending too. Follow this process, always cleanse, treat, heal and protect. That's so 2023. Speaking of protect, sunscreen is super important. The ones with silicon with the PA++++++ that is four pluses are key. A more you know powerful PA means your sunscreen is also equally powerful. So, if you are buying a PA triple plus or PA four times plus, it means your sunscreen is giving you optimal, you know, uh, safety against UV rays. But hang on, a sunscreen is not just enough. What about the blue lights? These cause severe damage and age the skin. Hence, you can add a blue light protector just before your sunblock, like a caro oil. That is skincare 2023 for you. And the carrot oil or the caro also has antioxidant properties for anti-aging, for smoothening the skin, for improving the quality, the texture, the shine in the skin. And it beautifully blends with this, is absorbed by the skin and cuts the blue light. Net Net, some of the best brands for skincare, the ones that are medical grade, gentle yet effective. Always speak to your doctor and get prescriptions. Our picks for the most effective skincare for Indian skin in the luxury range include Ice Clinical, FCL, Cesterma, and Bioderma. In the affordable range, Cerafil and Sebamed. In New Delhi, Chethi Narula for Lifestyle Bureau India today. watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Hello, very, a very good morning. You're watching India Today TV. Madhya Pradesh is going to polls and so is Chhattisgarh, the second phase of elections. A polling in the state of Chhattisgarh. We're continuing to keep a very close eye on all of these developments from both the states of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. First, a quick check of headlines in this edition. State of war, Madhya Pradesh kicks off. Big wig netas offer prayers and cast their vote. Shivrat Singh Chauhan makes a big statement as BJP and voters will decide the chief minister face in the state. In December, I will say that the next Mukhya Mantri, Bhavi Mukhya Mantri, will be Shivrat Singh Chauhan from the Bhajpa. The people will do the party. The people will do the party. MP Mantri makes a big statement after voting, says Pakistan will celebrate if BJP doesn't win. If any party will win, then we will win in Pakistan. It is necessary to be the king of the state, the king of the king of the king of the king of the king. Second phase of Chhattisgarh elections underway as well amid corruption allegations, TSDO rubbishes the charges, says State government must always work as a team.
The harrowing ordeal for 40 workers continues. 40 workers have been trapped, remember, for nearly 150 hours. New drilling machines get going. Rescue teams execute Plan B rescues now 60 to 70 meters away. This in Uttarkashi. And in some sporting action, Australia has set up a date with India this Sunday at the Narendra Modi Stadium for the ultimate prize in ODI cricket. The Aussies brush aside South Africa in the second semi final. What a game of cricket! Two terrific. Co presented by Aapka Joy, Bharat Ka Joy, Joy E Bike. Co powered by Parul University, Vadodara, Gujarat. We have some news just coming in. Karnataka Mantri has sparked off a fresh controversy saying that Congress brought in more Muslim leaders. The minister says, BJP says, Namaskar to Muslim ministers. We are now in the MLA electorate. Muslim MLA, 17 seats in the 17 seats. After 9 seats in the 17 seats, there are 5 seats in the 17 seats. Zameer Ahmad Khan has been made in the 3 seats of the portfolio. Rahim Khan has been made in the 3 seats of the portfolio. Rahim Khan has been made in the 3 seats of the portfolio. Salim Ahmad has been made in the 3 seats of the portfolio. Now, in the same time, Nasir Ahmad has been made in the 3 seats of the political security. Today, there was no one in history in Karnataka. There was no one in the speaker. Today, the speaker is going to be the Congress party, UT Khadar. साहब को आज अच्छे अच्छे जो बीजेपी के लीडर है ना आके हमारे यूटी खदर के साथ साथ नमस्कार करके खंडा चाहिए वो बनाने वाली कौन कांग्रेस अनगा इस गरिमा स्मॉल डिटेल्स ऑन दैट सूर्य अनगा इन फैक्ट द मंत्री इसेंशियली इस सेइंग दैट द कांग्रेस इस यू नो रिवॉर्डिंग पीपल सिंपली ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ just appeasement and nothing else that Congress follows. Well, that's right, Sneha. Even the BJP's newly appointed state president, Vijendra, has condemned this, saying that Zamir Ahmed, being such a tall minister, senior leader, these kind of communally sensitive words should not have come out of his words. It's sort of, you know, you know, it's a sort of condemnation that we are seeing from Vijendra as well. But Zamir Ahmed Khan, he was addressing an election rally in Telangana where he was listing down the names of Muslim leaders and the kind of portfolios held by them. And while talking about that, he said that under the Congress government, we have the spoke, you know, we have the speaker position that is being held. By UT Khadar, and now the BJP leaders have no choice but to stand up, fold their hands, and say Namaskar Saab to a Muslim leader. That is the situation of BJP. Is you know is how Zamir Ahmed Khan has tried to mock the BJP by saying this. Well, of course, it's a very controversial statement given the fact that Zamir Ahmed Khan is a minister. He you know he's holding a plum portfolio. He's a minister of housing. He's a minister of uh, uh, you know of the Minority Welfare Board. These kind of communal words coming out of his mouth is truly controversial and the one to be questioned for. We. We will, you know, we will be getting more reactions from the BJP as well and JDS as to how they perceive this. Thanking you for the moment, Anaga getting us up to speed with that as far as those controversial statements on the Mantri in Karnataka is concerned. Well, days ahead of assembly elections, a fresh debate has erupted over bulldozer model now in Telangana. Two days after state BJP chief G. Kishan Reddy claimed that the bulldozer will be used against criminals who have illegally grabbed the lands of poor Muslims. AIMIM Chief Pasawad Inovesi has slammed the state BJP chief, claiming that both BJP and Congress only know how to divide the communities. Ovesi said BJP's only job is to demolish, which is, uh, which is not going to happen or work in Hyderabad. Accusing the Congress of doing politics over the bodies of victims in Nampali fire, Ovesi added that it was his party that saved lives during the tragic incident. Earlier, G. Kishan Reddy had accused the AIMIM of grabbing land for poor. He's asserted that UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath's bulldozer model will be implemented against such criminals as well. The leader of Kishan Reddy has seen the statement of Telangana's president. He is saying that if the BJP will come to the power, then we will have to put the bulldozer in the old city. Tell us what is the fault of them from the old city. 
इनसे पहले एक उनका एक प्रेसिडेंट था उन्हें बोला मैं सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक करता हूं पुराने शहर पे उसको नहीं हुआ उन्हें टाइम टाइम हो गया अभिनु आए अभिनु आए के बोल रहे मैं बुलडोजर इस्तेमाल करता हूं जैसा यूपी में इस्तेमाल किया गया हम बीजेपी के लोगों को बताना चाह रहे हैं कि यहां बुलडोजर काम नहीं करता या मोहब्बत काम करती है या तुम्हारी नफरत काम नहीं करती या मोहब्बत काम करती है तुम नफरत की राजनीति करते हो तुम तोड़ना तुम्हारा काम है बुलडोजर ला के घर को तोड़ देंगे अरे क्यों तोड़ेंगे घर को आप किसी का बसा बसा है घर आप तोड़ना चाहते आप वोट नहीं मिल रहा तो वोट कैसा लेना चाह रहे हम बुलडोजर से घरों को तोड़ देंगे पुराने शहर के ये नफरत की बातें बीजेपी करती है Abdul is getting us more details on that story Abdul in fact the bulldozer matter of this issue this controversy is an emotive issue in fact and that's the reason why OBC has had to come in and say that this is BJP that just believes in the politics of destruction and targeting one particular community Well the uh, AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi uh, yesterday had lashed out to a statement that was given by uh, G Kishan Reddy where he had uh, stated that uh, many uh, you know uh, muslim uh, uh, for muslim properties or lands have been grabbed by aimim and when uh, bjp is voted to power they will use the up bulldozer as uh, in the old city of hyderabad to clear or demolish all the commercial complexes or shadi khanas that they have uh, uh, you know uh, um, uh, made uh, using uh, on these uh, poor muslims lands is what he meant to say uh, reacting to this uh, aimim chief asaduddin owaisi yesterday in a public meeting i uh, said that uh, Uh, in old city or in hyderabad uh, it is love uh, that uh, is you know uh, 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 admired by people and not hatred and this hatred uh, pol- uh, uh, you know politics of hate will not work in uh, old city of hyderabad now citing an incident where recently in the nampally a uh, fire accident uh, where uh, nine people have lost their life uh, in the fire tragedy that had taken place aimim chief asadur oisi uh, told that his people his party workers reached the spot 10 minutes uh within uh, the uh, you know uh, the incident was uh, reported at that uh, particular spot and they started rescuing people they did not uh, uh, consider of what religion they were a uh, 18 months old baby who was a non muslim uh, who was residing in that uh, uh, particular house was also rescued among the 15 to 16 who were rescued by the party workers the nampally candidate who is contesting for this upcoming election majid hussain also reached there within 15 minutes and then they have alerted the fire engines who reached on the spot and helped the family Uh, who uh, were who were you know rescued from the top floors of the building so this is what the mim does this is what the majlis does not considering the ma- minorities or muslims in particular but they work for all the community is what he meant to say over to you thanking you for the moment abdul bashir getting us those details as far as that controversy over the issue of bulldozers rolling in telangana is concerned amid massive electioneering political war political war rooms rather are serving as nerve centers becoming crucial to read mood of voters and formulating strategy what are the key components of a war room how do they really work take a look at this special report the stage is set for the massive telangana battle amid hectic electioneering political war rooms are serving as nerve centers becoming crucial to read the mind of voters and formulating the strategies tracking netas linking them to voters and the high command war rooms are key in forming social media campaign strategies for each seat idea is to get pulse of people of telangana just address the real issues then tell people that what we are going to give and ensure that message is delivered to each and every person of telangana and we get the feedback which is again converted into strategy we are touching the pulse of people of telangana and now next 15 days also you will see our focus is completely six guarantees we know that people of telangana they are voting for change the laptop warriors of these war rooms make sure they track politics at the micro level so 119 constituencies we are monitoring them very efficiently and what is the narrative that we are going to build in this media war room we are going to share with them and then we have a day to day you know every 3 hours we will be updating they have also some uh, legal team and uh, social media also is very very active around 50 people are working day and night and uh,
Well, we're going straight to these pictures of, in fact, uh, MP uh, Jyoti Raditya Sindhya, in fact, who is just about to cast his uh, vote. In fact, we'll get, uh, these are pictures that you see live on your screens right now where Jyoti Raditya Sindhya is all set to cast his vote. In fact, a few moments ago, he'd also put out a tweet saying that uh, everybody must vote and exercise uh, the power of the vote that they have and to choose a BJP government once again in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Let's try and listen in. In fact, Palmi Saha is getting us more details on that story. These are pictures, in fact, coming in from Gwalior there, where Jyotiraditya Sindhya is extremely important in the BJP scheme of things now. Palmi, given that it was because of him and the way in which he worked essentially that the Congress government was brought down in the year 2020. He's all set to cast his vote. That's right. Uh, Union Civil Aviation Minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya has arrived at uh, the polling station in Gwalior East to cast his uh, vote. This is uh, right next to the palace, uh, the Jai Vilas Palace, which uh, belongs to the erstwhile royal family of uh, the Sindhyas. You can see, in fact, uh, the media jambori, which is present over here clearly. As you pointed out, Sneha, a very prominent and an important player. In fact, as far as uh, you know, MP is concerned, many here describing this contest between the BJP and the Congress as a grudge fight between the two parties and that in fact is a fight which was scripted by Jyotra Ditya Sindhya when he defected to the Bharatiya Janata Party from the Congress Party in March 2020 along with 22 sitting legislators of the Congress Party bringing down the 15 month old Kamal Nath government in Madhya Pradesh in the subsequent bipoles that happened in in fact uh, Madhya Pradesh in November 20, the BJP, of course, 2020, the BJP, of course, was able to regain some of that lost ground, especially here in the Gwalior Chambal region where I am, because out of those 22 legislators, Neha, 16 legislators were from this very region itself. The BJP was able to pull away nine seats in the bipoles that were conducted in November 2020. And the BJP, of course, came out much, much more stronger as far as... Uh, its vote bank was concerned and its vote share was concerned in the Lok Sabha elections, of course, in 2019. But in 2020, it was able to form government again in Madhya Pradesh because of Jyotra Ditya Sindhya's rebellion. And much has been said about the Gwalior Jambal uh, region and its significance. Much has been written about it as well in the run-up to these elections. You saw very recently the sort of remarks that Priyanka Gandhi made against Jyotra Ditya Sindhya. It's it seemed very personal, it seemed very betrayal, uh, uh, bitter. The acute sense of betrayal, as far as the Congress is concerned, being echoed and in, in a way being uh, you know, put into words by Priyanka Gandhi over there when she in fact said, Ki kad mein chote hai, par Jo arrogance ka kad hai, wo kafi bada hai. So clearly taking pot shots at Jyotiraditya Sindhya, he of course retorted through a tweet and said it was completely uh, uncalled for and unfortunate that she was making such a remark. She's a part-time leader. And because of course Priyanka Gandhi in fact uh, pointed fingers at the Sindhya family and their tradition, as she said, of betrayals, alleged betrayals, Jyotiraditya Sindhya hit out hard saying this is a family that fought the British this is a family that fought the Mughals. This is the legacy of uh, the Maratha Sindhya family. And this is a legacy that she's trying to tarnish when her own family is a family that has ceded land to the Chinese, that has capitulated before other foreign powers. And so she shouldn't be speaking about it. Shibrat Singh Johan also joined voice with Jyotra Ditya Sindhya there in his uh, defense and in the defense of uh, the Sindhya family name. Hemanta Biswa Sharma attacked Priyanka Gandhi as well. So this happened in the last leg. Priyanka Gandhi, of course, was addressing the crowds in Datya, which is not very far away uh, from here from where, in fact, Narota Mishra is uh, contesting the sitting Home Minister of the state. He's contesting from falls in this very region of uh, uh, Gwalior Chamber. So it's extremely, uh, you know, personal as far as this uh, contest is concerned, as far as the BJP Congress is concerned here in Madhya Pradesh. And because it was Jyotra Ditya Sindhya, the scripture, that rebellion, the defection from the Congress to the BJP, it all 
all boils down to this one key player. He, of course, went on to become a union minister, a Rajya Sabha member of parliament. He's ensured that many of those loyalists have been given tickets in these uh, elections. But there are those who are grudging it as well because there were sitting legislators, some 16 of those at that point of time in the bipoles, nine of those won, and only nine of uh, those who defected with Jyotiraditya Sindhya have been given a ticket. Okay, let's try and get in a word from him. Just one second. Ajay. Okay, in fact, we're trying to get in a word from Jyotiraditya Sindhya. Paul Misaha on ground zero, getting us up to speed with all the developments. And these are pictures, in fact, of Jyotiraditya Sindhya, minister. And the most, at one point in time, one of the popular leaders of the Congress party in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Remember, considered extremely close to the Gandhis. Aaj Praja Tantra aur Lok Tantra ka jo ek utsav hai. थोड़ा सा अगर फैल थोड़ा सा अगर फैल जाए जी 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 महाराज भाई नीचे करो आईडी चेहरा दिखना तो यार करिए चालू करिए महाराज अरे नीचे कर लो आज प्रजातंत्र और लोकतंत्र का जो एक उत्सव है मतदान सबसे बड़ा कार्य प्रजातंत्र में नागरिक का होता है आज उस मतदान करने का सौभाग्य मुझे प्राप्त हुआ और मुझे पूर्ण विश्वास है कि प्रदेश की जनता अपने भविष्य अपना विकास अपनी प्रगति सुरक्षित और निरंतर रखने के लिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी को पूर्ण बहुमत के साथ इस चुनाव में कहा है मैं ज्योतिष नहीं हूं मैं सीट्स का नंबर कभी नहीं देता लेकिन पूर्ण बहुमत की सरकार भारतीय जनता पार्टी की अवश्य जनता के आशीर्वाद के साथ ही बनने जा रही है पार्टी बहुत बहुत जिम्मेदारी वही है जिम्मेदारी मध्य प्रदेश के नागरिक के रूप में है विकास और प्रगति के सफर को सुनिश्चित करने का ही है और मुझे पूर्ण विश्वास है कि प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में डबल इंजन की सरकार पूर्ण रूप से मध्य प्रदेश को एक नई विकास और प्रगति की उड़ान पर सुनिश्चित ले जाएगी पार्टी हर बहुत 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 धन्यवाद मैंने पहले से कहा है मैं सीएम के रेस में नहीं हूँ ना मैं कभी था ना आज हूँ आप लोगों ने बार बार मुझे पूछा है 2013 में भी 18 में भी और आज भी पूछ रहे हैं तीनों बार मैंने कहा है कि मैं सीएम के रेस में नहीं हूँ ये रेस कुर्सी का नहीं है ये रेस विकास का है ये रेस प्रगति का है और ये रेस जनता का विश्वास सुनिश्चित रखने का है कुर्सी का रेस कांग्रेस की शार्प अटैक ऑन द कांग्रेस पार्टी से इन दैट द कांग्रेस इज इन फैक्ट द पार्टी दैट इज आफ्टर अ पावर दिस रियली इज अबाउट डेवलपमेंट दिस इज अबाउट द पीपल of madhya pradesh he's also importantly made it clear that he is certainly not in the race for the chief minister's post as what he's clearly said our focus continues on that top story that is developing from the state of madhya pradesh and chatisgarh that is voting today for the moment it's time for a quick commercial break here you are watching india today powered by finest be sustainable change a bnp group company you are watching india today powered by finest be sustainable change a bnp group company तो है प्रचंड बोल मस्तकों के झुंड आज जंग की घड़ी की तुम हार दो 
मान शान या की जान का हो दान आज एक धनुष के बाण पे उदार दो आरंभ है प्रचंड गाने के पीछे की दमदार आवाज पीयूष मिश्रा से मिलिए साहित्य आज तक दिल्ली में लाइव फ्री एंट्री के लिए रजिस्टर करें www.ajtak.in/sahitya पर या मिस्ड कॉल दीजिए 9310330033 Eating right. Take a deep dive into the ultimate guide based on new research by nutritionists. On what's healthy for you and what's not. Read the full story in this week's issue of India Today magazine. Subscribe now. Armed with facts, she takes the news by its horns. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold, and direct, setting the tone for the biggest stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me, Nabila Jamal, on India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag dot com. watching india today powered by finest be sustainable change a bnp group company With facts, she takes the news by its horns. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold, and direct, setting the tone for the bigger stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me, Nabila Jamal, on India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag dot com.
वॉचिंग इंडिया टुडे पावर्ड बाय फिनेस्ट बी सस्टेनेबल चेंज अ बी एंड पी ग्रुप कंपनी प्रेजेंटेड बाय आपका जॉय भारत का जॉय जॉय ई बाय राजस्थान स्टॉक एरिड कालोफुल आरंभ है प्रचंड बोल मस्त को पोलिटिकली एज अनप्रिडिक्टेबल एज द शिफ्टिंग ऑफ इट्स डेजर्ट सैंस बाबा अपने बाबा है जय श्री राम भगवान मुख्यमंत्री बनेगा बाबा बालकनाथ मुख्यमंत्री जय श्री राम जय श्री राम अगर आप ये चुनाव जीतते हैं अपने आप को मानते हैं दायित्व के आप चीफ मिनिस्टर बन के मैं ऐसा कुछ नहीं मानते हैं ये तो पार्टी तय करेगी मोदी जी के मोदी जी ही हमारे सीएम आरम्भ है राजस्थान is ready to go to the hustings to aap congress ko aap gehlot ko de ha sahi kaam kar rahe hai sahi kaam kar rahe hai kuk aap kaun cha rahe bhai jab chacha tau congress mein beta congress mein jayega aapko lagta hai yahan jatiwad ho raha hai bhai ye aapas mein bhai chara wo matlab itni mohabbat nahi hai mohabbat hai itni pahle theek tha ha pehle pehle theek tha As the narrative of democracy comes full circle in the state of Rajasthan the spotlight is back on the voter 2013 BJP won with a mammoth majority If there is a conclusion that we reach it's one something is changed not politics not politicians but the voter 2018 Congress won itself a cliffhanger 2023 tracking my third election in the state of Rajasthan the stunning state of rajasthan in a state of suspended political animation which we know better come the 3rd of december 200 seats spread across 53 districts across six very distinct regions of the state but with a wicked political history rajasthan has never voted the same political party or government to power back to back since 30 years since 1993 so will history repeat itself or will rajasthan script a new chapter a first dispatch from alwar district with its 11 poll constituencies in 2018 in a total of 11 bsp 12 the congress 5 bjp 2 independence 2 Since 2017 the lynching of Pehlu Khan Alwar has been the ground zero of cow vigilantism. And today he's in the grips of a strong communal rhetoric. With an election booming with polarization. A clear divide Hindu and Muslim. Yes sir Ram yes sir Ram Enter Baba Balaknath. BJP leader and Alwar MP Baba Balaknath is testing his electoral fortunes from Tijara, where the BJP has won only once in the past five decades. And Balaknath, self-styled as the Yogi of Rajasthan, is holding back no communal punches. जो एम पी का चुनाव था और अब एम एल ए का चुनाव ये ज्यादा भारी पड़ रहा है 
नहीं भारी का कोई मतलब नहीं है कहीं दूर दूर तक भी जी लेकिन इसमें एक बहुत अच्छी बात है कि लोगों से संपर्क लोगों से मिलना और धरातल पे लोगों की क्या समस्याएं हैं धरातल पे लोगों से जुड़ाव ये दोनों ही बातों का बहुत बड़ा अनुभव मिलता है और लोगों को जानने का पहचानने का और जीवन में हमें भी किस प्रकार से इस समाज सेवा के जीवन में कैसे हम बेहतर काम कर सकते हैं उसके लिए बड़ी एक तरह से प्रेरणा और एक तरह से शिक्षा मिलती है राजस्थान में इस बार महाराज जी सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा क्या है इस चुनाव का सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा आपको क्या लगता है देखिए एक सरकार के दायित्व तो होते हैं विकास प्रशासनिक व्यवस्था और कानून व्यवस्था इन तीनों ही क्षेत्रों में रिकॉर्डतम फेल हुई है ये सरकार आपने जैसे अभी बताया एक लॉ एंड ऑर्डर एक धर्म ही मान लीजिए जो तुष्टिकरण की अपीजमेंट की राजनीति आप कह रहे हैं तो यही आ, वो अगर हम कॉन्टूवर्स देख लें योगी जी के भी हैं इसीलिए जो आपकी छवि है राजस्थान के योगी आदित्यनाथ पे है आपको लगता नहीं है? ऐसा नहीं है आपको नहीं लगता है ऐसा है की मैंने गेरवा वस्त्र पहना है जी योगी जी और हमारा संप्रदाय एक है योगी जी ने काम किया है न केवल भारत और पूरा दुनिया आज उनके काम की प्रशंसा करती है लेकिन योगी जी भी कैसे कर पाए योगी जी का योगी जी को अवसर किसने दिया पार्टी ने माने प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने अवसर दिया और माने प्रधानमंत्री जी के दिशा निर्देश में ही सब काम हो रहा है हमारा एक एक कार्यकर्ता हमारा बूथ का अध्यक्ष भी उसी भावना से काम करता जिस भावना से हम करते हैं लेकिन वो बस हमारा एक संप्रदाय हमारा एक 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 तरह से भाई होने के नाते उस बात को उस तरह से देखा जाता है क्योंकि योगी जी ने जो रोल किया है यूपी के अंदर जिस प्रकार से विकास गुंडागर्दी इन प्रशासनिक व्यवस्था इन सब पर कंट्रोल कर कर जनता तक काम पहुँचाने का जो कार्य हुआ है तो हमारे जो मुख्यमंत्री है सब बीजेपी के जो बीस है तो योगी जी उनमें इक्कीस है बस इतनी ही बात है इसके अलावा कोई खास बात नहीं है लोग चाहते हैं कि लोगों की समस्याओं का समाधान हो लोगों की सुनवाई हो और जो लोगों का पैसा जो एक लगता है विकास का वो पूरी पारदर्शिता तो के साथ में जमीन पे लगे हैं वहीं तक आप अपने आप को योगी जी के देखिए हम मानते हैं पर वैसे अलग नहीं अलग तो हम किसी भी प्रकार से नहीं है क्योंकि हमने बताया ना एक पंथ एक संप्रदाय हमारा है अलग हम हम विचार से अलग नहीं है भाव से अलग नहीं है लेकिन ये सब कुछ जो कुछ है ये हमारी पार्टी हमारे नरेंद्र मोदी जी उनके दिशा निर्देश के कारण ही हमें ताकत आती है योगी जी के जैसे आप अपने आप को अगर आप ये चुनाव जीतते हैं जो 50 साल में भाजपा ने एक ही बार जीता है 2013 में तिजारा जो सीट है अगर आप ये चुनाव जीतते हैं अपने आप को मानते हैं दायित्व के आप चीफ मिनिस्टर देखिए मैं ऐसा कुछ नहीं मान मैं ऐसा कुछ नहीं मानता मैं क्षमा चाहता हूँ हम एक छोटे से कार्यकर्ता एक संत जीवन का भी समाज सेवा करने का धर्म रहता है यही हमारा मूल धर्म है पूजा पाठ विधि ये तो हमारा निजी स्वार्थ है और एक राजनीतिक जीवन जिसको आप कहते हैं मैं उसको सेवा नीति कहता हूँ सेवा नीति में भी हमारा यही धर्म है मैं ऐसा कुछ नहीं मानता हूँ हमारा संत का हमारे गुरुजनों का यही हमको गुरु मंत्र होता है कि जहाँ स्थान मिले वहाँ सेवा करो यहाँ स्थान मिला है यहाँ सेवा करेंगे जो आपने कही अगर जीतेंगे ये अगर वगर का शब्द नहीं है यहाँ तो जीतेंगे ही और यहाँ पर भारतीय जनता पार्टी का ध्वज लहराएगा ही इसमें कोई संदेह किसी को नहीं होंगे वो ये तो पार्टी तय करेगी मोदी जी के मोदी जी ही हमारे सीएम मोदी जी ही हमारे प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी ही हमारे कार्यकर्ता रो, मोदी जी हमारे रोल मॉडल हैं और मोदी जी के क्योंकि उनका विचार इतना स्वच्छ और सुंदर और इतना दुर्गामी है कि उनका आज पूरा दुनिया उनके पीछे चलने को तैयार है तो भारतवर्ष के लोग तो उनको कंधे पे उठाकर आंखों पे पलकों पे बिठा उनके साथ चलने को तैयार है सवाल करूंगी महाराज जी आम... क्योंकि आपने तुष्टिकरण की राजनीति की बहुत ये भी कह रहे हैं कि आप भी वही कर रहे हैं अपीजमेंट पॉलिटिक्स एक धर्म को ज्यादा बढ़ावा दे रहे हैं एक लीडर आप ही के स्टेज पर बोला है कि मस्जिदों को गुरुद्वारों को तबाह कर दिया जाए वो सही है देखिए बिल्कुल सही नहीं है उसके लिए हमने माफी भी मांगी हमारे उस व्यक्ति ने भी कार्यकर्ता ने भी माफी मांगी हम भी व्यक्तिगत खेद है हमको भी हम भी माफी मांगते क्योंकि उस मंच पर हम भी बैठे थे लेकिन हमने उस समय पर वो बात सुनी नहीं क्योंकि शोर शराबा इतना था लेकिन वो भूलवंश जो है कि गलती हुई है भूलवंश गलती हमारे देवी देवताओं से ऋषि मुनियों से भी हुई है प्राश्चित होता है उसका प्राश्चित होगा निश्चित रूप से और गुरु गोविंद सिंह जी से गुरु नानक देव जी भगवान से कृपा प्रार्थना करते हैं कि उस बालक को क्षमा करे उससे जो गलती हुई उसका प्राश्चित देकर उसको इस दोष से मुक्ति प्रदान करे लेकिन जो तुष्टिकरण की राजनीति का आपने जो बात की है हमारा बिल्कुल ऐसा भावना नहीं है सब धर्मों का सम्मान है हमारा केवल विरोध है तो ऐसे व्यक्तियों से ऐसे संगठनों से जो देश के अंदर ऐसी ऐसी स्थिरता का माहौल खड़ा करते हैं गुंडागर्दी करते हैं और देश की शांति को भंग करने का काम करते हैं देश के लोगों को लूटने का काम करते हैं देश के लोगों को
पिछड़ा करने का काम क्योंकि पिछड़ा भी बनाते हैं वो लोग वो नहीं चाहते कि विकास में लोग आगे बढ़े क्योंकि उनका उपयोग वो अपने ढाल के रूप में करते हैं और उनको मोटिवेशन करके ऐसी गतिविधियों में लगाते हैं हमारा विरोध केवल उनसे है कोई भी एक उदाहरण दिखा दो जहाँ हमने धर्म का अपमान किया हो जहाँ हमने समाज का अपमान किया हो हमने व्यक्ति का अपमान किया चाहे वो किसी भी धर्म को मानने वाला हो जो समाज विरोधी है जो देश विरोधी है जो असंप्रदायिक तत्व तो हैं उनको हम निश्चित रूप से उनको चिन्हित करेंगे और उनको समाज में क्योंकि ऐसे व्यक्तियों को समाज में रहने का कोई अधिकार नहीं कानून के मुताबिक उनकी सजा होनी चाहिए महाराज जी पर आपकी जो पिछली सभा थी हम सुन रहे थे अभी यूट्यूब पे आपने बोला था की एक कम्युनिटी है जो जम के वोट करती है नाइन्टी वो कौन सी कम्युनिटी है देखिए वो वो जो लोग उनके जो कट्टरपंथी सोच के लोग हैं तालिबानी लोग हैं वही लोग उनको इस प्रकार से मोटिवेट करते हैं क्योंकि मतदान तो करना चाहिए हमारा मतदान हम भी तो यही प्रेरित करें कि भाई उनकी प्रेरणा लो उनसे सीखो कि हम भी मतदान करें वो 90 करते हैं तो हम 92 करें पर वो कट्टरपंथी कैसे हो गए अगर मतदान जाए मतदान की बात नहीं कर रहा मतदान करना बहुत अच्छी बात है मतदान करने से व्यक्ति में देश के प्रति जुड़ने का भाव आता है अपने कर्तव्यों का भाव आता है हम बात कर रहे हैं ऐसे तुष्टिकरण की राजनीति को बढ़ावा देने वाले लोगों की जो राजनीति में है और ऐसे कट्टरपंथी सोच के लोग जो ऐसे संप्रदायों को अपना ढाल बनाकर अपना व्यक्तिगत स्वार्थ को सिद्ध करते हैं और लोगों को लोगों की संपत्ति लूटना हो या देश की शांति को भंग करने का काम हो उन व्यक्तियों का हम विरोध करते हैं तो फिर जब आप कहते हैं कि आप लोगों को जमकर आकर मतदान करना चाहिए ये किस ये सभी के लिए ये सभी के लिए अच्छा। कोई समाज अच्छा काम करता है तो समाज से प्रेरणा तो लेनी चाहिए ना यही बात है तो हमारा समाज भी प्रेरणा ले ताकि हमारे अंदर वो भाव केवल जीत ही एक लक्ष्य नहीं मतदान करने से व्यक्ति का जुड़ाव होता है वो सरकर... समाज आपका समाज नहीं है क्या वो तो आप ही है मैंने मैंने हमारा समाज का कि हमारा समाज भी वो भी हमारा समाज है हमारा समाज उस समाज से दूसरे समाज से एक तरह से प्रेरणा लेकर सीखे की हम भी मतदान की तरफ आगे बढ़े प्रतिशत मतदान हो इसकी समीक्षा आप सबको जिम्मेदारी संभालनी है ये मेरा निवेदन है आपसे बाबा अपने बाबा है जय श्री राम भगवा भगवा जीतेगा बिल्कुल राजस्थान में राजस्थान में बीजेपी की सरकार आएगी अब की बार क्यों क्योंकि जो कांग्रेस के शासन काल में जो अत्याचार जो सभी लोग अत्याचार एग्जाम से देख लो कोई भी पेपर लीक की समस्या देख लो उसके अलावा कांग्रेस तो सिर्फ वोटर को खरीदती है और कुछ नहीं है कोई वोटर नहीं है सुरक्षा हो गई है महिलाओं की सुरक्षा है रेप के केस बहुत ज्यादा हो रहे हैं वैसे पड़ता है बीजेपी बाबा जी भगवा जी भगवा में मुख्यमंत्री बनेगा बाबा बालकनाथ मुख्यमंत्री बनेगा जय श्री राम जय श्री राम बाबा बालकनाथ महाराज जी की जय Forming a part of the Mewat region, Alwar has a sizable electorally influential population of the Mew Muslim community. Yadavs, Muslims, and Dalits decide the vote here. Baba Balak Nath is a Yadav himself. The Dalit vote will be crucial this time. Ab jai bhi mein. Ham to jai bhi mein. Kudmi Poswar. Ha? Kudmi Poswar. Naam batayiye. नाम नहीं नहीं बताएंगे। नाम नहीं बताएंगे पर जय भीम है जय भीम जय भीम है भाजपा नहीं पसंद नहीं क्यों नहीं पसंद यही बता दीजिए हमारा खड़ा है तो हम हमें से क्या लेना है Not far from Baba Balak Nath Sabha, this high decibel road show of Congress candidate against Balak Nath snakes through the about one lakh vote constituencies of Mayo Muslims. बोली भाषा की बताए जातिवाद पे सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा जातिवाद बना रखा है आजकल इधर बाबा आ जाता है उधर इमरान खान आ जाता है कभी कोई कुछ बोलता है बाबा बोल रहा है हम झुके झोंपड़ियों खाड़ के फेंक देंगे बुलडोजर लेके आते हैं स्वागत में भी बुलडोजर आता है और क्या नामांकन भरने आए योगी जी आए संदीप दाय में बोल गए मंदिर मस्जिद को उसको मंदिर मस्जिद को और गुरुद्वारे को खाड़ के फेंक देंगे तो ऐसों को कौन वोट देगा ये बताओ मुझे कोई नहीं देगा यहाँ सिर्फ कांग्रेस है सबका साथ है सबका हाथ है एक साथ चलेगा जातिवाद ज्यादा है यहाँ ज्यादा है तिजारत तहसील सबसे ज्यादा अब की बारी है ये कभी नहीं हुआ नहीं पहले नहीं पहले कभी नहीं हुआ 2018 में भी तो मतलब नहीं हुआ जातिवाद नहीं हुआ था उस टाइम इस बार इस बार जातिवाद से लोग बट गए हैं क्या हाँ बट गए क्यों नहीं बटे हिंदू मुसलमान हो गए बाबा बालक बोल रहा है हिंदुस्तान पाकिस्तान का मैच चल रहा है यहाँ तो हिंदुस्तान पाकिस्तान को मैच चलेगा तो हिंदुस्तान पाकिस्तान में तो पाकिस्तान हारेगा ये तो कंफर्म है तो पाकिस्तान तो यहाँ लड़ने आ नहीं रहा है मैच वो इलेक्शन तो यहाँ मुसलमान ही लड़ रहे हैं तो पाकिस्तान उन्हीं को बोला जा रहा है 
हिंदुस्तान हिंदुओं को तो बोला नहीं जा रहा है भाई पाकिस्तानी है तो ऐसा ही है अब देखो क्या होता है आगे आगे टाइम बताएगा इमरान खान former bsp candidate joined the congress 10 days ago now fighting on a congress ticket imran ji chunav kaisa chal raha hai bahut acha chal raha hai mera swagat hai aapka shukriya uh, jo aapka chunav hai jo aapke sath bhajpa se khade hain baba balaknath cm contender mane ja rahe hain yahan par uh, aapko lagta hai takkar de payenge iska takkar ka to mujhe nahi malum पर मेरी खुशकिस्मती है कि मैं ऐसे इतने बड़े कैंडिडेट के सामने चुनाव लड़ रहा हूं। मैं अपने आप को लकी समझता हूं और मैं पार्टी का शुक्रगुजार हूं कि आपने उन्होंने मुझे इस लायक समझा कि ऐसे कैंडिडेट के सामने मैं चुनाव लड़ूं। आपको लगता नहीं है बाबा बालक ना जो खड़े हुए हैं यहाँ के एम हैं वो आपको टक्कर देंगे मैं नहीं मानता क्योंकि उन्होंने साढ़े साल में लोगों से ना कोई कनेक्टिविटी बनाई ना लोगों के लिए कोई काम किया जब एमपी रहे ना जब एमपी रहे ना कोई जन सुनवाई की ना एक भी पत्थर उन्होंने विकास का लगाया ना कभी अपने से किसी से बात करने दिया ना किसी को छूने देते ना किसी से हाथ मिलाते हैं उन्होंने जो अपना वीआईपी कल्चर है वो में, वो अपना मेहनत वाला वो मेंटेन करके रखा है तो लोगों से उनकी बिल्कुल भी कनेक्टिविटी नहीं है और तिजारा का हर समाज छत्तीस सौ बिरादरी ये चाहती है कि हमारे बीच में जो नेता हो वो हमारे हमारे जैसा हो हमारे जैसी सोच रखता हो और सब भाइयों को साथ लेके चलने वाला हो और दिन रात मेहनत करके लोगों की सेवा करने वाला हो आपको लगता है ये चुनाव अभी धार्मिक उस पे चला गया है दो समुदायों में बट गया है नहीं मैडम देखो उन्होंने कोशिश बहुत की है चुनाव को धार्मिक उसमें ले जाने की लेकिन इस हमने इसको धार्मिक धार्मिक उसमें नहीं जाने दिया है हम छत्तीस सौ बिरादरी को सभी भाइयों के साथ लेके इस चुनाव को लड़ रहे हैं और सारे जगह जितने भी जगह हम जा रहे हैं हर समाज से हमें हजारों की तादाद में हमें समर्थन मिल रहा है और हम लोग पूरे आश्वस्त हैं कि ये चुनाव हिंदू मुसलमान का नहीं है जिन लोगों के पास विजन नहीं होता जो विकास की राजनीति नहीं करते जो अच्छाई की राजनीति नहीं करते वो धर्म की राजनीति करने की कोशिश करते हैं मेरे पास उम्र है एनर्जी है विजन है यहाँ की समस्याओं का पता है सब कुछ मेरे पास है सारे लोगों का समर्थन मेरे पास है तो मुझे नहीं लगता कि मेरे पास एक भी ऐसा कारण है कि जो मैं इसको चुनाव को धर्म का बनाऊँ और हिंदू मुसलमान का बनाऊँ नहीं होगा ये चुनाव हिंदू मुसलमान नहीं मैं होने नहीं दूंगा हिंदू मुसलमान का चुनाव मैं मंदिरों में जाता हूँ मैं गुरुद्वारों में जाता हूँ मैं भंडारों में जाता हूँ मैं जागरणों में जाता हूँ मैं मस्जिदों में जाता हूँ मेरे को हर बहन बेटी हर समाज की माँ मेरे को इज्जत दे रही है मेरे को मान सम्मान दे रही है और हजारों की तादाद में लोग मेरे साथ हैं तो किस वजह से होगा ये हिंदू मुसलमान का चुनाव मेरी समझ में तो नहीं आता अब ये चुनाव किसी भी तरीके से हिंदू मुसलमान का होगा ये कोशिश करेंगे लेकिन हम होने नहीं देंगे आप लोग सारे साल में कोई भी जो है काम बढ़िया नहीं हुए हैं लूट खसोट हुई है सारी जनता त्रस्त है पेपर बच्चों का पेपर लीक और पर जो भी कुछ है अब इस बार राजस्थान का ये है एक पांच साल रहती है बीजेपी पांच साल रहती है कांग्रेस अब बीजेपी का नंबर है और जोश भी है कांग्रेस भी बन सकती है कहा तो क्यों उम्मीद है अच्छा काम किया है बहुत बड़े काम कर रहे हैं गहलोत जी ठीक है दोबारा आ जाए गहलोत जी ठीक है और अगर बीजेपी आए तो कौन बनना चाहिए सी एम बालकनाथ बनेगा हमारा ही ये तो वसुंधरा बोल रहे हैं वसुंधरा बालकनाथ कौन दोनों में से कोई बन जाए कोई बन कोई बन जाए कोई से बन जाए एक क्राइम खत्म हो जाएगा बीजेपी का राज आ जाएगा बालकनाथ द बैटल लाइन लीड डाउन क्लियरली इन दी आस was his then metric and the hindu muslim binary is as old as time itself the new political map of alwar district is being drawn on the bulwark of religion each election the wedge widens the land this is now the land of fear and loathing the male muslims dealing in livestock mainly cows and dependent on their produce live in fear of being ignored was still of being targeted this village of sahubas in alwar no water no schools no roads aapka naam ji mohammad rafeeq aapka asuha aap uh, kab se uh, yahan par hain sada se yahan par hain yahi par hain kya kaam hai aapka हमारा जमींदारा का काम है जमींदारी का काम आप लोग वोट डालते हैं हाँ वोट डालते हैं क्या सोच के वोट डालते हैं 
सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा क्या है आपके सबका मुद्दा यही है विकास हो और बेरोजगारी जो खत्म हो जाए तो सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा विकास का है पर आपके यहाँ पे ना रोड है ना कुछ है कुछ नहीं है रोड आप देख के भी आए होंगे रोड नहीं रोड नहीं है यहाँ पर तो कुछ विकास हुआ है गांव में कुछ नहीं हुआ आज तक भी नहीं हुआ कोई विकास नहीं कुछ हुआ? नहीं हुआ आ, दो हजार अठारह में जो स्थिति थी अब वो भी ऐसी आज भी ऐसी है आज भी वैसी स्थिति हाँ ऐसी कैसी है क्या सोच के वोट डालते हैं वोट तो इसी यही सोच के डाल देंगे बढ़िया विकास हो लेकिन विकास कोई नहीं होगा नहीं हो रहा है नहीं वोट डालना तो दिखा रहे जी बिल्कुल हाँ जी वोट तो डालना ही है डालना ही पड़ता है चाहे किसी भी पार्टी को डाले पर किसी पार्टी ने कुछ किया है आज तक किसी ने भी नहीं किया किसी पार्टी ने कुछ नहीं किया बीजेपी ने बिल्कुल नीचे दिखा दिया और हाथ कुछ नहीं हाथ ठीक है चल रहा है जो लेकिन बीजेपी ने ज्यादा नीचे दिखा दिया जातिवाद ज्यादा कर रही है बीजेपी आपको लगता है यहाँ जातिवाद हो रहा है लगता है बिल्कुल लगता है क्या जातिवाद हो रहा है बताएंगे भाई ये आपस में भाईचारा वो मतलब इतने मोहब्बत नहीं है मोहब्बत है इतनी पहले ठीक था हाँ पहले पहले था जो माहौल यहाँ पर अब नहीं है अब नहीं आज से पंद्रह बीस साल पहले अच्छा माहौल था यहाँ कब से खराब हो रहा है माहौल जब से बीजेपी आई है तब से आपको क्यूँ लग रहा है ऐसा बताएंगे भाई ऐसे ये हमेशा ही जातिवाद का ही हाँ जी जातिवाद आपको क्या लगता है आपको लगता है जातिवाद है हाँ बिल्कुल लगता है कब से हुआ है ये जब से आप कह रहे हैं बीजेपी हाँ, बीजेपी पिछले चार पाँच सालों में अगर आप देखें थोड़ा माहौल खराब हुआ है यहाँ का चार पाँच साल में और हुआ है 2017 हाँ, से हाँ, और हुआ है आ, इसको किसको दोषी मानते हैं मैं दो से क्या बीजेपी को दो से गवर्नमेंट को दो से मानेंगे जो सत्ता में है राजस्थान में तो गहलोत साहब है वो काम ठीक कर रहे हैं या नहीं कर ठीक कर रहे हैं काम गहलोत जी काम ठीक कर रहे हैं ठीक कर रहा कुछ इससे डर है डर तो है जी डर नहीं है पूछ रही हूँ आप हाँ डर है आपको हाँ बिल्कुल है जब आप निकलते हैं क्या आप लोगों से ज्यादा पूछताछ होती है कुछ होता है क्योंकि यहाँ पर तो फिर बीच में जो तिजारा की बात कर रहे हैं तस्करी का मामला चला था तो कुछ ज्यादा आप पे दबाव डाला जाता है बिना बात में तस्करी हम तस्करी नहीं करते हैं जी नहीं आप लोग नहीं करते ना पर यहाँ पर जो चला था बीच में नहीं यहाँ कोई यहाँ पर मतलब कोई दिक्कत आती है पुलिस से पुलिस नहीं यहाँ पर हमारे नहीं करता है। हमारे लिए कोई दिक्कत नहीं कोई तंग नहीं करता ना कोई नहीं करता वैसे वैसे नहीं करता इस बार सरकार से क्या चाहते हैं ये बताइए अपने गाँव के लिए क्या चाहते है हम तो अपने गाँव के लिए रास्ता मिल जाए हमारे लिए पक्की सड़क पानी की कमी है पानी मिल जाए पानी है जल है नल है अभी जो हर जल नहीं है कुछ नहीं है स्कूल नहीं है गाँव में नहीं है इसमें कितनी आबादी है आपके गांव की आबादी तो मैम दो सौ तीन ढाई सौ लगभग कुछ भी नहीं है ना स्कूल है ना कुछ है आंगनवाड़ी है वो भी नहीं है दूध आप कहाँ बेचते हैं यही से डेयरी डेयरी पे बेचते हैं पर आपका अभी जो धंधा ठीक है या नहीं है ठीक है धंधा वो ठीक है दो डेरी गाय सबसे बड़ी दिक्कत है यहाँ का माहौल वो आपका सबसे बड़ी दिक्कत है माहौल सही होना चाहिए माहौल सही होना चाहिए हिंदू मुसलमान नहीं होने चाहिए सही बोल रहे हैं किसी भी धर्म के बारे में गौरक्षक हैं तो आप अपने खुद मन से ज्वाइन करते हैं जी हमें आठ साल हो गए गौरक्षा करते हुए गौसेवा करते हुए अपने मन से क्यों प्रेरित हुए आप हम सनातनी हैं सनातन धर्म हमारा है सनातन धर्म में गौ माता को सबसे ऊंचा दर्जा दिया गया है गौ को हम माता मान चुके हैं और गौ के साथ अच्छा अच्छा नहीं होने देंगे आ, तो इस आठ साल से यही कर रहे हैं आप जी आठ साल से हम लगे हुए हैं तो क्या क्या देखने को मिला है इन आठ साल आठ साल में बहुत कुछ देखने को मिला है गोलियाबारी भी देखने को मिली है लोगों की दुतकार भी मिली है चोर भी कहलाए हैं डकेत भी कहलाए हैं गऊ का पैसा खा जाते हैं पर आके एक बार यहाँ देखें कि कितना पैसा आ रहा है कितना हम सेवा कर रहे हैं तस्कर जो उनके इतने हौसले बुलंद हो चुके हैं कि पुलिस चौकियों के बगल में हम पे फायर करके गाड़ियाँ निकाल ले जाते हैं गायों को इतनी बेदर्दी तरीके से बांध के लेके जाते हैं जिनमें से कि गाय मर भी जाती है काफ़ी हम गाड़ी पकड़ते हैं काफ़ी बार तो उनमें गाय मृत भी निकलती है मतलब आपको बहुत सारी चीज़ें भी कहा जाता है गुंडागर्दी भी बोला जाता है गुंडे तो हम हैं हैं? गुंडे तो हम हैं क्योंकि शरीफ का काम है नहीं ये गुंडे तो हमें बता ही चुके हैं 
प्रशासन भी बता चुका है मंत्री लोग बता चुके हैं पर हेल्प के लिए कोई आगे नहीं आता है तो अपने आप को गुंडा मानते हैं बिल्कुल जो अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं जो अच्छा काम करने के बाद भी अगर हमें कोई गुंडा बोलता है तो हम गुंडे भी सही है तो आप लोग वोट करते हैं जी क्या सोच के वोट करते हैं सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा क्या है आप राष्ट्रवाद राष्ट्रवाद क्या है राष्ट्रवाद देश सबसे ऊपर हो बाकी सब नीचे देश सबसे ऊपर हो अब सही राष्ट्रवाद क्या है सही राष्ट्रवादी है सनातन धर्म मजबूत हो मंदिर सुरक्षित रहे हमारे धर्म सुरक्षित रहो देश के जवान है वो सुरक्षित रहो उनकी पावर बढ़े वो सबसे वो सबसे बड़ा है जो यहाँ पर मेो मुस्लिम है वहाँ से भी आए हैं वो कहते हैं माहौल खराब है यहाँ पर माहौल खराब है हमें तो नहीं लगता ऐसा हाँ? हमें तो नहीं लगता नहीं लगता आपको लगता है माहौल खराब है जो खराब खुद है वो दूसरों को भी खराब ही बताएगा बाकी हमारी तरफ से ऐसा कुछ नहीं है बराबर है सब भाईचारा बरकरार है और वो जो खुद ही गंदे लोग हैं दूसरों को नीचे दिखाना चाह रहे हैं दूसरों को गलत बोलते हैं तो इसका मतलब उनके मन में खोट है ऐसा क्यों बोलते हैं वो लोग उनको लग रहा है कि भाईचारा खराब हो गया नहीं भाईचारा कोई खराब नहीं है आपको नहीं अगर हम भाई समझ रहे हैं और वो हमें चारा समझ रहे हैं तो भाईचारा खराब है बाकी ऐसा कुछ नहीं है कोई भाईचारा नहीं है हम भाईचारा भाईचारा करते रहे ये भाईचारे को निभाते नहीं सब वो पिछू वाली बात है ये कुछ भी कर लीजिए कैसा भी भाईचारा इनके साथ निभा लीजिए लेकिन ये एंड में आके अपनी औकात पर रहते रहते हैं हमें नहीं चाह हम नहीं चाहते इस बात को कि इनके साथ भाईचारा नवाया जाए भाईचारे के रास्ते नहीं छोड़ रखे इन्होंने ये धर्म के नीति पे हमारे साथ में सब कुछ कर लेते हैं और हम कुछ नहीं कर पाते क्यों हम तो हम सनातनी है ना चक्कर तो ये जब तक बीजेपी सरकार पूर्ण रूप से नहीं आई हो सकता है हमें कुछ उम्मीद बीजेपी से दिखती है द सेल्फ स्टाइल गौ रक्षक ब्रिगेड उलवर होल्ड नो प्रिजनर्स Strong opinion, deep insecurities, a social fabric frayed at the edges. A wounded Alvar is going to vote. The bright city lights of Alvar can't quite mask the deep fault lines that lie within the 11 constituencies of this district. An election is an opportune moment for a city, for a state to dress up. but also sometimes it puts the glare on the darkest crevices that lie in its own society onwards from malwa into rajasthan watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company you are watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company BJP's T Raja Singh is eyeing a hat trick in Telangana this time. He is a two-time winner from Goshamahal constituency. As state of war Telangana hots up, T Raja Singh has trained his guns on Asaduddin OAC, accusing the AIMIM chief of selling minority votes. Aaj YMIM ne 2000 अठारह का चुनाव जब आया था वो समय पर भी असुद्दीन ओवैसी ने दारू सलाम में बैठकर मुसलमानों के वोट को टीआरएस के हाथों बेच दिया जो आज की बीआरएस है 2014 हो या 2014 से पहले के चुनाव हो हर बार गोशा महल माइनॉरिटी के जितने भी वोट है कांग्रेस को वो बेचते थे ओएसी हैज हिट बैक ब्रांडिंग टी राजा फ्रस्ट्रेटेड फ्रस्ट्रेशन में है बुजदिल है मायूसी छा गई उन लोगों में और उनको नजर आ रही है अपनी शिकस्त 2014 में हम नहीं खड़ा किए मुकेश जी सपोर्ट करे लेट मुकेश गौड़ साहब की हार गए 2018 में कांग्रेस वोट काटी वहां पर आप देखिए कितने परसेंट वोट कांग्रेस ली 
A twist in the Gosha Mahal tale has been added by a former neta of OAC's party. Khaja Bilal claims that AIMIM chief is working against minorities. हम पार्टी में रहते हुए असदुद्दीन अवैसी साहब से हमने बार बार ये पूछा कि गोशा महल से एमआईएम को एक अच्छी सी स्ट्रेटजी बनाना चाहिए और वहाँ पर हम कॉन्टेस्ट करना चाहिए लेकिन असदुद्दीन अवैसी साहब को पता नहीं ये टी राजा सिंह से ऐसी क्या मोहब्बत है जो उस मोहब्बत के मद्देनज़र उन्होंने वहाँ पर कैंडिडेट नहीं डाला असद साहब की नज़र में अजहरुद्दीन को हराना जरूरी है राजा सिंह को हराना जरूरी नहीं है You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. The big launches from Google to the festive sales here in India, and all your tech queries answered, and a lot more on your favorite technology show. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi, and this. Is tech today? Well, if tech timber was dominated by the iPhone 15 announcement, tech tober is all about stock Android from the house of Google. The new pixels are here on tech today. It's time to unbox them and let you know how AI is going to be a key feature in the new Pixel lineup. go the flagship phone which is all set to give some tough competition to the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Samsung S23 Ultra the Pixel 8 Pro if you're a fan of stock android and you've joined the AI revolution this might be a worthy companion and its younger brother the Pixel 8 now both of these come with Google's new Tensor which is a G3 chip but with that G3 processor come a bunch of pros and cons the pros of course are that you have not seen better AI tech loaded devices in the market this device is genuinely going to make a lot of people stand up and take notice the cons are that you know how they say two siblings are the well two eyes of the parent That's not necessarily the case. A lot of the features that are available here won't be available here. They're calling it some sort of a paywall. Although both devices will come with an unprecedented seven years of software updates. Let's start off with the big boy, which happens to be the Google Pixel 8 Pro. watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company state of war madhya pradesh all well, you have 40 workers trapped for nearly 150 hours new drilling machines get going Rescue teams execute plan B. Rescuers now about 60 to 70 meters away. And state of war Madhya Pradesh kicks off. BJP and the Congress bigwig politicians offer prayers and cast their vote. Shivraj makes a big statement says BJP and voters will decide the chief ministerial face in the state. 
तीन दिसंबर के बाद क्या मैं ये कहूँ कि अगले मुख्यमंत्री भावी मुख्यमंत्री भी शिवराज सिंह चौहान ही भाजपा की तरफ से होंगे जनता पार्टी तय करेगी जनता और पार्टी And second phase of Chhattisgarh elections that's currently underway amid corruption allegations. T.S. Singh Dio rubbishes the charges, says the state government must always work as a team. After India voted against Israel corruption in or Israel's occupation in parts of. Uh, Gaza Strip and more importantly the West Bank Prime Minister Modi condemns the killing of civilians in the conflict says India has sent aid to Gaza Right here's uh, the big follow-up as hopes now float over 40 workers who are trapped. Only 30 to 40 meters of debris to go now out of the 60 meters of debris. About 30 to 40 meters that need to be cleared. So far, nearly 20 to 30 meters they've been able to scrape through. Five 900 mm pipes have been inserted inside the tunnel. In fact, the joint pipes to be used as escape conduit. Heavy duty diamond cutter machines are all pressed into action. We're looking at nearly six days now, six days on, and the 40 workers who are trapped still anxious of their safety. Of course, uh, they've, uh, the rescue teams there have established communication, but so far, no sight of them coming out as nearly 40 meters of debris still needs to be uh, wiped out. Let me cut across to Ankit Sharma joining us live from Uttarkashi Tunnel. Ankit, Please give us a sense of uh, the challenges that the teams are currently facing. It's day six. I hope all the 40 workers who are trapped are doing all right. Uh, do we know of their mental state? Good afternoon, Anisha. The latest update coming from the tunnel is uh, obviously there's a bit more challenging right now as it seems from outside. Uh, the auger drilling machine is continuously drilling into the debris so that it can inject the barrels and uh, uh, put through to uh, go to 70 meters and then make a passage for the workers. But the biggest challenge is that there could be a Pokeland machine or uh, there could be metal machine as well which is inside the debris, debris. and right now the engineers are analyzing to how to uh, access through uh, by cu either cutting or through any other measure so that they can uh, reach out to the workers uh, via pipes. And right now, uh, the auger drilling machine is uh, slowing down the process because the engineers are still uh, looking into uh, the possible Oakland machine, which is, uh, which is also inside the debris. And once it's been cutted out, uh, the engineers think that it will, it will help in getting the smooth way as the flow of tunnel or the approach of the tunnel is from upper stream to downstream. So it's a bit taking more time, but once it clears uh, 30 meters, it will, the whole process is going to be smoother. Anisha. Well, from what uh, Nabila here, Ankit, uh, from, what we, what, from what we see there, it's going to be uh, at least a few more days because for six days that they've taken to wipe out nearly 20, uh, 20 meters of debris. So another 40 meters of debris with sophistication, with sophisticated machinery, Ankit. How long do you think is, uh, the rescue teams are likely to take? Is there assurances that they've given to the family members? Well, the only assurance as of now is that the workers are safe and they are being uh, delivered with food and water and oxygen uh, as per the time and schedule as well. Uh, they are regularly getting the supplies and the latest update uh, which comes from the engineers is that there cannot be any specific time that the operation would be successful and the workers will come out. However, they are hoping that once uh, they clear the 30 meter area or they uh, inject the barrels into the 30 meter area there would be uh, chances 
that the operations will be smoother and it will speedify because the 30 meter area debris is very hard and there could be a Portland machine be parked or trapped inside the debris as well. So for cutting that, it will take some time. If uh, it is if it is uh, hindering the barrels, then it can uh, damage the whole process. And three attempts have we already been failed uh, since Sunday when the whole incident happened, the tunnel caved in. And right now, the hopes are on that in the next 24 hours, there would be more clarity. Thanks very much for Anisha. joining us. Now, uh, race against time as rescue operations at the Uttarkashi Tunnel continues for the sixth day. Over 100 hours and still counting, 40 workers are still trapped inside that tunnel. People have now turned to God. Havans being performed there for well-being of those labourers and their safe evacuation. Drilling with auger machines has already begun, as Ankit mentioned. Three pipes for evacuating the 40 labourers trapped at a distance of around 60 metres is being inserted inside that tunnel. Meanwhile, water, food and oxygen, we believe, are being sent through those pipes that has reached those workers, helping them sustain, stay alive for six days on. ये असली मायने में कह सकते हैं कि जो सबसे क्रिटिकल रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन है उसकी शुरुआत आज सुबह से हुई है बिल्कुल और इसमें अगर आप तकनीकी देखें या इससे वेरी डेलिकेट ऑपरेशन हमें बड़ा आसान लगता है कि आप कैसे नहीं खोद के निकाल पा रहे हैं लेकिन यहाँ पे कई फैक्टर्स काम कर रहे हैं एक्सटर्नल एज वेल एज इंटरनल एक्सटर्नल अगर मैं देखूँ तो जो यहाँ का टरेन है बहुत ही फ्रेजाइल है हिमालयाज जो है वेरी न्यू माउंटेन से जो आप जानते ही होंगे और जो इक्विपमेंट हम ला रहे हैं वो स्टेट ऑफ आर्ट का है तो हमें अब उम्मीद है कि हम इसमें जल्द से जल्द इनको यही सवाल मैंने वीके सिंह से ही पूछा था कि अगर स्टेट ऑफ आर्ट मशीन की जरूरत थी क्या वो पहले नहीं हो सकती थी उसकी व्यवस्था या शायद कहीं सोचने में या अंदाजा लगाने में मुश्किल हुई नहीं जैसे जैसे मान लीजिए आपको कोई काम करना है तो आप इमीडिएटली जो आपके पास चीज़ें अवेलेबल आप उससे स्टार्ट करते हैं और आप सोचते हैं इससे हो जाएगा उसी तरीके से जो हमारे पास अवेलेबल था यहाँ के जो जल विभाग है उससे हमने सिमिलर तरह की मशीन से हमने कार्य स्टार्ट किया था लेकिन बाद में पाया कि उसकी गति थोड़ी सी स्लो है और टाइम हमारे पास बीतता जा रहा है तो फिर हमने डिसाइड किया कि स्टेट ऑफ आर्ट अमेरिकन ऑगर जो है वो हमने मंगाया जाए तो ये हमने मंगा के इस पर काम कर चला दूरी का एग्जैक्ट आकलन करना मुझे लगता है कि अभी संभव नहीं है क्योंकि कितना मलबा है वो एक रेंज है और काम जस्ट अभी शुरू हुआ है मतलब कार्य चल रहा है तो जैसे जैसे आगे बढ़ेगा तभी ये टेक्निकल एस्पेक्ट है तभी हम कंपनी के अधिकारियों से जानकारी लेकर बता पाए All right, it's, as we see, the tunnel rescue operations is on for six days and it's really difficult for uh, the teams there, rescue teams, to pull them out because the intensity of the debris. It appears that there's thick mounds of debris that's blocked off areas where, the, where those workers are stranded and that's now, by the time the debris is cleared, it's likely that it would, it would take a couple of more days. How long would it take is something that uh, the rescue teams will have to make clear, but for 20 meters of debris to be cleared out, it's taken nearly six days. But now that they have sophisticated machinery in place, we're hoping that the challenge uh, or the hurdles they are able to come through with. Now, as we see a quick look at exactly what uh, the tunnel complexities really look like, uh, this is exactly where, uh, or at least a demonstration that we're showing you of the tum tunnel where those 40 workers are trapped. We see an auger machine trying to drill through the debris. Five pipes, we believe, of 900 meters, 900 mm uh, width uh, pipes are trying to be drilled through inside the molds of uh, debris so that this comes as an escape route for those 40 workers to climb and come through to safety. So each of the pipe is about six meters in length. We're seeing uh, at least six pipes that they intend to push through. Now the pipes will be used to, uh, for those trapped workers to climb on and try and crawl through and escape to safety like I did mention. 30, 40 meters of debris so far. That's, that's the amount of debris that's been cleared out only, but there's a lot more to go. Heavy duty stone cutters are being used. We saw the auger machines trying to drill through and these auger machines are sophisticated machines brought in uh, from abroad only so that it, it can actually power through the molds of debris that's now acting like rocks blocking off those workers inside the collapsed tunnel area. 
Now, let me shift our focus to Israel. India has condemned the killing of civilians in the Israel-Hamas war, addressing the inaugural session of the second Voice of Global South Summit. Prime Minister Modi has condemned the death of civilians in the Israel-Gaza war. Now, Prime Minister has emphasized on dialogue and diplomacy, saying that the world must unite for greater global good. He's also said that humanitarian aid has been sent to Palestine from India. India has criticized the act of terror on Israel on 7th of October, stressing on the need for dialogue amid restraint. Now, as we see here, India is also among the 145 nations that has voted in favor of UN resolution that condemned settlement activities in occupied Palestine territory, including East Jerusalem and in occupied Syrian Golan. <laughs> इजराइल में हुए जदन्य आतंक की हमले की निंदा की है हमने रिस्ट्रेंट के साथ ही डायलॉग और डिप्लोमेसी पर भी जोर दिया है इजराइल और हमास के कॉन्फ्लिक्ट में सिविलियंस की मौत की हम कठोर निंदा करते हैं राष्ट्रपति महबूद अब्बास जी से बात कर हमने फिलिस्तीन के लोगों के लिए let me cut across to Geeta Mohan, who's joining us for uh, a quick understanding on India's position there. Geeta, uh, India has taken the right stance. You're looking at civilian casualties. They're mounting over 12,000 civilians. Roughly about 12,000 civilians is the figure that we know of uh, who have died. And large numbers of them are children. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while condemning the civilian deaths, uh, he says he's... he's in fact, also says that uh, aid is being sent to Gaza from India's side. Well, that's right. India has been uh, imp impressing upon the Arab world, particularly Israel and Palestine, that there has to be diplomacy and dialogue uh, to de-escalate tensions and end the humanitarian crisis that is underway. This is the Voice of Global South Summit that is underway as we speak, where in the opening remarks, Prime Minister Narendra Modi reminded of India's stance but with regards to the voting at the voting at the United Nations Security Council and at the UN, uh, India uh, traditionally has always voted against the settlements. But there was another vote that called for ceasefire where India abstained. That was a new uh, vo uh, vote and a resolution uh, where India really did not go ahead and support a ceasefire. So uh, there are problems, there are concerns when it comes to international community coming together and seeking an absolute ceasefire from Israel. Having said that, India continues to maintain that a two-state solution is the only solution to the Israel-Palestine crisis. Uh, Israel continues to uh, w continues with their strikes, their surgical strikes. They have, uh, their IDF forces are already lined up in Gaza Strip. Any word on uh, what Israel intends, uh, Geeta? Well, uh, the Israeli forces have been quite clear and their intent is to completely decimate Hamas. Uh, they have been saying that all these civilian uh, establishments are being used by the Hamas uh, and, and human sh uh, as human shields is what they're using the civilians in those areas. Uh, so they are intent on going through each and every area of Gaza to clear it out. Uh, there is a conversation also underway, Nabila, with regards to uh, how the United Nations should play a role after uh, Hamas is cleared out of Gaza, and that Gaza cannot be under the control of Palestinians, that there has to be an international organization. Uh, but that certainly will, wor will, will, be, uh, will work against the rights of Palestinians and uh, the whole idea of a two-state solution. So we'll have to wait and see how that moves forward. But for now, it doesn't seem like Israel is going to stop anytime soon uh, in terms of its operations within Gaza. All right, Geeta. So clearly no ceasefire in sight for the moment. That's Prime Minister Modi condemning the civilian deaths in Gaza uh, as uh, India is assured aid to Gaza at the moment. Co presented by Aapka Joy, Bharat Ka Joy, Joy E Bike. Co powered by Parul University, Vadodra, Gujarat.
All right, some big news break coming in. Jyoti Raditya Sindhya, speaking exclusively to India today, speaks on Madhya Pradesh polls, attacks the Congress. Let's have a listen as he speaks exclusively to India today's Palami Saha. How confident are you of a BJP victory today, sir? I am extremely confident because our track record has been one of progress, has been one of development. I am very confident that the people of Madhya Pradesh will bless Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji and the Bharati Janata Party and the united front of the BJP consisting of all leaders across every region. But was it the BJP that was confident that fielded seven members of parliament, three union yes, ministers? Yes, yes, there was a reason for that. The, the thing is that you didn't do your analysis before questioning me. Where they have been fielded are seats where the BJP has lost two or three or four times. So our strategy was that make sure that your strong seats are secure and make sure that the strong seats of the Congress are under pressure. And that strategy, according to me, has worked. Today our seats are still secure. The Congress is so-called strong seats are now today insecure. That was part of our strategy. And therefore, if you looked at the first two lists, I think it was 39 and 41 or something like that, those, pe those seven or eight were declared in the first two lists, which were Congress strongholds. Okay. Part of our strategy, bat on the front foot, take the offense to the other camp. But do you see this as a grudge fight? Grudge fight has turned out because I, I, it happened in 2020. I'm, I'm not, I don't have any grudges. I don't believe in grudges in life. God has given you life for a very limited amount of time. Do good. Do well by the people. Gain their trust. Gain their love and gain their. But blessing. someone grudges you. Someone grudges you. Priyanka but Gandhi, I, of but course. I, but it was personal. I, I, it sounded I, I, bitter. I, I can't help if someone else grudges me. I have no grudges, and as far as she's concerned, I have given my reply. Okay. But what do you think? She's of course attacked the family. She said that it's a family which is known my reply. for. I've given my reply. I've already given my reply, and some people consider themselves to be very tall, quote unquote leaders, which resulted in only one out of 80 seats in Uttar Pradesh which resulted in the Congress party president losing his election. So the facts speak for themselves. Now countdown to the big 2024 semi-finals in a highly anticipated electoral showdown. Madhya Pradesh is setting the stage for a fierce con contest there between the ruling BJP and the Congress. As of 11 a.m., voter turnout in Madhya Pradesh stands at 28.1%. Now, former Chief Minister Kamal Nath has casted his vote in Chindwara ahead of the big day. Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan offered puja at the temple in Sahor after which he casted his vote. Union Minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya has also casted his vote from Gwalior. Meanwhile, BJP's Narottam Mishra has said that Pakistan will celebrate if BJP does not win this elections. Now, remember, it's a litmus test indeed for the BJP's endurance after 18 years in power and the Congress's ability to regain control after the 2020 debacle. With BJP and the Congress dominating this electoral narrative now, today's polls will be a classic clash of the titans as both the parties vie to wrest power. Vikas aur janta ka kalyan Madhya Pradesh ka abhut purva vikas hua hai. Bimaru rajya se Bharati Janata Party ne viksit aur samriddh rajya banaya hai. Aur जनता के कल्याण की जो योजना है वो अद्भुत और अभूतपूर्व है सर बार बार लेकिन छिंदवाड़ा मॉडल बुधनी मॉडल की बात आती है कमलनाथ कहते हैं छिंदवाड़ा आके देखिए बुधनी मॉडल छोड़िए आज भी वो वहाँ पे उन्होंने कहा है कि पैसे धनबल का प्रयोग जो है सत्तारूढ़ दल हमेशा करता रहा है वो अपने हार की भूमिका बना रहे हैं बौखला कांग्रेस के लोगों ने ही शराब और पैसा बांटने का काम किया है कई जगह भारतीय जनता पार्टी के उम्मीदवारों तक पे उन्होंने हमला किया है ये बौखलाहट का प्रतीक है जनता बीजेपी के साथ है सतना में भी सीधी री, 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 सीधी पार, री, जो पाठक हैं आपकी प्रत्याशी हैं भाजपा की उनके घर पे वो हुआ है राव में भी बवाल हुआ है इसे कैसे देखते हैं सुहागपुर में भी उन्होंने बीजेपी कार्यालय पर हमला किया ये बौखलाहट है कांग्रेस की एम के मन में मोदी ये नारे के साथ आप लोग चुनाव में उतरे थे लेकिन हम देखते हैं कि सभाएं सबसे ज्यादा मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान की मांग जो थी सब थी एक सभाएं आपने 36 दिनों में कर दी तो एमपी के मन में मोदी एमपी के मन में मामा मोदी जी दुनिया के सबसे लोकप्रिय नेता है दुनिया के मन में भी है देश के मन में भी है और मध्य प्रदेश के मन में भी है इतना मैं जरूर कहता हूँ कि हमने जो जनता की सेवा की है उससे मध्य प्रदेश मेरा परिवार है मैंने सरकार नहीं चलाई परिवार चलाया है 
और परिवार की तरह मैं जनता से प्यार करता हूँ जनता मुझसे प्यार करती लाडली बहनों की बात करें कल आप उनके घर भोजन करने गए आज आप मत डालने जा रहे थे तो उनसे पहले लाडली बहना आपका तिलक करने आ गई ये लाडली बहना का फैक्टर इस बार के चुनाव में कितना काम लाडली बहना मेरे लिए राजनीति से ऊपर उठकर है लेकिन इतना मैं जरूर कहूँगा कई बार मैं भावुक हो जाता हूँ उनका अभूतपूर्व प्यार और आशीर्वाद मिल रहा है शिवराज सिंह चौहान अपने आप को किस रोल में देखते हैं पाँव पाँव वाले भैया मामा या फिर भाई मैं मामा भी हूं, भाई भी हूं, लेकिन उससे ऊपर मैं अपनी जनता का सेवक हूं। साढ़े सोलह सालों के मुख्यमंत्री से मैं बात कर रहा हूं शिवराज सिंह चौहान से एक आखिरी सवाल तीन दिसंबर के बाद क्या मैं ये कहूं कि अगले मुख्यमंत्री भावी मुख्यमंत्री भी शिवराज सिंह चौहान ही भाजपा की तरफ से होंगे जनता पार्टी तय करेगी जनता और पार्टी मैंने अपने गाँव में वोट डाला है जैसे मैं हमेशा डालता हूँ चौलीस साल से वोट डाल रहा हूँ किन मुद्दों को लेकर के आपने आज वोट किया आज मुद्दा केवल अपने गाँव का अपने खेत का नहीं है मुद्दा मध्य प्रदेश के भविष्य का है और मध्य प्रदेश का भविष्य सुरक्षित रहे ये मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि मध्य प्रदेश के मतदाता ऐसा फैसला करेंगे किस इस बार का चुनाव पिछले बार से चुनाव से कितना फर्क है जो पिछले बार चुनाव था बहुत फर्क है इस दफे जनता दुखी है भ्रष्टाचार से बेरोजगारी से किसानों की समस्याओं से छोटे व्यापारियों की समस्या से पूरी तस्वीर प्रदेश की जनता के सामने है दूसरा कोई दल जीतेगा तो खुशियाँ पाकिस्तान में मनेंगी इसके लिए आवश्यक है कि राष्ट्र हित को सर्वोपरि मानते हुए कमल का बटन दबाएं। कमल का बटन मध्य प्रदेश में जब व्यक्ति दबाएगा तो सेना सीमा पे सैनिक की बाजुएं मजबूत होंगी पाकिस्तान में दहशत होगी कि मोदी जी जीत रहे हैं कमल का बटन दबाने से आतंकवादियों में दहशत होती है और इसलिए कमल का बटन दबाना चाहिए जो भी सीमा पे नहीं जा पाते हैं देश की सेवा के लिए ये एक सेवा का अवसर है सबको कमल का बटन दबाएं और राष्ट्र हित में अपना योगदान करें तो जी ये एक्सपेरिमेंट है कई लोगों ने कहा कि फेल भी हो सकता है कई कई लोगों ने कहा कि बहुत अच्छा भी चल सकता है इस समय मध्य प्रदेश की स्थिति आपको क्या लगती है क्योंकि नेक टू नेक फाइट लोग कह रहे हैं कांग्रेस और भारतीय जनता पार्टी के बीच पहले से तो ये प्रयोग नहीं है गुजरात में हम ये प्रयोग नहीं और अन्य राज्यों में हम कर चुके हैं हमारे यहाँ पर सांसद या मंत्री चुनाव नहीं लड़ सकता ऐसा नहीं पार्टी तय करती है मैं ही चार लोकसभा क्षेत्रों से अलग अलग जगह से लड़ा हूँ पहली बार विधानसभा का चुनाव लड़ रहा हूँ मैं 2003 में मैंने विधानसभा के चुनाव को बहुत निकट से देखा था दूसरा मौका अब है जब मैं देख रहा हूँ मैं उसकी पुनरावृत्ति देख रहा हूँ और लोगों को जो अतिशयुक्ति लगेगी दूसरी बात मैंने कही कि 2003 में हमने छिंदवाड़ा की आठों सीटें जीती थी आज परिसीवन के बाद सात है मैं आज कह रहा हूँ आपसे कमलनाथ जी भी हारेंगे और सातों सीटें भारतीय जनता पार्टी जीतेगी अब ये लोगों को बड़ बोलापन लग सकता है हम तीन तारीख का इंतजार करेंगे All right, we have our reporters right on the field there. Aishwarya joining us from Narsingpur, Madhya Pradesh. We also have Amit Bharadwaj from Datia MP. Aishwarya, over to you. We saw you speaking to all the newsmakers there. Madhya Pradesh has so far recorded nearly 28% of the voter turnout. Is this motivating? Is this a good rate at which people are turning out to cast their vote? What's the mood and pulse there? Well, Nabila, definitely, you know, the, the numbers are, uh, you know, speaking about the fact that a lot of people are now turning up to vote. And we have seen how historically, too, Madhya Pradesh has had, uh, you know, over 60% of voting. And that's something which we will see this time around. Also, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, a look at the queues and you'll be able to see people are still trickling in. On the other side, in fact, uh, you know, uh, you'll be able to see that lo a lot of women voters are turning up. And Nabila, women voters, Ladli Bena scheme has actually become the focus over the past 15 days, especially if we speak about the state of Madhya Pradesh. It's a neck-to-neck -neck fight. Uh, you know, both Congress and the Bharti Junta Party, both of them trying their level best to make sure that they wrestle the power. It's also very important for the big 2024 elections because there are 29 Lok Sabha seats in the state of MP. So for both the parties, a very crucial state uh, this is. And we are also seeing uh, how, you know, the Ladli Bhena scheme, the number of uh, women who are coming out to, to vote, both uh, Congress as well as BJP now eyeing this large chunk. Uh, you know, from here, we are seeing that a union minister is now fighting and he, in fact, is saying that they will, uh, you know, get close to 180 seats. Now, the total assembly seats is 230. So, out of that, uh, you know, Pralat Patel, who's fighting from this place, is now saying that they will surpass the magic number. And this, in fact, was the figure that they go, uh, got way back in 2003. 173, uh, you know, was the number. He believes that what they got in 2003, they will surpass that figure. To this time, we'll get the answer on third. But yes, as far as voting, uh, we speak 
about voting. We are still seeing a lot of people trickling in. It seems like, you know, uh, we will see high voting, at least in the state of MP. All right, we'll see uh, what happens. 28%. Let me cut across to Amit Bharadwaj as well, who's in Datia. Amit, Shivrat Singh Chauhan has urged people to come out and vote and also suggesting vote for development. 28% voter turnout. Uh, where you are, what's the pulse like and uh, do, you, do you see the mood in favour of the BJP which has governed Madhya Pradesh for 18 out of the 20 years? Uh, well, Nabila, you know, I'm in Datia, which is considered the abode of Ma Pitambara. And this also happens to be the constituency of Madhya Pradesh's uh, Home Minister Narutta Mishra, who is known for his controversial comments. Uh, but uh, before coming to that, let me show you the visuals of uh, this model polling booth in Datia, in civil lines, uh, even in the noon when actually the voting percentage dips in Madhya Pradesh. Even at that point in time, you can see the, there are queues at different polling booths. Uh, uh, which are at the uh, model polling booth in civil lands and people are waiting for their turns to cast their vote. And many of them, uh, you know, have come from different uh, uh, parts of the town uh, uh, of uh, Datya. No. It is quite interesting that since morning, uh, because I I've, I've, I'd reached the polling booth uh, around 6.30 in the morning and uh, by 6.40, 6.50, uh, voters had started to turn out at the polling stations uh, in Datia and uh, the queue are, uh, related to women are uh, not ending, you know, even from the morning and right now on the other side, if you if you look, uh, uh, Ravi Kant will pan the camera, you will see women voters still waiting out there uh, to cast their vote. And this is also because... Uh, this time around, during the elections, women have been the focal point in Madhya Pradesh. You know, uh, be it the Congress Party or the Bharatiya Janata Party, both parties have actually focused on Adi Abadi, uh, the women voters, uh, be it the largely schemes or the uh, financial aids being uh, announced by the uh, Congress Party uh, by Kamal Nath. Now, coming to the uh, uh, local uh, uh, constituency, Datya, you know, uh, Datya district has three constituencies. Uh, it was expected from Narottam Mishra that he'll be able to bring the Brahmin vote bank, the upper caste vote bank towards right. uh, uh, of, in, in favor of the Bharatiya Janata Party. But is that happening? That is a big question because in Datia, in this constituency, we are seeing a neck-to-neck -neck fight between Narottam Mishra uh, and Congress's Rajendra Bharti Nabila. And before, uh, you know, uh, before wrapping up, one more uh, a quick comment is that uh, today in the morning, Narottam Mishra uh, quoted controversy by bringing Pakistan in Madhya Pradesh election, saying that when BJP wins, uh, 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 you know, it is a ter terrorist in the Pakistan uh, in uh, Pakistan uh who are afraid. And now Congress's Rajendra Bharti has hit back at Narottam Mishra, calling him the biggest terrorist of Datya. Nabila. Well, uh, it's the election season. All kinds of comments are expected and that's what's playing out even in Madhya Pradesh. But thanks very much, Amit and Aishwarya. We're going to come back to you as polling unfolds in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Let me move over. Uh, to a concerning incident that's coming to light. Multiple ID blasts targeting the CRPF personnel in Chhattisgarh's Damtari region has been carried out by Naxals. Two CRPF personnel narrowly escaped that blast. In fact, a BJP candidate from Madhya Pradesh's Bhind Rakesh Shukla was attacked by miscreants while he was visiting a village. Stones were pelted at the BJP candidate. Gunners had to resort to firing in the air to protect Rakesh Shukla from the attacks. In Jabua, Congress candidate Dr. Vikrant Buria has been accused, or he's in fact accused the BJP workers of attacking him injuring his assistant and vandalizing his car. An FIR against the unidentified miscreants too has been registered. And in another attempt to disrupt peaceful voting, an exchange of gunfire has been reported between two groups in Morena's Mirgao village. In fact, two people allegedly injured due to stampede caused right after those gunshots. The situation has turned quite tense yesterday, late night, when BJP and the Congress workers came face to face in Indore. After a minor scuffle broke out between the workers of both the parties, police have now resorted to tear gas to disperse crowds.
You could log on to indiatoday.in. You could also download our app for a lot more news and updates with the number one election team bringing you all the accurate information. I'd like you to switch to our India Today WhatsApp. In fact, join India Today right on your phone through WhatsApp. Scan this QR code and get the most accurate updates from the best election team in the country. watching India today powered by finest be sustainable change a bnp group company jo tole dil ke rishton ko bana hai wo tarazu kya agar dono hi bhai hain to phir main kya to phir tu kya ye mitti teri bhi maa hai ye mitti meri bhi maa hai to maa ko sar jhukane mein musalma aur hindu kya miliye manoj muntashir se sahitya aaj tak delhi mein live फ्री एंट्री के लिए रजिस्टर करें www.ajtak.in/sahitya पर या मिस्ड कॉल दीजिए 9310330033. Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics, and insights that matter. Join India today now on WhatsApp with the number one election team as we gear up for the upcoming assembly elections. Scan the QR code now. Join India today now. On WhatsApp, follow these steps. Open WhatsApp on your phone. Check for a new updates tab. Select Find Channel and type India Today. After finding the channel, tap the Follow button. Air quality today in Delhi, four hundred and twenty-four. In Mumbai, 121. In Kolkata, 199. In Bangalore, 39. In Chennai, 151. In Hyderabad, 114. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag dot com. watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company If I brush harder my teeth will be cleaner I don't really need to deal with bad breath popping mint will solve it I can't get a dental x-ray it can be dangerous Pregnant women should not go to a dentist. I have crooked teeth, but how can I wear braces? Is that not for kids? These and many more myths around oral health prevents us from getting the right kind of attention our teeth and gums deserve. We are busting a dozen of these myths and our experts are weighing in on each one of them. Do you have yellow teeth and brush till your gums bleed? Then stop immediately. It's important to brush your teeth thoroughly. However, brushing too hard can wear down the enamel and cause discoloration and sensitivity. In addition, 
brushing too hard may also damage your gums and even cause them to bleed and recede. While we all love chewing gum and the fresh breath it leaves us with at least for some time, this is not the solution to bad breath. It is not to say that chewing gum does not have its benefits for oral health. However, it is never a replacement for brushing your teeth. Sugar-free gum can help displace bacteria in the mouth, increase saliva production and freshen your breath. But it will not remove the sticky plaque that builds up on your teeth. Presented by Aapka Joy, Bharat Ka Joy, Joy E-Bike. Co-powered by Parul University, Vadodara, Gujarat. All right, welcome back. Now we see all the action happening in Chhattisgarh as Chhattisgarh polls uh, taking place, the last phase. The Congress has won the last assembly election in Chhattisgarh, ending the BJP's 15 year rule in the tribal dominated states. Bhupesh Bagel is speaking. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Those are live visuals coming in of Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Bhupesh Bagel going to cast his vote. Chhattisgarh is voting for the second and final phase of the assembly elections after high octane first phase. Chhattisgarh now gears up for the second phase. Voting turnout of 19.6% has been recorded so far. In Dhamtari, Naxalites have attacked two CRPF Jawans travelling on the bike as well who had gone out to provide security to polling party. And as per reports, back-to-back -back ID blasts have been carried out. They've been reported from areas there while Chhattisgarh polling is underway. Live visuals coming in of Bhupesh Bagel, Chhattisgarh Chief Minister, whether his fate will be sealed for the next round, the next term, that all will be clear on the 3rd of December. Today is the final phase of voting in Chhattisgarh. We see hectic security. His guards there deployed right outside the polling booth as the Chief Minister Bhupesh Bagel has walked in to cast his vote. The Congress has won the last assembly elections, ending that 15-year rule that the BJP held in Chhattisgarh. Bhupesh Bagel, Chief Minister, is among the 958 candidates contesting for the 70 seats spread across 22 districts. In fact, Bhupesh Bagel had approached people to go out and cast their votes. Uh, this is a polling day where we see so far the voter turnout has been uh, fairly good. Bhupesh Bagel voting, images coming in, these are live shots. So far, 19.6% voter turnout in Chhattisgarh. यहाँ मामला एक तरफा है किसी लड़ाई उड़ाई नहीं है क्योंकि यहाँ के ये लड़ाई जो है वो यहाँ के कांग्रेस के कार्यकर्ता यहाँ के किसान यहाँ के मजदूर यहाँ महिलाएं युवा सब लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं कुछ लोग तो कल साथ में घूमे भी देखे अरे एक तरफा है यहाँ दो दो तरफा भी नहीं है अरे कोई परेशानी यहाँ तो एक तरफा मामला मैंने कहा ना मैं चुनाव नहीं लड़ रहा हूँ पाटन में यहाँ के कार्यकर्ता यहाँ के मतदाता खुद लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं आप मामला एक तरफ भी कह चुके हैं सीएम साहब के रिश्ते में तो हम तुम्हारे लगते हैं मतलब हाँ बोलो 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 तो है तो जो अपने आप भतीजा साबित कर रहा है मैं बोल रहा हूँ रिश्ते में हम तुम्हारे बाप लगते हैं
Rahul Gautam joining us live. Uh, Bupesh Bagel, who's just cast his vote. Rahul, tell us, uh, Bupesh Bagel looking in high spirits as he's cast his vote there. Final phase of voting in Chhattisgarh so far. Not too sure if this is, a, is it's a motivating figure. We see about 19% voter turnout so far. Is that good on a day like this? Nabila, right now I'm in Ambikapur where 22% of voters have uh, exercised uh, the, the right and uh, you rightly pointed out that uh, Chhattisgarh is one of the crucial states as far as uh, Congress is concerned given the fact that uh, they are pinning all their hopes on Bupesh Pagel uh, and uh, the senior leadership here that they're going to retain this state uh, for Congress party. In fact, uh, Congress party is, is banking and relying heavily on the social welfare scheme that they have started uh, like direct uh, cash transfers, giving subsidies to the uh, to the farmers, and in fact, uh, they are also, uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to uh, mitigate the attacks that have been coming in from the BJP, who uh, is listing number of scams, LS scam that they, they are saying that have taken place uh, in the state of Chhattisgarh. I've got some people who have just cast their votes. Apna naam batayega. Uh, Narendra Singh Tuteja. Narendra Singh, kind muddo ko dhyan mein rakkar aap apna vote dal kar aaye hain. Kya issues hain common logo ke liye? सबसे बड़े इश्यूज देखिए विकास के होते हैं जैसे आज हम अंबिकापुर जो है वो संभागीय मुख्यालय है यहाँ पर जो उम्मीदें हैं जो आकांक्षाएं हैं लोगों की हम जो चाहते हैं हमारी कनेक्टिविटी बेहतर से बेहतर हो हमारे एयरपोर्ट की अभी तक शुरुआत नहीं हो पाई रेल कनेक्टिविटी में हम पिछड़े हुए हैं और भी तमाम वो जनहित के मुद्दे हैं सड़कों को लेकर के जिस तरीके से हम संघर्षरत रहते हैं यही वो मुद्दे हैं जो जन आकांक्षाएं चाहती हैं हमारी जो मूलभूत आवश्यकताएं हैं उनको लेकर के हम ये चाहेंगे कि जो सरकार आ रही हमारे जो सम्मानीय विधायक चुन के आएंगे वो हमारे इन चीजों का ख्याल रखें कि हमारी बेसिक आवश्यकताएं क्या है तो विकास is the key word here development is what uh, uh, you know every water is speaking about they are saying that uh, uh, they want their leaders to deliver on ground as far as chhattisgarh is concerned we all know uh, it's a rural uh, you know based economy therefore congress party has been emphasizing on welfare schemes particularly for uh, rural uh, areas but bjp is saying that uh, it has been a corrupt regime as far as bupesh baghel is concerned i myself spoke with ts singh dev who is the deputy chief minister of chhattisgarh in fact he also said that we have delivered a lot uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know fulfilling our promises and uh, when i asked him that uh, 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 that uh, uh, you know since we had spoken last time in delhi he said that bupesh baghel is my captain so i asked him that do you still hold uh, that to be in he said that bupesh baghel is my captain but uh, the party is uh, fighting under collective leadership and in fact he also took a cue from cricket saying that uh, uh, it is virat kohli who had scored a ton shreyas uh, uh, you know also played uh, you know very well but it was mohammad sami uh, who was declared man of the match so you can read between the lines clearly it seems that uh, uh, congress party is pretty confident as far as chatisgarh is concerned but they seems to be losing some seats in sarguja division this is what uh, you know uh, we've been picking up uh, from ground zero there are certain rebels who have come up uh, in in some of the seats last time there are 14 seats in sarguja they were uh, uh, it was a clean sweep for congress party but seems that this time there might be some seat that congress party would be losing in and the bjp would obviously be gaining those seats so we have to really wait and watch for 3rd december when uh, ballot boxes will be open but as we speak you can see behind me this is the uh, this is a modern polling station that has been uh, made by election commission uh, there are facilities here for senior citizens for first time voters you can see uh, a mera vote mera bhavishya so clearly uh, election commission is also uh, encouraging people to come out in in large numbers so that uh, you know this festival of democracy could be celebrated uh, uh, in a best possible manner but as far as politics is concerned it is only hitting and people are casting their votes they are sealing the fate of candidates which we'll know uh, which we are going to know on 3rd of december with us kumar kunal i'm going to quickly cut across to all the reactions coming in from the uh, the stakeholders the real stakeholders senior leaders uh, from chatisgarh but before that here's a quick look at the live visuals coming in of Madhya, of uh, chatisgarh chief minister bupesh bagel as there's barely about 19% voter turnout in the second and last phase of elections there uh, he himself has come out to vote encouraging people to step out and cast their vote for chatisgarh is the one state from which the congress has the real high hopes uh, the highest hope if i could say in this round of elections let's cut across to all those reactions what do you think you know uh, about the bjp strategy because they are attacking you very fiercely 
uh, listing many scams, you know, even Prime Minister said that you have committed a scam in the name of Mahadev, so there's liquor scam, alleged these scams. So uh, how are you going to counter the narrative which BJP is propagating that this, this Bhupesh Bagel government is a corrupt regime? I hope you haven't included me. <laughs> you said. So these are uh, baseless allegations and uh, at most allegations, okay. which is the cheapest and the worst form of politics that could be played. You asked me questions as to what people expected of you mm. and what have you been able to deliver. So the BJP should have been fighting this election on planks of what they would want to do for the people. What is it that they would want to do from the people? We would like to know about uh, Operation Lotus before they talk about anything concerning uh, alleged corruption anywhere else. What is the source of Operation Lotus in this country? First, the Prime Minister, the Home Minister, the leaders in the BJP should come forward and explain that, have that inquired into, seriously, for the people of the country. You recently elevated as Deputy Chief Minister. Uh, you comes from Surguja. There are 14 seats, but there are a number of rebels, you know, for example, from Mahindragarh, Balrampur. Uh, you think you'll be able to deliver as you've been delivering Surguja for the party? Because you said that for the past three terms, you've been clean sweeping this area. So are you confident that you're going to deliver this time also Surguja, all 14 seats to Congress party? We've already tried or tried our best. Uh, and uh, whatever the results come, we accept them and go forward. It's never been 14 out of 14 all the time. Uh, there has been 110 in 77 in favor of the BJP. One, one nine, I think, there were 10 constituencies then. The nine, BJP won nine at a point in time. There have been times where the Congress has won seven, eight, nine. There have been times when both have shared seven, seven seats. So it's never the same. And it will never be the same. Sir, किस तरीके से आप देख रहे हो BJP की स्थिति कितनी मजबूत है पूरे छत्तीसगढ़ में दूसरे चरण का मतदान आज हो रहा है? निश्चित रूप से जिस प्रकार से जनता का आशीर्वाद भारतीय जनता पार्टी को मिल रहा है, जनता उत्साह पूर्वक परिवर्तन के लिए तैयार है। जिस प्रकार से पांच सालों में भूपेश बघेल की सरकार ने हर वर्ग को ठगने का काम धोखा देने का काम किया है और इसलिए जनता पूरी तरह से परिवर्तन के लिए तैयार है और भारतीय जनता पार्टी को भरपूर आशीर्वाद जनता का मिल रहा है तो निश्चित रूप से 3 दिसंबर को जब मतगणना होगी प्रदेश में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार बनेगी और छत्तीसगढ़ खुशहाली और तरक्की की ओर आगे बढ़ेगा किन मुद्दों के आधार पर आपने देखा कि जो पहले चरण की वोटिंग हुई है उसका परसेंटेज काफी हाई रहा है इस बार जो मुद्दे होंगे जो आज मतदान हो रहे हैं कौन से खास मुद्दे बीजेपी लेकर के आगे जा रहे हैं वास्तविकता यह है कि पांच साल में भूपेश बघेल की सरकार ने दुर्दशा की है छत्तीसगढ़ को अपराध का गढ़ बना दिया है नशे का गढ़ बना दिया है धर्मांतरण का गढ़ बना दिया है भ्रष्टाचार का गढ़ बना दिया है माफियाओं का गढ़ बना दिया है विकास के सारे काम ठप हैं और ऐसे में छत्तीसगढ़ की जनता परेशान है और छत्तीसगढ़ की जनता परिवर्तन चाहती है भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने अपना संकल्प पत्र प्रस्तुत किया है छत्तीसगढ़ के खुशहाली और तरक्की का पूरा रोड मैप हमने अपने घोषणा पत्र में प्रस्तुत किया है जनता का भरपूर आशीर्वाद और समर्थन हमें प्राप्त हो रहा है परिवर्तन के लिए All right now poster war has erupted yet again in Telangana this time banners have been posted near Shamshad Shamshabad Airport saying that welcome to Congress leaders who have sacrificed lives of the students of Telangana. Several banners welcoming Rahul Gandhi near the airport has been erected. Rahul's photograph is in the middle of the Telangana martyrs photographs in that banner. Stepping out across to Abdul Bashir joining us more on that. Abdul, a poster war there in Telangana and these banners this time have been pasted near the Shamshabad airport saying welcome to the Congress leaders who sacrificed lives of students of Telangana. What, what does it really mean? Is it a 
jibe being taken against Rahul Gandhi? Give us more. Who's done it? See here to, uh, today, Rahul Gandhi is set to visit Telangana state where he is addressing public meetings and holding padayatras in Telangana of, uh, for the upcoming polls. And also Malikarjun Kharge is here, he is uh, right now uh, releasing the manifesto for the state of Telangana during which this poster war has erupted. Now poster war is not new to the state of uh, Telangana or mainly Hyderabad when the top leaders or top cadres uh, do arrive, these poster wars do erupt in parts of the city. And this time it is uh, with uh, the uh, matters of uh, uh, you know uh, Telangana agitation. Yesterday remember P. Chidambaram during a press conference has mentioned uh, that uh, when asked about the 1200 um, uh, the people, the youth who have sacrificed their lives during this agitation, uh, Chidambaram had stated that he's sorry about it and a centre cannot be blamed for it, uh, is what he has said. Now that uh, a statement has sparked a controversy wherein today we see the posters of Rahul Gandhi uh, between the uh, Telangana matters, the, uh, the youth who has lost their life during this agitation, more than 1200 youth have lost their lives and now the BRS is bl blaming Congress uh, of uh, this, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, lives that have been lost by these agitators during the uh, separate uh, state movement of the Telangana state. And uh, while Rahul Gandhi is here today, he is set to address rally uh, this has become a you know a, a center of a, uh, you know a, a point uh, to be discussed as to uh, what exactly uh, is uh, the Congress uh, stand on wh where in one side Congress claims that Sonia Gandhi has given or announced a separate state of Telangana on the other hand BRS is claiming that uh, uh, Congress is responsible uh, for delaying uh, the separate state of Telangana and these people who have been agitating and losing lives are uh, you know uh, the, these uh, the, the lives who have right. lost are uh, uh, mainly uh, due to the Congress party and the Congress party is responsible for it. All right, Over to Abdul. Uh, poster war there as it plays out. All the political parties are trying to uh, gain momentum right weeks ahead of elections. 30th of November is when polls happen in Telangana. Now, just days ahead of assembly polls, a fresh debate has erupted over bulldozer model of governance in Telangana. In fact, two days ago, state BJP chief G. Kishan Reddy has claimed that bulldozer will be used against criminals who have illegally grabbed lands of poor Muslims. AIMIM chief Azad Din OAC has slammed the state BJP chief for his comment, claiming that both BJP and Congress only know how to divide communities, OAC saying... BJP's only job is to demolish, which is not going to work in Hyderabad. Accusing Congress of doing politics over the bodies of victims in Nampali fire, OAC has added that it was his party that saved lives during the tragic incident. G. Kishan Reddy of the BJP, meanwhile, has accused AIMIM of grabbing land of poor people of Hyderabad. He's asserted that UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath's style of, or his bulldozer model of governance will be implemented if BJP is voted to power. जो लीडर हैं किशन रेड्डी का बयान देखा जो तेलंगाना के प्रेसिडेंट हैं वो ये कह रहे हैं कि बीजेपी अगर पावर में आएंगी तो हम पुराने शहर में घरों को बुलडोजर लगा देंगे आप बताइए कि क्या नफरत है इनको पुराने शहर से इनसे पहले एक उनका एक प्रेसिडेंट था उन्हें बोला मैं सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक करता हूं पुराने शहर पे उसको नहीं हुआ उन्हें टाइम टाइम हो गया अब इन्हों आए अभिनवा के बोल रहे हैं मैं बुलडोजर इस्तेमाल करता हूं जैसा यूपी में इस्तेमाल किया गया हम बीजेपी के लोगों को बताना चाह रहे हैं कि यहां बुलडोजर काम नहीं करता या मोहब्बत काम करती है या तुम्हारी नफरत काम नहीं करती या मोहब्बत काम करती है तुम नफरत की राजनीति करते हो तुम तोड़ना तुम्हारा काम है बुलडोजर ला घर को तोड़ देंगे अरे क्यों तोड़ेंगे घर को आप किसी का बसा बसा है घर आप तोड़ना चाहते आप कोर्ट नहीं मिल रहा तो और कैसा लेना चाह रहे हम बुलडोजर से घरों को तोड़ देंगे पुराने शहर के ये नफरत के बातें बीजेपी करती है All right, for more on that, you could log on to indiatoday.in. You could also download our app for a lot more. Do stay with us as we gear up for the upcoming five state assembly elections. India Today's number one election team bring you all the updates. Do log in to this or rather scan this QR code to catch all the news right on your phone at your fingertips. India Today now on WhatsApp. Thanks for watching.
are watching India Today. Powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. While the Hollywood loves some of the ice clinical, medical grade skincare, it is a luxury buy for your skin due to the high price points. Fire and Ice Facial is trending too. Follow this process. Always cleanse, treat, heal and protect. That's so 2023. Speaking of protect, sunscreen is super important. The ones with silicon with the PA++++++ that is 4 pluses are key. A more you know powerful PA means your sunscreen is also equally powerful. So if you are buying a PA++++ or PA4 times plus, it means your sunscreen is giving you optimal you know uh, safety against UV rays. But hang on, a sunscreen is not just enough. What about the blue lights? These cause severe damage and age the skin. Hence, you can add a blue light protector just before your sunblock, like a caro oil. That is skincare 2023 for you. And the carrot oil or the caro also has antioxidant properties for anti-aging, for smoothening the skin, for improving the quality, the texture, the shine in the skin. And it beautifully blends with this, is absorbed by the skin and cuts the blue light. Net Net, some of the best brands for skincare, the ones that are medical grade, gentle yet effective. Always speak to your doctor and get prescriptions. Our picks for the most effective skincare for Indian skin in the luxury range include Ice Clinical, FCL, Sesterma, and Bioderma. In the affordable range, Cerafil and Sebamet. In New Delhi, Chethi Narula for Lifestyle Bureau India today. watching India Today. Powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Weather forecast now. Delhi, maximum 28 and minimum 14 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 30 and minimum 25 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 27 and minimum 21 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 28 and minimum 21 degrees. Chennai, maximum 29 and minimum 26 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 30 and minimum 19 degrees. with facts. She takes the news by its horn. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold and direct. Setting the tone for the biggest stories. From every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me Nabila Jamal on India Today. India Today, 
पावर्ड बाय फिनेस्ट बी सस्टेनेबल चेंज अ बी एंड पी ग्रुप कंपनी semi-finals before 2024 polls Congress versus the BJP grudge fight in Madhya Pradesh Which Kamal will bloom in Madhya Pradesh Final phase of polling in Chhattisgarh Will Prime Minister's tribal outreach benefit the bharatiya janata party will the mahadev application scam hurt bhupesh baghel state of war only on india today television thanks for watching india today i'm nabila jabal i'm taking you through the top news coming in the headlines first 40 workers have been trapped for over 120 hours only 30 to 40 meters of debris to go now while 5 900 mm pipes have been inserted inside the tunnel heavy duty diamond cutting machines are all pressed in action state of war madhya pradesh kicks off bjp and the congress big big politicians offer prayers and cast their vote shivraj singh chauhan makes a big statement says bjp and voters will decide the chief ministerial face in the state इन दिसंबर के बाद क्या मैं ये कहूं कि अगले मुख्यमंत्री भावी मुख्यमंत्री भी शिवराज सिंह चौहान ही भाजपा की तरफ से होंगे जनता पार्टी तय करेगी जनता और पार्टी सेकंड फेज ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ इलेक्शंस ऑन द वे अमेड करप्शन एलिगेशंस टी एस सिंह दियो रबिश इज चार्जेस सेज दैट द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट मस्ट ऑलवेज वर्क एज अ टीम Now after India voted against Israel occupation in UN Prime Minister Modi condemns the killings of civilians in the conflict says India has sent aid to Gaza All right now big update on the deep fakes that's all taking uh, the internet by storm and uh, right after india today's deep dive into deep fakes prime minister modi now calls deep fakes one of the biggest threats facing india's system prime minister modi saying that deep fakes can cause chaos in society citizens and the media need to be vigilant these are words of prime minister modi as he's addressed the deep fake issue Well, it all started with Rashmika Mandanna's deep fake that did the rounds with the actress there calling out this issue and now Prime Minister Modi saying that this could be a real threat in the days to come deep fakes one of the biggest threats that could that India could face Prime Minister Modi saying that this could cause chaos within the society citizens and the media need to be super vigilant In fact, the India Today group did a deep dive into deep fakes on how easy it is it is really to morph people's face with someone else to to change and tweak voice to to match anyone. In fact, this could be misused. It could be threatening to democracy and a country like ours as uh, technology is really advancing. Deep fakes are becoming a lot more popular. Balakrishna, our executive editor of the Fact Check team, joins us live. Uh, Balakrishna, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has now addressed the issue, saying that this could be a real threat in the days to come. The media and, and citizens at large need to be vigilant. Uh, what's what's a way to really crack down on these rising instances of videos of deep fake coming to light? So this is very important that Prime Minister himself has addressed this issue, which is a quite serious issue. And incidentally, only yesterday, India Today did a full show on this: how the impact of uh, what is the impact of deep fake and how deep fake. deep fakes have become so common and is being now widely used it is also important to underline that we yesterday in the show we displayed that how easy it has become and how easily accessible these technologies these apps have become which, which and we showed that how we can quickly produce within a 
span of few minutes somebody can produce something which may, which looks totally believable so uh, uh, to your question that how it can be addressed is is it because this ai this whole emergence of ai has changed the scenario completely and now things which would have earlier taken hours to produce can be produced within a span of few minutes and it is those technologies have also become cheaper so uh, the government is also tightening its snooze around defects as you might show that the government has now uh, uh, instructed this uh, platforms the social media platforms to be vigilant about this only uh, in last uh, one week we have seen that youtube as well as meta have said that they are changing their policies towards defect and somebody if there is a complaint the person has to remove these defects but it is as of now as we talk today there is no bulletproof there is no foolproof technology that can totally uh, that can totally uh, uh, i would say eradicate this problem these things are still evolving so what we can do is that people should be aware about this now earlier we used to say that see, seeing is believing that's not true anymore because as we can see easily that how uh, easy right. it is to uh, make deep fakes all right uh, balakrishna thanks very much india today really did a deep dive to see show you how easy it is to morph images voice and uh, basically send out messages the way you want to on, on with with a devious intent it could really threaten uh, the legal system in the country Prime Minister Modi addressing the issue. Now it's India versus Australia in the mega finals of the World Cup. Unbeaten in the current World Cup, brushing aside every team nearly that's faced the men in blue. India has stormed now into the finals, but the air ticket prices of the finals have really skyrocketed as demand for a seat in the Narendra Modi Stadium, Ahmedabad, now shoots up. Ticket prices for flights on the 18th range from Delhi to Ahmedabad, roughly about 21,000 to 40,000 rupees per ticket. The Mumbai Ahmedabad route flight tickets range 63,800. In fact, this is where the final match is going to take place. The Narendra Modi Stadium, where the finals between, uh, as we see that, India now is in its uh, best of spirits and while the finals is held in Ahmedabad, we see flight tickets that skyrocketed. A mere Delhi to Ahmedabad flight is now coming up roughly to 21 to 40,000 rupees. Mumbai to Ahmedabad, much closer, is coming up to 63,000 odd rupees. <laughs> Exclusive conversation with Sunil Gavaskar and Dilip Vensarkar, uh, Rajdeep Sardesai taking on all the excitement around the cricket and the ICC World Cup with India on a winning spree. My first guest on the show today is the one and only Sunil Gavaskar, himself a world champion, record holder of highest test centuries for a long while. Appreciate your joining us, Mr. Gavaskar. It's been 24 hours, as I said, uh, since we had that famous Indian victory. Dilip Vengsakar will also join me later. But uh, Mr. Gavaskar, pretty special day at Mumbai at the Wankhede Stadium. Virat Kohli's 50th one-day uh, international 100, a record. Shami's seven wickets. Your thoughts, what stood out for you on a memorable day in Mumbai? Uh, what stood out for me really was, you know, the uh, the overall performance of the Indian team. Uh, the calmness with which they executed while batting or bowling, there was not even a moment of panic, even when that uh, Daryl Mitchell and Kane Williamson partnership was going on, which had a, some others worried. But there didn't seem to be any sense of panic in this Indian team. The captain was very cool. Uh, the shoulders were still erect. Nobody uh, was, uh, nobody's shoulders had dropped. And when at the drinks interval, Rohit Sharma gathered the team together and said, come on, guys, one last effort and let's finish this. They came back and they took a wicket immediately afterwards and that was it. So I think that stood out for me, that overall team performance. That's, that's really been the feature of India's uh, cricket right throughout this tournament. It's not that the batting has dominated or the bowling has dominated. It's been a total all-round performance, including the fielding, which has been, you know, pretty much top class. But has it surprised you just what we've achieved? I mean, to win, what now, 10 matches in a row 
It's not easy. I mean, it's never been done in World Cups to, to win matches like this. The great Australian team, 2003 and 7, went unbeaten. But are you surprised? Did you think the Indian team would be as good as it's turning out to be? Uh, no, it didn't surprise me because over the last uh, couple of years, you can see that you know they have been looking to get the fit the pieces, and they've managed to do it uh, during the Asia Cup. Uh, you could see that they'd managed to do it, and and when Hardik Pandya uh, came back uh, to full fitness, then it was a completely different thing because with Hardik Pandya, he two in one player, he gave the team options. Sadly, he was injured, which opened the door for Mohammad Shami. Uh, but sometimes, you know, when somebody is waiting for an opportunity, like Shami has been. And suddenly to get it, he's grabbed it with both hands. And look at what he's, he's making a difference. He really is the one who is winning the games for you. I, I want to look uh, at two people who've contributed enormously, whose careers you followed closely, uh, Mr. Gavaskar, Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli, both as leaders and uh, as batsmen. In a way, do you think Rohit Sharma has set the tone for the rest of the team by the way he's played with his great fearlessness, freedom and ingenuity? By far the number one player uh, when it comes to uh, strike rates in the first 10 overs in the power play. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look at the way he just takes the opposition bowling on. Uh, and, and the best part about uh, Rohit Sharma's batting has always been his ability to pick that line and length, just that fraction early and get into position to play the shot. Yes, he is fond of the aerial shot, which sometimes if it doesn't come off the middle of the bat, is going to result in a dismissal as we saw the other day. But the fact that, you know, when he is hitting it off the middle of the bat, the ball is invariably in the stands. And, and, and that makes the bowlers change their line, change their length, which benefits the batter at the other end. So this is uh, where uh, the impact that Rohit Sharma has had can never be underscored. I mean, it has been an enormous impact that he's had on the opposition's psyche with the way he's gone after them straight away. The other one I wanted to speak to you, Mr. Gavaskar, about was Virat Kohli. 50 ODI hundreds is a phenomenal achievement and he's got them in in almost half the number of innings that the great Sachin Tendulkar made his 49 hundreds in. It just seems to me an incredible feat, the, the scale of what he's achieved. Terrific, absolutely, no question about it. Absolutely, because look, the next best is uh, Ro uh, Rohit Sharma with 31. So it just tells you the vast gap between uh, between him and, and and numbers two, three, four, five, whatever it is. Because his century hunger, you know, people are run hungry, he's century hungry. And, and, and his century hunger is insatiable and that's how it should be. Every batsman worth his salt should put a minimum price of 100 runs against his name. And that's what he's doing every match. Yes, in this uh, this particular tournament itself, he could have got three more hundreds. He got out in the 80s. He got out once in the 90s. He's got out twice in the 80s. So he could have had three more hundreds. A couple of times he's gone past the 50, but has got, got out after that. So he's been in phenomenal form. And 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 he's made every, every uh, you know, match count. I, I want to turn also, Mr. Gavaskar, to two other headline makers who perhaps don't get enough recognition. One is Shreya Sayer from Mumbai, proving all his critics uh, wrong. Made a difference yesterday, got 170 balls. As a result, India, instead of getting 350, ended up with a whopping 397. How good is he now? Absolutely, no question about it. But, but for his initiative, but for his, uh, you know, the, the impetus that he gave, to the Indian batting that during that partnership uh, with Kohli, India would not have uh, got even to 350. And that could have been a bit of an uh, issue. Uh, but his batting, taking the bowling on and then going on after 100, hitting those big sixes, Rahul coming and batting the way he's did. So look, I think this is what I'm saying that over, over this entire uh, campaign, uh, while the focus has been on one man, the, the, the others have, have come in and made telling contributions which is, which is the reason why this Indian team is looking unbeatable. The other day, uh, Mr. Gavaskar, also, you know, we someone mentioned our bowling. We are known to be a country that treats batsmen as gods. But it's the fab five of our bowlers in each match. Someone or the other seems to deliver. Yesterday, it was, of course, the incredible Mohammad Shami. There seems to be something special about the likes of Shami and this pace attack in particular. We've never seen anything like this. Very special. And they're all different. 
different in the sense when you see somebody like a Bumrah coming in and bowling, you know, with 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 an action which is probably not in the coaching box, but so so effective. And now he has added the outswinger uh, to his uh, to his repertoire as well, which makes it even more difficult to score off him. Then this the straight seam bowling of Muhammad Shami, the accuracy with which he bowls, the pace with which he bowls, and then the big heart of uh, Muhammad Siraj. So that has really kept the opposition batters on tenterhooks. Yes, there will be the odd partnership, but they have been the ones who have come back uh, when there's been a partnership and struck. And in the middle overs, you've had Ravinder Jadeja and Kuldeep Yadav not just stopping the runs, but taking the wickets as well and setting the opposition back. So it really has been a, a, a an attack uh, to remember. Uh, bat batters generally in, in a tournament, batters might, might win you the matches. Uh, as we saw with the Maxwell scoring the runs that he did. But it is at the end of the day, it is bowlers who will win you the tournaments. I want to ask you a question that I know you've written in the past about a lot of foreign journalists have come to the country and said this entire tournament is almost being fixed, rigged to ensure that India wins. What do you say today to those who seem to have these conspiracy theories that everything is being fixed from pitches to uh, the playing conditions? How do you respond? What should one be telling them? Nothing excepting, you know, I mean, get out of that, uh, you know, yellow fever that you guys have about India and uh, start to smell the coffee. Uh, and and, and, and uh, when, you, when you talk about coffee, not the Brazilian coffee, but the Nilgiri coffee, start to smell the coffee. There was a time when you guys were the, the bosses and you could do whatever you wanted. Now it is India which is uh, running the, uh, run, uh, ruling the roost uh, and you better be uh, prepared to accept it. There was a time when you guys did not even want India to come to play for, uh, in your countries, you know, because Indians were not very attractive. Now you're falling all over yourselves to have India coming in. Now suddenly from three test matches, you increase India's test matches to four test matches. Now suddenly from four test matches, you've increased it to five test matches because every test match, extra test match with India gives you television revenue. And that is the thing about the, this foreign uh, you know, journalist, which actually uh, baffles me, is that they're quite happy with their cricket boards making money out of Indian cricket. But if Indian book, cricket board can't make money out of Indian cricket. That is, that is, that seems to be the case. And this thing about, you know, trying to how, how at the end of the day, whatever, whatever the, uh, the, the uh, situation about, about the pitches or whatever they are talking about, you, if you want to be world champions, you've got to be prepared to play in all kinds of conditions. So the pitches that they were talking about, uh, the pitch wasn't changed after the toss. The pitch was there before the, uh, before the, uh, the toss was made. Uh, we played in, 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 in places where the, the stumps have been pushed back so that the good length spot, the grassy good length, uh, uh, good length spot would be more prominent by pushing the stumps back. But have you ever heard over these years, you follow cricket, where an Indian cricketer or the Indian media has ever complained about the pitches or conditions over there, we accept it because that's what that's the beauty of playing. That's a challenge of playing in overseas conditions. So basically, smell the coffee. It's it's Nilgiris. It is very nice. And go home. And maybe it's winter in your time. Go home. Tuck yourself into a nice blanket and watch India. So can I say from all that you're saying, smelling the coffee to the rest of the world, that India is going to win this uh, final? Is it a done deal? Or as the cliche goes, we're going to have to wait till that last ball is bowled on Sunday. Uh, you've got to wait till the last ball is bowled, particularly when it comes to the, to the, uh, to the knockouts, because knockouts are where the best teams are there. Uh, in the group games, so you might actually have a situation where uh, one team might be just that little bit superior on the day. Uh, but in the knockouts, uh, generally, these are all close encounters and no matches won or lost till the last ball is bowled. But India, your favourites for the finals in Ahmedabad? Can we say we are firm favourites irrespective of who wins Australia or South Africa, the other semi which is on at the moment? They, they, with the way they have played, certainly they are, they are the firm favourites. Uh, so it'll be, but it'll be a final, you know, worth going miles to watch because believe me, that uh, you know, at the moment it looks as if Australia is going to get through uh, to the uh, to the finals. Uh, this is going to be an unbelievable game because you're playing against five-time champions, a team that knows how to come back from uh, almost impossible situations, who know how to play the finals, how to win finals. So uh, this is going to be a real, real challenge for the Indian team. But I do believe that Rohit Sharma's men are up for it. 
My final question, sir, bit of a googly. If there was a match between Rohit Sharma's men of 2023 and Kapil Dev's men of 1983, which you were a part of, who would win? Oh, the 83 team would win. So say that again. Not You're sure that the 83 down, team would, would defeat uh, Rohit Sharma's team, is it? Absolutely. Not absolutely sure. Well, Mr. Gavaskar, that's a big call. The men of 83 will defeat uh, the men of 2023. Either way, we'll wait and see what they do on Sunday. But for now, for joining us and setting the stage for this special, thank you very much, Mr. Sunil Gavaskar, telling the Western press in particular to smell the coffee. Nilgiri's coffee, as he added there. Okay, remember now, in amidst all this coffee that we are talking about, two cricketers who are like wine are Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma. They're just getting better with time. They've... Virat has reached where no other uh, one-day batsman ever has. And Rohit Sharma is just uh, terrific at the top. I want to go to someone now who's seen both of them rise over the years. Dilip Vengsarka, legendary cricketer, stand named after him in Mumbai, uh, is someone who, as chairman of Selector, spotted their talents. Uh, you must be particularly proud of what we saw yesterday, Mr. Vengsarka. Thank you for joining us. You gave Virat Kohli that first chance in 2008, spotted him. What was so special about Virat when you first saw him? Yeah, actually, I watched Virat um, in an under-16 tournament in Calcutta uh, against Bombay. Um, and uh, he was very impressive. Uh, I think he showed a lot of maturity. Um, and of course, Mumbai lost that match, uh, but very narrowly. Um, you know, and Virat had uh, scored uh, something like uh, 60, 70 runs. But he was extremely impressive. Um, uh, he, uh, he was very mature for his age. And the way he executed his shots were absolutely out of the top draw. Um, uh, they were top-class player. Then, of course, uh, the um, under-19 uh, also was the World Cup. The, this is the World Cup which India won. I think Virat played brilliantly. Uh, he led the side from the front. Um, especially against Pakistan, uh, I think he showed excellent temperament. Um, and uh, then we picked him for the Emerging Players Tournament in Australia. Uh, you know, um, the winner of the chairman's selection committee. Um, and other teams, uh, they had test cricketers, but we had picked under 23 players uh, because we wanted to uh, just uh, build um, a very um, uh, extent strength, bench strength. And that's what we did. Um, and Virat was asked to open the innings against New Zealand, who uh, were seven test cricketers. Um, and they had scored 270 runs. Um, and Praveen Amre was the coach. I still remember I was there. Uh, and he asked Virat, Ki aap open karoge? He said, yeah, I'll open the innings. And he scored a brilliant 100. And not only he scored a 100, but he remained not out till the very end. See, that was very important for me. Um, he won the match. I think he could have uh, 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 no, I think got excited after scoring 100. But no, I think you know, he batted till the very end. Uh, and he scored something like, I think, 123. And I was convinced that this boy has got a bright future. Um, you know, and given a chance at this stage of his career, I think he would definitely prosper. Bright future in 2008. But did you ever imagine that by 2023, he'd be scoring 50 one-day hundreds? Has he simply exceeded everyone's expectations? Is he just in another league? No, not really. Actually, when you see the skill skill level, um, you know, and mental toughness and everything about about the player, I think you pick him in the team. I think there are so many we picked, uh, but there are very few. Um, um, I think who have gone on to achieve so much in international cricket, I think because of the passion, uh, uh, because of the focus, and because of the discipline and the fitness level. Uh, I think Virat was simply outstanding the way he's played so far. What about uh, the Mumbai boy, Rohit Sharma? When you first saw him on the Maidan, what impressed you about young Rohit Sharma that made you also look at him as a future star? See, that time I was with NCA as well. I think we used to spot talent you know, and groom them in NCA. Um, you know, and Rohit Sharma, I think, was uh, um, I think one of them. I think he was 17 years of age at that time. Um, and I had convinced the Bombay selectors then that we should pick him in the team, but they had not seen him. I had seen him in NCA, and he, he scored an excellent 100 against some team. I don't remember now. Um, and I was convinced that he's got talent. 
but but how it develops uh, um, later, I don't know. The thing is that um, um, I think Bombay was playing against Australia. Um, the CCI, um, and mm -hmm. I want to play, and I want him to play that game. I told our coach Chandrakant Pandit that you should include him in the playing eleven. But the unfortunate part is that he came without the kit bag. Uh, and I asked really? him, why didn't you bring the kit bag? He said, sir, um, I didn't know I would be playing. I thought I would be, uh, I think, 14. But uh, but I didn't think uh, that I would um, I'll play playing 11. And Chandu was livid. I said, I told Chandu, uh, I said, not to scold him. He's a young guy. He's a, uh, I'm sure when, once he gets the opportunity, I think he will bat very well. But he missed out on that opportunity to play against Australia for Mumbai. And um, then later on, of course, he played at Mumbai and scored um, uh, 100. You know, and after that, I think he never looked back. He was simply outstanding. But again, you know, potential is one thing. Realizing it, Mr. Vengsarkar, is another. The Rohit Sharma that we see today, you know, scorer of double centuries in one day international matches, someone who terrifies fast bowlers with just the way he plays his shots. Did you think that he would reach this level again? See, Rohit Sharma was languid, basically. I think he he was, uh, of course, he was focused in uh, this thing. But uh, I think, you know, he, um, I think he had in a bit, bit, uh, bit, uh, bit uh, you know, of a led back attitude, uh, as you say. Um, um, unlike, unlike Virat, because Virat was uh, there in the face, like, you know, I mean, he was aggressive. Um, he was positive. Uh, but Rohit Sharma... Um, and, um, the tremendous talented player. There's, there's, there's no question about his talent. His skill level and mental toughness is superb, and the way he executes shots is absolutely amazing. Because uh, uh, the short ball, the way he faces, uh, I think uh, against all the fast balls in the world, I think he picks the length very early. Um, you know, and he hits them into the stand straight away. Um, of course, I think Rohit, Rohit Sharma I did very well uh, in the IPL as well. Um, I think he won uh, uh, the IPL Championship at least five, six times. And that must have given, given him a lot of confidence. Uh, so what I feel is, I think Rohit and Virat um, are different players completely. Uh, and, you know, Virat is extremely fit. Rohit, extremely talented. Both are talented. I'm not saying that. But Rohit, if he works hard basically on his fitness, he can play for the five years maybe. Really? Okay. Uh, just a quick word on another Mumbai cricketer, Shreyas Iyer, who I believe, you know, played the match-winning batting innings. Did you ever see this special talent in him? He seems to hit sixes all too easily. Uh, yes, of course. Um, um, Adi is very talented um, uh, and he's very good. Uh, I think the way he batted yesterday was simply outstanding because um, I think that, that made things easier, I think, for Virat Kohli. Um, and he's a very good player. He's an improved player. Um, and again, I think uh, the IPL stint, um, there's a captain also has helped him a lot. Uh, it, has helped his, uh, it has helped his confidence. Um, and of course, skill level, mental toughness is all there. Um, and uh, I, I think, you know, uh, um, if we continue the same way, I'm sure that he, uh, he will do extremely well. I think as both of these guys. Let me ask you, if I may, sir, the same googly question I asked Mr. Gavaskar, which is the better team? The team you were part of that won the first World Cup in 1983 or this one, which hopes to win it on Sunday? Well, very difficult to say because uh, I wouldn't like uh, um, I to compare the team with uh, yeah, they have, they have different eras, basically. Uh, 80, 83 was different team completely. We were playing in England. Uh, here they are playing in India. Uh, but uh, uh, but let me tell you one thing. Uh, in 1987, the Reliance Cup, I think we were the first to win the, uh, uh, the, world, then, yeah, the World Cup. Uh, and we played extremely well until, till, till the semi-finals. Um, the Pakistan and India were the finalists, basically. Actually, everybody thought they would come in the finals. Uh, but we lost in Mumbai and, um, you know, and they lost in Lahore. Um, and, uh, and Australia and England played in the finals. But having said that, this team is an outstanding team. They have won all 10 matches, I think, which is very, very rare indeed. Uh, because 1975, I mean, West Indies won. Uh, they had lost few games in between. Then again, they won in 79, but they had lost... This team has won all the matches so far, and and everybody's in form. And there's no player in this team who is not in form. Um, 
So um, um, a lot of five six batters and you know, and two spinners, uh, they are playing a very important role. Um, you know, because middle overs are very important, um, and the way they have bowled so far, uh, they are really uh, outstanding. And then of course the fast bowlers. See when Hardik Pandya got injured, everybody thought, "Abhi kya hoga?" Like you know. But Shami came back and he bowls absolutely brilliantly. Um, and the way he bowled yesterday, I think brought us back into the match. Mr. Vengsarka, for sharing those personal stories of the rise of Virat and Rohit and so much more, I appreciate you joining me too. Now, at the end there, Mr. Vengsarka mentioning the Mohammad Shami story. An injury to Hardik Pandya meant that Mohammad Shami entered the picture. My daughter, after the match, asked me, how does someone from Amroha, a small village in Uttar Pradesh, then go on to these heights? Well, the truth is, Mohammad Shami is one of the stories of our times. Truly inspirational. From the small town rising up to the very heights to now becoming the fastest to 50 wickets in a World Cup and the first to take seven wickets in a match. I want to look now at Mohammad Shami's story and then we'll look at just why this sport is such a great unifier. Take a look. From having thoughts of suicide just a couple of months back to decimating teams in the Cricket World Cup, Mohammad Shami has come a long way. The man who was not even a guaranteed starter in the 2023 World Cup is now ruling the roost. If it wasn't for Hardik Pandya's injury, who knows if Shami would have gone the entire tournament warming the bench given that he hadn't started in the first four games for India. Shami started the tournament bagging a Pfeiffer and right now, even that's not good enough for him. In the semi-final, the man ended up claiming a seven-wicket haul. The man from Uttar Pradesh's Amroha has left an indelible mark on the World Cup and back home, he's nothing short of an inspiration. There's always something special about Shami. His coach, Mohammad Badruddin, recalls how his skills would become the talk of every household in the village. In a game where the batters make all the headlines, it's a bowler who single-handedly taken India into the World Cup final. Shami's spectacular run in the World Cup has now seen him tumble records left, right and centre. In the semi-final, he became the first ever bowler to take seven wickets in an ICC knockout game and he's now just one win away from becoming a world champion. Sports Bureau, India Today. So does sport represent the best of India? Is Indian sport simply, Indian cricket simply the great Indian dream today that unites the people of this country? Joining me now to answer that question are four very special guests. Suresh Menon is one of India's leading cricket writers, has written some wonderful biographies. Shishir Hatangdi is president at My Sports and former in, uh, Mumbai cricket captain. Rahul Dikuna is ad man, the man behind the Amul ads. Remember the Shami semi-final posters that have come up? That's Rahul's creation. And Mudar Patheria has, uh, is when he's not dabbling in the markets, writes beautifully on cricket, including a lovely piece today on how cricket unites the country. Therefore, let me start with you, Mudar, for a moment, because is that how you see it, that cricket is this great unifier? Mohammad Chami from Amroha goes to Bengal, gets his opportunity, and now shines on the stage, on the brightest stage. We don't see him as an Indian Muslim, but a proud Indian citizen. I think in a country where we are divided on virtually every aspect, every point, and every reality, I think cricket is not the biggest unifier. It is the only unifier. You may disagree that that Charu Khan pro probably looks old and I might say, no, 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 I think he looks extremely young. He looks like a 25-year-old. Uh, you may still say that Salman looks young and I may say he looks old. But on cricket, there is absolutely no dissension. We are all on the same page. So I think it's the biggest and possibly the only national glue that we have today. Very interestingly put, uh, I, you know, Rahul Dekuna, when you put out these ads on cricket, you can sense your love for the sport. Is it part of what Mudar said, that this is a sport that unites us, much like Amul Butter does? 
You know, you, you are, uh, Amul butter is in every Indian household. Yes. No, absolutely. Rajdeep, absolutely. I have a slightly, a slightly, I mean, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that, I mean, we were just rejoicing and I'm 50%, 70% sure we'll win on Sunday. Okay. But I'm not, I do believe, Rajdeep, if you just go back slightly, for many, many years, we loved cricket. We do, we love cricket. But I think what has unified us tremendously are the players. Mm -hmm. I think Sachin was the first big superstar that unified. We just loved him. We just loved the way he batted. Dhoni, I think, did a huge service in making that glue stronger. And I think Virat basically has has sort of made us that 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 uh, has made us feel that as a country, not only can we can we win, but we can stand up to the opposition. I mean, too many too many teams in the past, Rajdeep were fabulous players, but didn't sort of shied away from confrontation. Mm -hmm. So I would I would sincerely say that, yes, cricket is a unifier, but I also believe that Bollywood up to a point mm -hmm. was a great unifier till about four or five years ago, till we hit the pandemic, when suddenly I think OTT became a huge thing. And cinema, basically, both South and, and Bollywood, is also a unifier, I feel, because we love Hindi film. Shah Rukh is a great unifier. Bachchan is a great unifier. Mm -hmm. So I know that we have a great feeling about cricket and I'm, I'm praying that we win on Sunday. But I think sport is a huge unifier. The Asian Games, we had so many, so many, so many victories. So I think the Indian basically is pining for something to take him out of his life. And so any victory I feel uh, is unifier. You know, let, let me take what you said in a moment to Shishir Atangdi because Shishir, you, you played cricket in the 80s uh, when India was just about rising as a cricketing power, one would say, the 70s and 80s. Now, we're expected to win. Is there a self-belief that defines this generation of cricketers with these wonderful stories? The stories of Shami, of a Kuldi Yadav comes again uh, from Kanpur, rises to the very heights. Each of these cricketers has a story to tell in a way. Is this about self-belief, about aspirational India at work? Yes, Rajdeep, I think uh, what has changed from my time when I watched uh, Indian cricket, uh, we were a little shy. We were a little shy. We were uh, we had a sense of inferiority because uh, we were not up to uh, the, the, the dominators of world cricket. And now what has changed primarily is I think cricketers have become financially stable. Uh, that comes with, uh, with the IPL, of course. And the fact that, you know, they've got enough in the world in the bank to believe that they can you know look up uh, anybody in the eye and of course they have the skills they have the training the game has spread across india not only to the metros in my time where it was mumbai Cal bombay calcutta Ch madras bangalore it's gone into you know the rural rural part of india and uh, you know everyone has a story everyone is aspires because they've seen stories like uh, you know whether it's a shami whether it is uh, the pandyas whether it is a uh, uh, you know, the non-metro cricketers to come up and, uh, uh, you know, uh, make themselves be counted uh, on the world stage. And I think the confidence comes from the fact that they've also been playing the IPL for now 15 years. Uh, they're playing with international cricketers. They know that they're no different. They have the same anxiety, the same insecurities, the same uh, tensions that, you know, when you play a big game. So they've all understood that, you know, they're all human. And whether mm -hmm. you come from uh, South Africa, England or wherever, uh, you have the confidence now to deal with all these pressures. And at the back of your mind, you know you're financially secure. I think it makes a hell of yeah. a lot of difference uh, to, to your makeup. Okay, you're saying financial security has made a huge difference. But Suresh Menon, you know, if I look back to the team of 1983 that won the first World Cup, or indeed the first team of that beat England in England in 1971 in West Indies, most of the players came from the big cities. Now you have this small town revolution. Shami represents that. Amroha... Uh, to Calcutta and then eventually, of course, the bright lights. But there are a number of them. Mahendra Singh Dhoni, you could argue, was a pioneer, as was Kapil Dev before him. Is that one of the big changes that you see, that these young cricketers now from the small towns come with no baggage whatsoever? Well, I think, I think two things have uh, led to this. One is that uh, 
I don't think we've given enough credit to Saurav Ganguly for actually encouraging cricketers from the less popular zones, shall we say. And the other thing is the spread of television over the years. Now, someone sitting in, in, in the backwater somewhere can actually watch international cricket on television. He sees the players. He sees what is the, the kind of uh, fame and fortune they, they have. And this, this can be a tremendous motivation. So there are, there are these two things that initially start, started them out. And then there is, of course, the fact that uh, there, there is uh, money in the game, that you can make a living out of it. The fact is that out of even if out of, say, 50,000 people who play some level of club cricket in India or whatever the number, only 11 can actually represent the country at any one given time. The fact is that some of this, some of the fame, some of the fortune really has has uh, sort of percolated down the line, and there is there is a, a a strong belief that where it will ultimately win out, there has been politics, there have been post selections, there have been sort of uh, uh, selections that have to have been questionable for decades, but by and large people think that if you perform at these various uh, sort of age level tournaments, there is a there is a definite step step by step progression to come to the top and and i think that's that's encouraging too and it's not just that everything is concentrated at the top nor is everything concentrated in the big cities so therefore mm-hmm. there, there's greater encouragement for that kind of uh, when you have an early ambition you know, the, those are all fine points you know i just want to tell our viewers my late father played cricket for india in the 1960s he's the only goa born cricketer to play for india male cricketer and uh, he never had seen a cricket match till he was 17 on a proper cricket ground, moved then to Mumbai. There was no television in those days, so he only heard radio commentary. But to take off from something that Suresh said, Mudar, it's meritocratic. You see, Indians believe that nepotism works, but on the cricket field, just because my father played, I couldn't play. Cricket doesn't run in the blood, you've got to be talented. Is that something that makes it so attractive, that you have all these boys coming from these small towns or indeed the big cities, uh, but make it purely on their own ability? Completely. In fact, I would go to the point of saying that the Indian cricket team is possibly the only visible form of governance, public governance in India. And I would say the cleanest form of public governance in the sense that uh, you may have a team which is visible, but you know there are, there could be nepotism. Political parties are opaque. There's so many aspects of public life which are actually hidden from public view. But this is in the open, and I think that the Indian cricket team is possibly the cleanest visible form of governance in this country, and to that extent contains no quota, no uh, reservation, no uh, sifarish, no upar se call aaya tha ya upar se order aaya tha. In this space, nothing works. So, you know, you know, I, I use a slightly crude term, but this is the America in India. This is where the land of clean opportunity, it's actually the Indian cricket team. You know, that, that's, a, that's a lovely way to put it again, that it's the land of opportunity. And, I, you know, Raul Dikuna, you made a point about Bollywood, but Bollywood, there can be nepotism. You can become a film star because someone in your family was one. But you can't do it in cricket. That seems to be, be make cricket so attractive to so many. Rahul? I don't know whether... Rahul, can you hear me? Okay, I, 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 let me try and go to Shishi Ratangdi with that. Shishi, do you agree with that? That, you know, that makes cricket so attractive. These boys, you know, there's no nepotism in the game. You get picked because you're the best 11 players to play for India. Okay, we're having a problem with both uh, Raul and Shishi's line. Let me try. Suresh, you want to take that question? Yes, yes, Rajdeep. I think I think that is largely true, uh, particularly at the top level. I mean, the fact is that anybody, anybody can pick 15 players for the Indian team. I mean, my, my, my maid servant can do it because if you follow cricket for a bit, you know exactly who, who the 15, 20 players are who, are who are worthy of being in the national team. Then the, the, the rest is fine-tuning. You know, I, I remember Tiger Patodi said uh, once, I asked him, I said, uh, did you always get the 11 that you wanted in the team? And he told me, 
I, I made sure that I got the 11 I wanted, maybe not the 16 or 15. After that, I didn't care if this selector's nephew or that selector's wife, son or what, uh, you know, nephew, whatever work, I mean, came into the team, I didn't bother as long as I got the 11. So the the fact is that even at that time when, when he was basically telling me that not all selections were fair, he was still, he still had the fairness to say that, but I got what I wanted. And, and I think currently most Indian captains can actually say that. It wasn't mm -hmm. always true, but I think it's true today. I think Indian captains gets, get the team they want. And that's mm -hmm. that's a huge difference from, from the past. Shishir Arandi, nepotism, is that one of the reasons why cricket is, you know, we celebrate cricket. Mohammad Shami's father worked on a farm, becomes a, a champion bowler for India. Uh, and, and I can go on and on with lots of uh, stories of these young players uh, who've, who've shone simply because of their talent. And the talent is now spotted. Uh, which, which is part of the structure that we have, which say like, Pakistan, which has a lot of talent, loses out in. Do you agree that that structure that promotes meritocracy, at least at the top level, is what makes it Absolutely. so attractive? Absolutely, Rajiv. I mean, look at, look at, we won't be talking about, you know, farmers and uh, auto rickshaw drivers, etc., etc., if the performances weren't there. You know, these make great stories only once you perform and, you know, bring so much uh, glory to the country with your performances. And I think what has happened is your domestic structure is so robust. You have uh, enough talent scouts. You have enough opportunity uh, for yourself to shine, to for yourself to express your talent. And then you have the IPL. So you have every every stage of your career there is an opportunity and you cannot be ignored i just believe you cannot be ignored if you're doing well in today's times and that to me is the biggest difference you know uh, today the stakes are so high at the international level you will not find any player making it to the indian team indian team unless He's got something to show in his CV as a cricketer in terms of his performances. And that, to me, has been the biggest change from uh, the good old days where, you know, okay, you had one of the odd guy going on a tour on a holiday uh, and coming back saying he's an India player. That won't happen anymore because, you know, a lot is at stake and uh, every move of every player. I mean, Mohamed Shami, to, to be honest, wasn't even in the, in the 11 in the start of the World Cup. And look what you're talking about. We're talking about a journey that uh, is going to probably give, give India a World Cup uh, 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 in, in the next couple of days. Right. Uh, Mudar Pateria, there's, there's the other aspect of this sport which is, which is fascinating. Uh, to me at least, is that it seems to connect in some way to people across class, caste, re region, religion. Uh, is that something that you think uh, politicians could learn from? You mentioned government, but people across spheres could lead when we sort of tend to label people. I, I wrote this in my book that when Shami is bowling from one end and Umesh Yadav from the other, we don't say, see them as Yadavs and Muslims, but as proud Indians. Is that something that that we should be that our politics that makes these the kind of role models in a way? Well, if I expound on this, then there'll be a riot outside my house tomorrow morning. So I'll have to be diplomatic. But I will say that there's a lesson for this country, and what these eleven fellows or twelve fellows are actually doing. They're waking this country up. And I can I can feel that there'll be some soul searching happening somewhere for people who've been rabid, for people who've taken very strong stances on other communities, on minorities especially, that somewhere they'll start feeling that this is the story of a modern and progressive India, this Indian cricket team. So somewhere, you know, these fellows have shown something quite remarkable to the country. They've actually... I would say spoken truths to power, but it'll look like hyperbole. But I will say that uh, these fellows, these 11 cricketers have actually woken the country up. And I would say it's a very interesting twist of fate that uh, it selected two, two, principally one individual to play the role of that game changer. And I would also say that normally in the past, you know, you mentioned Mohammad Shami so many times, you mentioned Amroha so many times. I will say now, that Amroha will always be remembered not as Meena Kumari's husband's place, place of origin, but as the place of origin of a great fast bowler for India. You know, just as Ranchi will be forever identified with Mahindra Singh Dodi, but Rahul, give us the secret of all these ads that you do. You put out that Shami semi-final ad, what, barely a few minutes after the semi-final. 
Had you planned yes. it or what? Did you know that Shami was going to take seven wickets that you put out the Amul ad almost as soon as the game was over? So here's the so here's the truth, Rajdeep. Here's the truth on national television. We did the. This is what I love about life and trending and stuff. We actually did the. We actually did the advert when we won the semi final. Mm-hmm. And Shami Shami won us the semi final, right? So, so we said Shami final on November second, mm-hmm. and uh, there he is again. He's uh, so so critical and so fantastic, sort of getting us into the uh, getting us into the final. So it just seemed like prophetic in a way, you know that right. that you know it was. He's just been, he's not single handedly, but his bowling has just been so incredible. And what amazes me is the feeling that people have about this man because he really is an underdog. You know, he's really personally been through so much. uh and there he is he's just getting wicket after wicket there's a, there's an expectancy rajdeep when he comes into bowl right i've never known a bowler who has that kind of he doesn't even have swag but just when he comes on it's the same expectation as when when kohli comes into bat and i've never seen that in a bowler and that's just it's a remarkable feeling actually oh uh, yeah you're quite right and i want i want suresh you to then sum it up because you saw cricket from the 60s 70s to today we've talked spoken about self belief about aspiration about financial security about no nepotism how would the generation of cricketers you you used to speak to the likes of patodi and others how would they see this team would they believe that these are spoiled kids who get too much money too soon or would they see them as proud flag bearers of that tradition that began in the 60s and 70s well if you want an on- honest answer i think both i think some of them will see them as spoiled uh, you know rich brats others will see see them as a natural progression from their period a tiger patodi today will see this indian team as something that seems to be a logical extension of the kind of work that he did and i think mm-hmm. and i think it's important i mean you you asked earlier about how how uh, cricket is a great unifier i think it's also important to remember that the great whatever is a great unifier whatever unifies people so so strongly is equally capable of dividing them equally strongly you remember what happened after 71 we you spoke about 71 earlier when we won in the west indies and they put up this huge bat as a as a memento and then we lost in 74 in england 30 and and then uh, there were there were enough cricket lovers in, in inverted commas to to deface the bat because they thought now they are defaced cricket and and i feel i feel that it it's going to be a great match at uh, in the final in a in a few days from now but I, but i have only one one sort of request to the huge millions of cricket fans thousands of whom are going to be in the stadium all i say is there are two teams playing out there it's fantastic to cheer the home team it's great to get very excited by virat kohli and shami and bumra and all of them but please remember there are two teams the other team is also deserving of cheers they are also deserving of uh, claps and whistles and the works you watch you watch when a when a when a batsman scores a boundary against india you listen to the deafening silence i think there's something there's something wrong there i think there's 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 a, there's a cultural mismatch there we are great right. lovers of the game we are great lovers of cricketers but are we great lovers of cricket and i think that's that's something to ponder over That's right. Crowd behavior can be fickle. Remember, people were calling for Virat Kohli to retire from the game a few, a few uh, not too long ago. Rohit Sharma was being questioned. Shreya Sayer was it was suggested was not good enough, and it's all changed. That's what sport does. And unfortunately, at times, as Suresh put it, we love our cricketers and not cricket. I want to thank all my guests for joining me. Uh, I guess I chose this topic today because I was at the Wankhede Stadium yesterday, and I was part of that. celebration of india's victory the only problem i had was when the dj kept playing music in between deliveries i just thought that was taking cricket into the realm of entertainment and not sport so that's something for the bcci to think about but i want to leave you with an image i was at the firosha kotla when tendulkar broke the record of gavaskar for the most test centuries and i was there yesterday when virat broke sachin's record for most odi hundreds i say it's the circle of life It's a beaten relay that sport is. Those are some of the images I took from my mobile 
when Kohli scored that 50th 100. I salute Virat, I salute those before him and surely the baton will be passed to the next generation. Cricket, as I said, unites us all, brings a smile on the face of millions of Indians. Keep smiling, hopefully Sunday will bring even better news. Bye for now, stay well, stay safe. Good night, Shubhratri. Jai Hind, Namaskar. Watching India Today, powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP Group company. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP Group company. मस्त नजरों से अल्लाह बचाए, ओ हुस्न वालों से अल्लाह बचाए, मस्त नजरों से अल्लाह बचाए, ओ हुस्न वालों से अल्लाह बचाए। मिलिए जुबिन नोटियाल से साहित्य आज तक दिल्ली में लाइव। फ्री एंट्री के लिए रजिस्टर करें www.ajtak.in/sahitya या पर या मिस्ड कॉल दीजिए नाइन थ्री वन जीरो डबल थ्री डबल जीरो डबल थ्री इटिंग राइट टेक अ डीप डाइव इन टू दर्च बाई न्यूट्रिशनिस्ट On what's healthy for you and what's not. Read the full story in this week's issue of India Today magazine. Subscribe now. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag.com. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag.com. watching India Today, powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. With facts. She takes the news by its horn. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered?
fierce, bold and direct, setting the tone for the bigger stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me Nabila Jamal on India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. You are watching India Today. Powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP group company. semi-finals before 2024 polls. Congress versus the BJP grudge fight in Madhya Pradesh. Which Kamal will bloom in Madhya Pradesh? Final phase of polling in Chhattisgarh. Will Prime Minister's tribal outreach benefit the Bharatiya Janata Party? Will the Mahadev application scam hurt Bhupesh Baghel? State of War only on India Today Television. Well, that's our top focus, the Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh, both uh, now going through polling day as we continue tracking those developments. I'm going to start with the top headlines. War of words over Prime Minister's press lotus button remark. Congress accuses Modi of hate speech, seeks action against him. Well, this is Prime Minister Modi's lotus remark. Congress accuses uh, Prime Minister Modi, to, uh, in fact, uh, accusing him of hate speech and wanting a strict action to be taken against him. State of War Madhya Pradesh kicks off. BJP and the Congress big big politicians offer prayers and cast their vote. Shivrat Singh Chauhan makes a big statement, says BJP and voters will decide the chief minister's face in the state. नंबर के बाद क्या मैं ये कहूं कि अगले मुख्यमंत्री भावी मुख्यमंत्री भी शिवराज सिंह चौहान ही भाजपा की तरफ से होंगे जनता पार्टी तय करेगी जनता और पार्टी सेकंड फेज ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ इलेक्शंस इज अंडर वे अवेट करप्शन एलिगेशंस टीएस सिंह दियो रबिशेस दोस चार्जेस सेज द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट मस्ट ऑलवेज वर्क एज अ टीम Forty workers still trapped for over 120 hours. Only 30 to 40 meters of debris to go now. In fact, five 900 mm pipes are to be inserted inside the tunnel today. Heavy-duty diamond cutter machines are all in action. After India voted against Israel occupation in UN, Prime Minister Modi has condemned the killing of civilians in the conflict. Says India has sent aid to Gaza. All right, a massive India Today impact indeed. A day after India Today's deep dive into deep fakes, Prime Minister Modi takes note, calls deep fakes one of the biggest threats facing India's system. Prime Minister Modi refers to a fake video of him performing Garba. He expresses grave concerns over AI-generated videos and images, stressing on the need to put a disclaimer on, many, on such videos. Basically, it should be a rule of thumb that a video of uh, a deep fake video coming out must have a disclaimer that it is a deep fake video. If not, it is a punishable offense. In a big statement, Prime Minister Modi has termed deep fake as something that can cause major disturbance in the society. Prime Minister Modi has also cautioned citizens and netizens to be vigilant, not fall for such fake videos. In fact, it all started with Rashmika Mandanna's deep fake video that went viral with the actress really baffled over what happened. She 
then uh, took to social media handles to call out this kind of uh, video that's been leaked off her saying that this is infringing her privacy and this is a, in a way indirect harassment and these kind of videos now right during the elections have come in more numbers just very recently Madhya Pradesh elections you saw videos being released of Amitabh Bachchan a, at a KBC setup where he's asking questions uh, with, with a political tone all basically against the BJP. So Congress says that they haven't done it. This could be uh, some miscreants who have indulged in this. But nonetheless, this is now taken the internet by storm as these videos leave innocent or rather vulnerable users divided. They are split on whether it's a fact or it's fake. This one video here showing Prime Minister Modi doing garba here is a total fake. And addressing this, Prime Minister Modi, and of course, uh, owing to the India Today's detailed report on deep fakes, Prime Minister Modi has come out to condemn this, saying that this could be a real national threat in the days to come if it's not curbed and controlled. He says he's asking the citizens and the media to be vigilant at a very, uh, very certain uh, direction that he's given that those people who are putting out such deep fake videos must have a disclaimer citing that it is that the video is a deep fake video that it is altered through ai balakrishna executive editor of the fact check team for india today joins us live balakrishna prime minister modi has now addressed the matter this really speaks of the seriousness of it india today was the first to take a deep dive into what deep fake uh, can really do with ai now you can really tweak and morph just about anything with uh, and you know unleash your devious intentions. Yeah, that's true. I would like to start with the PM Modi's doing Garba video. So to be, uh, 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 I would like to clarify that actually that video is not a defect. That is a look alike of Prime Minister doing Garba. But what is the important point that his PM has underlined is that because of these defects, sleeve fakes, cheap fakes, I would, I would use these terms because not all the deep fakes are made the same way. Some of them are like crude and it is not very difficult to make out that these are not originals. But these kind of videos doing the rounds on social media, being circulated, being pushed, are, have made it so difficult that people have lost their sense of uh, judgment and it is difficult. People do not know what to believe and what not to believe. Uh, so, and as, as we are heading towards elections, today there is a voting going on in Madhya Pradesh. As you might have seen, we used the story in uh, India Today show last night that how a popular game show, KBC, has been morphed, has been, uh, 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 has been uh, doctored videos are being used of KBC in which we can see Amitabh Bachchan batting for a, a particular party and and uh, it we can see this uh, speaking in things that he never spoke of and it is difficult those videos are sleek and are edited in a manner it is difficult for a common man to find out what is right and what is not right so prime minister has expressed concerns and as we displayed in yesterday's show we demoed some uh, we did demo with some of the latest technology that how easy it is and how uh, uh, how easily this technology has become for anybody to make these videos. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Balakrishna, for joining us on that. We see this emerging technology and the internet have added this new twist to the ongoing election campaign, especially in Madhya Pradesh. What we saw was baffling. What happens when artificial intelligence enters the picture? Well, then you have hyper-realistic but false videos of Netas making controversial comments or even disparaging remarks about their competitors. And that's what's happened in Madhya Pradesh some of these videos can also be used to spin a false narrative to mislead voters. We're going to tell you about the dangers of deep fakes. This poll season, how it can be manipulated as we decode the deep fake threat to democratic processes in India. Lift off. We have a lift off. 32 minutes past the hour. Lift off on Apollo 11. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ever wondered what if the Apollo moon landing wasn't the triumph we believed? Good evening, my fellow Americans. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. They will be mourned by their nation. In an alternate universe, technology resurrects U.S. President Richard Nixon. 
these brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. He spills a lunar secret. Celebrated astronomers Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin are not returning. These brave men, Neil Armstrong. Welcome to the world of deep fakes, synthetic audio visual content, an alternate reality driven by artificial intelligence. Well, know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. All right, this is take 3.3. 2.3. Sorry, 2.3. Good God. Good evening. Good evening. Crafted four years ago by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, this deep fake seamlessly blends real life footage with machine learning. To explore in peace, we'll stay on the moon. Spoken words convincingly placed in the mouth of the then US president, long gone, but eerily revived in this experiment. Stay on the moon, to rest in peace. With dramatic improvement and wider accessibility of technology, celebs have become the most common targets of deep fakes. Past few months have witnessed dramatic advancements in generative AI capabilities. Deep fake tools now more efficient and widely accessible. Sample this one. A voice model of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has him sing popular songs. Concerns have mounted. Deep fakes can impact democratic processes, such as the upcoming general elections. It could be used in both a good and bad manner. So, in terms of a good manner, it could be like a, a marketing campaign where a politician greets you in a personalized manner where you get a video of a politician greeting you by a meme or something. But on the other hand, it could also be used in a lot of malicious techniques. Like let's say the opposing party generates a video where uh, some politician is promising or making some outrageous claims or uh, claims against one particular group. Watchdogs have already voiced their concerns in the UK and the US. To showcase the threat, India Today's open source intelligence team created this cheap fake video of Home Minister Amit Shah within minutes, using an online video and a free face swapping tool. Beware, this cheap fake could be easily converted into a narrative changing deep fake. Experts believe the emerging tech could be misused by political parties. Countries like China as well as vested interests such as business and lobby groups to change the narrative. So in terms of regulation, see, the problem is with any new emerging tech. It will be both a, tech, a technological challenge as well as a policy making challenge. And uh, I think the government will need to work closely with the technical or the tech ecosystem to figure out a solution for it. Videos being fake are something which is very new for a lot of us. So that public awareness is something which I think the government will have to uh, spend some time on. Photoshopped images, manipulated videos and memes. India's social media landscape already a potential hotbed for deep fake landmines. With internet penetration surpassing 50% of the population, it might be too much of an ask for the common Indian voter to navigate the challenges of AI alone. With Bidisha Saha and Shubham Tiwari, Bureau Report, India Today. All right, now is Bollywood superstar Amitabh Bachchan using his popular quiz show Kaun Banega Karodpati to bat for the Congress party ahead of Madhya Pradesh Assembly elections? Well, a bunch of KBC videos here that have been that have been now widely shared online seem to be suggesting so, but clearly it's something for you to beware as there are many manipulated videos that have now flooded the internet and WhatsApp groups only to influence the election outcome. Here's one such. Welcoming a contestant in his signature baritone. Or Bahut Bahut Swagat Aapka. Dhanyavad sir. In me se kis mukhya mantri ko 
उनकी झूठी घोषणाओं के कारण घोषणा मशीन कहा जाता है इन द ब्लिंक ऑफ एन आई द रियलिटी टेक्स With a a question to spot a Ghoshna machine neta, a leader of hollow promises. All four options are BJP chief ministers. Iska right answer is sir, option B. The contestant answers. Shivraj Singh Chauhan, locked in. Option B पर ताला लगाया जाए. बिल्कुल सही जवाब दिया आपने. With the superstar host dropping a bombshell comment just before the Madhya Pradesh elections. But hold on. Did something seem off? In me se kis mukhyamantri ko? The lip sync, the brief close-ups. Ghoshna machine kaha jata hai? Yes, it's a fake. Another episode, another twist. Vash 2018 me bani Madhya Pradesh ki Kamal Nath sarkar ne kitne kisano ka karza maaf kiya tha? This time. A question on farm loan waivers. A hot topic in Madhya Pradesh elections. A, two lakh. B, twenty-five lakh. C, five lakh. D, ten lakh. The answer raises eyebrows. Twenty-seven lakh farmers. Sir, please look option B. लगा दे ताला. Yes, sir. सोच लिया. Yes, sir. B पे ताला लगा जाए. बिल्कुल सही जवाब दिया. An imperfect lip sync again. कमलनाथ सरकार ने अपने पंद्रह महीने के कार्यकाल में मोर ओवर अ शो लाइक के बी सी वुड नॉट डाइव इन टू सच कंट्रोवर्शियल टॉपिक किसानों की कर्ज माफी बंद कर दी डिस्पाइट सस्पेशियस साइंस दीज स्लीक फेक्स आर गेनिंग फ्रैक्शन दिस इलेक्शन सीजन कंसर्न सोनी लिव हैज रेस्ड अ रेड फ्लैग ऑन सोशल मीडिया और आज छठा प्रश्न बीस हजार रूपए आपके स्क्रीन के ऊपर ये रहा बट वट डिड अमिताभ बच्चन रियली आस्क इट वॉज अ क्वेश्चन अबाउट सिनेमा इनमें से कौन सी फिल्म एक खिलाड़ी के बारे में नहीं है ऑप्शन सुनिए ए साइना बी पीकू सी भाग मिल का भाग या डी शाबाश मिठू जी सर अबाउट कर्नाटक एंड गुजरात जियोग्राफी नॉट पॉलिटिक्स इन दोनों राज्यों के बारे में क्या सही नहीं है ए हैव कोस्ट लाइन यानी दोनों के समुद्र तट हैं। बी उगली फ्लोज थ्रू देम उगली उनमें से होकर के बहती है सी बॉर्डर महाराष्ट्र सीमाएं महाराष्ट्र से लगती हैं। या डी सी एम आर मैन यानी मुख्यमंत्री जो हैं, वो पुरुष हैं। ए आई टूल्स है With deep fakes spreading beyond adult content to political propaganda. Hi. After the uproar over Rashmika Mandana's deep fake, the government ordered swift takedowns of such content. Meta and YouTube now demand disclosure for digitally altered political and social issue ads. In which which government? Yet. Fakes deep and not so deep remain a challenging adversary, lurking in the shadows of the digital era. The Jyoti Devi and Bal Krishna Bureau Report, India Today. All right, as uh, we bring to you uh, the the ways and uh, methods with which deep fake can really influence people at large. Here's a quick look at the dangers it could really pose, as we explained to you. Uh, in fact, the dangers of deep fake. It can depict a person indulging in anti-social behavior. Basically, it can really ruin your reputation in seconds, uh, and even before you get after it, the damage is really done. It can be used to spread hate and strain civil society. One can uh, a word, a video showing a deep fake video showing any important person making a comment can really rile up crowds um, and and create a civil unrest. it can determine public safety it can certainly create chaos and uncertainty as we know these are the real threats of uh, deep fake videos even terrorists can use deep fakes to stir anti state sentiments this is what's really uh, the the worry point of worry here as it could be misused in great ways it can be weaponized to create alternate realities uh, facts narratives and that's what we see happening in one example in madhya pradesh where 
Amitabh Bachchan's KBC videos were misused and their deep fake versions gave out some political uh, narratives in those videos here, acting as if it was Amitabh Bachchan himself who were motivating people uh, against voting or, or uh, trying to push people against voting for the BJP. Ayush Alawadi, our tech expert, gives us a little detail into how exactly you can identify deep fake videos. Have a listen. Recently, famous actress Rashmika Mandanya found herself in a controversy due to a circulating deep fake video. Hi. <laughs> the video shows a woman in an elevator, but her face has been digitally manipulated to resemble the actor. This incident has raised alarm and led to demands for legal action. Bollywood superstar Amitabh Bachchan, who co-starred with Mandana in the movie Goodbye, expressed his concern about the rise of deep fakes and urged for legal measures to be taken. Deep fake is a term that combines deep learning and fake. It refers to a piece of audio or video that's been edited using an algorithm to replace the person in the original content with someone else, especially a public figure, in a way that makes the video look authentic. Deep fakes use a form of artificial intelligence called deep learning to create fake images of events that never happened. Deep fake videos have become more prevalent with the emergence of various AI and machine learning tools. Some of these tools are freely available, exacerbating the problem of fake photos, videos and audio. Your queen. And all the Bureau report, India Today. I trust you will have the very merriest of Merry Christmases. Well, from all the videos that we see, it's really not that difficult to identify a deep fake video. A little flaw, you see expressions are all right, or maybe the person's voice isn't sounding right, then that's your cue to cross-check with verified, reliable sources. Thanks very much for watching. You could log into indiatoday.in. You could also download our app for a lot more. As our upcoming elections are now just around the corner, please do join India Today on WhatsApp with the number one election team. Scan this QR code for accurate information coming in on the five-state election. India's number one election team bringing you the latest. Thanks for watching. You are watching India Today. Powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. Rangi Sari Gulabi Chunariya Gane Ke Piche Ki Suriili Awaaz, Kavita Seth Se Milie, Sahitya Aaj Tak Delhi Me Live. Free entry के लिए register करें www.ajtak.in slash sahitya पर या missed call दीजिए 9310330033India's finest reporter and the ultimate newsman, Rajdeep Sardesai. Only on India Today TV.
you are watching India Today, powered by Finest B Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. विकास और जनता का कल्याण मध्य प्रदेश का अभूतपूर्व विकास हुआ है बीमारू राज्य से भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने विकसित और समृद्ध राज्य बनाया है और जनता के कल्याण की जो योजना है वो अद्भुत और अभूतपूर्व है सर बार बार लेकिन छिंदवाड़ा मॉडल बुधनी मॉडल की बात आती है कमलनाथ कहते हैं छिंदवाड़ा आके देखिए बुधनी मॉडल छोड़िए आज भी वो वहाँ पे उन्होंने कहा है की पैसे धनबल का प्रयोग जो है सत्तारूढ़ दल हमेशा करता रहा है वो अपने हार की भूमिका बना रहे हैं बौखला कांग्रेस के लोगों ने ही शराब और पैसा बांटने का काम किया है कई जगह भारतीय जनता पार्टी के उम्मीदवारों तक पे उन्होंने हमला किया है मैंने अपने गांव में वोट डाला है जैसे मैं हमेशा डालता हूं चालीस साल से वोट डाल रहा हूं किन मुद्दों को लेकर के आपने आज वोट किया आज मुद्दा केवल अपने गांव का अपने खेत का नहीं है मुद्दा मध्य प्रदेश के भविष्य का है और मध्य प्रदेश का भविष्य सुरक्षित रहे ये मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि मध्य प्रदेश के मतदाता ऐसा फैसला करेंगे किस इस बार का चुनाव पिछले बार से चुनाव से कितना फर्क जो पिछले बार चुनाव था बहुत फर्क है इस दफे जनता दुखी है भ्रष्टाचार से बेरोजगारी से किसानों की समस्याओं से छोटे व्यापारियों की समस्या से पूरी तस्वीर प्रदेश की जनता के सामने है You are watching India Today, powered by Finest B Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. High frequency electromagnetic fields will interfere with the functioning of your heart. Simply put, it's your mobile phone which is interfering with the functioning of your heart, especially when you put it in the left pocket of your shirt. and think it's going to do nothing it's a myth it will cause you problems take a look at this report electronic gadgets make life very convenient and bring the world to our fingertips with meals clothes and vacations just a thought away but did you know that at the same time your device is secretly stealing from you the very life that it's making oh so easy yes you heard that right your mobile phone may actually increase your susceptibility to cardiovascular diseases high frequency electromagnetic fields increase the risk of heart disease these invisible waves impact your heart rate when you keep your mobile near your chest the radiation from mobile phones increases free radicals a reactive oxygen species which damage cells and also your dna It's been found that mobile phones, AirPods and smartwatches are also the leading cause of headaches, numbness in thighs, dizziness and heaviness in the chest. We hope that the penny has dropped and not your phone. With Dhruv Yadav, Bureau Report for India Today. Make your media plans smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag dot com. As the narrative of democracy comes full circle in the state of Rajasthan, where the people become the powerful and the powerful at the will of the people, will history repeat itself, or will the people of the state script a new chapter? 
बड़ा मुद्दा क्या एमएलए का चुनाव ये ज्यादा भारी पड़ रहा है सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा विकास का है पर आपके यहाँ पे ना रोड है ना कुछ है प्रेजेंटेड बाय आपका जॉय भारत का जॉय जॉय ई बाइक Katrina, welcome to India today. Thank you. First of all, many many congratulations. Thank uh, you so much. The film is a huge hit. More than that, the love that is coming towards Zoya. I have to address the elephant in the room. Is something that people have been campaigning for the longest time. It, it's time. I think it's due that Zoya gets her <laughs> own spin-off. And I know this that every time you get this mm. question asked, you have this smile on your face. Mm. What will it take for us to get a Zoya spin-off? Um. Hmm. <laughs> I agree with you. I think that um, it would be. a lot of fun to see what you could do with Zoya as a character in her own film but having said that i also uh, i also love doing the tiger series cuz you know with my friend who said it's to me yesterday actually the director of tigers and i yeah. which was the second one yeah. he said that um, you know for me tiger and zoya are one unit and i realized that actually it is kind of that is kind of true if you go to see the films yeah. like from ekta tiger when we saw um Tiger and Zoya you saw these two really fiery independent dynamic personalities mm. who when they met just kind of seamlessly blended against all odds Absolutely. organically yeah. you know and then in the second one again you kind of saw that there's a certain ease i would say to to the way the characters are written they kind of go hand in hand so of course although i think it would be amazing um to do that one day and now that this whole um it's this whole world has become uh, yes multiverse a, a, a multiverse now you know so where we started out with ekta tiger now there's so many different um pieces to this spy universe it's called um i think that there's so many exciting things we can do but uh wonderful uh for us always and wonderful for me when we're on that tiger set as a feeling of coming home yeah There's a feeling of familiarity. Um, there's a feeling of warmth, and I think it's just always uh, a special time. You know, you mentioned a very interesting point, and I personally feel that Tiger completes Zoya, and Zoya completes Tiger. They are in unison. Yeah. You can't see one without the other, and yeah. they are there for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Also, I love the fact that there was so much of a backstory we got to see of Zoya. Mm -hmm. Like, what was a childhood like? Fleeting glimpses of what made her. What makes her make these decisions? Yeah. That straight face that she has. Mm -hmm. Why is she so much in pain? Why is she struggling? Mm -hmm. There was so much we deep dived into, mm -hmm. and I felt like you didn't get out of character even for a second. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt you were so consistent mm -hmm. from. from the first frame till the last whether it's the action whether it's the romance all of that mm -hmm. and you invest so much into zoya i feel it's it's a character that you've taken to tell me when was the first time you realized that zoya is getting so much love from your fans i mean you've done so much right um in this film or in all overall the, overall i think M manish our director he was someone who continuously said to me that I love Zoya as a character. And you know at the end of the day uh, a film is a director's medium, right? Yeah. What the director feels and what the way he sees the story is actually the way that it's going to be delivered to the audience no matter what actors do. And I think it was because Adi and Shridhar had written such a fantastic uh you know back story, written such a fantastic role for Zoya which took her character forward, right? It didn't just kind of yeah. it wasn't status quo. There was there was she was there, she was stronger, she was tougher, she was more aggressive, she yeah. was um she was fighting harder. You know, everything was just more in the film. And with that combined the that combined with the fact that Manish always had a had a love for Zoya's character. I could yeah. see it. And I think that's what we saw translate on the screen. We saw that he he took a lot of care into into every little detail that was he was invested in those scenes he was invested in in Zoya's character and Tiger's character in how he was going to take the story forward with both of them 
let's talk about the hammam scene i mean come on of that moment in the film you ca- you have to get off your phones you have to stop eating your popcorn stop looking everywhere because you're like glue you're fixated <laughs> to the screen you've made it look so easy but i'm sure oh, like no. on set that day or oh. in gen days leading to that shot just run me through that period it no? was it was tough the rehearsals were good they were good i had a lot of time i always like to have time so they set the action sequences at you know early enough we were solid on the floor when we went on to, to shoot so we had we had done a lot of a lot of rehearsals and me and the the actress who i'm fighting in the film she's actually uh she has a lot of action training she, you could say that she in some way is a professional <laughs> i'm not a professional on that level like she is but it was it's always better to fight with a professional because then you can be you get your speed you know right. if two people are fighting who are both actors sometimes yeah. that can show but when one is a professional the fight always looks sharper it looks more dynamic it looks edgier and um we would be added in the rehearsals uh when we finally went onto the floor floor what happened is one the lady who normally kind of is there with me on set and will is what you call your action double will step yeah. in for certain shots that you know it's maybe tough for you to do sure. or you cannot do she actually felt felt sick and i was like oh my god no how is how 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 am i going to do this of all the days as all the days i could not believe it. i was in shock and it was actually my trainer who sat with me and he said that you know i said i had called him and i said listen i can't do this i'm i'm tired every part of me is tired everything in my body is hurting i'm i how uh, like this is not fair this can't happen i can't lose my, you know my support right. and he said see if you take this as a challenge if you come to set every day in the morning and tell yourself let me see how much i can tolerate today mm-hmm. let me see how much you can i can take today bring it on wow. whatever it is if someone throws something at you say i'm sure you maybe you can have something even more tough for me and it was that just attitude it was that my, that shift in my mind that actually i think gave us the kind of energy and power in that sequence um to pull it through because it was a phenomenal sequence and yes. I, and it was a, it was a sequence which adi had um ideated on right from the beginning of the film he knew that there were certain key moments and we've never seen a sequence like uh, like yes. that before where you know you're actually seen this woman and these two women fight but you you're seen like the struggle also it's yeah. not just that it's a glamorous pretty moment Absolutely you know that tie doesn't go off more than that the yeah. anger in their eyes the hatred that they have for each other yeah. is consistent so you're seeing that aggression and um it was it was it was good fun it was good fun but it was tough everyone was was you know like injuries? this on on the set scrape um, knees <laughs> there actually funny enough was not that there was the one sequence i didn't get an injury and that probably was because i was so psyched up you yeah. know you're so mentally. charged up mentally mm-hmm. that probably your mind and your body are completely in, in sync, sync. where sometimes what happens like say in the tunnel sequence or in the rusher sequence in the action because you're coming from you know life yeah sometimes you get into action but it's not you're not completely prepared so i actually had an injury in the tunnel sequence i had an injury in the russia sequence both of those sequence i had some, some, not major but like a yeah. tore hamstring this that little things had happened there um that there was a one sequence i actually didn't get an injury wow. but you would go home at the end of the day <laughs> like you would you would walk to your car kind of like that like oh my god ow ow <laughs> So well, listen it was worth it. Mm. I mean I'm, you made it look easy like I said right? Mm. And it also sort of reminded me of just the discipline that you've mm. had. It's just been so consistent. Mm. I know you sort of get bogged down when people throw this question about our work uh, work ethic and how <laughs> consistent that has been and how hard working you are. It's an adjective that has often been used to describe you by your peers, people who have worked mm. with you. But tell me how has your definition of perhaps your own journey evolved over the years? Because you have sort of always looked at a film and a role with this with that same enthusiasm, right? Whether the film has worked or whether it hasn't yep. you haven't stopped giving and how, how does one do that because in an industry that is so rapidly evolving competitive mm. how does one stay grounded so i've always been obsessive about what i do and mm. i think as an actor you have to be obsessive i think that that's that's required that kind of um 
commitment and immersing yourself in the film, in, in whatever it is you're doing, that's what brings to life what you see on screen. Mm. At least that's, that, that's what, I, I, that's how I, I, I've always been. Like my films become my world for that time. Yeah. And what the benefit of that is you, you, you give yourself totally to something and then you see that result on screen. But then when the film is over also sometimes you're left kind of feeling like alone, you know, yeah. because the world, that world is, over, has, yeah. is over. And um, I think that passion, that determination is what has, um, is what has seen me through the drive. Um, when it comes to being on set and when it comes to being on screen, my kind of motto is that you gotta be excellent. Hmm. You will not always hit that mark, but you're, you gotta try and your intention and your desire, it has to be to achieve excellence. You know, it just being there is not, is not going to deliver not good those enough. kind, it's not good enough. And, um, and that, that's what I try and do with every film is make sure I bring that fire, make sure I bring that, um, that discipline. And then the rest is, it's in the hands of the team, right? It's in yeah. the hands of the director, it's in the hands of the audience. It's, you just have to know at the end of the day when you go home, that you were there on yes. set every day, thousand percent focused, sharp, determined, and you brought your game. Yeah, you're again making it sound very easy, <laughs> but, but we know what it's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> like, like I, uh, like I have said many times, and like I have told um, friends of mine who then later used, uh, you know, liked the liked the the, the term and have how many people have repeated it, but. It was something told to me once by a Cirque du Soleil performer. Wow. You know, so that's like, like the yeah. famous circus yes, and the they do incredibly painful, difficult yes. things. And I asked them one time, like, how do you do it? And they were like, well, this, I was a girl and she said, I adopted this philosophy, which is that you observe what you feel and you do what you must. Wow. And that was something which always kind of stayed with me. There's a part of me that is observing how I'm feeling. So if you're tired, if you're in pain, if you're, Maybe something else is going on in your life. If you're distracted, you I reserve that, but then I do uh, what I, I need to do. Oh, uh, that's deep. Is that, it? <laughs> yeah, it is. I, it reminds me of a Michael Singer book that uh, I have read long back. Oh, which one? Yeah, Untethered. The, the, the Untethered yeah. Soul. Yes, yes, yes. It has. Lovely it sort of book. takes me back to mm. that book. Uh, coming to a little lighter question and a fun one. If in the spy was rapid fire, you had mm. to choose between Kabir and Pathan because you've teamed up with mm. Tiger. Uh, who's the one agent that you think would be a fun sidekick to have, given the choice? Now, you, now Tiger's off the. Well, this is a, a phenomenal <laughs> film that I'm doing. First of all, where my where Pathan and Kabir is my sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Give Zoya no. flowers, I feel. Um, I mean, it's listen. Due. I think the wonderful thing about the the spy the spy verse or the spy universe is that all the characters are so well written and they have they have such strong identities of your own, of their own that you kind of can put any piece yes. anywhere. You know, yeah. like every piece fits beautifully, yeah. and that's just that's in the strength of the characters. Is because everyone has been especially now with Tiger, with Zoya, this is the third film you, you, that we've done. They have, like you know who these people are. Right. You have that, even if you don't realize it, in the back of back your of mind, your you have a familiarity with them. So whatever story or situation they come into, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to see. Okay, that's well put. I, I, I'll, I'll take that, <laughs> that's well put. If Rubai and Zoya had a face-off, who do mm. you think would win? Now, now that I really, <laughs> that's playing in your head right now. See, let's put it this way. I think that, um, I think, I think that Zoya in, in her experience probably is, is seeming to me from, yeah. I mean, I don't know all the backstories, but is seeming to me to be the most experienced agent. So mm. ex with the more experience comes more fighting yeah. experience. So, I mean, I leave, like it experience. I leave it to you to decide. <laughs> we'll give that merit card and experience <laughs> checklist there. Uh, Manish, Ali and Kabir, I mean, mm. you've worked all of them and what brilliant directors. Yeah. They've brought these these visuals to, mm. to life. Uh, tell me if either of, between the three of them, if one had to direct the Zoya spin-off, who would you choose? Oh, wow. You want to get me in trouble, <laughs> right? You just want to get me in trouble. Listen, I, I think that whenever that day comes and if, um, if ever we're doing something like that, I mean, I, I know that Adi, at the end of the day, he is very sharp in his vision, you know, yeah. and I know that he will find the right team. It's, it's about everyone. The, the, the entire team has to come together to, to deliver 
to deliver a film like that, a film that will click. And at the end of the day, he will take, he will work with a person for any film. And this I, I know about Adi as a producer. He will work with a person who he believes will do the best for the job, but also the person who is the most in love with the project. Yeah, you know? heart. The heart. I think Adi is all It's the about heart and the mind connect. Yeah, we are waiting for that heart and mind connect. We want that. <laughs> uh, you know, interestingly, also like Halle Berry in Catwoman or Michelle Pfeiffer in Catwoman, mm. then Angelina Jolie in Tomb mm. Raider. Over the years, we've all watched these women, right? Yeah. And now we speak so much about Zoya or for that matter, Rubai, or women who are doing action and they can. And mm. they're also on posters of these male-dominated, whatever, mm. Bollywood industry films. Do you feel like, I mean, this question is often asked that, oh, women are getting these kind of roles now. Is it a little late or is it this? What has been your take? I mean, you've always sort of been very clear in terms of what mm. you want to do, right? I feel that it's wonderful to see that these kind of strong female characters are being written and are being shown on screen. And I think that it's only been being taken a step ahead with every film we do. You know, with each film, like uh, with Tiger 3, I feel that it is a step ahead for Zoya from Tiger Zendaya. Yeah. And I feel that that is progressively going ahead and I'm sure um, that Adi is is doing that with all the characters in you know with all his female characters because that is what the audience wants to yes. see they don't they don't want to stick to a certain format men do this women do this no men mm. do this and women do this and it's you know there's it, it's it depends on what the story demands there's that there's no uh, di dictation as to who needs to do what in the film yeah. so I think that we're seeing that change in the writing and I think it's it's an exciting time I think it's really an exciting time to see what can be done women can fight you know look at Charlize Theron look at Halle yeah. Berry yeah. you know we've seen that in big films or even um, Anne Hathaway and, yes, and you know she, 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 she was phenomenal Batman, in that yeah. film in Batman so we've seen that and those are fiery fierce characters and now from here we can only take it ahead and we need to take it ahead and and take it even more forward I think that there's so much we can do with with this with these characters. How is Katrina celebrating the love that's coming, Tigers? We, I mean, you have a husband who's championing for you. He literally is your cheerleader. <laughs> There's so much love that comes from him every time mm. your name comes up in our chats mm. with him. And a family now, an extended yes. family, right? Yes. How do they sort of uh, give you that love, that extended warmth? Well, Shamji, of course, as we know, my father-in-law is an action director. Yeah. So he was, I think, the happiest to hear and to see all the praise that um, uh, for for Zoya's action, he was like, "See, uh, this is now this is now you've made me even more proud." So um, that was really special because he was I could see he was yeah. so happy. He's like, yeah. "Everyone's saying you've done the action so well," and that was uh, that was really lovely. And of course, um, Vicky loved the film, and uh, in fact, that's exactly what he had said to me as well. That I felt that there was a character presented. You know, it didn't matter whether it was Katrina, whether there was an, what there was an actress. It was just a strong character that was constantly there throughout the film in terms of the um, in terms of her, the graph. Yeah, the line. You know? Yeah, the line. The, the graph of Zoya was consistent. Yeah. It didn't ever jump out of the character, and he. I think that was something which he um, he he thought was really uh, really noteworthy. Are you easy on yourself when your film comes out or are, are you one who will like sort of go into this space where you're like, I don't want to see my phone, my phone's buzzing? Well, this time it, it was it was better because it released on Diwali yes. Day. So on Diwali Day, you are with your families, yeah. right? I mean, so, and, that. and so that, that was that was there. I was having fun. And I learned on the second day, by the way, that um, I learned for the first time in my life, someone taught me how to how to play like cards, <laughs> like a, one particular version of cards. Don't okay. even ask me what it was. Is it Teen Patti? No, no, oh. no, 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 no. That was fine. It was something between, <laughs> like you put a card between this one and this one. And if your number comes in between, like all these sort of variations okay. was going on. Technical. So I was actually having a lot of fun. And I think that was a good, um, that was a good thing. So you're not like constantly engaged yeah. in your phone. Yeah. But the, the, I think the love and support during the Diwali season that we've, that we've had just made the whole kind of festival seem like more special to me this time. Yeah, absolutely. And I just feel like, I mean, I have to end by saying that you have the most consistent fan base and the most loyal fan base. I think they've been with you through thick and thin. 
they have Absolutely. followed your journey uh, they have just been unconditional and i Absolutely. think that's a very rare trait for an actor to get like i said mm. uh, because films come and go faces change you sometimes mm. go to the back seat you're forgettable if you're not around mm. but you've been there you've mm. not just been there not just been relevant but you sort of like i said you've put the pressure on yourself <laughs> to be at the top of the game uh, just for anybody who's watching mm. this and perhaps is struggling with things like these to um, you know whether it's mental health or whether it's staying relevant or in an industry wants to get in what's the one thing you would like to say because you've sort of now had a had a mm. career that is still going so strong strong legs i think uh, exactly like you said the audience and the support i've had from my audience and people coming to see my films has just been phenomenal and i feel that people always connect to an emotion mm. and i think that that is what is translated um that people can see they can connect with you on screen they can connect to the fact that you're entirely there you're present and um i think in the words of tiger you know you got to keep fighting which has always been the essence and the and the running theme in tiger uh, i think they summed it up in this in salman's dialogue which is there na no? um jab tak tiger uh, mara nahi tab tak tiger hara nahi yes. so i think that's the in one line the essence of what my, i kind of feel as well you know you just you got to fight you got to fight for anything in life if it's worth having is if it's worth having it's worth fighting for and um put yourself out there put yourself yeah. out there love what you do and that love is going to translate to your audience wow i think that's an, that's something that you really believe in because you're not saying it for the sake of it uh, congratulations once again thank you i am vouching for a zoya franchise i'm thank going, you vouching so much. for a spin off <laughs> and a lot of people online are speaking about that mm. i quickly want to get a message for the indian cricket team if you can mm -hmm. uh, for the world cup it's on the 19th mm -hmm. if you could send a message to them uh, in the camera hi this is katrina kef wishing team india all the best for the finals and you're going to rock it thank you thank that you was so good much. thank you so much katrina watching india today powered by finest be sustainable change a bnp group company congress party ki sarkar banegi meri soch mein aaj ye tay hai halanki matdataon ka adhikar hai ki wo apna mat de le fir hum log ko kuch kehna chahiye kaam pichle 5 saalon mein jo congress ki sarkar ne buniyadi kshetron mein kiya hai लोगों के परिवार की आमदनी को बढ़ाने में सफल होना नीति आयोग भारत शासन का जिसमें प्रधानमंत्री जी द्वारा मनोनीत व्यक्ति बैठते हैं उसने कहा कि छत्तीसगढ़ में 40 लाख लोग गरीबी रेखा से ऊपर उठे ये वही छत्तीसगढ़ है जिसको रिजर्व बैंक ने 2018 में जो चुनाव हुआ उसके पहले यह आकलन किया था कि देश में सर्वाधिक गरीबी का प्रतिशत छत्तीसगढ़ में थर्टी पूरे देश में सर्वाधिक गरीबी का प्रतिशत अगर कहीं है तो छत्तीसगढ़ में वो छत्तीसगढ़ ने पांच साल में एक आकलन मैंने बताया नीति आयोग का आकलन कि 40 लाख लोग गरीबी रेखा से ऊपर उठा कह रहे कि 40 लाख लोगों को हमने बीपीएल से ऊपर नीति आयोग आपकी सरकार ने निकाला लेकिन कई लोग जो आपके क्रिटिक्स है वो ये कहते हैं कि डेवलपमेंट के नाम पर छत्तीसगढ़ में आपको कुछ नहीं मिलेगा आप जो सोशल वेलफेयर स्कीम्स है आपकी सरकार की वो आपको गांवों में जिता रही है अदरवाइज uh, जो रियल डेवलपमेंट है यूनिवर्सिटीज फैक्ट्रीज वो नदारद हैं अभी छत्तीसगढ़ में उसकी बहुत कमी है पहली बात मेरे लिए वो प्रायोरिटी टू है मेरे लिए प्रायोरिटी वन व्यक्ति है जिसकी आमदनी परिवार की बढ़नी चाहिए और उसके साथ में नंबर टू अधुसंरचना भी बढ़ना चाहिए as the narrative of democracy comes full circle in the state of Rajasthan where the people become the powerful and the powerful at the will of the people will history repeat itself or will the people of the state script a new chapter sabse bada mudda kya hai mla ka chunav ye zyada bhari pad raha hai सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा विकास का है पर आपके यहाँ पे ना रोड है ना कुछ है
प्रेजेंटेड बाय आपका जॉय भारत का जॉय जॉय ई बाई watching India today powered by Finest Be Sustainable Change a BNP group company Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag.com. watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP group company. Lok Sabha elections 2019, I was here. Then, Cabinet Minister Narendra Tomar was fighting from Morena on a Lok Sabha ticket. This election, he is being fielded from the constituency of Dimni in Morena. From Lok Sabha to Vidhan Sabha, life comes full circle sometimes. In 2019, I reported from deep within the Chambal ravines or the Bihar here. What I saw then was ecological degradation, illegal sand mining and rural indebtedness. I had chanced upon a village, Nadwapura. No water, no electricity, no Anganwari, no nothing. Mohsin and I, we were here in 2019, uh, actually not here, in a different place because this village uh, uh, had no electricity, no water, it would get flooded every year. Because of our news report back then in 2019, this village was moved to a higher area so that it doesn't get flooded. So at least, uh, you know, they'd have access to basics, which was electricity. There's still no water here. Um, they say there's one hand pump which doesn't work. We hope that uh, you know, this news report is going to go down and maybe somebody will watch and maybe somebody will look at Naduapura because they did that time and the village was relocated. But the work is incomplete.
वॉचिंग इंडिया टुडे पावर्ड बाय फिनेस्ट बी सस्टेनेबल चेंज अ बी एंड पी ग्रुप कंपनी हाई ऑक्टेन सेमीफाइनल्स बिफोर 2024 पोल्स कांग्रेस वर्सेस द बीजेपी ग्रज फाइट इन मध्य प्रदेश Which Kamal will bloom in Madhya Pradesh? Final phase of polling in Chhattisgarh. Will Prime Minister's tribal outreach benefit the Bharatiya Janata Party? Will the Mahadev application scam hurt Bhupesh Baghel? State of war. Only on India Today Television. Voting in Madhya Pradesh and the second phase of voting in the state of Chhattisgarh that continues to be a top focus story right here on India Today. I'm Sneha Mordani. A quick check of the headlines this afternoon. This is a mega India Today impact day after India Today deep dived into deep fakes. Prime Minister Modi cautions says deep fakes can cause. major disturbance in society what were words of a prime minister's press lotus remark congress accuses the prime minister of hate speech and seeks action against him state of war madhya pradesh kicks off bjp and congress big big netas offer prayers and cast their vote Shivraj makes a big statement as BJP and voters will decide the chief minister face in the state. तीन दिसंबर के बाद क्या मैं ये कहूँ कि अगले मुख्यमंत्री भावी मुख्यमंत्री भी शिवराज सिंह चौहान ही भाजपा की तरफ से होंगे? जनता पार्टी तय करेगी, जनता और पार्टी। Second phase of Chhattisgarh elections as well amid corruption allegations, TSD or rubbish as charges, says the state government must always work as a team. Forty workers trapped for over 120 hours. Only 30 to 40 meters of debris to go now. Five and 900 mm pipes inserted inside the tunnel. Heavy-duty diamond cutter machines in action. After India voted against Israel occupation in the UN, the Prime Minister has condemned the killing of civilians in conflict. Says India has sent aid to Gaza. Hundred and twenty hours and counting. Forty workers still trapped under the debris. We're getting you up to speed with every single development of that big story that we've been tracking since last Sunday. Ever since the tunnel collapse, trapping forty workers underneath in Uttar Kashi. And my colleague Ashutosh, in fact, is joining us live from that very location where the rescue work is currently underway. Ashutosh, just tell us more. Give us a sense of how. successful are the rescuers expected to be how soon can we see these workers out and safe India is witnessing and perhaps world is witnessing one of the most critical operation rescue operation in the Himalayan state Uttarakhand Hello and welcome you watching India today this is Ashutosh Mishra bringing you this special dispatch from ground zero in Uttarakashi right outside this Silkhara tunnel where hundreds of uh, 40 workers are trapped for over 100 hours as the rescue operation enters on the 6th day though the rescue operation continue with fastest speed maximum machinery maximum technology and all efforts are being placed and right now you say outside here the operation using american machines are being used all technologies placed and several international organizations are being consulted though there have been unrest amongst the family members those their loved one are still stuck in the tunnel but everyone praying and hoping that this operation to end soon it's 6 day and the officials from the project believe that this could be a time taking as there are various factors that are creating 
obstacles, not only the topography, not only the 60 meter debris, but also because of the construction activity that was taking place. Now bringing up the capsules of the evacuation pipe, there are multiple such challenges which the rescue team is also facing. But moreover, it is also the psychological conditions of those workers that their morale need to be kept high. They need to be encouraged and exactly why the communications are being established here with those trapped workers. But the breaking story at the moment is that there was a mock drill that was conducted by the joint forces at Silkiara Tunnel here by the NDRF, by the SDRF, by the police and the medical teams which are kept on standby. Now the idea in the first 18 meter that the police forces in short the teams of NDRF that will be going inside carrying special stretcher design with the bearing wheels in the tunnel that immediately once the NDRF teams enter after contacting the other side towards the trapped workers they will be evacuating everyone one after one using those uh, wheel stairs through these narrow passages. Now the police, Uttarkashi, uh, special teams, ITBP, NDRF, STRF, medical teams and all other disaster response forces will help in the safe passage of the tunnel and if necessary take out the workers safely. Mock practice of the other emergency exercises is being conducted and this will be continue until the, the entire rescue team managed to reach to the other side. So this is going to be very critical, very crucial as the rescue operation enters six day. This explains the situation at Ground Zero in Uttarkashi at the Silkyara Tunnel. 2,000 people, the large, you know, the manpower have been roped in, not just only the Indian companies, also the international organizations have been roped in who are giving consultation be it the Norway's company, Austria, Thailand, Australia, all are giving their inputs including Delhi Metro, Railway and one another organization which is building up the rail project from Rishikesh to the mountain. This is race against time. <laughs> Time as rescue operations at the Uttra, Uttarkashi tunnel continue for the sixth day, over 100 hours and still counting. 40 workers are still trapped inside the tunnel. People have now turned to God. Havans are being performed for the well-being of the laborers and their safe evacuation. Meanwhile, the drilling with auger machine has also begun. Five pipes of 900 millimeter width and six meters long have been inserted in the debris. So far, only 30 to 40 meters of debris is yet to be drilled. Meanwhile, the water, food and oxygen is being supplied to the workers trapped inside. To keep their morale high, the families of the trapped worker have also been speaking to them. This makes this entire rescue operation one of the most critical, one of the most crucial operation in the mountains ever performed. The disaster and the rescue forces who have carried several such kind of operation in various areas across the nation and even serving in Nepal, Turkey to the worst of the such crisis. But here in the mountains, the challenges are totally different than of planes. As there is barely such communication, but for now, the most important is to establish the communication with the trapped workers. And Mahadev, one of such workers who's trapped inside, belongs to Charkhan, was made to speak to his family members, commotions and emotions. Listen what Mahadev had to say to his family members, the entire conversation. Bonu Naik Ji, ye jo Uttarakhand tunnel mein jo phase hue hain, wo koun hai? To mere chote baai hai Mahadev Naik. To waha kya kam kar rahe the? Kaise phase? Kaise jankari aapko mili? Jankari waha mera jitte saath gaya tha, wo mera mama lagta hai. To hi bataya ki isse se matlab tunnel ke andar phas gaye hain. Bolke bataya. Tab hum bhi tumko jankari mila ki isse se phas gaya bolke. Tab jaake pata chala, nahi to nahi pata chal raha tha. अच्छा वहाँ लोकल अधिकारियों न्यूज़ भी देखे न्यूज़ का न्यूज़ देखे 
समाचार से भी पता चला कि वहाँ फंसा हुआ है नामुम वहाँ पर नामुम भी गया कि वहाँ अगर मैं भी फंसा हुआ है बोलते न्यूज में देखा तो सब पता चला कि वहाँ कहीं फंसा हुआ बोलते अच्छा तो ये जो ऑडियो आया बातचीत का ऑडियो ये महादेव किससे बातचीत कर रहे हैं और क्या बोल रहे हैं महादेव तू घर वाला को बोल दो कि मतलब कि परेशान नहीं होने के लिए बोलते हो और आज नहीं तो कल निकल जाएंगे बोल के बोल रहा है तो इसे मतलब घर वाला को बोल दो चिंता नहीं करेगा बोलते अच्छा और ऑडियो में क्या बोला बस यही कुछ बोला मतलब कि जल्दी निकालो बोल के बोला और यही यही सब बोला अच्छा कि मतलब कि कब तक मतलब जल्दी निकालो बोल के बोल रहा है तो यही बोला और घर घर वाला परेशान मतलब हम उसको बोला ना मेरा मामा तो घर वाला परेशान है तो ऑडियो भेजने के लिए बोला तो वही ऑडियो करके भेजे गए भेजे महादेव महादेव बोलो बोलो महादेव महादेव बोलो तुम्हारे घरे कोई दियो तुम्हारे दादा मन गया बाबा मन गया ठीक आचू चिंता नहीं करो बोलो कुआ तुम्हें नीचे कुआ बोली दियो बोलो क्या तुम्हारे ठीक आचू बोली करे बोला चू बोला चू दादा बोलो बोला चू दादा हाँ ठीक आचे Challenges are high. There are multiple teams which are working here at the different agencies, including NHIDLC. And every periodically, what we see the people, the officials who are going inside and then coming walking. Twelve hours a shift. This is the rotation that these officials are working. And there are multiple times that are meetings held with the blueprint of the tunnel. And every time the new formula that is opted out after the American uh, machine that is being used not only for the horizontal. Uh, uh, you know the bore boring but simultaneously carrying over the pie which is a capsule of six meter that makes it very challenging because the welding process itself is quite long and now you see these uh, are the officials from the NHI DLC who are also uh, consulting because that requires also to control the vibration of the machine now imagine if 60 meter large amount of that debris is literally lying there and because of the moisture and the humidity this also makes this entire debris literally solid and while penetrating and inserting those capsules every day it is gradually growing more and more solid and because of that solidification these machines are creating vibration the biggest challenge at the moment in the tunnel is to maintain the equilibrium of this entire tunnel and in that case there are multiple challenges what i was told by the officials now there are more and more machines are being uh, uh, airlifted by the indian air force another machine which will be reaching here in uttarkashi by tomorrow morning uh, by the special aircraft of air force from indore so uh, day before yesterday already machines were brought here those are already operational another machine will be airlifted from indore so this is making this entire operation one of the most critical and very crucial perhaps ever performed in the Himalayan region or in the uh, mountains. We have seen several such operations in several countries. In Thailand it was in cave, in Turkey it was a massive earthquake. But for now carrying out operation in such a you know, two-way tunnel which is virtually blocked from other side and at the front portion that you see visibly only 200 meters of the access beyond a point 60 meter large debris and penetrating on the way there could be only not solid obstacles like large stones, large rock machineries that were already being used inside the tunnel penetrating drilling everything and reaching to other side indeed make it one of the most challenging but in the meanwhile is this entire operation what are those more obstacles hurdles and what are what sort of challenges that the administration and the agencies are facing my colleague ankit sharma has filed a report let's look at this report the fifth day rescue operations has come to an end and uh, right now it's midnight almost midnight you can see and the operations are in full swing the rescue authorities are putting their hard efforts to rescue the workers as soon as possible and let us tell you with the latest update that the third pipe which is 900 mm diameter pipe and 6 meter in length has been successfully entered into the debris now for the fourth pipe the welding process has started and once the welding process is done the fourth pipe will be inserted and according to our sources the rescue teams would be able to successfully insert few other pipes right now it's shivering cold over here 
and you can see the authorities, the security agents, agencies are posted over here to check uh, security and movement of any kind which is not required and can be avoided. And that is why in 200 diameter of the tunnel, the security has been beefed up and no one is allowed to move to and fro towards the tunnel or outside the tunnel who is not connected to rescue teams or authorities. So right now the good news is that four pipes are, have been successfully inserted, four is in the process of being inserted and the operations are going smoothly. Now we can see and we can hope that the rescue operations are going fast forward and soon we will see the workers coming out of the debris very soon. This is Ankit Sharma with Omkar Bahuguna from Uttarkashi, India Today. ये असली मायने में कह सकते हैं कि जो सबसे क्रिटिकल रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन है उसकी शुरुआत आज सुबह से हुई है बिल्कुल और इसमें अगर आप तकनीकी देखें या इससे वेरी डेलिकेट ऑपरेशन हमें बड़ा आसान लगता है कि आप कैसे नहीं खोद के निकाल पा रहे हैं लेकिन यहाँ पे कई फैक्टर्स काम कर रहे हैं एक्सटर्नल एज वेल एज इंटरनल एक्सटर्नल अगर मैं देखूँ तो जो यहाँ का टेरेन है बहुत ही फ्रेजाइल है हिमालयाज जो है वेरी न्यू माउंटेन से जो आप जानते ही होंगे और जो इक्विपमेंट हम ला रहे हैं वो स्टेट ऑफ आर्ट का है तो हमें अब उम्मीद है कि हम इसमें जल्द से जल्द इनको यही सवाल मैंने वीके सिंह से ही पूछा था कि अगर स्टेट ऑफ आर्ट मशीन की जरूरत थी क्या वो पहले नहीं हो सकती थी उसकी व्यवस्था या शायद कहीं सोचने में या अंदाजा लगाने में मुश्किल हुई नहीं जैसे जैसे मान लीजिए आपको कोई काम करना है तो आप इमिडिएटली जो आपके पास चीज़ें अवेलेबल आप उससे स्टार्ट करते हैं और आप सोचते हैं इससे हो जाएगा उसी तरीके से जो हमारे पास अवेलेबल था यहाँ के जो जल विभाग है उससे हमने सिमिलर तरह की मशीन से हमने कार्य स्टार्ट किया था लेकिन बाद में पाया कि उसकी गति थोड़ी सी स्लो है और टाइम हमारे पास बीतता जा रहा है तो फिर हमने डिसाइड किया कि स्टेट ऑफ आर्ट अमेरिकन ऑगर जो है वो हमने मंगाया जाए तो ये हमने मंगा के इस पर काम कर दूरी का एग्जैक्ट आकलन करना मुझे लगता है कि अभी संभव नहीं है क्योंकि कितना मलबा है वो एक रेंज है और काम जस्ट अभी शुरू हुआ है मतलब कार्य चल रहा है तो जैसे जैसे आगे बढ़ेगा तभी ये टेक्निकल एस्पेक्ट है तभी हम कंपनी के अधिकारियों से जान दी सिल क्या रहा टनल एक्सप्लेनिंग दिस सिचुएशन अबाउट द रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन नाउ वी विल गेट यू द डिटेल्स थ्रू द एनिमेशन एंड ग्राफिक्स अबाउट दिस टनल एंड द रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन फॉर दैट लेट्स गेट बैक टू स्टूडियो ओवर टू यू स्नेहा All right, Ashutosh, uh, be with us. Just coming back to you in a moment from now as Ashutosh continues to get us those reports in fact from ground zero. So what is it that this operation involved. Now, five pipes of 900 mm width have now essentially been inserted. There are five, in fact, of these. What are these being used for? First of all, each pipe is six meters in length, and they are going to be used for as an escape conduit. Also, 30 to 40 meters of debris have to be removed. For this as well, heavy-duty stone cutters essentially are being used. In fact, the debris in the process. of removing it continues to be the biggest challenge like in fact all of those involved in the rescue operation were telling ashutosh a few moments ago that this isn't as as easy really as it seems ashutosh in fact you had a word with some of the officials there who've indicated that this isn't as simple as it seems because there are host of challenges that they are they're being in fact they being they're, they're having had to deal with In this entire operation, not only the organizations like Railways and Delhi Metro, but also the international organizations have been roped in. In fact, minutes ago, I spoke to uh, the Australian experts and also the president of International Tunneling Association, who is also keeping a close tab. But meanwhile, there is organizations from Thailand has also been roped in. Now, remember, 2018, the massive operation in the Thailand Capes, where several uh, footballers were trapped in, the children were trapped in, and that was really one of the most critical operation that that kind of agencies. has also been roped in their help and their advice are also been sought to carry out this operation here in the mountains in uttarak uttarakhand every second counts in the race against time to rescue 40 workers trapped inside the uttarkashi tunnel that caved in on november 12 The authorities are bringing in international organizations for expert advice and to speed up the rescue mission. 
Special teams from Thailand, including the one that had helped save the children stuck in a cave there in 2018, have been roped in to help the rescue efforts. The Thailand Cave Rescue was one of the most difficult rescue missions and was tracked across the world. Twelve members of a rescue team aged 11 to 16 and their 25-year-old assistant coach had entered the cave on 23rd June after a practice session. Shortly after they entered, heavy rainfall began and partially flooded the cave system, blocking their way out and trapping them. Efforts to locate the group were hampered by rising water levels and strong currents. They were out of contact for more than a week. Two rescue divers sensed the boys were breathing from their exhaust bubbles, which they could see and feel. Rescue organizers discussed various methods to rescue the victims, including teaching them basic diving skills. After days of pumping water from the cave system and respite from rain, the rescue teams got the group out of the cave. A similar rescue operation was carried out in the partially flooded El Pizard cave in Mexico. The rescue occurred in March 2004 after six British soldiers were trapped inside. They were rescued after eight days by British cave divers. Divers from the cave rescue organization assisted the soldiers one at a time as they exited the cave. The victims were in contact with their colleagues who originally had 10 days supply of food as well as lighting and sleeping bags. While the situation in Uttarkashi may be different from Thailand and Mexico, the expertise of teams from abroad will be valuable in speeding up the rescue mission. Your report, India Today. As we speak, the fifth capsule, the 800-900 mm pipe, are being inserted in the Silkiara tunnel. The NDRF, SDRF, keeping a close tab while the mock drill also being prepared. Here, the experts are trying to penetrate the debris, the 60 meter, and once they reach successfully the evacuation. But what will be the timeline, what will be the time gap that no one can see, including the agencies. They cannot commit about the time. Reason is being the difficulties that this entire operation facing inside the tunnel. While the rescue efforts are on, the entire world is praying for the safety of our 40 workers trapped in the Silkiara tunnel. With this dispatch, here in Uttar Kashi, this is Ashutosh Mishra. For news and updates, keep watching India Today. watching India today powered by Finest be sustainable change a BNP group company do nyaye agar to aadha do par usme bhi yadi baadha ho de do musko sirf 5 gram rakho apni dharti tamam hum wahi khushi se khayenge par jan par asi na uthayenge sahitya aaj tak ka manch ho chuka hai sach dhaj kar taiyar hai sirf aap darshakon ka intezar aap sab se hogi mulakat साहित्य आज तक 24 से 26 नवंबर मेजर ध्यानचंद नेशनल स्टेडियम नई दिल्ली फ्री एंट्री के लिए अभी रजिस्टर करें www.ajtak.in/sahitya पर या फिर मिस्ड कॉल दें 9310330033 पर Eating right Take a deep dive into the ultimate guide based on new research by nutritionists. On what's healthy for you and what's not. Read the full story in this week's issue of India Today magazine. Subscribe now.
watching India Today. Powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. Welcome back. This is a massive India Today impact day after India Today's deep dive into deep fakes. The Prime Minister has taken note, calling deep fakes one of the biggest threats facing Indian system. The Prime Minister has referred to a deep fake video of him performing Garba. The Prime Minister has expressed concerns over AI generated videos and images, stressing on the need to put a disclaimer on these videos. In a big statement, he termed deepfake as something that can cause a major disturbance in society. He's also cautioned citizens and netizens to be vigil and not fall for deepfakes. And his Bollywood superstar Amitabh Bachchan using his popular quiz show Kaun Banega Kuropati to bat for the Congress party ahead of the Madhya Pradesh Assembly elections. A bunch of KBC videos that have been widely shared online seem to suggest so, but beware. Manipulated videos have flooded the internet and WhatsApp groups. Welcoming a contestant in his signature baritone. और बहुत बहुत स्वागत आपका. धन्यवाद सर. इनमें से किस मुख्यमंत्री को उनकी झूठी घोषणाओं के कारण घोषणा मशीन कहा जाता है? In the blink of an eye, the reality takes a turn. With a question to spot a Ghoshna machine neta, a leader of hollow promises. All four options are BJP chief ministers. This is right answer, sir. Option B. The contestant answers. Shivraj Singh Chauhan, locked in. Option B पर ताला लगाया जाए. बिल्कुल सही जवाब दिया आपने. With the superstar host dropping a bombshell comment just before the Madhya Pradesh elections. But hold on. Did something seem off? In me se kis mukhya mantri ko? The lip sync, the brief close-ups. Ghoshna machine kaha jata hai. Yes, it's a fake. Another episode, another twist. Varsh 2018 mein bani Madhya Pradesh ki Kamal Nath Sarkar ne kitne kisano ka karza maaf kiya tha? This time, a question on farm loan waivers. A hot topic in Madhya Pradesh elections. A, 2 lakh, B, 27 lakh, C, 5 lakh, D, 10 lakh. The answer raises eyebrows. 27 lakh farmers. Sir, please log option B. Laga de tala? Yes, sir. Soch liya? Yes, sir. B pe tala laga jaye? Bilkul sahi jawab diya. An imperfect lip sync again. Fleeting close-ups. Kamal Nath Sarkar ne apne pandra mahine ke kaar rekaal mein. Moreover, a show like KBC would not dive into such controversial topics. Kisano ki karz maafi band kar di. Despite suspicious signs, these sleek fakes are gaining fraction this election season. Concerned, Sony Lib has raised a red flag on social media. But what did Amitabh Bachchan really ask? It was a question about cinema. In me se kaun si film ek khiladi ke baare mein nahi hai? Option sunye A. Saina B. Piku C. Bhag Mil ka Bhag ya D. Shabash Mitu Ji sir. About Karnataka and Gujarat geography, not politics. इन दोनों राज्यों के बारे में क्या सही नहीं है? A have coastlines यानी दोनों के समुद्र तट हैं। B Ugly flows through them Ugly उनमें से हो करके बहती है। C border महाराष्ट्र सीमाएं महाराष्ट्र से लगती हैं। या D CMs are men यानी मुख्यमंत्री जो हैं वो पुरुष हैं। AI tools have made creating fake videos easier than ever. With deep fakes spreading beyond adult content to political propaganda. Hi. After the uproar over Rashmika Mandana's deep fake, the government ordered swift takedowns of such content. 
Meta and YouTube now demand disclosure for digitally altered political and social issue ads. Yet, fakes deep and not so deep remain a challenging adversary. Lurking in the shadows of the digital era. With Jyoti Divedi and Bal Krishna, Bureau Report, India Today. Prime Minister himself has expressed concerns about deep fake videos that have been doing the rounds. With that, it's time for a break. On the other side, state of war, Madhya Pradesh kicks off. BJP and Congress big, big netas offer prayers and cast their votes. Shivrat Singh Chauhan makes a big statement, says BJP and voters will decide the CM face in the state. watching India today powered by finest be sustainable change a BNP group company you are watching India today powered by finest be sustainable change a BNP group company Congress party ki sarkar banegi मेरी सोच में आज ये तय है हालांकि मतदाताओं का अधिकार है कि वो अपना मत दे लें फिर हम लोग को कुछ कहना चाहिए काम पिछले पांच सालों में जो कांग्रेस की सरकार ने बुनियादी क्षेत्रों में किया है लोगों के परिवार की आमदनी को बढ़ाने में सफल होना नीति आयोग भारत शासन का जिसमें प्रधानमंत्री जी द्वारा मनोनीत व्यक्ति बैठते हैं उसने कहा कि छत्तीसगढ़ में चालीस लाख लोग गरीबी रेखा से ऊपर उठे ये वही छत्तीसगढ़ है जिसको रिजर्व बैंक ने 2018 में जो चुनाव हुआ उसके पहले यह आकलन किया था कि देश में सर्वाधिक गरीबी का प्रतिशत छत्तीसगढ़ में 39.92 परसेंट पूरे देश में सर्वाधिक गरीबी का प्रतिशत अगर कहीं है तो छत्तीसगढ़ में वो छत्तीसगढ़ ने पांच साल में एक आकलन मैंने बताया नीति आयोग का आकलन कि चालीस लाख लोग गरीबी रेखा से ऊपर उठ कह रहे कि चालीस लाख लोगों को हमने बीपीएल से ऊपर नीति आयोग आपकी सरकार ने निकाला लेकिन कई लोग जो आपके क्रिटिक्स हैं वो ये कहते हैं कि डेवलपमेंट के नाम पर छत्तीसगढ़ में आपको कुछ नहीं मिलेगा आप जो सोशल वेलफेयर स्कीम्स हैं आपकी सरकार की वो आपको गांवों में जिता रही है अदरवाइज जो रियल डेवलपमेंट है यूनिवर्सिटीज फैक्ट्रीज वो नदारद है अभी छत्तीसगढ़ में उसकी बहुत कमी है पहली बात मेरे लिए वो प्रायोरिटी टू है मेरे लिए प्रायोरिटी वन व्यक्ति है जिसकी आमदनी परिवार की बढ़नी चाहिए और उसके साथ यू आर वॉचिंग इंडिया टुडे पावर्ड बाय फिनेस्ट बी सस्टेनेबल चेंज अ बी एंड पी ग्रुप कंपनी को प्रेजेंटेड बाय आपका जॉय भारत का जॉय जॉय ई बाइक को पावर्ड बाय पारुल यूनिवर्सिटी वडोदरा गुजरात Welcome back. Time now for our super exclusive. This is India Today's consulting editor Raj Deep Sardesai in conversation with Priyanka Gandhi Vadra. Let's take a listen. ये बताइए हमें प्रियंका आप मध्य प्रदेश और बहुत फोकस कर रही हैं इस चुनाव में कहीं न कहीं और ज्यादातर मैं देख रहा हूं इन दोनों राज्यों में आपने बहुत फोकस किया किस तरह से आप ये चुनाव देख रही हैं? कि क्या आप वाकई मानती हैं कि कांग्रेस इन राज्यों में जीत हासिल कर सकती है या कांग्रेस बैकफुट पर है मैं बिल्कुल मानती हूँ कि जीत हासिल होगी और हमारा काम है लड़ना हम अपने सिद्धांतों की लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं हम जनता की लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं जनता त्रस्त है परेशान है जहाँ जहाँ इनकी सरकार है किसान परेशान है नौजवान परेशान है रोजगार नहीं के माध्यम नहीं है कुछ नया नहीं किया है नया इनकी सरकार है ना राजस्थान इनकी सरकार है मेरी बातों को मत पलटिए कहा जहाँ जहाँ इनकी सरकार है ऐसा हो रहा है लोग परेशान है तो क्यों नहीं बदलाव लाएंगे जरूर लाएंगे इस चुनाव में हम महिला वोट बैंक पर बहुत देख रहे हैं हर पार्टी कई कई वादे कर 
बहुत समय से ये कह रही हूँ और मुझे बहुत खुशी है कि सारे राजनीतिक दल अब इस बात को समझने लगे हैं कि महिलाएं एकजुट हो जाए तो महिलाएं बड़ी शक्ति है देश की पचास प्रतिशत है उनको अपना अधिकार भी मिलना चाहिए उनको हक मिलना चाहिए और हर राजनीतिक दल को उनके लिए लड़ना पड़ेगा उनको नकारा नहीं जा सकता पर ये तो यूपी में नहीं तो चला ये आपकी जो महिलाओं के लिए जो आपने किया था वो यूपी में नहीं चला तो जो जो नई क्रांतिकारी चीजें होती हैं उनको समय लगता है चलने का और अच्छा है मुझे तो कुछ इस बात की और डर भी है इस बात की हम अलग से महिलाओं के लिए एक अलग घोषणा पत्र भी बनाया तो मुझे बहुत खुशी है की हमने एक पहन ली और उसके बाद से बहुत जागरूकता आ गई है महिलाओं में भी और राजनीतिक दलों में भी कि महिलाओं को नकारा नहीं जा सकता तो मुझे बहुत खुशी है कि हर चुनाव में अब से महिलाओं का बहुत बड़ा श्रय होगा जैसे आप चुनाव में पड़ गई है कंट्रोवर्सी भी आ गई है मध्य प्रदेश में आप बनाम ज्योतिरादित्य सिंधिया जो आपने बयान दिया शिवराज सिंह चौहान से लेकर हर नेता ने आप पर आरोप लगाया कि आपने चुनाव पर्सनल कर दिया आपने सिंधिया को टारगेट कर दिया सुबह से शाम तक तो हमें गालियाँ देते रहते हैं हमारे परिवार के बच्चों को भी नहीं छोड़ा बुजुर्गों को माँ बाप सबको सुबह से शाम तक उल्टा सीधा कहते रहते हैं हम तो कोई रोते नहीं है भाई इन बातों के हम समझते हैं सार्वजनिक जीवन है सुनना पड़ता है लड़ना पड़ता है संघर्ष करना पड़ता है और ये भी थोड़ी हिम्मत करे तो, तो आप भी पर्सनल आप भी पर्सनल कर रही है क्या क्या कहा मैंने कहा कि महान अभिनेता इसमें पर्सनल नहीं आपने कहा उनका हाइट छोटा है ये सब आपने जैसे ही उठाया उनका अहंकार थोड़ा है अहंकार बड़ा और हाइट छोटा है तो वो बड़े गुस्से में हो गए तो उन्होंने कहा चुनाव का मुद्दा नहीं है ये हाथी चीज है और चुनाव मतलब भाषण के बीच में कुछ ऐसी चीजें ठीक है चुनाव के मुद्दे क्या है बेरोजगारी महंगाई जिस तरह से मध्य प्रदेश में की सरकार ने इक्कीस रोजगार दिए तीन सालों में इक्कीस रोजगार शर्म आनी चाहिए इनको इन्हीं मुद्दों पर चुनाव लड़ा जाए इन्हीं पर बात आखिरी आखिरी सवाल आपका रोल आपका रोल क्या है आखिरी आखिरी सवाल आपका रोल फिर क्या है राहुल गांधी प्रचार कर रहे हैं तो आपका क्या रोल है रोल है अपनी पार्टी के सिद्धांतों के लिए लड़ना जी अपने देश के संविधान के सिद्धांतों के लिए लड़ना जो गरीब हैं, जो किसान हैं, जो महिलाएं हैं जिसके जिसके जीवन में मुश्किलें हैं संघर्ष है उनके साथ खड़ा हो क्योंकि ये सवाल उठ रहा है आप 2024 का चुनाव अब लड़ेंगी कि प्रियंका गांधी केवल स्टार कैंपेनर रहेंगी तो बहुत दूर जा रहे हैं नहीं नहीं बहुत दूर नहीं छह महीने में चार महीने में चुनाव आ रहे हैं आप केवल स्टार कैंपेनर है या किस तरह से मेरे ख्याल से कितने बीस सालों से देख रही हूँ उससे ज्यादा सालों से यही है कहीं अच्छा आप अशोक गहलोत जी के साथ हैं अगर यहाँ चुनाव कांग्रेस जीतती है तो क्या अशोक गहलोत जी ही मुख्यमंत्री रहेंगे इस सवाल का जवाब मैं थोड़ी देर सकती तो कौन कौन ये हाई कमांड है कौन खरगे जी है और कौन है गांधी परिवार या खरगे जी खरगे जी है प्रियंका जी आप अब जैसे आपने कहा बीस साल से आप पूछ रही है आप में आप इस तरफ आइए सर तो आखिर में मैं उस तरफ अच्छा आप जब अच्छा आखिरी सवाल आप ये कैंपेन पर जाती हैं आपने सबसे बड़ी बात क्या सीखी है बदलाव क्या आया है प्रियंका गांधी में इतने सालों में आपने कहा बीस साल से मैं यही सवाल पूछता हूँ आप में क्या बदलाव आया है तो आप बताएंगे ना नहीं ये आप मुझे बताइए की आप क्या बदलाव नजर करती है आप ज्यादा मैंने यूपी के चुनाव से और वहाँ पे काम करने से बहुत सीखा सबसे बड़ी चीज क्या सीखी आपने? एक राजनीति की जो एक वास्तविकता है जो जमीनी चीजें हैं वो बहुत सीखी मैंने मोदी जी वहाँ है क्या कहेंगी आप उनको कहा अगर कैमरा पर अगर आप कुछ उनको कहना चाहें क्या कहेंगी मोदी जी और बीजेपी को आज आप क्या कहेंगी वो कहते हैं प्रियंका गांधी जी केवल चुनाव के टाइम पर नजर आती है बाकी नजर नहीं आती क्या कहेंगी उनको मतलब उसका जवाब हाँ हाँ बीजेपी तो को जो धारणा है मेरी धारणा तो नहीं आपकी क्या है धारणा है मेरी धारणा ये है कि मैं काम करती रहती हूँ सुबह से शाम तक काम करती हूँ रोज करती हूँ दिखती हूँ कभी कभी ज्यादा दिखती हूँ टीवी पे कभी कभी कम दिखती हूँ पर आप करती रहेंगी <laughs> क्यों नहीं बिल्कुल एज अ स्टार कैंपेनर आप भी मुझे बीस सालों से देख रहे मैंने कहा दो का चुनाव एक बार फिर पूछता हूँ रायबरेली से लड़ेंगी 
रायबरेली से लड़ेंगी आप वो आप देखेंगे कि मैं क्या करूंगी सचिन पायलट अशोक गहलोत विल दे फाइट टुगेदर क्या वो एक एकजुट होकर लड़ेंगे प्रियंका होकर लड़ रहे हैं एकजुट होकर लड़ रहे हैं हमारी पूरी पार्टी एकजुट होकर लड़ रही है क्या आपने उनको साथ ले, लाने की कोशिश की थी इस चुनाव में राजस्थान में बीजेपी एकदम बिखरी हुई है और कांग्रेस एकजुट है कांग्रेस बिल्कुल एकजुट है चलिए अशोक जी उस पर आप आपके चेहरे पर भी मुस्कान आ गई बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया हम आपको चित्तौड़गढ़ में मिलेंगे एट द रैली थैंक यू प्रियंका जी अशोक गहलोत जी बाय फॉर नाउ And battle for Madhya Pradesh turns personal. Well, after Priyanka Gandhi mocked Union Minister Jyotirah Aditya Sindhya's height at a political campaign, the minister has hit back yet again today. Sindhya speaking exclusively to India Today slammed Priyanka Gandhi and the Congress Party. Well, he said that he does not believe in any grudges and took a jibe at Priyanka, saying that some people thought they were tall leaders. Addressing a rally in Dhatia, in MP on Wednesday, Priyanka had said her former colleague Sindhya is short in height but is high on arrogance. Attacking Sindhya had defected to the BJP. She highlighted how he followed his family traditions well. In his scathing retorts, Sindhya had also hit back at Priyanka yesterday, saying that those comparing ability with height should first see the mirror. He has also trained guns at Priyanka, calling Congress a total corrupt party. क्या है कि कद में थोड़े छोटे पड़ गए, लेकिन अहंकार में तो भाई वाह भाई वाह। भैया उनके पास जो भी कार्य करता जाता था कहते हैं दीदी कि हम क्या करें महाराज महाराज कहना पड़ता है हमारे मुंह से नहीं निकलता तो फिर कुछ काम ही नहीं होता हमारा। वैसे उन्होंने अपने परिवार की परंपरा अच्छे से निभाई है। विश्वास घात तो बहुतों ने किया है, लेकिन इन्होंने ग्वालियर और चंबा की जनता के साथ विश्वास घात किया है। आपके पीठ में छुरा भोका है, बनी बनाई सरकार को गिरा दिया, और वो बनी बनाई सरकार आपकी थी, आपने वोट दिया था उसके लिए। do you see so this as a grudge fight? Grudge I'm fight is done now because I, I, it happened in 2020. I am not. I don't have any grudges. I don't believe in grudges in life. God has given you life for a very limited amount of time. Do good. Do well by the people. Gain their trust. Gain their love and gain their. But blessing. someone grudges you. Someone grudges you. Priyanka but Gandhi. I, of but I, but it was personal. I, I, it sounded I, I, bitter. I, I can't help if someone else grudges me. I have no grudges, and as far as she's concerned, I have given my reply. Okay. But what do you think? She's of course attacked the family. She said that it's a family which is known. I've given my reply. I've given my reply. I've already given my reply, and some people consider themselves to be very tall, quote unquote leaders, which resulted in only one out of 80 seats in Uttar Pradesh which resulted in the Congress party president losing his election. So the facts speak for themselves. A countdown to the big 2024 semi-final. In a highly anticipated electoral showdown, Madhya Pradesh is setting the stage for a fierce contest between the ruling BJP and the Congress. As of now, the voter turnout of the state at 1 p.m. is at 45.40%. Former Chief Minister Kamal Nath has cast his vote in Chindwara. Ahead of the big day, the Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan also offered puja at a temple in Sehor, after which he cast his vote. Minister Jyotira Ditya Sindhya was in Gwalior where he cast his vote. Meanwhile, BJP's Narutam Mishra said that Pakistan is going to celebrate if BJP does not win in elections. Remember, it's a litmus test for the BJP's endurance after 18 years in power and the Congress's ability to regain control after the 2020 debacle. With BJP and Congress dominating the electoral narrative, today's polls will be a classic clash of the titans as both the parties vie to wrest power from each other. विकास और जनता का कल्याण मध्य प्रदेश का अभूतपूर्व विकास हुआ है बीमारू राज्य से भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने विकसित और समृद्ध राज्य बनाया है और जनता के कल्याण की जो योजना है वो अद्भुत और अभूतपूर्व है सर बार बार लेकिन छिंदवाड़ा मॉडल बुधनी मॉडल की बात आती है कमलनाथ कहते हैं छिंदवाड़ा आके देखिए बुधनी मॉडल छोड़िए आज भी वो वहाँ पे उन्होंने कहा है कि पैसे धन बल का प्रयोग जो है सत्तारूढ़ दल हमेशा करता रहा है वो अपने हार की भूमिका बना रहे हैं बौखला कांग्रेस के लोगों ने ही शराब और पैसा बांटने का काम किया है कई जगह भारतीय जनता पार्टी के उम्मीदवारों तक पे उन्हें हमला किया है 
ये बौखलाहट का प्रतीक है जनता बीजेपी के साथ है सतना में भी सीधी सीधी जो पाठक हैं आपकी प्रत्याशी हैं भाजपा की उनके घर पे वो हुआ है राव में भी बवाल हुआ है इसे कैसे देखते हैं सोहागपुर में भी उनने बीजेपी कार्यालय पर हमला किया ये बौखलाहट है कांग्रेस की एम के मन में मोदी ये नारे के साथ आप लोग चुनाव में उतरे थे लेकिन हम देखते हैं कि सभाएं सबसे ज्यादा मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान की मांग जो थी सब थी एक सभाएं आपने 36 दिनों में कर दी तो एमपी के मन में मोदी एमपी के मन में मामा मोदी जी दुनिया के सबसे लोकप्रिय नेता है दुनिया के मन में भी है देश के मन में भी है और मध्य प्रदेश के मन में भी है इतना मैं जरूर कहता हूँ कि हमने जो जनता की सेवा की है उससे मध्य प्रदेश मेरा परिवार है मैंने सरकार नहीं चलाई परिवार चलाया है और परिवार की तरह मैं जनता से प्यार करता हूं, जनता मुझसे प्यार करता हूं। लाडली बहनों की बात करें कल आप उनके घर भोजन करने गए आज आप मत डालने जा रहे थे तो उनसे पहले लाडली बहना आपका तिलक करने आ गई ये लाडली बहना का फैक्टर इस बार के चुनाव में कितना काम कर लाडली बहना मेरे लिए राजनीति से ऊपर उठकर है लेकिन इतना मैं जरूर कहूँगा कई बार मैं भावुक हो जाता हूँ उनका अभूतपूर्व प्यार और आशीर्वाद मिल रहा है शिवराज सिंह चौहान अपने आप को किस रोल में देखते हैं पाँव पाँव वाले भैया मामा या फिर भाई मैं मामा भी हूँ भाई भी हूँ लेकिन उससे ऊपर मैं अपनी जनता का सेवक हूँ साढ़े सोलह सालों के मुख्यमंत्री से मैं बात कर रहा हूं शिवराज सिंह चौहान से एक आखिरी सवाल तीन दिसंबर के बाद क्या मैं ये कहूं कि अगले मुख्यमंत्री भावी मुख्यमंत्री भी शिवराज सिंह चौहान ही भाजपा की तरफ से होंगे जनता पार्टी तय करेगी जनता और पार्टी मैंने अपने गांव में वोट डाला है जैसे मैं हमेशा डालता हूँ चौलीस साल से वोट डाल रहा हूँ किन मुद्दों को लेकर के आपने आज वोट किया आज मुद्दा केवल अपने गाँव का अपने खेत का नहीं है मुद्दा मध्य प्रदेश के भविष्य का है और मध्य प्रदेश का भविष्य सुरक्षित रहे ये मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि मध्य प्रदेश के मतदाता ऐसा फैसला करेंगे किस इस बार का चुनाव पिछले बार से चुनाव से कितना फर्क है जो पिछले बार चुनाव था बार बार बहुत फर्क है इस दफे जनता दुखी है भ्रष्टाचार से बेरोजगारी से किसानों की समस्याओं से छोटे व्यापारियों की समस्या से पूरी तस्वीर प्रदेश की जनता के सामने कांग्रेस strong seats are now today insecure that was part of our strategy and therefore if you looked at the first two lists i think it was 39 and 41 or something like that those pe- those seven or eight were declared in the first two lists which were congress strong holds okay. part of our strategy bat on the front foot take the offense to the other camp dusra koi dal jeetega to khushiyan pakistan mein manengi iske liye aavashyak hai के राष्ट्र हित को सर्वोपरि मानते हुए कमल का बटन दबाएं। कमल का बटन मध्य प्रदेश में जब व्यक्ति दबाएगा तो सेना सीमा पर सैनिक की बाजुए मजबूत होंगी पाकिस्तान में दहशत होगी कि मोदी जी जीत रहे हैं कमल का बटन दबाने से आतंकवादियों में दहशत होती है और इसलिए कमल का बटन दबाना चाहिए जो भी सीमा पर नहीं जा पाते हैं देश की सेवा के लिए ये एक सेवा का अवसर है सबको कमल का बटन दबाए और राष्ट्र हित में अपना योगदान करें प्रहलाद जी ये एक्सपेरिमेंट है कई लोगों ने कहा कि फेल भी हो सकता है कई कई लोगों ने कहा कि बहुत अच्छा भी चल सकता है इस समय मध्य प्रदेश की स्थिति आपको क्या लगती है क्योंकि नेक टू नेक फाइट लोग कह रहे हैं कांग्रेस और भारतीय जनता पार्टी के बीच पहले से तो प्रयोग नहीं है गुजरात में हम ये प्रयोग नहीं और अन्य राज्यों में हम कर चुके हैं हमारे यहाँ पर सांसद या मंत्री चुनाव नहीं लड़ सकता ऐसा नहीं पार्टी तय करती है मैं चार लोकसभा क्षेत्रों से अलग अलग जगह से लड़ा हूँ पहली बार विधानसभा का चुनाव लड़ रहा हूँ मैं 2003 में मैंने विधानसभा के चुनाव को बहुत निकट से देखा था दूसरा मौका अब है जब मैं देख रहा हूँ मैं उसकी पुनरावृत्ति देख रहा हूँ और लोगों को जो अतिशयुक्ति लगेगी दूसरी बात मैंने कही कि 2003 में हमने छिंदवाड़ा की आठों सीटें जीती थी आज परिसीमन के बाद सात है मैं आज कह रहा हूँ आपसे कमलनाथ जी भी हारेंगे और सातों सीटें भारतीय जनता पार्टी जीतेगी अब ये लोगों को बड़ बोलापन लग सकता है हम तीन तारीख का इंतजार करेंगे
Well, in Chhattisgarh is voting for the second and final phase of the assembly elections after high octane first phase. Chhattisgarh is gearing up for the second phase polls. Voting turnout of 55.31% has been recorded so far. In Dhamtari, Naxalites attacked two CRPF Jawans travelling on the bike who had gone out to provide security to the polling party. As per reports, back-to-bike IED blasts were carried out. Congress has won the last assembly elections in the state of Chhattisgarh, ending the BJP's 15-year rule in the tribal-dominated belt. Chief Minister Bhupesh Baghel is among 958 candidates contesting for 70 seats spread across 22 districts. Baghel has approached people to go out and cast their votes. Sir, you are going to vote in line today. You are going to vote with your whole family. कॉन्फिडेंस तीन महीने से आप अटल हैं अपने स्टेटमेंट के पर कि आप की बार पचहत्तर पार लेकिन आज भी आज आज वो आत्मविश्वास और डगमगाया है या अभी भी वही अरे आत्मविश्वास और बढ़ा है जो मेहनत किए हैं और लोगों का जो रिस्पांस मिला है और जो विश्वास छत्तीसगढ़ की जनता ने कांग्रेस में किया है तो विश्वास और बढ़ा है और बढ़ा है सर बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग फाइट हो रही है ये विजय बघेल आप काका वर्सेज भतीजा ये स्टार्टिंग से ही हम कहते हुए आ रहे हैं आप क्या कहेंगे एक तरफा है या रिश्तों को दीवालों पर नहीं लिखा जाता और जब रिश्ते दीवाल में लिख दिए हैं तो मैं कहना चाहूंगा रिश्ते में हम तुम्हारे बाप लगते हैं वॉट यू थिंक यू नो अबाउट बीजेपी स्ट्रेटेजी बिकॉज दे आर अटैकिंग यू वेरी फियसली लिस्टिंग मेनी स्कैम्स यू नो इवन प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेर दैट यू हैव कमिटेड अ स्कैम इन द नेम ऑफ महादेव सो दिस लिकर स्कैम इलेज दीज स्कैम्स सो How are you going to counter the narrative which BJP is propagating that this, this, this Bhupesh Bagel government is a corrupt regime? I hope you haven't included me. <laughs> you said <laughs> so. These are uh, baseless allegations and uh, at most allegations, okay. which is the cheapest and the worst form of politics that could be played. You asked me questions as to what people expected of you mm. and what have you been able to deliver. So the BJP should have been fighting this election on planks of what they would want to do for the people. What is it that they would want to do from the people? We would like to know about uh, Operation Lotus before they talk about anything concerning uh, alleged corruption anywhere else. What is the source of Operation Lotus in this country? First, the Prime Minister, the Home Minister, the leaders in the BJP should come forward and explain that, have that inquired into seriously for the people of the country. Sir, in what way are you seeing the BJP? How much is it in the whole of the Chhattisgarh? The other thing is that today is the day of the day. The people of the Chhattisgarh are getting the Bharati Janta Party. The people of the Chhattisgarh are ready for the people of the Chhattisgarh. जिस प्रकार से पाँच सालों में भूपेश बघेल की सरकार ने छत्तीसगढ़ की दुर्दशा की है हर वर्ग को ठगने का काम धोखा देने का काम किया है और इसलिए जनता पूरी तरह से परिवर्तन के लिए तैयार है और भारतीय जनता पार्टी को भरपूर आशीर्वाद जनता का मिल रहा है तो निश्चित रूप से तीन दिसंबर को जब मतगणना होगी प्रदेश में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार बनेगी और छत्तीसगढ़ खुशहाली और तरक्की की ओर आगे बढ़ेगा किन मुद्दों के आधार पर आपने देखा कि जो पहले चरण की वोटिंग हुई है उसका परसेंटेज काफ़ी हाई रहा है इस बार जो मुद्दे होंगे जो आज मतदान हो रहे हैं कौन से खास मुद्दे बीजेपी लेकर के आगे जा रहे हैं वास्तविकता ये है कि पाँच साल में भूपेश बघेल की सरकार ने दुर्दशा की है छत्तीसगढ़ को अपराध का गढ़ बना दिया है नशे का गढ़ बना दिया है धर्मांतरण का गढ़ बना दिया है भ्रष्टाचार का गढ़ बना दिया है माफियाओं का गढ़ बना दिया है विकास के सारे काम ठप हैं और ऐसे में छत्तीसगढ़ की जनता परेशान है और छत्तीसगढ़ की जनता परिवर्तन चाहती है भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने अपना संकल्प पत्र प्रस्तुत किया है छत्तीसगढ़ के खुशहाली और तरक्की का पूरा रोड मैप हमने अपने घोषणा पत्र में प्रस्तुत किया है जनता का भरपूर आशीर्वाद और समर्थन Uh, हमें प्राप्त हो रहा है परिवर्तन के लिए विल कंटिन्यू टू कीप अ वेरी क्लोज एन ऑल डेवलपमेंट्स एज फार एज द इलेक्शंस इन मध्य प्रदेश एंड छत्तीसगढ़ इज कंसर्न फॉर द मोमेंट इट्स टाइम फॉर अ ब्रेक यू कैन कैच दैट रिपोर्ट एंड मच मॉर ऑन अवर वेबसाइट एज वेल दैट्स इंडिया टुडे डॉट इन यू कैन आल्सो डाउनलोड द ऐप नो एज वी आर गेटिंग अप फॉर द इलेक्शंस यू कैन गेट ऑल द डिटेल्स ऑन योर फोन हियर्स हाउ यू कैन जॉइन इंडिया टुडे ऑन व्हाट्सएप with the number one election team. All that you need to do is scan that QR code that you see in fact on your screens 
right now get the very latest reports exclusive ground reports and much more you are watching india today powered by finest be sustainable change a bnp group company You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Armed with facts, she takes the news by its horn. Fierce, bold, and direct, setting the tone for the bigger stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me, Nabila Jamal, on India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. You are watching India Today, 
powered by Finest, B Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Welcome back. This has been a big concern and a massive India Today impact as well. We're talking about deep fakes. Now, day after India Today's deep dive into deep fakes, the Prime Minister has taken note, calling deep fakes one of the biggest threats facing Indian system. The Prime Minister has referred to a fake video of him performing Garba. The Prime Minister expressed great concern over AI-generated videos and images, stressing on the need to put a disclaimer on these videos. In a big statement, he termed deepfake as something that can cause major disturbance in the society. He's cautioned citizens and netizens to be vigilant and not fall for fake videos. कोई भी व्यक्ति हो गेरू के कपड़े हैं, तो हमारे यहाँ एक स्वाभाविक उसके विरासत में इज्जत मिल जाती है उसको। वैसा मीडिया को भी है, एक विरासत का लाभ उसको मिलता है। और उसके कारण डिप फेक हो तो भी वो भरोसा कर लेता है है यार ऐसे थोड़ा आया होगा कुछ तो होगा और ये बहुत बड़े संकट की तरफ जाएगा सब आज और शायद वो असंतोष की आग भी बहुत तेजी से फैला सकता है समाज जीवन की व्यवस्थाओं को और ये बहुत मुश्किल काम होता है जी बहुत मुश्किल काम होता है मान लीजिए कहीं कोई एक गलत चीज ने कुछ नई समस्या पैदा कर दी अगर सरकार को वहां पहुंचना है तो डिस्टेंस भी तो मैटर करता है अब आपको तो डिस्टेंस समय मैटर ही नहीं करता है तुरंत पहुंच जाता है अगर लोगों को एजुकेट कर सकते हैं हम हमारे कार्यक्रमों के द्वारा कि आखिर है क्या आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस कैसे काम कर रहा है डीप फेक क्या कर सकता है और कितना बड़ा संकट पैदा कर सकता है और उसमें जो चाहे वो बना सकते हैं जी मैंने अभी एक वीडियो देखा जिसमें मैं गरबे गा रहा हूं और मैं खुद भी देख रहा क्या बढ़िया बना है <laughs> जबकि मैं स्कूल एज के बाद कभी मौका नहीं मिला मुझे मैं स्कूल में बहुत अच्छा खेलता था गरबे बहुत ही अच्छा खेलता था लेकिन बाद में कभी मौका नहीं मिला लेकिन अभी जैसे आज ही बनाया हुआ ऐसा वीडियो ये आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस की ताकत है उसने बना के रख दिया है और चल रहा है और जो मुझे प्यार करते हैं वो भी इसको फॉरवर्ड कर रहे <laughs> मैं औरों का उदाहरण देना नहीं चाहता हूं इसलिए मैंने दिया नहीं मैंने अपना ही दिया लेकिन एक चिंता का विषय है जी हम आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस हम जैसे सोसाइटी जो विविधताओं से भरी है जब पहले मूवी आते थे एक आध कहावत उस मूवी में आ जाए आती थी चली जाती थी Well, there's a Prime Minister talking about deepfakes and him too appearing in one of the videos that he mentioned about. Our news director, India Today's news director Rahul Kaval is also now joining us live. Rahul, in fact, uh, one of your own, in, your, in one of your own shows, we touched upon this issue and how this really is a menace, not just a menace, it's extremely dangerous. Just to give us a sense of how the government has A, taken note of it, uh, because we've heard from the IT ministry, what are the laws that one can resort to and what is the plan that the government has? Uh, last night on India Today's hmm. news track, we had a full hour long uh, special hmm. deep dive into the whole menace of fake news and how it is impacting this assembly election and hmm. deep fakes at this moment, at least in India, still not at the maximum capacity that tech provides, but with rapid changes in technological capabilities, the quality of the fakes are getting better. And soon after the story went on air, this has been widely discussed in political business circles as well. And uh, we saw today at the uh, Prime Minister's Diwali Milan at the BJP headquarters at the Din Dayal Upadhyay. Deep fakes was the big thrust of the Prime Minister's address to all the media uh, journalists, the editors who were present, saying that this is uh, something that society needs to be very vigilant about. Uh, Organizations need to be very vigilant about, common people need to be vigilant because very often people are just forwarding as received whatever it is that they're getting without applying filters on whether this is correct or not and that the Prime Minister said can cause 
tumult. It can cause chaos in society because, uh, you know, he made that example in that comment that we just played out about a statement made in a movie, one line out of place and the kind of trouble it could cause. Now imagine with the likes of, say, a Prime Minister Modi, Amit Shah, uh, Rahul Gandhi or anybody else for whom hours and hours of audio video material is available, you can train machines through deep learning to come up with a very good end result which will be indiscernible uh, and, and that really in countries like Argentina, in countries like the United States and in India in next year's elections is one of the biggest threats because suddenly something could be viraling and uh, it's uh, going deep into society because everybody now has big social media amplification groups and strategies so the Congress can do it, the BJP can do it, AAP can do it, TMC can do it, it can be going down and unlike social media if it's on WhatsApp especially then there is no knowing at that moment about uh, how far this is traveling so those are the kind of issues that the Prime Minister has brought uh, to public attention on the back of that India Today uh, deep dive last evening and we very glad because the whole idea behind our effort and all that we are doing uh, through the anti-fake news war room, AFA, uh, through what we are doing in the open source intelligence team is to draw people's attention to how generative AI is making it harder and harder to be able to tell what is fake from what is real. The other side of this could potentially be that if there is a real video, a real scam that comes to light, which could be say a minister's son talking to somebody talking about money which may be real the guy can just turn around and say to deep fake hai, ji, mera hai nahi. and now voters are confused they are confused because it could be fake they could be confused because it's real and the other guy just turns around and says no no I'm guaranteeing get this forensically investigated the tools of forensic investigations don't allow you to determine whether it's a deep fake or not and therefore this could really vitiate uh, the election campaign building up to the Lok Sabha election we're already seeing traces of that especially in Madhya Pradesh where some videos we played out the Khan Banega Karolpati video we ran the video about the so-called cabinet meeting of uh, Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan so it's already showing some signs but it could get a lot worse and there is no clear solution at this moment because technology is going faster the fact-checking tools are not going quite as fast and because of the kind of capacity these deep machine learning models have uh, it's uh, no longer possible to very quickly tell what is fake from what is real or tell at all until it may be too late all right, uh, Rahul, I'm going to thank you for the moment for joining us and for sharing with us your perspective. In fact, Rahul mentioned a show uh, that has obviously, in fact, got the government and the Prime Minister himself to raise this very, very important issue. Once again, let's take a look at the special show uh, that was put together by Rahul and his team. Good evening and welcome. You're watching the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. There's been a surfeit of deep fake videos that have plagued the assembly election campaign. Deep fakes pose one of the biggest threats to electoral democracy because with the advent of artificial intelligence, it is becoming almost impossible to tell the difference between what is real and what is fake. How should we fight and deal with the menace of deep fakes. And what kind of damage can this cause to the next Lok Sabha elections and to the elections that are currently on? On the news track tonight, we're looking at the increasing menace of deep fakes. In me se kis mukhya mantri ko unki jhoothi ghoshnaon ke karan ghoshna machine kaha jata hai? Manohar Lal Khattar, Shivraj Singh Chauhan. Fake videos. Please log option B. ऑप्शन बी पर ताला लगाया जाए बिल्कुल सही जवाब दिया आपने फेक वॉइसेस कमलनाथ को रोको कांग्रेस आ गई तो सबको पंद्रह सौ रुपए महीने और पांच सौ रुपए में गैस देने लगेगी डॉक्टर इमेजेस इतना करना बहुत जरूरी है देश के लिए विकास के लिए इतना करना बहुत जरूरी है देश के लिए विकास के लिए डीप फेक्स फ्लड the poll campaign. Voters beware. Deep fake danger is our top focus on the news track. Emerging technologies and the internet have added a new twist to the ongoing election campaign. But what happens when artificial intelligence enters the picture? 
You then have a hyper-realistic but false scenario of videos of Netas making controversial comments or disparaging remarks about their opponents. Some of these videos can be used to spin false narratives to mislead voters. On the news track, we will tell you about the growing danger of deep fakes in this election season and decode the deep fake threat to the democratic process. Lift off. We have a lift off. 32 minutes past the hour. Lift off on Apollo 11. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ever wondered what if the Apollo moon landing wasn't the triumph we believed? Good evening, my fellow Americans. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. They will be mourned by their nation. In an alternate universe, technology resurrects U.S. President Richard Nixon. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. He spills a lunar secret. Celebrated astronomers Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin not returning. These brave men, Neil Armstrong. Welcome to the world of deep fakes, synthetic audiovisual content, an alternate reality driven by artificial intelligence. We'll know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. All right, this is take 3.3. 2.3. Sorry, 2.3. Good God. Good evening. Good evening. Crafted four years ago by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, this deepfake seamlessly blends real-life footage with machine learning. To explore in peace, we'll stay on the moon. Spoken words convincingly placed in the mouth of the then U.S. President, long gone, but eerily revived in this experiment. Stay on the moon to rest in peace. With dramatic improvement and wider accessibility of technology, celebs have become the most common targets of deep fakes. Past few months have witnessed dramatic advancements in generative AI capabilities. Deep fake tools now more efficient and widely accessible. Sample this one. A voice model of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has him sing popular songs. Concerns have mounted. Deep fakes can impact democratic processes, such as the upcoming general elections. It could be used in both a good and bad manner. So, in terms of a good manner, it could be like a, a marketing campaign where a politician greets you in a personalized manner where you get a video of a politician greeting you by a meme or something. But on the other hand, it could also be used in a lot of malicious techniques. Like let's say the opposing party generates a video where uh, some politician is promising or making some outrageous claims or uh, claims against one particular group. Watchdogs have already voiced their concerns in the UK and the US. To showcase the threat, India Today's open source intelligence team created this cheap fake video of Home Minister Amit Shah within minutes, using an online video and a free face swapping tool. Beware, this cheap fake could be easily converted into a narrative changing deep fake. Experts believe the emerging tech could be misused by political parties. Countries like China as well as vested interests such as business and lobby groups to change the narrative. So in terms of regulation, see, the problem is with any new emerging tech. It will be both a, tech, a technological challenge as well as a policy making challenge. And uh, I think the government will need to work closely with the technical or the tech ecosystem to figure out a solution for it. Videos being fake are something which is very new for a lot of us. So that public awareness is something which I think the government will have to uh, spend some time on. Photoshopped images, manipulated videos and memes. India's social media landscape already a potential hotbed for deep fake landmines. With internet penetration surpassing 50% of the population, it might be too much of an ask 
for the common Indian voter to navigate the challenges of AI alone. With Bidisha Saha and Shubham Tiwari, Bureau Report, India Today. Is Bollywood superstar Amitabh Bachchan using his popular quiz show Kaun Banega Karolpati to bat for the Congress ahead of the Madhya Pradesh Assembly elections? A whole clutch of KBC videos have been shared widely online which seem to be suggesting this. But beware, manipulated videos have flooded the internet and WhatsApp groups, so much so that the network that airs KBC had to issue a clarification saying that their clips are being overlaid with a fabricated voiceover of Amitabh Bachchan to present a distorted picture. Welcoming a contestant in his signature baritone. और बहुत बहुत स्वागत आपका धन्यवाद सर इनमें से किस मुख्यमंत्री को उनकी झूठी घोषणाओं के कारण घोषणा मशीन कहा जाता है इन द ब्लिंक ऑफ एन आई द रियालिटी टेक्स अ टर्न विद अ क्वेश्चन टू स्पॉट अ घोषणा मशीन नेता अ लीडर ऑफ हॉलो प्रोमिस ऑल फोर ऑप्शन आर बीजेपी चीफ मिनिस्टर्स इसका राइट आंसर है सर ऑप्शन बी द कंटेस्टेंट आंसर्स शिवराज सिंह चौहान लॉक्ट इन ऑप्शन बी पर ताला लगाया जाए बिल्कुल सही जवाब दिया आपने विद द सुपर स्टार होस्ट ड्रॉपिंग अ बॉम्ब शेल कॉमेंट जस्ट बिफोर द मध्य प्रदेश इलेक्शन बट होल्ड ऑन डिट समथिंग सीम ऑफ इनमें से किस मुख्यमंत्री को द लिप सिंह द ब्रीफ क्लोज अप घोषणा मशीन कहा जाता है Yes, it's a fake. Another episode, another twist. वर्ष 2018 में बनी मध्य प्रदेश की कमलनाथ सरकार ने कितने किसानों का कर्जा माफ किया था? This time, a question on farm loan waivers. A hot topic in Madhya Pradesh elections. A, two lakh. B, seventy lakh. C, five lakh. D, ten lakh. The answer raises eyebrows. 27 lakh farmers. Sir, please log option B. Laga de thala. Yes, sir. Soch liya. Yes, sir. B pe thala laga jaye. Bilkul sahi jawab diya. An imperfect lip sync again. Fleeting close-ups. Kamal Nath Sarkar ne apne 15 mahine ke karyakal mein. Moreover, a show like KBC would not dive into such controversial topics. Kisano ki karz maafi band kar di. Despite suspicious signs. These sleek fakes are gaining fraction this election season. Concerned, Sony Live has raised a red flag on social media. और आज छठा प्रश्न 20,000 रुपए आपके स्क्रीन के ऊपर ये रहा. But what did Amitabh Bachchan really ask? It was a question about cinema. इनमें से कौन सी फिल्म एक खिलाड़ी के बारे में नहीं है? Option सुनिए A. साइना, बी पीकू, सी भाग मिल का भाग, या डी शाबाश मिठू। जी सर। About Karnataka and Gujarat geography, not politics। इन दोनों राज्यों के बारे में क्या सही नहीं है? A have coastlines, यानी दोनों के समुद्र तट हैं। B उगली flows through them, उगली उनमें से हो करके बहती है। C border Maharashtra सीमाएं महाराष्ट्र से लगती हैं या D C M S R में यानी मुख्यमंत्री जो हैं वो पुरुष हैं। AI tools have made creating fake videos easier than ever, with deep fakes spreading beyond adult content to political propaganda. After the uproar over Rashmi Ka Mandana's deep fake, the government ordered swift takedowns of such content. Meta and YouTube now demand disclosure for digitally altered political and social issue ads. Yet, fakes deep and not so deep remain a challenging adversary, lurking in the shadows of the digital era. Vijyoti Divedi and Bal Krishna, Bureau Report, India Today. Make no mistake, deep fakes pose a big threat 
to India's electoral system with generative AI becoming better with the passing month it's becoming tougher even for teams like the India Today anti-fake news war room to be able to distinguish what is real from what is fake and imagine if this is viraling on WhatsApp in some community group uh, in the far and beyond by then your message is already spreading far and wide the damage is done you can keep clarifying putting out explanations later but whatever negative message somebody wanted to put out has already reached far and wide to talk about the threats of deep fake I'm joined on this broadcast by uh, Amit Malviya uh, the IT cell chief of the Bharatiya Janta party squaring off against him joining us from Telangana is Rohan Gupta he's on the campaign trail he's paused just to join us for the show so I appreciate that uh, we have Jitin Jain who's a leading IT expert and I just want to play out for our viewers before I go across to our guests this one clip uh, this is from the report that you just saw uh, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan in KBC asking people who's the worst chief minister so just listen in and it explains to you why this is such an important story and then I'll go across to my first guest let's listen first to Mr. Shivraj Bachchan Singh. or supposed to be Mr. Bachchan इन में से किस मुख्यमंत्री को उनकी झूठी घोषणाओं के कारण घोषणा मशीन कहा जाता है मनोहर लाल खट्टर शिवराज सिंह चौहान और योगी आदित्यनाथ भूपेंद्र पटेल जी सर इसका राइट आंसर है सर ऑप्शन बी प्लीज लॉग ऑप्शन बी Option B per tala lagaya chahe. Bilkul sahi jawaab diya aapne. Now this is not a deep fake but this is a fake video it's done with a certain level of expertise who's the chief minister who does the maximum amount of announcements it's making fun of Shivrat Singh Chauhan it's supposed to be on the set of KBC which it clearly isn't but it's being used by the opponents of uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan in the Madhya Pradesh election. This is just one sample. There are many like this. I want to go across first to Rohan Gupta. Uh, Rohan Gupta, is this something that's happening organically or is this something that the opposition is now using as a tactic to take on the government uh, and find some ways of pinning uh, the BJP and the Modi government down? How do you respond to A, this video and then the larger conversation about deep fakes? Rohan. Uh, Rahul, I think this video is the voice of uh, Madhya Pradesh, so I don't want to comment on that. And obviously, as a this is not that uh, something which we believe in as a Congress party. But yeah, as a as a as a larger picture, I would like to comment on this issue of deep fake for a country like India, where we are very very sensitive towards many issues like religious issues or caste issue or communal issue. It it really can work like a two sides sword. Yeah, there are benefits of the technology. That okay, if I am not available, I can record my message in 20 languages and send to my supporters if I use it in positive way. But if it is misused and the way we see our country, even a small clip by the time it is proved that that is correct or wrong, the fire is already done, the damage is already done. So unless we, un until we have a proper mechanism of fact check, where AI is also included, we know that in India there are a lot of many fact check agencies. But I think they they, they do the fact checking of the videos or the or, or the article whether it is true or not. Doing a, a fact check of a deep fake video will require a lot of technological investment. And countries like India, we are going forward in AI, but this will be a big challenge for us even in a political arena. There it can be definitely misused. And by the time you control the damage or by the time you prove that, that something is wrong, the damage is already done. So, okay. I think so Amit a Malviya, A, the Congress denying formally that this is something they've done officially. Now, if somebody goes out and makes this video of Shivrat Singh Chan, they're saying, what can we do about it? B, of course, this is a large danger and they're saying we need to collectively wrap our heads around how we need to deal with this. Is this something that's a one-off? Are you seeing your opponents do this more and more in the assembly elections and potentially in the Lok Sabha elections as well? Well, Rahul, for the records, there were two complaints filed in this election, both in Madhya Pradesh, one involving the KBC set and a voiceover of Mr. Bachchan, and another, a cabinet meeting being held by Shivraj Singh Chauhan with a statement which is completely contrary to what the meeting was all about. Now, the BJP has filed official complaint with the Election Commission of India. Not just that, we've also filed criminal cases against specific handles, all of which happen to be of 
Congress office bearers. So it might be very convenient for the Congress spokesperson to distance himself from these videos on a television program. But the people who have been named in the FIR that we filed are all Congress office bearer, some even national. We will take it to a logical end. But the larger debate here is about the challenge that the Indian polity faces by such misuse of technology which the Congress has now pioneered and have now sort of experimented in a limited way in Madhya Pradesh. Clearly after they lose all the five state elections on the 3rd of December, I reckon that they will rely on it a lot more in the run up to the 20. Okay, so you're accusing election. the Congress of doing this deliberately in Madhya Pradesh. Just one second. Uh, no, before I broaden the issue, let's just get to this. You're saying the opposition is doing it uh, deliberately in Madhya Pradesh and that uh, this is being pushed by Congress leaning handles. Let Rohan Gupta first respond to that. Rohan? Sir, how? Because I'm not getting the video and I'm on a campaign trail, I could not see that Mr. Malwe is there. And I think it's a wonderful to do debate with a person who is like, you know, the epitome of spreading the fake news. On the screen, I'll show you Mr. Malwe's tweet on Shaheen Bagh, where he has spread the fake news. There are 16 occasions on which Mr. Uh, uh, Malwe has spread the fake news. This is another video of Lucknow saying Pakistan's Indabad Nare. This is also fake news which has been spread by Mr. Malwe. AMU Chhatro ne lagaye Hindu ki kabra kudi ki nare. This is the fake news which is spread by Mr. Malviya. So I think when he is trying to talk on the moral grounds, first of all, he should apologize as IT cell chairman of BJP to the country for spreading fake news at least for 16 times. What okay. is he talking about? I don't want to get caught in this tutu, mein mein, but I will get Mr. Malviya to respond before I broaden the debate that multiple times uh, you personally and the BJP social media cell has also been caught out putting out fake news. You can't just blame the Congress. This is something either deliberately or... Uh, by accident has happened on the handles of both parties across the spectrum. Mr. Amit Malve. The Congress is free to file complaint against me if they think that either me or anybody in my party has spread uh, fake news. And I know for a fact that they've filed over 30 FIRs against me across the country, but have not been able to prove even a single one of them. So it's one thing to come on a television program and indulge in all kinds of rhetoric. It's quite another to prove your allegation in the court of law. I don't need to say anything more because this is not a debate about me. It's a debate about the Congress party, its culture, and how it is distorting the political discourse using advanced technology like AI. If you think it makes sense to look at the broader canvas and what the Congress is doing, it is looking to damage institutions, it is looking to undermine people's confidence in democracy, it is looking to subvert the free will of the people. And in a country like India, where literacy levels are still sort of climbing up and people rely a lot on audio-visual uh, uh, interfaces, for the Congress to experiment and deliberately use fake uh, videos and use uh, advanced technologies like AI to replicate a very popular program like KBC and come up with a clip is quite sinister. And your viewers should know that both Sony Lev and Amitabh Bachchan in his personal capacity, I am told, have filed FIR. And people who were spreading this video were actually office bearers of the Congress. So okay. they were perhaps people who Rohan Gupta knows. And therefore, he, by extension now, and by affiliation, is also guilty of it. If I remember, he was the former chief of the Congress's IT department before he was shunted out into another role. Now, having said that, are we going to look at the Congress exploiting this technology and subverting democracy? Or are we going to look at the positives, the challenges, and clearly the opportunities that lie ahead um, as far as AI you know, is concerned? Okay, and so if I, I can just extend this argument, AI is not just an India-specific debate, Rahul. It's been happening worldwide. We've seen big tech giants uh, wade into this conversation and have said that we need a framework which is ethical and we need to ensure that big tech companies and also smaller technology uh, players and perhaps innovators need to all come together. But it okay. is surely just, just very, let me very pause very you for a moment because it's it correct that this is not an Indian problem it has only. It too. 
we need to be mindful it isn't an indian problem only in fact i want to show you this clip of the richard nixon deep fake this is a uh, supposed speech uh, spooky as spooky can be where richard nixon the former american president is actually playing homage uh, to us astronauts neil armstrong and edwin uh, aldrin who never come back in this version of history it kind of went viral and then this is using generative ai and it actually shows you the potential of getting ai training these systems to say anything, you could have, whether it's the Prime Minister, the Home Minister, any Minister, Opposition Leader, Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka, take anyone and get them to say pretty much anything you want, uh, which will be so convincing and so real uh, that most people may not be able to tell. So just listen to the Richard Nixon deepfake and then we'll take it from there. No, but there is some. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know, know that, that there, there is, is no, no hope. hope. For every, every human being, being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. Now, Jitin Jain, here's this uh, clip you created using generative AI, which is this fake uh, version of what happened during the moon landing. It's a moon disaster speech. It really, obviously everyone knows it didn't happen because this is old, but you can use these kind of technologies uh, to train systems to create any kind of video of any anchor, any sports person, any celebrity, any politician, anybody could be saying anything. You can keep clarifying later ki maine nahi bola, by then it could be viraling across. Rahul, you would recall our conversation on a you know, collaborative training platform we had organized for India Today Special Investigation Team almost four and a half years ago. And I showed you the videos of much better quality of Barack Obama, Arvind Kejriwal asking people to vote for Congress, you know, and many other videos, including those of celebrities. But that was four and a half years ago when the training models of, you know, generative AI was not in place for public use. The training models of deep fakes were much more expensive. They required much bigger infrastructure and the, uh, the cost of acquisition was astronomical and it was not available to ordinary people. I mean, you had to spend almost, you know, 10 lakh dollars to acquire even a simpler defect technology. And you had to have almost around, you know, uh, 40 hours of video footage, high definition footage that would create a defect video of someone today. You can acquire similar technology for say $5,000 on license. All you need is 40 high definition images, maybe a small one minute clip. And within two hours on a simple laptop machine, you would be able to create a defect image or even a 30 second defect clip of any celebrity, any actor, anyone you want to impersonate. Now, this is the challenge. A, the technology has used tremendously. You are using generative AI, deep learning models, where one AI is competing against each other to find faults in a defect, and till such time, they are unable to find any fault, they keep improving. So today, if you find a defect, it is going to be very, very difficult for any forensic lab to give a report even in five days to detect a defect video and then, uh, you know, prove it with uh, uh, step by step. Now, the challenge is if the technology has become so perfect, the cost of acquisition has, uh, uh, you know, become so low, it is available, the reach has become available, there are no regulations for who you can use, who you can transfer. There is going to be a phenomenal challenge for, uh, you know, uh, for our adversaries using it for election interference, shaping the discourse of conversations in our society, creating religious tensions. So this is going to happen. Now, if you look five years ago, even... I think BJP was using it when Manoj Tiwari's uh, videos were created in multiple languages for election campaigning. India Today Channel has used, uh, you know, uh, AI-based anchors for weather bulletins. We have used Chinese agencies using AI-based anchors for, uh, you know, the uh, anchoring news bulletins. So these are all bona fide uses where you're not impersonating someone, where you're not trying to create any, you know, uh, uh, spread any fake news. So using uh, deep fake videos for, you know, a double role in movies for getting better advertisements, running news bulletins, you know, using for multilingual campaigns. These are all going to be bona fide uses, but the challenge is going to be where you're trying to impersonate someone, spread fake news, misinformation, information, create tension. Suppose, you know, a, a, a deep fake, I, in the training we discussed, if a deep fake video of a great businessman in India is discussing something with the prime minister comes out, by the time, even if, even if he issues some statement or send it to a forensic lab, the kind of losses or the you know uh, the tensions you might yeah, face absolutely coming if it does just before polling 
Now you've got polling on the 17. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a small example. Yes. Suppose if there is, there was a defect video in 2019 tweeted by Rahul Gandhi of Anil Ambani and Prime Minister discussing something about Rafael. Can you can you not believe that it changed? You know, it would have changed the entire electoral discourse in this country. And suppose if that video was planted by ISA or ISPR, which has become now a fountainhead of spreading disinformation in India. So these are going to be challenges we have to look in the future, and I think Pakistan is now only, not only the only factor. China is going to be even bigger player because they have got bigger AI models, better AI models, and bigger infrastructure available in 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 any sovereign country on AI. Okay, you know, is it possible for you and I to spot a deep fake? Business Today Television's tech editor Ayush Aydavadi so kind of tries to explain why it is getting increasingly complicated to be able to tell a fake from real but there are a few hacks that you can keep in mind to go as far as is possible to tell the difference between a deep fake a fake and a real video well if you're trying to understand what is a deep fake there's two ways to understand it join me here with two clips that i want to play out for you and then you can, well, sort of get the gist of what a deep fake is and the kind of damage it could do to me and my career. Hi, my name is Ayush Alavadi and I'm a self-confessed tech geek. Over the past couple of years, I've enjoyed making content for you, but I now have to make an announcement, an announcement to end all the speculation. I, with a heavy heart, have decided to move on and take up a new challenge. Hi, my name is Ayush Alavadi and we've been putting together this technology show for you for the past couple of years. Now, we love doing it. I love my job and so does the team. Please do not fall for the previous deep fake. And I want to show you now this uh, clip uh, that went viral. I think Amit Malviya referenced uh, that video. This is Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Johan. He is making some kind of an announcement in a meeting. Listen to what he seems to be saying. And that, you know, now you've got a situation where all big national and regional parties have significant uh, social media following, have WhatsApp groups of their own where they can send something out. And the problem with WhatsApp is that you don't, unlike on social media where you can flag who spread it, and WhatsApp is much tougher. So you could spread this in your community, in your echo chamber. The message goes down deep. Listen to Shivrat Singh Johan once again. मैं बार बार कह रहा हूं कमलनाथ को रोको कांग्रेस आ गई तो सबको 1500 रुपए महीने और 500 रुपए में गैस देने लगेगी फिर इस बार तो छोड़ो अगली बार भी हमारा जीतना नामुमकिन हो जाएगा हमने तो कुछ लोगों को 1250 रुपए दिए हैं वो तो सबको देंगे हमने तो 450 रुपए में गैस सिलेंडर का सिर्फ झांसा दिया है वो तो सही में देंगे क्योंकि वो दूसरे प्रदेशों में दे रहे हैं भैया कुछ भी करो पर कमलनाथ को रोको सो इवन इफ दिस इजंट रोहन गुप्ता ऑफिशियली द कांग्रेस पार्टी it can be argued that maybe somebody leaning towards your point of view has done this. It's highly unlikely that Amit Malviya and his team would put out this kind of a video. So it's obviously someone who doesn't like the BJP who's creating these kind of videos and they are the most prominent examples that have come to light in this campaign, Rohan Gupta. See, Rahul, again I'm telling you, yeah, if anybody as Congress party, we don't believe in uh, these kind of things. And yeah, definitely legal action should be taken against the person who has created it. I just heard Mr. Malviya saying that uh, a lot of Congress uh, people uh, spread it, spread the video. It, they are the workers. Suppose they get something, they'll spread. But you, you should see that who has created it. And what examples I am giving is creating fake news by Mr. Amit Malviya himself. I have, I am ready to debate. I, I challenge him to debate on the issues where 16 times he has spread the fake news from his Twitter head. Okay, Amit Malviya, so do you buy this argument that it's not as if they created it, but if they found some material Raul, Raul. that is useful to them, as you do often, they used it so, and they amplified Raul, it, that's their that's job. Yes, go Raul, on, Ron, complete your argument. Raul, yes. Raul, I have one question for you. If somebody is aligned to Congress party or somebody who hates Mr. Shivraj Singh Chauhan for not fulfilling the promise and he gets this video on WhatsApp, he viral it. So that's what we have to stop. That is what we are debating. That when these kind of deep fake technologies are used by anybody, I am saying not about Congress party or by BJP, by anybody, by the time it does the damages, what it is required, what the aim of the video is achieved, okay. we have to take action. So let, let Amit Malviya respond to this, that they are saying we didn't create it. But if uh, we found it, we amplified it, that's what we're supposed to do. We take whatever material we get and we make our point using it. It's part of our material. 
Look, the Congress spokesperson's innocence in this matter is not going to hide their sin. The fact is that both these videos would have squarely benefited the Congress party. It has been made by the Congress party because, like I said, they have been posted by specific office bearers of the Congress party <coughs> and their official handles were involved in it. I tell him, Mr. to prove it. I challenge him. Therefore, I am giving examples of fake news which is created by Mr. Malviya. On the same side, I challenge him is, to prove that this video is created by Congress Party. That's look, not fake news. Rahul, on the, on this show. can we have the Party. civil conversation? Okay, let, let Amit Malviya respond. It is for the agencies like the Election Commission, the policing of the respective states to figure out where this video is originated from. Technology platforms are duty bound to disclose where the videos have originated from. So the challenge that the Congress spokesperson is posing is not for me to answer, it's for the agencies to take note of and clearly the Election Commission will proceed with the complaints that we've made since there are criminal cases filed against people who have posted it. They will be questioned and naturally they will get to the root cause of where it originated from. So it's just a matter of time the Congress can come on television and pretend that they don't know anything or claim innocence. But the fact is that if there is something that benefits your party and if your office bearers are actively promoting it, then they're as accountable for it as anyone else is. And having said okay. that, there are certain provisions in the law that allow the government, the policing agencies to demand cooperation from these technology platforms and get to the bottom of where it actually originated. So it's not very difficult. The digital trail leaves everybody vulnerable. So the Congress might think that they will get away with it, but they will not. But the issue is when the law catches up, they will claim vendetta, they will play victim, and that's what they do all the time. Okay. So what really is a deep fake? How is it different from a regular fake or a Photoshop? Some estimates say that about 500,000 video and voice deepfakes will be shared on social media sites globally in 2023. It's not just politicians who are at risk. Celebrities, actors, singers, athletes, they can all be featured in deepfakes. famous actress Rashmika Mandanya found herself in a controversy due to a circulating deep fake video. Hi. <laughs> the video shows a woman in an elevator but her face has been digitally manipulated to resemble the actor. This incident has raised alarm and led to demands for legal action. Bollywood superstar Amitabh Bachchan who co-starred with Mandana in the movie Goodbye expressed his concern about the rise of deep fakes and urged for legal measures to be taken. Deepfake is a term that combines deep learning and fake. It refers to a piece of audio or video that's been edited using an algorithm to replace the person in the original content with someone else, especially a public figure, in a way that makes the video look authentic. Deepfakes use a form of artificial intelligence called deep learning to create fake images of events that never happened. Deepfake videos have become more prevalent with the emergence of various AI and machine learning tools. Some of these tools are freely available, exacerbating the problem of fake photos, videos and audio. Your queen and all Bureau Report, India Today. I trust you will have the very merriest of Merry Christmases. Okay, I'm joined in the India Today Mediaplex studios now by Balkrishan. Balkrishan heads India Today's anti-fake news war room, which is our effort to take on fake news. So, Bala, welcome. Uh, I also have Ankit Kumar. Ankit heads uh, the India Today Open Source Intelligence Desk. Uh, he looks at what's happening globally. Uh, Ankit, how big a problem has deepfakes become in this election? And how do you see this magnify building up to the next Lok Sabha elections? Well, Rahul, if we really want to understand uh, what kind of problem it is going to pose, we need to look uh, at what is happening in Argentina, in Taiwan, and uh, we really need to listen to what the UK's poll watchdog and national security watchdog has been saying. They are saying that artificial intelligence based deepfakes are going to be the biggest threat in coming days posing the elections, the democratic process. In fact, in Argentina, there's a, a New York Times report that was done today. It shows 
more than majority of the audiovisual, majority of the pictures, majority of the posters in the poll campaign, it is world's, it is being called world's first AI driven elections. So that's how AI the, driven election. Yes. So that's how deep the problem is. In India, we already have been facing a lot of disinformation problem. We had Photoshop, we had mixed media, but now with deep fakes, with the, the, the democratization of the accessibility of these tools. These tools were very kind of very sophisticated, very resisted unless until 2000 and let's say 20 and 21. Over past two, three years, what has happened is with the advent of OpenAI, with Midjourney, with DALI, with Stable Diffusion, these models have come in. Based on these models, a lot of very cheap tools have come in. And now it is very easy for political workers, for vested interests, even for states. We have China at our neighborhood. Last year, there was a report that said that the PLA was weaponizing this technology in order to affect elections in other countries. Imagine the kind of border standoff that we have with China. AI is going to be a problem. Bala, this must be making the task of fact-checking almost impossible because earlier, I remember some forensic uh, digital analysis that we've done. You could tell because the audio was imposed upar se. Now, because these deep learning models just listen to the audio and are generating the audio, it's all in the same tone. So a lot of techniques which have been used in the past are suddenly no longer usable because technology is much smarter than them. Definitely, Rahul. Actually, the lines between cheap fake, deep fake, and now we, what we call sleek fake, which is something in between, are blurring. And because the, these technologies like computer vision, like synthetic voices, is always there. But now with the emergence of AI, these technologies are converging and they are converging at an amazing speed. And as Ankit pointed out, that these tools are becoming cheaper and easily available. So in elections, the threat is not, not only that these fakes are being produced, but they are being targeted at a specific audience. Eventually, everyone is going to figure out that these are fakes, but these, it is not that it's just flooded across the social media for everybody. These fakes are being targeted at specific audience. Suppose there are polls in three phases. So people who are in first phase are going to get this very target audience are going to get it just before the election. So by the time they are able to figure out that this is not correct or this is not Modi who was saying this or this was not Rahul Gandhi was saying this. By the time they, they figure this out, which eventually they are going to, but by the time the impact is made. So Bala and Ankit have a quick demonstration they want to show you which brings out how easy it is to be able to create these deep fakes. Bala, just tell our viewers about what you're about to show them in that demo and what they should be looking out and how easy it was to actually create this. Well, so as I said that there are various technologies we all know about. Now we all know that there is synthetic voice. It is easy to clone somebody's voice and if the person is a public or some somebody like an anchor, it is e the because there are uh, much hours of audio video. Hours video. of audio videos or a celebrity or a public figure. So hours of audio videos make it easier to uh, clone the voice, clone, uh, make defect. But what I'm trying to show you is that now how these different technologies which were like always there but now they have evolved and they are now converging so we have made this this a person on twitter has posted this and we have tried to replicate this it shows that how a computer first takes a photograph of somebody then ai model describes that photo and that is not all it describes in the tone language and tenor of some some anybody that you want in this case we are we ask it to describe in the language and the accent of david attenborough which is had done that and that's not all within seconds the tool automatic tools also generates a synthetic voice of david attenborough and it looks that a david attenborough is describing what i'm looking like david attenborough describing bala that's what you're about to see ankit what are you about to show a very easy thing we are going to bring virat kohli to india Today's newsroom. We are putting him on our work desk and getting him some work to do. So we are basically we are using a Python library to copy publicly available Virat Kohli's Virat Kohli's pictures and then superimposing that data on my face. And you can see him. And working. Rao, we started this exercise just this afternoon, so it's very little uh, training of the models has been done. If you want to do it for some devious intent, you can do it over days train the model better and get as close to real life as possible, making it almost impossible to tell. Take a listen in. Computer vision, chat GPT and synthetic voice, as you might be knowing, are three different technologies. But with few lines of coding, it is possible to converge them and do amazing things. What I'm going to show you, I will just sit in front of computer and the software is going to look at me and describe what I'm doing in that language, tone, and voice of none other than David Attenborough. 
see how it works. The image depicts a man sitting inside a room, concentrating on reading a book with an orange and white cover. The man is wearing glasses and has a neatly groomed moustache. He is dressed in a dark jacket over a lighter shirt. The room's background appears simple, with plain walls and no discernible decorations. The photograph seems to be taken from a slightly low angle, suggesting that the person taking the picture might be seated, or the camera placed on a lower surface. The image conveys a sense of quiet study or intellectual pursuit. Deep fakes in an election season is a growing concern. Even the election watchdogs in the UK have voiced their concern of a possible misuse of deep fakes in the elections. How easy it is to create a deep fake. We are going to we are going to show you. On your screen, you have a video of Indian cricketer Virat Kohli sitting in the India Today newsroom. Now we are going to take you back to the process, show, going to show you how this loose deep fake has been created. On your screen is an open source Python based program. What I'm doing is on your left we have Virat Kohli's picture that is the face. On your right is that is me that is the target. Now using this tool, using this open source free tool, I have selected one picture of Virat Kohli, second picture is mine and I let the program run. This free and customizable tool can be used and accessed by any developer in, in the world. And imagine in an election season, Virat Kohli's picture being replaced by a politician. There you go. You now have a picture of Virat Kohli sitting and working in our newsroom. Now, this is not just a picture. This is a full video. There are other open source tools that can mimic Virat Kohli's voice and put words in his mouth. So deep fakes are now becoming a growing concern for all the uh, poll watchdogs, be it UK, be it the US or in India. Slipping into a break, this is the real me, this isn't a fake, I promise you that, but it could well at some point in time with anchors or with any celebrity. So many hours of audio video which are available, put them into a machine, let the machine train itself with the mannerisms of that person and within a few days you could have a generative AI version of me coming and presenting the news to you. So the challenge is here, it's now, it is easily available and therefore we really need to be thinking more, far deep, more deeply than we are at this moment about how to deal with this challenge. For your time and your trust, thank you. Slipping into a break, more on the other side. You are watching India Today. Powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company. हम भी दरिया हैं, हमें अपना हुनर मालूम है, जिस तरफ चल पड़ेंगे, रास्ता बन जाएगा. जी हाँ, एक बार फिर, वो वक्त आ चुका है, जब साहित्य आज तक लेकर हम आपके पास पहुँचने वाले हैं. तो रहिए तैयार, आप सब से होगी मुलाकात. साहित्य आज तक 24 से 26 नवंबर, मेजर ध्यानचंद अभी रजिस्टर करें www.ajtak.in/sahitya पर या फिर मिस कॉल दें 9310330033 पर Get ready for an immersive journey into the heart of news, politics and insights that matter. Join India today now on WhatsApp with the number one election team as we gear up for the upcoming assembly elections. Do scan the QR code. Join India today now on WhatsApp. Follow these steps. watching India Today, powered by Finest, be sustainable change, a BNP group company.
Lok Sabha elections 2019. I was here. Then Cabinet Minister Narendra Tomar was fighting from Morena on a Lok Sabha ticket. This election, he is being fielded from the constituency of Dimni in Morena from Lok Sabha to Vidhan Sabha. Life comes full circle sometimes. In 2019, I reported from deep within the Chambal ravines or the Bihar here. What I saw then was ecological degradation, illegal sand mining and rural indebtedness. I had chanced upon a village, Nadwapura. No water, no electricity, no Anganwari, no nothing. Monsin and I, we were here in 2019, uh, actually not here, in a different place because this village uh, uh, had no electricity, no water, it would get flooded every year. Because of our news report back then in 2019, this village was moved to a higher area so that it doesn't get flooded. So at least, uh, you know, they'd have access to basics, which was electricity. There's still no water here. Um, they say there's one hand pump which doesn't work. We hope that uh, you know, this news report is going to go down and maybe somebody will watch and maybe somebody will look at Naduapura because they did that time and the village was relocated. But the work is incomplete. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. You are watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP Group company.
make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. watching India Today, powered by Finest, Be Sustainable Change, a BNP group company. Co-powered by the bold look of Kohler, HDFC Bank Expressway, LIC, Har Pal Aapke Saath. Israel escalates Hamas offensive, exposes horrors of Hamas, kids' bedrooms used to stock weapons, Hamas rockets found in strollers, search operations continue at Al Shifa Hospital, Israel war machine rages on. Top focus on Five Live. Israel has dropped leaflets ordering Gazans to evacuate particular localities even in the southern part of the Gaza Strip, including in pockets of Khan Yunus. Now, reports say members of the Israel War Cabinet are in favor of expanding ground operations beyond Gaza City into southern Gaza after total domination, total supremacy at Gaza City in North Gaza and of course the Al Shifa Hospital and areas around it. But the question that's being asked, where will people of Gaza go if Israel expands its operations in South Gaza, especially around Khan Yunus? The situation extremely, extremely alarming along the Gaza Strip. I'm Gaurav Savant. We get you all details, but first as always, the headlines. A mega India Today impact, a day after India Today's deep dive into dangers of deep fake. Prime Minister Narendra Modi sounds the alarm, calls deep fake the biggest threat to society. It's a deep fake. Battle for Madhya Pradesh kicks off BJP and Congress big wigs cast their vote. Incumbent Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan says next Chief Minister will be decided by the BJP top brass and voters. Chhattisgarh records over 55% voter turnout as it votes for the remaining 70 seats in phase two. Incumbent Chief Minister Bhupesh Baghel expresses confidence of a Congress win. Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra speaks exclusively to India today. 
in pole bound Rajasthan claims Congress united, but it's the BJP that's divided in Rajasthan. Pilot Ashok Gelot, will they fight together? Kya wo ek ek jut hoke ladenge Priyanka? Ladenge. Chunaam mein Rajasthan mein BJP ekdam bikhri hui hai. 40 workers trapped for over 150 hours in Uttarkashi tunnel. Rescuers inch closer. Only 30 meters debris left to insert five 900 mm steel pipes for an escape route. Let me get you the latest from Gaza City and North Gaza. Israeli soldiers have found a tunnel shaft used by Hamas terrorists at Gaza's Al-Shifa hospital. The Israeli Defense Forces have claimed that a body of an Israeli hostage was also found in the hospital compound. A 65-year-old woman abducted by Hamas terrorists on the 7th of October and murdered in Gaza. Israeli forces have intensified their operations in the Gaza Strip and in the West Bank with raids at the Ibn Sina Hospital after an IDF soldier was killed in a terror strike. All three suspected terrorists have also been killed. Israeli forces have dropped leaflets in the Khan Yunus area of southern Gaza asking people to evacuate immediately. Does this indicate a major expansion of ground operations beyond Gaza City towards southern Gaza? That's a top story. Hamas terror network linked to Al Shifa hospital in Gaza city stands exposed. Israeli troops are searching rooms and basement of Gaza's biggest hospital after days long siege that caused global alarm over the fate of thousands of civilians trapped inside. Hamas's tunneling infrastructure inside the hospital is now revealed. The Israeli forces also seized a vehicle containing weapons and ammunition that was to be used in October 7th massacre. IDF forces found a tunnel shaft in Shifa hospital. Engineering forces are currently uncovering the infrastructure there. We also found a vehicle that has been prepared for the massacre on the October 7 and didn't leave. And we found many weapons in it. I want to emphasize a car of Hamas terrorists with many weapons within the ground of Shifa hospital. Al-Shifa hospital has become the main target of the ground operation by Israeli forces who claim Hamas fighters ran their operations from headquarters in tunnels beneath it. Hamas has denied the charge. After 20 hours of attacking all the hospital facilities, searching and tampering with all the contents and departments, the spokesperson of the occupation army came out as usual with a weak and ridiculous story saying that he had found several rifles, a Kalashnikov, a laptop, a military uniform and an old pair of shoes which he displayed on the shelves and moved from one place to another and appearing in front of journalists as if he has displaying his goods in a supermarket or in a hotel room. Israel says its troops uncovered weapons and terror infrastructure inside the hospital compound after killing fighters in clashes outside. There was no fighting or friction with civilians, patients or staff inside the hospital, according to the IDF. Israel also claims to have found the body of Yehudi Twis, one of around 240 hostages taken by Hamas gunmen when they stormed southern Israel on October 7. The body was recovered by troops in a building near the Al Shifa hospital. Even as Israeli defense forces mount operations inside the Al Shifa and other hospitals in the locality, civilians who have taken shelter in these facilities are demanding a ceasefire. Bureau Report, India Today. Israeli defense forces say brick by brick, tunnel by tunnel, Hospital by hospital, they are dismantling the Hamas terror infrastructure, military terror infrastructure in North Gaza and in Gaza City. The indication are soon they will expand 
south of Wadi Gaza River. They intend targeting Khan Yunus. Israeli forces say that Hamas terrorists were using not just the Al-Shifa hospital as its command and control center, but also other hospitals, including the Al-Rantisi Children's Hospital as a weapons storage facility, as a rocket launch facility, and as barracks for Hamas terrorists. The IDF claims they've neutralized several Hamas terrorists who are hiding inside a school and several weapons and systems have been recovered, thereby making a case for expansion of operations beyond Gaza City. Israel Defense Forces continue to uncover the horrors of Hamas hidden beneath the three largest hospitals in Gaza. A tunnel under the Al Shifa hospital complex. Weapons and ammunition recovered inside Al Qad's hospital. And yet, another tunnel under the Rantisi hospital. In fact, the Rantisi Children's Hospital has been used by Hamas terrorists to hide arms and possibly hold hostages. A six-minute video released by the IDF shows the house of a Hamas terrorist right next to the hospital. I'm here in Gaza City. We are here next to a house of a terrorist. This is one of the senior terrorists who is the head of the operational naval operations that led the raids into Israel. His house is 200 yards from the hospital, the hospital of Rantisi. Next to his house, there is a tunnel. Now I want to show you an operational tunnel. The tunnel is built with electricity, a door that is bulletproof, it's, a, it's explosive proof, so it looks like a hard evidence, a clear evidence that the hospital direction is connected. It's part of the same floor and it slides down here. So it's a cover tunnel so nobody can find it. The tunnel under Rantisi Hospital In led the, the IDF to an operational base. There is a list. This is the back side of the hospital. Hamas used this hospital. Tonight we have entered into this building. I will show you the evidence. Let's enter into the hospital. We are now in the area of the basement of the hospital. I want to show you a room where we found all the gear, the operational gear of Hamas. Hamas is using hospitals, like we showed the evidence in Shifa Hospital. In other hospitals, we are now seeing it in live in Rantisi Hospital. Among hospitals, among patients, we have hand grenades, Kalachnikovs, and then we have the RPGs, people shooting RPGs from hospitals. This is Hamas, firing RPGs from hospitals. The world has to understand who is Israel fighting against. We are now in the basement, and in this basement we found a motorcycle. They were all used in the massacre of the 7th of October. Israel says that some hostages were also kept under the Rantisi hospital. Yards from here, we find the chair, a woman, clothes, and a rope. 